Gervais, we've had a fax. There's a guy, he's desperate for our help. I'm not going to deny it. He's desperate. He's a desperate man, Gervais. Right. Basically, the situation is this. Uh, he's got a small boat and he's got to row it across a river. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, that might seem straightforward enough. Okay, but this fella has to take with him, Gervais, a fox, a chicken, and a big bag of seed. Right. Well, he's, he's got a nightmare problem. Why? He's well, just, wait, what, why? Well, so he puts because, the no, listen, because the boat is only big enough for him and one of those items at any one time. It's so he can get in it. He can and, get in it. And any one of those other items. Any one of those other items. Fine. Um, he takes the bag of seed over, moves it over, dumps wait, that the other side. I'll stop you there, Gervais. What? You've embarrassed yourself. Why? While... He's happily rowing across with that bag of seed. Yeah. On the on the riverbank there. Yeah. Chicken, fox, bloodbath. Um, I'm gonna ask you something here, right? This boat is small, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a small boat. I'm so he can put any one of those things in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So am I to assume that the chicken is the same size as the fox? Is the same size as the bag? It's a big chicken. Which is so it's the same size as the fox, which is the same size as the bag. That's right. Yes. Yes. Right, okay. Yes. Oh, yes. Then, why did, is he worried about it being a bloodbath? I'm surely the chicken can look after itself. If it's, it's it weight for weight, it's the same as the fox. No, well, no, what are you talking about? Chicken, fox? I mean, you, you know, you put a chicken in a fox, you yeah, know, that's, arm to arm combat. Well, that's, that's a very good reason. The average fox is like two stone. Yeah. The average chicken is ten pounds. Yeah. Scale that up. Imagine what a two stone chicken looked like with a nasty beak and talons. I'm not saying it's not a big chicken. That is a given, all right? But you, you, you pit that chicken against a fox, maybe that chicken's been taking that fox on all over the place, you know. They could have been on trains together, do you know what I mean, in sharing hotel rooms. The chicken's knackered, all right? All I'm saying is, that guy, right, while he's rowing across that bag of seed, he cannot leave okay, that chicken. Okay, well, that okay, well, yeah, so, okay, fine, so he's there, chicken and fox, bag of seed, all the same size, all the same weight, That's they right. all weigh two stone. That's right. right. Okay. Why couldn't it, why couldn't he just like, okay, I'm, I'm assuming he's rowing, so he's got some give, yeah. right, with a, so why, why can't he have the bag of seed under his knees, right, and the chicken just sort of like, sort of flapping, wah, he can't, Gervais, he can't. Why not? The, you just can't. There's no, do you know what I mean? I don't, he doesn't, look, the point is, right, this guy has contacted us, yeah. he's desperate for our help. Oh, I, okay. Certainly, he thinks, you know what I mean? Oh, oh, right, 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 okay, shut up. Right. Right. Okay, forget it then, right. So he's got the fox chicken in there. So, okay then, he takes the fox over, no bloodbath, drops that off, wait, comes wait, back. Wait, wait a minute, what? Gervais embarrassment. What? Chicken? Yeah. Big bag of seed? Yeah. That chicken's gonna be that bag of seed? This, the, hold on, this bag of seed, presumably some sort of like hemp material, maybe sacking. That's woven. true. Yeah. Well, right. that chicken's huge. Got a huge, great, you know, claws, talons. Oh, so it, can, it, it would rip it apart, would it? It'd be terrible. So it could open the bag of seed. Yes, yes it could. Okay. But it couldn't contact. It couldn't compete with that fox. Let me just. Yeah. Uh, that's great. Okay, so he takes the chicken over. Yeah. Jumps off. No, he can leave the fox with a bag of seed. Can't that's he? not a problem because you know seed and fox. Yeah. Fox is not interested in seed, you Don't tell back. us comes back, yeah. brings the fox back, dumps the fox with the seed, yeah? Alright, that's fair enough. Yeah. Comes back. Wait a minute, wait, so what, hang on, maybe you're onto something here, wait. It goes over. He, he's, he's taken the, he's taken the seed. No, he, he can't take the seed. No, he oh no, he's one. taken the fox. He's taken the he's fox. He's left the chicken with the seed. No, hang on, what, but you said he's oh, taken, no, no. The, he's the, taken the, the fox. He's taken the fox no, over. No, he's taken the chicken over. He's taken the chicken the over. And the fox the seed. Yeah, which is fine. That's okay. Leaves the chicken there. Then he comes back. Alright. He takes what? He takes the... No. He takes... Then he comes back and stays where he was. He doesn't want the chicken. He keeps the fox and the seed and doesn't worry about the chicken. And, never, and doesn't, and doesn't go home. Don't go home. Just that's, don't go home. I've, I've solved it. So he can't leave the fox with the chicken. No. Nope. He can't leave the chicken. He can't leave the fox with the chicken because, um, despite the fact that this is like um, a man mountain Tyson of a piece of poultry, weighing in at approximately four stone eight, uh -huh. right? He can't leave that with a fox because yeah. maybe it's had one fight too many. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It should have retired a lot earlier, I think. I know. I agree. There was a day when it could take on a wolf. Yeah. 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 The point is, the situation is ah. that there's only there's only there's only room in that boat for one of those items. All right, you ain't gonna leave that fox with that chicken. No. Bath, all right. No. You can't leave the chicken with the seed. All right, because yeah. you know that chicken's gonna be that seed. 
Oh, oh well, he's, you know, you don't have to. Oh. It's just I don't even want to think about it, to be honest. All right, so that's the situation. I, so he asked you for your, for your help, and you, all you've done is sort of, you know, ask questions, on, be a minute. little bit contemptuous of the whole matter. Hold on, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, he takes the chicken over. Yeah. Dumps the chicken. Yeah. Comes back. Yeah. Takes the fox over. Right. Ties it up against a tree. Gervais, there might not be any trees. Where, where is this river? <laughs> there, there might not be trees. I don't know. It could be a built-up area, an industrial area. There are no trees. All right, you can't take that kind so of risk. Hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. So, okay, look, okay, wait, 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 I've got this right. So it's either a rural area where there would be a gatepost or a, um, a, a tree or something, yeah, yeah. Right, right, or it's a built-up area yeah. where presumably there will be a wall to pop that seed on when you take, and the chicken can lump tomorrow. I, oh, oh, sorry, of course, it's not only a boxing heavyweight champion chicken, it's a gymnast with a pole vault, isn't it? I'd Steve? say, Gervais, you, you're just being contemptuous of this poor man. Do you know what I mean? He's phoned us, right? Now, I don't well, know what his situation... As well, I don't know why he's got a fox, a chicken and a bag of seed. Maybe he's a farmer. A farmer? Oh, so he gets a fox, the mortal enemy of every farmer. Why would he get a fox? Why would he have a fox? It, it could be a pet, it could be... Why has he only got one chicken? Maybe... Well, it's a big chicken. Yeah, but if... Hold on. Wait a minute. I've got to do this. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, then. What? Because if you... No, wait, wait. If he hasn't got, like, a piece of string, or the the fox isn't on a lead, or the chicken hasn't got his beak taped up so it can't get to the seed, or, or the, the seed hasn't been put in, a, like, some sort of decent bag. Wait a minute. How is he keeping them apart at the moment? Let me just say this. I've spoken to the man on the phone. He's a desperate man, all right? Yeah. I've asked him this very same question. Right. All right. He's in, the, he's in the phone box, all right? He's got the chicken in there with him, and that chicken's massive. Do you know what I mean? Well, I mean, no, he can yeah. barely breathe. Feathers are about eight stone? Is that eight stone? It's chicken, isn't it? It's a big chicken. Right, it's the biggest they do. And outside, we've got the bag of seed, right, which is equally as big, and we've got the fox as well. Now, that fox doesn't like the, the seed, so we're, we're okay. But, the number of people walking by outside that phone box, trying to steal, to steal that seed, right. you know what I mean? It's just crazy. He's shouting out the box, he's on the phone to me. It's just, well, it's hellish for him. It, I wouldn't like to be in his shoes, I really wouldn't. Oh, it's nightmarish. It's nightmarish. As this chicken, right, this eight stone chicken, mm. right, does it put its head in the sand at all? What should we talk about? I can't, I just had a theory then. No. Okay. You, you know. And, I mean, to get to this situation, it's been a nightmare for him. He's been hiking. He's had the, the seed strapped to his back. Yeah. You know, he's got a chicken under one eye and a fox on the other. It's just, people aren't going to be... He's I, been, I he's still been can't... Hitch, he's been hitchhiking. There were people just driving by. They weren't going to pick I him up. I wouldn't stop him up. It must look ridiculous. But I, I still can't get over the fact why he's just got... If he's a farmer, a fox, a base. bag of seed, and a chicken. He's spoken to me, right? Yeah. You know, he doesn't, the point is, he's phoned us because he doesn't want us to ask those tricky questions, all right? Right. He wants this solved. There's no questions dodgy. asked. There's some dodgy Well, I don't know. It. I don't know. I don't think I want to be a part of it. Well, it makes you wonder. Hold on a minute. Mm. He's calling you, so presumably he's in central London. Well, he has to be in London, otherwise he wouldn't be able to hear the show, yeah. Right, okay. So he's in London. Mm, yeah. Uh, what river is he crossing, Steve? Well, <laughs> the Thames, presumably. Right. There are bridges. Gervais problem solved. 104.9. It's the Ricky Gervais Show. With Steve Merchant. Uh, we've got some great bands coming up. We've got Ash, R.E.M., we've got sure. Strokes, we've got Weezer, mm. the usual stuff. So listen, can I mention to you about the Aberdeen Angus Steakhouse? Go on. It's the one that you literally can see from this Well, building. don't mention it. What do you mean? There's loads of them. No, but if they think you go there, then, you know, people will go there and we could, we could charge them big advertising <laughs> for that. <laughs> We're losing you... revenue, hand over fist. No, we, um, I don't know if anyone's ever been in an Aberdeen Angus Steakhouse. For those that haven't really spotted them, they're those places that have always got the kind of red velvet seating and they just like, it's just sometimes I think they're just called like a steakhouse. Yeah. So, um, we went in there and we ordered the food and I gotta say this, the Aberdeen Angus Steakhouse, I'm embarrassed for the people that work there. You they can't say this. Uh, 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 no, I mean... it's not libelous. This is my opinion. It's like a restaurant review. <laughs> it is. I'm like Michael Winner. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna do that from now on as well. Write yeah. that one down. Restaurant review. Yeah, I can yeah. do that. I've but, got... um... Got my film review coming up. Don't oh, forget that. Oh, forward to that. Yeah. But, um... So well, we went in there and we ordered... I think my starter was prawns. Right in breadcrumbs. Oh, that's the, the that's and the. I ordered them, and it. That's you, the poshest thing you can do. It was about four quid four right, pounds, for prawns. Right, right I swear pounds. to God, Rick, there were okay. three prawns on a plate. You're joking. I'm not joking. Three prawns on a plate and a bit of grotty lettuce. Oh my god. It was god. shameful. And they brought us. We ordered sort of steak or something. It's the worst place. Everything you've got to pay for: napkins, <laughs> salt and pepper, everything. <laughs> Thing. It's ludicrous. It's it higher. <laughs> it literally was awful, right? And there was about ten of us. It cost about two hundred quid. You're joking. I don't know what the meat was. I don't know. Can I just say that is only twenty pounds each? I don't. That think is it was London. Meat. 
<laughs> I don't think it was. I think they literally crawled into the McDonald's next door. They were just stealing the meat waste from there. Right. It was unbelievable. That true. is libelous, but it's obviously uh, ironic. He's no, I wouldn't say that. I'm saying that yeah. this is my hypothesis, Rick. It yeah. was an absolute travesty. I don't know how they get away with it. I don't know who goes back there. I thought restaurants were building a reputation on people who return and eat again. And he, as you say, it's probably American for I like the way they look like a bingo hall because you're walking past. It's mm. huge with a big opening. You can see exactly who's eating there from the beginning to you know, yeah. from the. And it's always like a couple of parents and some kids who are obviously not enjoying themselves. Yeah, they're back kids about 14. I know, yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. And after the Aberdeen Angus Steakhouse, we were very annoyed. And as is obviously the tradition on a stag night, it was, well, we must have, we'd have to go to a strip club. Right. Strip. Now, I'm not a fan of that sort of thing. I have to say, unlikely, as that may seem. And I've never been to one before. And we tried to get in string fellows, but it's like 20 quid to get in. And it's like, yeah, we're not, we like to see naked ladies, not that much. <laughs> <laughs> so we went up to, I think it's got, is it Raymond's Review Bar? Do you know what I mean? It's sort of, I think it's Berwick Street or something. Right. And we go in there, and there's like ten of us, and we're all dressed up in there. We all sort of come on in, and we go, how much is it for the show? And he goes, uh, it's a tenner each for an hour-long show. Various ladies, uh, stripping. <laughs> um, but it has already started. And I went, oh, I'm not sure I want to come in now. I'm sure I want me to pick up the plot. <laughs> and he just looked at me like, yeah. You obviously want to see the naked ladies, just come in, pay your money, keep your mouth shut. There was no place for humour in there. <laughs> so, we go in, and it's not as seedy as you might think. It's actually, it's quite, quite nice in there. It's all, it's quite tasteful. It hasn't changed since about 1965, but it's okay. It's all, rather like the Aberdeen Angus Steakhouse. It's not yeah. dissimilar to one of those inside. So, uh, the show's already begun, and, uh, and these, these girls come on, and, uh, and there's, on the outside it says, all nude girls. And there was a bloke, I swear, at the back, as the girl came on, he went, get them off! <laughs> I, I think that's guaranteed, to be honest. Yeah. So, um, so what was great about it was there was a kind of an, a, a voice that announced each particular girl as she came on, and, and she, it was so, it was so awful and camp and just ludicrous. I actually dozed off at one point. It's so boring, because you, there's not much, many surprises. If you've seen one girl naked, they're all pretty much the same. There's no erotic tattoos or anything, or a slideshow hidden down there. There's nothing. <laughs> so, no puppetry. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just the same old thing. So, um, so there's this voice that comes on before each girl, and, the, and the, it introduces her name, and they've all got amazing names. There was, uh, Scorpio Rising, <laughs> <laughs> Vanity Fair, Passionara Fighter. <laughs> Wait, and Passionara Fighter was a girl who kind of came on straddled. They all had props, and she was straddling like a kind of anti-aircraft gun. Right. Which is possibly the least erotic thing you can have. And as she was taking her clothes off, she sort of flung her bra. See, that sounds a bit phallic to me. Well, I imagine it was phallic. I've studied Freud. And, uh, she threw her bra off, right, and it sort of, and it fell behind her, and it's a very small stage, and there's curtains at the back. And this is very hard to be erotic, when as you see a girl's brassiere fall behind, <laughs> you yes. just see a pole with a hook on it <laughs> appear from the curtains and drag it back in. <laughs> and you can just see through the crack of the curtains some guys that look like when Eric Borkham and Ernie Wise, you know, when they were trying to put that shoe back on, uh, Shirley Bassey in their classic <laughs> show where they're wearing those brown coats. It was like that two blokes in there. But I've never been in one before and I should never go in again. It's like, it's, I've done it now. I've done the Aberdeen Steakhouse, the paintballing and the strip club. That's it. Yeah. Three <laughs> things I had to do in life before I died. Uh, Swim with the dolphins. Take a shower is the next one. <laughs> and kiss a girl. 26. 26. Quite a fit bloke. Yeah, yeah. Good well, what? Are you good looking? Well, what is, I don't, I, I don't understand. What are you doing? Well, I mean, I just, I mean, I'm just a nice guy, you know? I've seen, like, those, those things where, uh, like, at Christmas, they go out and give, like, old people, like, hundred quid and that, and, you know, have people's dreams come true. So, well, um... You wouldn't just give away beer. Well, of course I would. You wouldn't just give away beer. Well, of course I would. Why wouldn't I? I would give you four cans of beer, okay, and five pounds. Just give me a dress, mate, what? I'll be, I'll be round. But you could be, you could be a nut, you could be anyone. That's the chance you've got to take for beer. Isn't that, wouldn't you kick yourself if you said, no, I don't want the beer, he might be a nutter, and then you found out you could have had some free beer and lived? Yeah, you don't take a chance for beer, do you? You just walk into a pub. Well, you, obviously, you don't, obviously you don't, know, it... you don't know me, because, uh, I, I mean, I, I take a chance for beer, yeah. Four cans of beer, mate. For, for what, I, I just give you my address, yeah. and you send me the beer? Yeah. No, no. But it just doesn't work like that. Have you got a girlfriend? It does not work like that. Have you got a girlfriend? What, what, is this what you do? Is, <laughs> is this how you do things? You sort of ring people up and just, like, get them into a thing about beer and then start getting your kicks or something? Is this what you do? Would you want me to get some kicks? Oh, I don't know. Is that, are you the sort of person that just rings people, like, phone, 
you know, and I'll pick okay, up the phone look, and think I'm doing look, someone a favour, and then there's all this... Right, in I don't good, know what you're doing. In good faith, right, I'll give you my address, right? My name's Ricky, okay, and, uh, I'm at 97 Charlotte Street. You what? come round, I'll give you the beer. What? Why? What for... Uh, I just don't understand. I don't, I don't understand what's... With them, but there's, it's never like this. There's always something behind it. There's always something behind it. <laughs> it's never just straight, straight yeah. down the line. You, you like a beer, yeah? Everyone like, I like it. Of course I like a beer. With Everyone your mates, presumably? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I There's reckon none. if it's you just... got to know me, we'd probably be mates. Yeah, and we'd have it's a beer it's together. It's yeah, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. I reckon if you got to know me, right, we'd be friends, yeah, and then we'd have a beer, wouldn't we? Have you got that few mates? That you need it just the, <laughs> I think I'm doing someone a favour. Just you know, might be something important. They've got, the, and then and then you're trying to like lure me in at being your mate with free beer. Well, come round, ninety seven okay. Charlotte Street. Come round. So you're saying a fiver and beers to yeah. come under your place? And I've got I've got no one here. I've, I've got no one here. Doing? Come alone. I'm not surprised you got no one there. Come alone, or or bring your girlfriend. <laughs> You're not. You're an absolute nut, mate. You're trying to you're trying to get people round your house with beer and and money. There's a word. There's like a word for that. Go on. What is the word? Um, but it's it's like sort of beer prostitution. It's like luring people in. It's unbelievable. Right. I'll meet you halfway. I but just. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I like a beer. I like a beer. Everyone likes a beer. Right. Uh, okay. I, oh, I know that. I don't like this. Okay, joking aside, what's your address, mate? I, I'm not, I'm not telling you. I'm not telling you this. Why, why would, that's, that's my place. That's where I live, yeah? Yeah. If people come, I invite them. Right. If people come, I invite them. Not people, like, not just because they're going to drop off some beer. Four, four cans of beer. It just doesn't happen. It, that, things like this just don't happen. Look, look, let's settle this now. You come round to my place, right. okay? Uh, bring um, you, no, wait, wait, wait. Bring your girlfriend so you feel safe. I've got no one here. I'm by myself. You come round. We have a laugh. We play a few games. It's not gonna happen. And uh, we we have a few drinks. We, we drink some of the beer, but some of the beer are pour over you and your girlfriend. Oh, that's it. That's it, mate. XFM's London with the Guardian Guide. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me, Carl Pilkington. Right. Right, Carl, you know the drill. If people want to go and see a band tonight, what band should they see? I wouldn't bother. There's, there's nothing going on. Right. Just stay in. Yeah. Brilliant bit of listening information. Uh, if you do want to go out, maybe a film, if you haven't seen it, go and see The Bourne Supremacy. It's absolutely brilliant. Everything Bond should be. Um, not a big fan of Bond, but this is, uh, this is superb. I can see you're veering towards staying in, Carl. What will you be watching on telly tonight? Well, Jonathan Ross is on tonight, BBC One. It's got Ian Brown and Noel Gallagher in. Gallagher, always value for money. Um, oh, something for you, your favourite on Channel 5, oh. cosmetic surgery. What's that about? Oh, maybe you won't like it. Designer vaginas. Insight into the issue of genital enhancement. I mean, genital en what? Who goes along to have that sorted out? What, what experience have they had of people telling them, oh, June, you've got to get that minge sorted out. It's rubbish. Surely you'd have worked on your face before you worry about what's going on down there. Well, they well, no, their face is probably all right. Well, what's up with the minge? I don't know. I haven't seen it. What, the minge? No, the programme. I haven't watched it tonight. Channel 5. 11 o'clock, binges. Alright, it's all on the guide on Saturday. Hi, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me, Carl Pilkington. Alright. What's going on, Carl? Well, if you want to see a bit of music tonight in town, uh, Gary Newman, he's playing the Shepherd's Bush Empire. You want to see that? Good. Not strictly an XFM sort of type band, but he's influenced a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, were you a Newmanoid? What? If you want to go to the theatre, um, One for Over the Cuckoo's Nest is in town, starring Christian Slater and my mate Mackenzie Crook. That's one of the Gilgood Theatre. Knowing you, Carl, you'll be, uh, staying in and watching telly tonight. Something good tonight, Channel 4, 805. Uh, Tony Robinson presents Worst Jobs in History, right? One of them being about a fella whose job it was to wipe the, mm, of Henry VIII. Right. How bad is that? I mean, is anyone that busy that he haven't got time? <laughs> I don't know. And how does it, does, does someone have to go for a job interview to get that job? <laughs> Hi, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me, Carl Pilkington. Alright. Sunday, what should we do today? What can we do today? It's in a film, isn't it? Is that what you do on Sundays? It's on Sunday. Go on then, what film? Supersize Me, that's out this weekend. It's about that bloke who ate nothing but fast food for a month, innit? And put on a lot of weight. There's a surprise. Yeah, 
that's the one. Uh, Screen International said Spurlock did to fast food what Michael Moore did to the NRA. Uh, Observer said funny, wise, shocking. Rick Waller said, are you going to leave that? Channel 5 tonight at 8, uh, truth about the killer squid. Right. Who's been lying about it? <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe it's the squid's got a dark secret and now he's coming out. Maybe he was born an octopus. Right. Yeah. It's all in the guide on Saturday. <laughs> XFM's London with the Guardian Guide. Complete seven day listings. Free with the Guardian on Saturday. I can't believe it. It started again. What? It's all kicked off again. What? Oh, look, do you read this on the paper today? No. Kevin Keegan. Yeah. Right? He's the new head of England. Yeah. Well, head apparently, of England, yeah. yeah. Apparently, right, in some previous involvement he had with football players, he sent them to see a spiritualist. Oh, God. And the FA are really concerned. They think it's no. going to be another hoddle to bark. All that yeah. same stuff, all that nonsense about reincarnation. That is nonsense. Right? It's absolute Well, no, don't, don't slag off reincarnation. Why? Oh, no, I was reincarnated. You mean you were being Yeah, yeah, I had a previous life. What? I uh, guess who I was in a previous life. Go on. I was that little short midget bloke from different strokes. It's not a midget. He's and not it, as good as. And he's still alive. Is he? Yeah. Actually, no, I made a mistake. I was, you remember that fellow in different strokes with the grey hair? He's still yeah. alive. I was, why are you obsessed with being someone who was that who was little, in... who was that little fellow in Fantasy Island? Oh, Chad Is he Dipland. dead? He's, he's dead. dead, he's dead, dead. he's dead. I'll, I'll be him. You weren't him. Actually, uh, joking aside, um, there was a story in the papers about this bloke, yeah? Um, he was in Sheffield. And, uh, he reckoned he was reincarnated. Right. And you know what he was in a previous life? A cow at the birth of Christ. What? And he wrote to the local paper saying, Dear local paper, I was a cow at the birth of Christ. Cheers. And this other bloke in Sheffield read it and wrote to him and went, I don't believe it, so was I. <laughs> <laughs> what, are the odds? what are the odds of that? Two <laughs> blokes, both from Sheffield, and both cows at the birth of Christ. I imagine they, uh, well, they actually met up. Right. Do you, what? You had a pint or whatever? Yeah, um, but they formed an organisation called Cattle for Christ. <laughs> True <laughs> story. No, no, they meet every year, just the two of them. <laughs> and they go, uh, uh, go on, remember me at the birth of Christ? Oh, yeah. Did you see, oh, I couldn't see a thing. Uh, <laughs> door shut. And, uh, I was, uh, I was chewing the cud. Uh, what happened to the donkey? Oh, he's a welder in, uh, Cheltenham. Chicken? Yeah. Place for West Ham. Do you know what happens if you sleep with animals? What have you heard? No, I'm not, I'm just telling you. According to the Bible, what happens if you sleep with animals? Right. I think it's Leviticus, it lists them, if you lay down with a stoat or the frog or the newt. They don't return your phone calls? No, it's worse than that. It's, this, you know, it's a terrible thing that happens to you. You're smitten in the knees. That's a problem. That's what. What exactly is that? Well, you just have. That's what God does to you. Yeah, just terrible, you terrible that, knees. You know that Thora heard? Yeah. You notice how she's always on the old stone and stair lift? Steve, she's never off her arse. <laughs> hey, she's she always gets knees, wheeled round, then she gets up on the lift, then she gets lowered in the bath. I've seen her gadgets in the Sundays. You, you, you know all about the slabs. Have you, has she ever lain with an animal? I think she's had a cock or two. I've heard that. XFM's London with the Guardian Guide. Hi, I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Carl Pilkington. All right. Carl, if they're going out tonight, what should they go and see? Well, if they want some music, Paul Weller plays a, uh, charity gig on the roof of Virgin Megastore on Oxford Street tonight from six. So they can go and see that. When they've had enough there, wander down the street a bit, right? Raise a light at HMV on Oxford Street from 8.30, so... Convenient. Good, good little night. But, you'll be staying in, that's for sure. What's on telly? What's caught your eye? Well, you know that I like to learn stuff and that. Yeah, you're nearly a scholar. Uh, Channel 4, 9 o'clock, King Arthur's Britain. Right. When you say you want to learn stuff, you're, you're going to be disappointed with this program. Uh, uh, it, the King Arthur is not the person you think he is. There's not really ladies in lakes handing out swords willy-nilly. And uh, as for the wizard, I... He wasn't a wizard, was he? <laughs> he wasn't a wizard, was he? A, a wonderful wizard he was. But he wasn't a wizard, no. Merlin. Actually, you know nothing. I thought you'd know about the Lady in the Lake and uh, you don't know anything about him. What do you think, what do you know about King Arthur? Uh, I know he's on Channel 4 tonight, 9 o'clock. XFM's London with The Guardian Guide. Complete seven day listings. Free with The Guardian on Saturday. Hey, doctor, yeah, just uh, come for me check up. Okay then, pop your pants off. What? Just pop your pants off. Oh, and well, uh, I forgot to take my pants off. Well, because I have to pop my finger up your um, what, what? to check your prostate gland. Don't worry about it. Well, I am worried about it because prostate cancer kills 10,000 men every year in Britain. Well, you can check that out if I get any symptoms. Well, there aren't always symptoms, and symptoms do vary from man to man, so the best way to check it out well, is I just pop my finger up I'm, there I'm really and have a feel. Just don't worry about it. <laughs> Is that it? Yeah. It's not that bad. No. I don't know why he was worried. You probably saved his life there. Does he have to be here? He's just a mate. Don't worry about him. He's just watching. Watching me at work. 
The Ricky Gervais Show. With me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merch. Hello. And Carl Filkington. And he, he had his arm taken off and stuck on his, his twin, so his twin's got like three arms. No, it's not true. What, what, what was so, you... okay, so yes, no, I would be upset if I, if I had to lose my knob, but you say you wouldn't have a problem with that. I'm You'd just saying out of you... everything, you know, unless you're wearing trunks and that, no one's gonna know. Get the brand new show now at audible.com. We're talking about clothing, and it, it reminded me of a conversation we had while I was in uh, Rio. Uh, this was in one of my moments when I wasn't dying or or being ill, and uh, my friend Chris made a good point because he um, he had no hat and it was very very hot over there, and there's lots of guys who go up and down the beaches selling stuff, um, and they were selling knocked off goods. You know how you can always get um, kind of fake versions of big designer labels, designer labels, yeah. And um, and we were saying that as far as I'm aware, I don't want to name any big names, but apparently a lot of the big uh, companies, they use cheap labour, don't they? Kind of, uh, I um, think a lot in, of them in Taiwan or in exactly, China. Exactly, yeah, where so some of the big, really big sort of designer labels um, use a bit of uh, labour that's sort of so cheap they sort of pay them a few pence a day. Well, quite, and his point was that he bought a knocked off one, right? How much are the people getting paid that are doing the knocked off stuff? How how shoddy is their work that they can't even get job doing the real things for a couple of pence a day? <laughs> yeah. The Ricky Gervais Show. Well, yeah. I know you're a fan of these philosophical paradoxes, and we've been sent one from Dowdy. He's got in touch, and he says, are you aware of the Barber Paradox? Now, you as a philosophy student re- may be aware of it. He says it's a logical impossibility, supposedly devi- devised oh. by Bertrand Russell. So, Carl, imagine, and of course this wouldn't impact on you, but imagine a town that has only one barber mm. who's a man. So there's a male barber in a town, he's the only person. If he shaves every man in the town, except for those that shave themselves, does he shave himself? Uh, what, his own head? No, Im- imagine he's not just doing hair, imagine he's, it's a normal shave, not that it would matter, you could make it his own head, you could make it his bikini line if you wanted, <laughs> that's not relevant, okay? If he shaves every man in the town, except for those that shave, shave themselves, himself. does he shave himself? It's yeah. a paradox. It's it, it's 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 sort of more linguistic. What they're saying is, if he shaves every man, right, except those that shave himself. If he does shave himself, okay, then he's not sa- shaving every man except those that shave himself because he's shaving himself. I reckon. And if he doesn't, he's not shaving every man except those that yeah. shave himself. That it's just it's the just chances. A, I, I guess. I mean, I haven't seen him, but I, I, I guess I'd say he's probably grown a beard. Because no, I always think that when when you're in that sort of work, no, 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 no. the last thing you want to do is sort of be doing that when you get home. No, no, no. Do you know the what I mean? Paradox, like hairdressers no. do listen, the same thing. They listen. have sort of rubbish hair rather than putting time and effort into their own. They're doing other people's. Right. Let let me explain. Right. The 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 point is this. Right. If he shaves every man yeah. in that town except those that shave himself themselves. Right. Okay. Mm. Okay. Does he shave himself? The point being that if he shaves himself then he's not shaving every man except those that shave himself, because he shaved himself. If he doesn't shave himself, then he's not shaving every man in the yeah. town. That he's probably, he's probably not bothering, like I say, he's probably just, <coughs> you know, leave it. Leave it. <laughs> why, you know, you know this is not, it's not a real man in a real town. <coughs> you are aware of that, right? I, I just think, if everyone's having a shave, open another barber's. <laughs> this, this <business. laughs> The Ricky Gervais Show. I believe this, though. I believe someone he went to school with now lives in a hole. Get the brand new show now at audible.com. <laughs> You're an idiot. Sinks are the best. Oh, no. sinks. It's just not discussing. Everyone does it. All blokes do it. Anyone who's shared in a hall of residence or, you know, if there's a sink, you go in it. In fact, if there's a sink next to a urinal, Go in the sink. Oh, in the sink. Always the sink. Of course it is. It's the, it's the, everyone does it. Uh, women can't do that. Well, anyway, I'll, I'll just well, maybe they can. I don't know. If, if you're a woman and you've done it in the sink, well, no, I don't want to know. Uh, the first, Let's not go there. The first flat um, I had with my girlfriend, uh, many years ago, early to mid-80s, about 84, 85, anyway, it was a grotty little, tiny little bed sit. I was on the dole. Jane was known a, a lot, anyway. And um, uh, it was tiny. The kitchen was the bedroom. <laughs> it was quite a little entrance hall, and the kitchen was the bedroom. The bed was down one side, and then down the other side, about like a foot away, there's the, um, the fridge, the cooker, and the sink. I could put my hand out if I was lying in bed and touch the fridge. I could stick my leg out and touch the sink, and I could stick my, um, I could touch the cooker. Well, yeah. Small flat. Well, of course, that's it would have. Tiny, yeah, about a foot away. Anyway, so, and it was like one of those, um, upstairs was like uh, a couple of girls, um, 
and the toilet was a community toilet on the landing. Now, I woke up, I've had a few, there's no way I'm going to put trousers on, go down there, chance of meeting some hair or a no, the sink. Right? Of course the sink. And it was quite high, so I remember like, sitting on tiptoes, and I, I was like, and then one night, Jay must have woke up, and I just heard her go, oh, at least take the dishes out. <laughs> <laughs> You're a grotty man. You're a horrible man. Why? You slept in a kitchen for many years. Yeah. You're a horrible and, and man. But what she didn't realise was, if, if there was dishes there, it was full of dishes, if you got your hand under the, if the plate was at the bottom, you could lift up that plate yes. and just go straight down there. <laughs> right. Then she said, oh, at least run the uh, water afterwards. Yes. Fussy. Oh, there we go, mate. I've got a new feature for the Mary Ann Hobbs show. It's a last ditch attempt to try and save it. Well, she needs something. She well, says, woman, it's, go on. A, it's a feature. Go on. It involves the whole public. I can get involved. I want to write in, phone in, email, fax, okay? It's called the Hotel of Hate. A hotel of hate? It's a conceptual hotel where you put in all your most hated people and things. Where is it? Well, it's just conceptual, isn't it? It's like right, an Can we make it Dorset or. Fine, the Dorset, say Dorset. Fine, yeah. Mm. So, for example... Western, like the, no, Western Super Mayor, because that is oh, a right, shit it's, it's not important. So, imagine there's ten rooms. So, for example, in room one, I put the entire cast of Last of Summer Wine. All three of them sharing a bed? Yeah, right, bunks. In room two, I put Lenny Henry. Got nothing against the guy, he's probably a lovely fella. He's never made me laugh. Do you know what I mean? Just see oh, the I point see, now. I get it how it works. So, yeah. who would you put in? I'd probably put in famine and disease. Really? No, nah, nooky bear. Who else would you put in? Robbie Williams, coming up for the two worst lyrics of all time. I had, that's a good line, take it to the bridge, very postmodern. And the other one, Ricky Lake, tell me things I don't need to know. So he's in now. Do you know what I put in? Go on. World oppression. Really? <laughs> no, no, Mr. Blobby. I tell you what I put in. Those people whose job it is to replace toilet paper in toilet cubicles. You go in there, there's none left. It's like, they're probably just like junkies, mac heads. Uh, they, you know. Do you know what I put in? This? That program on room 101. Oh, oh. well, it's, it's, it's a good idea. Like, like putting, putting stuff in a, in a room that you well, hate. hate, yeah. Yeah, but a hotel's so much bigger. Well, exactly. So, uh, send in your ideas, and at the end of the year, we'll have the top ten most hated things in Britain for oh. radio and listeners. So, send them into Mary Ann Hobbs, Radio 1, London, W1N, 4, 4DJ. XFM's Ricky Gervais talks to Bono. <laughs> I'm Ricky Gervais and I'm talking to Bono, off you too. Hello there, thanks for inviting me. All right, Bono, sorry, I don't know your surname. I haven't got one. Do you like XFM? I bloody love it. Is it because we play R.E.M., Eminem, Radiohead and Dr. Dre? It is, and also, of course, you play some of my songs, you two lead singer of. I've heard in the past on the station you've played Pride in the Name of Love. Pride in the Name of Love, before, before you break my heart. I love that one. And I imagine Christmas time you'll probably be playing, um, All Is Quiet on New Year's Day. Oh, of course it is, all the shops are shut, there's no buses running. That's what I wrote it about, Rick. Thanks very much. Oh, no, I don't know your surname. I haven't got one. Ricky Gervais, this Saturday from one. Yeah, with Steve Merchant. Just, you know, say that. <laughs> XFM's London, with the Guardian Guide. Hi, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me, Carl Pilkington. All right. All right, yeah, what are you doing? Just looking what's going on tonight. Right, what is going on tonight? Well, there's a charity gig going on. It's called Make Trade Fair Live, right? Razor Lights playing live. And, uh, it was like a big secret and that, but everyone knows now, R.E.M. are playing there. And that song that the, uh... On the Smith Apollo. Got another secret about that. Go on. I'm on. Yeah? Yeah, I'm on the bill. Doing a bit. Doing my bit. <sighs> so, uh, the true philanthropist that I am, but you'll be staying in, as usual, Carl. What's on telly? BBC Two, nine o'clock. It's called Wanting a Deaf Baby. Right. Who'd want that? Well, what's it about? It's part of a new series of, like, unusual family stories and that. Maybe I can get me Auntie Nora on that. Which one was she? She's the one who broke wind for five minutes. You can't fart for five minutes. Yes, she did. She was on a lot of tablets and that. Well, she, you can't. She, she was... She, I don't know. She's talking out of her ass. Anyway, it's all in the guide on Saturday. Not the stuff about Auntie Nora, but the other stuff. <laughs> XFM's London with the Guardian Guide. Complete seven-day listings. Free with the Guardian on Saturday. 
no. little red uh, fez. Oh, I know what I want. Never, no. Bear what, what kind of a, what is that? What kind of a hat is that? It's a frisbee. It's bear eggs. It hasn't it's, even got a... It's, it's, the, it's the when you, the, some bloke, he does philosophy for a week, or he's sort of doing French combined with philosophy, and he's, he comes in to the student union with a bear eye on and a go in, the first thing you do is take it off and throw it out the window. Of course you do. Because you're with, with, with the cool people, and he's going, oh, that's really funny, isn't it? Yeah. So mature. Yeah. And you go, no, it's not mature, but it's funny. We're just having a laugh. Anyone you see wearing a beret in a student union or in a pub, just pop it off, frisbee it across the... I'll tell you, you will be the most popular bloke in Use that pub. Use him like, he's, he's sort of piggy in the middle, you're just throwing it, you know, with yeah. different people, it kind of bombs the pub. People, yeah. they, they leave the quiz machine, yeah. they come over and they're joining in and you're just throwing, he's screaming, please give me my beret back. In fact, I reckon if you threw it and it hit the hardest bloke in the pub's pint over, he'd look over, and they go, who did that? And I go, I did, but he was wearing it. And I go, fair enough, mate. And he, do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. He goes straight to the guy that was wearing the beret. <laughs> what, what, yeah. kind of what kind of a hat is that? It's French. I mean, there's the point. That's the answer. Oh, I, I, I don't want to get you on French, people. No, I know, but all um, I would say to you is he's got no brim. The honey badger has skin which is so thick it can withstand bee stings, porcupine quills, and snake bites. Right. That's a skill. Oh, but not as good as this one. Hold on. In addition to being tough, the badger's skin is also very loose. So if it is caught by the back of the neck, ah, clapping, right, so you go for it, ah, oh, yeah, badger, back of the neck, what can it do? Nothing. Can't it? Wait a minute. It is able to twist round inside its own skin and bite whatever is holding it. What? So it swivels what? round, so, and it, it suddenly this skinned head comes out of its ass, bites your leg. Rubbish. Well, of course it's rubbish. Who put that? I mean, absolute. What rubbish. does that mean? Its skin is so loose, it is able to twist round inside its own skin and bite whatever is holding it. Badgers are just sort of slopping around. What is that? A nightmare? Some sort of um, Wesley Craven nightmare? So you've got a little badger, furry little badger, right? You think you've got it? You go, come on, it's for your own good. You know, you might be like Tony Soper or David Attenborough, just like for your own good. We're going to go and cut your nails. Pop a little thing over so we can follow you, eating. But yeah. he turns around, suddenly it's a bag of skin. This head comes out of his arm, and it rips your face off. It's like alien. I know. It can't be true. It's like alien. It can't be true. Those are it. Perhaps they're aliens. Now, well, somebody's on the line to speak to us. It's this guy, Ricky Gervis. Uh, he's already been on the radio this morning on Jonathan Ross. You're he's so angry, aren't you? What? Just because he won the BAFTA and you didn't. I, angry. I'm angry for you. I know. You I'm dummy. Angry for me. I'm angry for me. Let's get this guy on. Get this guy on the air. Hello, Hello Ricky. It's not about awards. <laughs> <laughs> you always say that. People always um, say that that win a, awards. In a, in a, I've always thought of, like, particularly Nick, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, as a winner. Shut up! Carl. Carl I've told Carl we're all winners. <laughs> Before, no. it's not. It's the turning up. It's just the being there that that counts. That it's the it's the hanging around and then not winning. Yeah, that's fun. I just got <laughs> I got munted on red wine and then punched down in Titchmarsh. It was a terrible night. I bought a ten minute suit for the bastards, didn't I? Yeah, it dissolved. Bought a suit, three hundred quid. <laughs> it was only on for ten minutes. <laughs> you look was... great. You, you look. You both look great at the uh, at the bastards. Thanks, buddy. And you. The Oscars next, isn't it? It's the Oscars next. Yeah, yeah. Because we're making a film. Touch yeah, wood. What are you doing? I'm not, but the Oscars <laughs> did give me a call and, and said, we'll just put anything in. No, Oscar gave you a call. Yeah. Edgar yeah. Wright's brother. I, I actually um, I'm called into the uh, brisket competition. How do I win a brisket? You're going to have to stay on the line and find out about that, <laughs> RG. <laughs> it, is, it, is it a real brisket? It's not just some sort of reconstituted sort of spam fritter. No, it's no not. Way. Fo it's not faux brisket. It's okay. We don't right. deal in faux meats here. Didn't okay. we? Well, we came up with an idea not, uh, for on. a faux meat. Uh, yes, we did. Son of spam. No, there was one called Facon. Facon, which is Facon, like fake bacon. Good. And, That's um, very good. what was the other one? Bork. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, it's like an, uh, an amino in ras uh, in ras enriched, sliceable meat product. Lump. It's like a protein gel that you slice. It's called Bork. Last time I met, um, your friend Nick Frost, we were yeah. in a doctor's waiting room. I was going for a nasty chaffing at the back of the legs. Yeah. And he was there with testicular mice. <laughs> Running about inside the. <laughs> The yeah. sack, as the French say. Yeah, and His uh, bag. Uh, uh, they actually the doctors came in. They said, "I'm not, I'm not really a vet." And uh, they got all, they got some vets in the people and some students. There was loads of students just watching it, and it was the weirdest I've ever seen. Do you know how they got them out in the end? Go on. Cheese strings. Yeah, we'll talk to Carl about that because <laughs> I, I told Carl, but my friend Robin Ince, when he had worms, the doctor told his mother to hold little bits of cheese and bacon near his anus yep. to bring the worms out. Carl believed it. 
And the reason he believed it, <laughs> he reckons there's a worm in South America yeah. that it gets into your skin somehow, I don't know, via osmosis or something. Mm -hmm. Don't say osmosis. Out, they wrap bacon round your head. It, and I said, what do you mean? He went, it's the thinnest part of your body. I went, how can the head, <laughs> how can the brain case be the thinnest part of your body? He went, well, it is, it is. And they come up there. I go, so the worm is in the stomach or the foot and it, and it smells the bacon. And he went, <laughs> everyone likes the smell of bacon. It's a smelly meat. Yeah. I, I'm just going to refer to my head as a brain case from now on, because I think that's really nice. Yeah, it was a bit weird, the, the top of the head is as thin as Bako foil. True. <laughs> I've heard, though, that's a story. It was, uh, when I was at school in math, Susan Hall told me that there was a man who had a tape well, room. Well, she's a liar, isn't Listen, anyway. don't knock Sue. And she had, he put a pie in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and a snake fell out of his And opened his mouth and a snake oh. fell out of his gob. Oh, oh but, no. And then ate the pie. And then went back in, and then then and then he woke up, and a load of spiders came out of his face, and they were banging his head on the roof of the car. Yeah. That is, <laughs> no, that is actually true, right? And um, if the phone didn't ring at four, <laughs> then he's lost his money. And as he jumped off the roof, as he went past the window, his phone was ringing. <laughs> his mum came in, and he'd been wanking into. <laughs> <laughs> And it was a giant water rat. Look, that I, is that's, that is all true. I'm I'm a fan of these urban myths. Yeah, and. Um, this is something that was in the paper. I don't know if it's an urban myth oh, or a true one. No, Go on, right. say it. Right. This well, isn't... I'm there now. No. Come on, Carl. Don't <laughs> let me down. You're allowed to talk. I'm here. Go on, Carl. Right. Do it. Do your stuff. No, Tell this, this, this one. Right. This woman, <laughs> this woman, um, she wanted to get a nice tan before she went on holiday. Yeah. yeah. Did you do right. it? Go on. Yeah. So she, uh... She put, she, there was a lobster. No, right. <laughs> so she went to, um, like a suntan shop. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And said, uh, Can I, can, please? I, I wanna, on. I wanna, like, get brown for me holiday. Yeah. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah. Um, Keep talking. So, so the woman said, well, yeah, that's all right. Finish up. Yeah. But you can only do 30 minutes when you're going on holiday. And she said, well, I'm going tomorrow, I wanna get a nice tan. So she said, sure. now the rule is, you can only do 30 minutes. This so isn't the one where they put her on a breville toaster. No. <laughs> right? So that's she, a good one. So she has a 30 minutes in that one. Go on. Yeah. Then she goes to, like, Tans or whatever. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Next, yeah. Next That's next another one. one. And Down she in goes, the tan district. She goes there and has 30 minutes. Goes to the next one, 30 minutes. Yeah. Anyway, so she's on holiday. Yeah. Right? And, uh, she's got a nice tan. Uh-huh. But she thinks, God, I'm starting to stink a bit. Yeah. Right? So she gets back off holiday and she goes to the doctors and says, look, you know, uh, went on holiday, body's starting Sorry, to smell. You, you don't go to the doctor because you stink. No, you but do. she couldn't work it out. She, she, like, had a bath and stuff. And, right. it, and she still stunk. And yeah. She <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 he says, uh, well, tell me what you've been doing, what's, what's This is gone? an urban novel. What's, what's... <laughs> Gervais so loved it. He loved that there one. Go. Look, uh, on it, Simon, look, two hours is a lot to fill with dribble. <laughs> Let Carl talk as much as you want, and then play Radiohead, and I'll tell you what, it flies by. <laughs> so anyway, go on, then, so the doctor says, well, tell me what you've been up to, and she said, well, what I did was, before I went on holiday, I did, like, about nine hours on some beds. Yeah. Right. And he said, oh, God. Um... <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. Do that bit again. <laughs> <laughs> he said, oh, God. Yeah. So, so anyway, it only turned out that the smell was her insides rotting because what? she... What? Carl, you're a maniac! Carl, you're a maniac! Lock yourself up. Turn yourself in. We're putting him away. You know when a doctor turns to you and says, oh, God, it's bad. <laughs> Oh, you know, God. it was their insides rotting. But what, because they cooked? I like the they fact cooked. that the doctor examined her, said, thought her insides are rotting, and said, what have you been doing? <laughs> like a little cryptic, like a teacher go, I mean, it's, you're a Carl. Uh, oh, that's amazing. That was good, though, come on. Her insides rotting. Her insides are rotting. Have you told her about your, um, auntie? What's your auntie's name who farted for five minutes and went to the doctor? <laughs> 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 you're allowed that? to tell that one. You're allowed to tell that one. Well, I'd better go now, hadn't I? Because right. it's, 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 it's... Did you meet, just one more thing, did you meet Barry? Yeah. How is he? Yeah, he's very, he's very nice. Did he say, hello, Rick? He went, hello, he said, hello, Ricky. I love the office. I went, oh, I don't go on about it, for Christ's sake, David. <laughs> No. Get lost. I could listen or not listen to Ricky Gervais's voice all now. day long. Shut up. Uh, bye, mate. Play me record. Up yours. Here's Coldplay. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. Okay, monkey related news from Carl Pilkington. Right, uh, do you know the monkey that went into space? Yeah. Yep. It happened in 1958. Right. Now you know that. Yeah. Yes. What did he do next? What, what, what did the monkey do next? Yeah. One appearance on, uh, Celebrity Squares and it was, like, forgotten. Right. Uh, yeah, cut a no novelty record. Yeah. Well, just like Rick Waller. I'll tell you what happened. He, uh, <sighs> he got back. 
No, <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> Heroes welcome. NASA sort of said, you know, you did a good job. <laughs> And that's where a lot of people think, think, you know, it all ended. Sure. Yeah. But NASA were like, well, hang on a minute. We spent he's a trained. lot of time, we've trained him up and stuff. So he's like, you know, he's saying, sure, sure, you know, I've learned a lot, I've still got it all, I've kept it all, I know what to do. So they said, right, we'll use you. So he turned into like a bit of a trainer at NASA. <laughs> we wanted to send you out on the top of an organ. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Put on this little bellhop outfit. <laughs> Could you smoke fags? Yeah. I'll have a go. So he was, they were getting in new monkeys. You know, the, the main man at NASA was saying, can you teach these the same? He's going, of course I can. Do you know what I mean? I remember it all, I know what's going on, I'll tell him what buttons to press, what to do in emergencies, that sort of thing. Um, it was technically sort of employed by the army. Right, can, can, I just, can I just fit in here? I, I, I don't know the story, Carl, and I, I might embarrass myself here, you've got an army of people out there that have probably sent me uh, an equally, um, deranged email from a different website, but I'm pretty sure when they sent the monkey into space, it was to monitor his physiology. He didn't, he <laughs> didn't press any buttons or <laughs> learn to dock or take off. <laughs> it's just, it was just the effects of weightlessness and space on, um, basically a primate. I'm pretty sure he was tied in with electrodes to mm -hmm. his head. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Oh, I people, could but on. even if that were the case, and he had learned to press one or two very basic buttons. Definitely not. Definitely but not. Even if it were the no, case, I'm pretty not. certain they wouldn't have brought him back to train up Neil Armstrong. <laughs> <laughs> right, definitely. Go on, but go him on. Going, Neil, what are you going to say when you come out there? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Well, I was thinking of just saying, I know I'm on the moon. I always made a cheese. Don't say that. <laughs> what about, that. I've noticed that you've got little legs, yeah. right? But mankind stepped forward. Well, how can I put that? I was just going to say, I know I'm on the moon. It's great to be no, here. I wish you no, were here. I've got things over there. Yeah, go on. Anyway, basically he got back, they sorted him out with a nice pension, he mm -hmm. was happy. Um, because of, like, the rank that he got, he, he, he was like, you know, he had loads of, uh, medals and stuff, he said, <laughs> right, we'll make him a colonel. He got that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. like I say, he got a pension, um, that was the end, he died in 1969, he was ba uh, buried with his wife. He passed away. <laughs> <It's fine. laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure it just goes onto a different website. <laughs> yeah. About something completely different. And yeah, you're like, talking about Buzz Aldrin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. His page is missing. Oh, dear. So. Well, that, w Carl, I'm, like, if someone could call in, did they train Lyca the dog to sort of like, you know, dock and re-entry? He never made it back, did he, Lyca? Well, they didn't bother. They didn't, bother. Out, they didn't even bother. They, didn't bother bring him they back. just sent him up there and uh, they didn't have technology to bring him back and they just went, yeah, that's that. That's brilliant. Well, I can do that. Yeah. Uh, uh, amazing. Really? Yeah. What do you think of that, Carl? Rubbish, isn't it? Sort of brought it down a bit. <laughs> <laughs> but the little monkey made a colonel. Hero. Big hero. What was he in? What craft was he in? Uh, Sputnik. Just hang on a minute. It was in, um, Jupiter AM. Yeah. Let me see that piece of paper. Yeah, I, I, I can guarantee there's nothing there about his, his training other than let's hope he's not sick on the control panel when we shoot him up at <laughs> 400 Gs. <laughs> oh dear. What's, what's I love the fact that you think that this monkey was a high- <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> do you, do you, when, when you think of these things that are listed in the monkey's face, do you think of the planet of the apes? Like they're sort of talking, sort of chimps and gorillas, and they're they're in tunics on the horseback <laughs> with snub-nosed rifles. <laughs> what do you think of? Just a little monkey getting on with it. <laughs> <laughs> he knows his job. He knows what he's got to do. He gets on with it. <laughs> Look, he's pressed the button. What's him pressed the button? This takes me back. Do you remember 1965? I think it was. We're going to use him to train other DJs. <laughs> <laughs> That's it then. Goodbye. Thanks. Well, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> XFM's London with the Guardian Guide. Hi, I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Carl Pilkington. All right. All right. All right. What's going on tonight, Carl? Well, if you got a bit of live music, PJ Harvey's at the Carl and Apollo Armour Smith tonight, so that's all right. Ross Noble still on at the Apollo Theatre. He's yeah. great. He makes it all up as he goes along, not like us. Brilliantly scripted stuff. Yeah. Anyway, over on the National Geographic Channel, eight o'clock. Brilliant program. It's called cleverest ape in the world. Yeah. Yeah? And what it's about is this, this ape, right, that's working with a scientist, and, uh, they do some maths tests together and that, and the ape manages to sort of outdo the, 
The scientist. Don't talk rubbish. That's, it's, that's what's happening well, it tonight. Uh, uh, it can't outdo a scientist on a maths test, can it? Well, it, it does. It could outdo it on swinging, but... Did you see that programme about swinging? What? It was on, it was on last week, this. All these old people, right, swapping partners and that. Except this old bloke, I don't know what he was doing there, he was about 79, 80, right? No one wanted to swing with him. Stood up the back watching. The only thing swinging around him with his old saggy bollocks. Yep. And why are we talking about a programme that was on a week ago? Well, if you want to know what's on tonight, look in the guide. <laughs> Defends London with the Guardian Guide. Complete seven day listings. Free with the Guardian on Saturday. What about this, Carl? Talking about world records last week. This is more your level. The world record for passing wind is 3,000 times in a row on Japanese television. Now, I'm assuming that was someone going for the record as opposed to a newsreader. That would have been an amazing news <laughs> clip. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's, it's <laughs> good. Uh, yeah, and more news. Um, so, what do you think of that? 3,000 times in a row. How, how long did that come for? I don't know. But it was 3,000 times in a row. Now, that is better than your Auntie Nora, because I remember you telling us a story about your Auntie Nora that had a little bit of a wind problem, but there's one continuous... Yeah, hers was, hers was about five minutes, wasn't it? Now that's pretty amazing. Yeah, but I don't think she knew she was about to do it and it wasn't being televised. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, didn't, but didn't she call your mum halfway through saying yeah, something? Yeah, she sort of called up and said, oh, I'm a bit worried. Why? Like, what's up? And she said, oh, I'm, I'm just seeping out of me, eh? It was just like gas coming out. It was out more like a leak then, was it? Yeah, I mean, they, they didn't talk about that. She said, oh, I'm sure it'll be all right. And they carried on chatting and then she went like, hang on a minute. It stopped. And, and that, I think that was the last time it went on for that amount of time. She said, oh, if it happens again, go to the doctor and they carry on chatting. Why does it happen at all? Because um, what it was, she, she, she's one of them like, old people who just have loads of tablets. And they said um, some of the tablets she was on, that was one of the side effects. Sure. Uh, Brussels sprout tablets. Well, it, it is odd because I, I just always thought, what was the illness that that's a better side effect? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If she's happy, that happening for five minutes at a time, and it can happen at any point. Yeah, you know, she could be out and about. She only took the tablets for bad breath. What you know? What what? Why would you put yourself through that? But three did it ever happen to her again? I mean, because obviously being at home, that's ideal. But if she'd been at something more important, you know, a, some kind of public function, a funeral. But I think of her at home for five minutes, right, with her dress all bellowed out, just vacuuming like a little hovercraft. Yeah, slightly off the floor. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wonder if we can make it upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> so, real monkey news. Should we kick off with real monkey news? If you want. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a real fact, a fascinating fact about a, a monkey. And by monkey, I mean chimpanzee, which is not a monkey. Question. Let's get that straight. In your monkey news, does the monkey operate any kind of machinery? Absolutely does not. Does it drive any kind of vehicle? No. Does it save anyone from any kind of building? This is scientific fact, okay? Mostly, you mean chimpanzee when you say monkey. A chimpanzee is a great ape. Apes include chimpanzees, gorillas, and it, it, there's something here that's, that puts it in common with humans. In fact, I think this is the only other animal that can do this. Okay, ready for it, Carl? Yeah. Oh, chimpanzee, that real monkey news. This isn't made up. Yeah. Okay, right. Are you ready for this, Carl? Yeah, go on. A chimpanzee can recognise itself in a mirror. Is, is that meant to be good? <sighs> That's mental. She's from Mary Chain, the black on XFM 104.9. It's ten past four after the break, Oasis. Oasis, married with children. Yeah. XFM 104.9. It's course. the Ricky Gervais show. Who am I, Steve? Gervais, you are Gervais. Yeah. You are Ricky Gervais. Lucky you, yes, it's me, Ricky Gervais. <laughs> Gervais, weren't you out signing autographs in the week? Yeah. Is this true? Yeah. Is this true what I've heard? A couple, yeah. What's the story? Tell me. Well, we did this road show from uh, the Doc Martin store. Road show? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was it that impressive? Yeah. Me, Crowley and Pitts with like a CD player. Yeah. And some boots surrounding <laughs> us. That no, was good fun. And uh, you played some records. Yeah. And people were coming up, weren't they, and asking, yeah. for, your, asking for your autograph. Yeah. Incredible. Well, you know, uh, I'm a bit of a celebrity, Steve, I'll be honest. <laughs> if you were really rich, yeah. uh, what would you spend your money on? You know what I spend my money on. Yeah? Just more food and drink than I do now. Yeah. Maybe a few extra holidays. How many people How many people ask for autographs? Oh, I don't know. 30, 20, 40? Yeah. 
So what about the... Crowley? Did, did anyone ask uh, Crowley for an autograph? No, they kept ask, asking him if they got this in a size 7. <laughs> He's getting really honest. <laughs> he does dude. look a bit like a sort of spotty shop assistant. <laughs> yeah, find, yeah, you know. yeah. Um, I'll just go and check with um, <laughs> Maureen. Um, <laughs> meantime, here's Idlewild. <laughs> I've got a joke. Have you? Yeah. Brilliant. We've, we're allowed to tell one joke, aren't we, a one show? One joke, because I don't want it to sound like, no, you know, no, Steve Pink or... No, you know, nothing wrong with Steve Pink. I love Pink. Pink's good. I'm a big fan of Pink. That is great. Don't get me started on Pink. No, if I start singing the places of Pink, we'll, we'll be, be here all, all night. night. I know. But the point is, you know, you've got <laughs> right. a gag. Let's hear it. A little boy, yeah, he's only five years old. He's lost in a busy high street and he's crying his eyes out. Well, he would. He's lost his mummy. Mm. He's going, I lost my phone. A policeman comes up and uh, he goes, All right, what's the matter? He goes, I've lost my mummy. The policeman says, All right, don't worry, we'll find her. What's she like? The little kid said, Cock and bingo mainly. Instant Repeater 99, soundtrack of our lives on XFM 104.9. Gervais, can I just give the listeners one very good reason why they should stay tuned? There are prizes up for grabs very soon. Another of your fantastic movie quizzes Excellent. is on the way, Gervais. Uh, give me one reason why I should stay, though. <laughs> uh, After the break, blur. <laughs> the stunning new single from Brain Mangle, Blood, Sweat and Cum. <laughs> Blood, Sweat and Cum by Brain Mangle. Out now. The new single from Velvet Nazi 666 UK is f like a rhino. The animals went two by two. I f you like we're in the... What kind of f like a rhino? Like a Rhino from Velvet Nazi 666 UK. The UK is important. Blur and Tracy Jackson, XFM 104.9. I really am a very good DJ. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe. Uh, 01715802000. Do you agree with that statement? Is Ricky Gervais a very good DJ? Gervais looking at the, the cover of the News of the World today. Yeah. I'm shocked. I mean, we all know. The, I mean, how are you coping? How are you um, getting through the days? I'm, I'm in shock. I'm, I'm sort of pretending it hasn't happened. I'm playing a lot of the old records. I know. I know exactly that. Yeah. Uh, the Spice Girls are on the brink of splitting up. Yeah. Jerry Halliwell uh, has left the band. Uh, Rumour has it. But even more worryingly, all right, uh, apparently the reason Jerry left was that she was bullied out of the group by Scary Spice. Apparently, Scary Spice, Mel B, is absolutely vicious. Lots of, you know, lots of remarks about Jerry. Oh, you know, always sniping and going at her. Well, and, this uh, must Jerry's be left. particularly close to your heart, because you were bullied at school by a pop star, weren't you? I was indeed. Who was that? Lionel Richie. Really? Yeah. It was a nightmare. The thing was, uh, Lionel had just left the Commodores. Yeah. And he had a lot of pent-up nervous energy. Do you know what I mean? Which he used to take out on me. Take out on you, me in because you thing. looked gimp. Yeah, it was just annoying. What it year was, was this? That was, was pool 82. Well, it must have, must have worked, because he was about to have, like, um, big hit with dancing on the ceiling. True enough. He would all, hold on, he'd have been flying high before that with yeah. Hello. Well, exactly that. You see, the thing was, um, you know, he'd had a string of top ten hits. Yeah. I was about 14. Yeah. I didn't have the chart credibility no. with which to fight back. To fight back. Do you know what I mean? I mean, often he would just be throwing my satchel in the tree, you know, uh, and singing, Hello, is it me? me you're looking looking for what, you what chance did you have against that? I, how could I cope with that? You know, he's got oh. a great singing voice. I haven't got it's, sold. You know, that is terrible. That is terrible. Um, but you had a similar problem, didn't you? Were you yeah. not bullied by a band? I was before I'm older than you. I mean, this was about 20 years ago when I was a kid at school. Really? And uh, I was bullied by a whole band. You were bullied by a whole band? Yeah. Who? Hanson. Well, they're bastards. <laughs> With the news that Jerry Halliwell has left the Spice Girls, XFM has set up a helpline for distressed fans. If you need a shoulder to cry on, call Ricky Gervais on 0171 580 2000. Hello. <laughs> I know, Andy, Andy, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, okay, I know, yeah, it's, uh, it's terrible, but, but listen, I want you to think of all the, um, the good, good times, um, she's given people, um, the records she was on still exist, um, they'll always be there, um, I can't believe it's going to be the end of her career, she's a very, very talented young lady, and of course, there's always the, uh, you know, the photos of her. This photo was on the internet. I'm not talking publicity, chance. Fucking filth. Yes. I mean, there's one, right? It's. Ooh, I don't know how they got away with it. She's got these. Hello? Hello? 
Well, anyway, she's got these two. The XFM Ginger Helpline on 0171 580 2000. Ricky Gervais, XFM. I'm not going to lie to you. That was House of Pain and Jump Around. Don't I've lie got, to me. No. Don't ever lie to me. No, that is House of Pain and Jump Around. We were jumping around. Of course. We've got no shame. Yeah. XFM, 104.9. It's 20 to 5. Yeah. I'll be honest, after the ad break, there'll be another record. Is there going to be another ad break? Definitely. Uh, there's going to be an ad break? Yeah. You're not lying to me? No. Really? Oh, Muff Shandy says turn it up. Earplugs are gay. Earplugs are gay. The new single by Muff Shandy, Earplugs Are Gay. Do you know what I mean? Ugh, do you know I what mean? really feel psyched up after so that. So do I. I just want to, oh, it's just saw me there. I was box, shadow boxing again. It was incredible. Dance around. It was incredible. Good job Pitts was here. Because you can't, you can hit him as hard as you like and he can't feel it. Well, they feel it a couple of minutes later. Yeah, it just sort of ripples. It's lovely. It's, it's great because it takes out aggression. He sort of likes it because it tickles him. Yeah, he's like, like nice. you remember Pillsbury Doe? No. That little bloke that used to laugh when he used to prod him. No, it's, oh, it's fantastic. About. What are you talking about? 0171 580 2000. Everyone phone and say, Steve, you're a twat. Of course, remember Pillsbury Doe. So don't try and do that one Pillsbury on me. Pillsbury Doe? What yeah. You? I've never heard of it. Well, well, that's your loss. Right. Oh, well, if that's the game you're playing, Gervais, yeah. I'll try and pluck one out of the bag. Go on then. Oh, well, no, I, you can carry on talking. I'm just, mm, let me think. Let me think. <laughs> This no, I'll come this, up with something. I'll this involves a mate of yours in Bristol. Did you, do you know, uh, you know Cherry Wise? No? Ah. No, you win. I'll, I'll come up with something. So what, was, what was this thing? What was it called? The, the Pilbury... Pillsbury Doughboy. It was a little thing that he's coming, a little round wobbly thing, and you pressed him and you went... <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? 0171, 580, 2000. Where did it come from? Prove me wrong. Where did it come from? What's the name of a thing, isn't it? What Pillsbury Doughboy! What do you mean a thing? What is it? Pastry mix. <laughs> it's a pastry mix. Oh. Is it a toy? No. What you used to play with food when you were a kid? It, you, know, you, made, you still play I, with food. <laughs> <laughs> this Wait, is going nowhere. Well, Shut up. No, forget it. Right. It's after the um, ad break, Jamie and his magic torch. Yeah, I remember that. <sighs> yeah, I remember that. What's that little kid in the comics had the magic pipes? He'd go past an ad of like a woman eating a cream bun, and the cream bun would come to life. You know what I mean? Now at 14, he'd be getting different material, wouldn't he, to bring to life. Do you remember him? It was in a comic book. Are you on crack? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. When Grandad gets out of the bath, his skin's so clean and smooth. But after a hard day squelching around, soreness can cause discomfort. <laughs> New panderers with her love for her, her creamy, carry stuff acts as a clunge protector. <laughs> And the new dry weave chicken wings soak up all the piss and shit so granddad stays dry. New panderers with clunge protection. Because I love my granddad. <laughs> you dirty old. <laughs> 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 yeah, 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 Gomez, yeah. Oh, so, oh, shut up, I've got to see what the record is. Gomez, get myself arrested. What, Steve? I have finally figured out what on earth you were waffling on about just a second ago. What? Pillsbury Doe. Yeah. Right, just Pillsbury Doe. No, no, a... Apparently, yeah. I've managed, I'm talking to the listeners, Gervais, Go not on yourself. Then. Apparently, Pillsbury Doe, right, it's an ad from years ago. Yeah. Um, advertising this form of dough. Pastry, yeah. yeah a little, a little a cartoon yeah. character comes on the telly, yeah. Pillsbury Doe Man. Yeah. And he comes on, and a woman presses his belly. Yeah. And he makes a, a noise or something. Yeah. That's what I said. Well, you didn't say that at all. Why? You didn't explain it. What? See, when I want to explain something, all right, Jermaine, what I do is I think, what do I need to say? Yeah. How can I best express it? Which words shall I use and yeah. in what order? Yeah. When you want to express <laughs> something, you just go, words, <laughs> words, 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 stop. <laughs> words, words, oh, annoyed, annoyed, words. Do you know what I mean? It's just cobbled I was excited about remembering Pillsbury Doe. Yeah, but you, that, you must not let I your excitement... Believe, I can believe you're so stupid and sheltered means. not to have heard of him. You must not let your excitement, right, undermine your use of grammar. <laughs> Do you understand me, Jimmy? It's not an excuse. Or motor sort of sensibility. Anything, all right? Just think before you speak. <laughs> just think. Why? Think, please think before you speak. I'm a DJ. Think before you speak. Where would I get if I did that? Um, 
And someone here says, and. Starting off with and. <laughs> never, like the, never start a sentence with and or because, <laughs> you mean? Everybody knows that. Oh, never no. start a sentence with and or because. <laughs> uh, Mandy from Chingford wants to know if I remember a program called Billy Liar. Of course I do, you see, and you probably don't. A program called Billy Liar? Yeah. Rubbish! You never embarrass existed. yourself. No, there's a fi I, I admit there's a film and a play and a, Happy and a book. Happy birthday, Charlotte. No, Catherine, it's from Charlotte. She's 20. Yeah, man, you're super slick on the mic. <laughs> oh, yes, sir, each of Get me another one, get me another one. Because the thing is, if you just stop drinking, you start going a bit mad. Can we can we get the margaritas in here, please, Nick? Oh, you... I, had a, I had a margarita yesterday, sitting outside a little restaurant in Camden, had a margarita. Oh, I went to a party, I went to a party, I was on the margaritas. Um, I saw one of them the next day, actually. She was a lovely girl. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't do jokes like that. What were we talking about before that, though? Play a record. You... Drugstore, sober, on XFM, 104.9, London's only alternative. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting that you say that sentence every time we finish playing a record. I've learned it. Because it's the only thing that yeah. you've memorised, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. You can actually say that and get from the beginning to the end without sort of keeling over. <laughs> or something. Or something. You take a deep breath. Yeah. Taking another swig. You should see him preparing to come out of a record. Right. XFM, 104.9. And off you go. Yeah. Beautiful, Trevace. Yeah. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, walking along um, the other night towards your house on that route, that direct route from yeah. XFM, walking along, very, Zen line, very short fella walking alongside me, right? And you know, sometimes your eyes meet with these people. I saw his face. What are you doing? Crawling. <laughs> How short are we talking? He's a short man. Three, four three, three or four feet. Really? Yeah. Okay. Carrying a big bag. Yeah. I saw his face. It looked, you might, you know, those people that look as though their face has been stapled together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He was one of those sort of people. <laughs> yeah. And so his face very odd. I mean, you know, I, I don't want to sort of, uh, it's like a bit like the, the pot calling the kettle black. Yeah. You know what I mean? But he, he was, was short a, and ugly. You're tall and ugly. Exactly. But so, he, was, he was a, he was a weird looking fella. Where's he? He looks up at me, Gervais. He looks up at me and he says, uh, can I jump on your back? <laughs> really? Absolutely what he said. Can you believe that? Can I jump on your back? <laughs> what was I going to say? He's ridiculous. <laughs> He's like, Can I jump on your back? And <laughs> I don't know what his plan... Once, once he'd got up there, I'm not sure what his plan of action was going to be. Uh, I don't know what he was thinking. Fight a much taller man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, he says, says that. And I say, well, no, you can. And he says, oh, go on, let me, you big C-U-N-T. Really? That's what he said. Yeah. Oh, go on, let me. I mean... It's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Like, that, like that was going to convince you. I know, yeah. Like, <laughs> first sight. Oh, well, no, I won't. Oh, go on, you big... Oh, go on, then. Yeah, all right. That was lovely. As you ask so sweetly. What if it had been the short, ugly woman who'd had her face stable together? Well, I'd have let her jump up. Yeah. Well, she might have needed to, to get somewhere quick, you know, yeah. and I... You know, I've got those kind of opportunities. I, it would just be ungentlemanly. If she I might have needed a ride. She might need needed a ride. Poor what I said. No, I'm yeah. After the break, a classic by House Martins. Lovely. Steve, Steve made me do it. Brilliant. Classic House Martins. Well, it's happy hour. Again? Uh, no, just called happy hour. Don't embarrass yourself, you swine. Why did you play that then? That was your choice for today. Go on. Well, I'll tell you why I played that. It reminds me of a girl. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on. No, it does. Where's the punchline? There is no punchline. Well, you went out with a girl? Yeah. No, you did Yes. <laughs> See, you did Yes. And go that, on. We played that song quite a lot. Really? Oh. Don't mock, don't ju you know. Go on. But she it was, she was, this is absolutely true, she was very odd. Um, of course she was. She used to, <laughs> <laughs> she used to decide everything. Yeah. Via the paper. Go on. She would write out, she would tear a piece of paper in half and she would write, you know, yes or no. Like, it might, her question to herself. You know, might, she had two no's in her hand, don't you? Her question might have been. <laughs> no, every night she had two no's. <laughs> her question might have been. Should we go down to the supermarket? <laughs> yes, no. Yeah. You know, and she'd, she'd, you know, choose one. Yeah. At random. No, yeah. we'll go to the supermarket. She yeah. might have, you know, shall I buy a new hat? Yeah. She might have, yes, no, choose the paper, no. And, uh, you know, it's just a bit odd, just a bit weird. And no, and it, it, that is exactly how, uh, it all finished. Really? Yeah. She did, she wrote, you know, she made the, the, the question she asked herself is was. Is this true, by the this way? This is absolutely true. Go the on. question she asked herself was, shall I carry on going out with Steve? Right. Piece of paper? Mm. Yes, no. No. Whew. That's, do you know what I mean? That's quite a tragic story. She had 30 goes. <laughs> Best out of three, she kept saying. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, that is absolutely true. That is tragic. I mean, that really is quite tragic. Do you think so? Yeah. It, it makes me quite, it makes me a love martyr, doesn't, don't you think? Well, yeah. Wouldn't you say? It was so much more, because you can put it down to like fate and luck now, as opposed to, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was the gods. It wasn't your fault. No. Mm-hmm. <laughs>
Well, if you're listening, this was your tune. This is the Delgados. Everything goes around. Hello. <laughs> yeah, of course, it's very, very sad, and uh, you know maybe the Spice Girls, as they were, don't exist anymore. But I mean, her work will go on. The good she's done for charity, like the uh, the mine victim charities, and uh, you know all that that caring that, that that she didn't. And our thoughts shouldn't just be with her; it should be with you know William and Harry now. Um, Rick, I think you've got a bit confused. Baby birds, bad old man. Yep. XFM 104.9, yeah. nearly half five. Ad break, scope, song for body, Bobby, competition, film quiz, um, Shed 7 album, um, midget um, album, um, XFM album with China's Rome Garby's left field. Am I making sense? No. Play a record. That's all Bobby. Song for Bobby, scope. Just gone half five, Steve. It's competition time. Gervais, you're absolutely right. Competition time on XFM. We're going to play you a clip from a classic movie. We want to know what is the film. Three CDs to give away to the lucky winner, Gervais. Album from Midget, album from Shed 7, and an XFM compilation album. Tracks on there from the Boo Radleys. We've got songs from Stereo Lab, Marion, all sorts. Gervais, play the clip. It's a classic movie, but what is it? After I've told you that I nicked those CDs from your pigeon album. Oh, I don't believe yeah. it. I knew you wouldn't mind. We're not giving them away. Yes, we are. No, we're not. Here's the clip. What was that? T-1000, mimetic polyalloy, liquid metal. Cannot form complicated metal objects, just stabbing weapons. Could he make a corkscrew? No problem. But he has to make things of a similar volume. Could he make scissors? Do they have to work? Yeah. No, then. Just stabbing things. A pin? Again, with the volume thing. But he could make a pin. It would have to be a f***ing big pin. A sword? Yes, obviously. Some roller skates? Impossible. The moving parts. A ball and chain? I thought you had the concept. Fishing rod? You're lining me up now. A chess set, but all in one piece. Piece, sort of a sculpture. What would be the f***ing point? If it was metal, it would still hurt. I'm going. No, but if it's metal, he could hit you with a feather duster and he could still kill you. He's a T-1000, a f***ing Terminator, not Ken Dodd. Ooh. That's it, I'm leaving. Say, I'll be back. No, I'm going. What about my little boy? F*** the brat. You shouldn't have taken the piss. So, classic movie action there. The question's simple. What movie is it from? It's a blockbuster and a cult film. Simple. What? film was that 0171 580 2000. Gervais, I've got to say, Go uh, I'm, you know, I'm very impressed with yeah. the work you've been doing. You've yeah. put a lot of effort into that. Yeah. That little, sort of, you know, that little quiz there. Yeah. I'm most impressed, Gervais, what can I say? Good. You know, but I'm a little bit worried. Go on. It seems to me that a lot of your humour is based around swearing and then just sort of bleeping out the swear words. Do you know what I mean? It just seems a bit juvenile. It is, well, it is juvenile, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the point. It's, it, it's juvenile and silly and it's not particularly clever. But um, it is f funny. <laughs> what? Um, what did you say there? It is, I'm just saying, it is, you're right. It, it, you know, it is sort of juvenile and childish a bit as well, but it's, it's f funny, isn't it? And that's the important thing. How did you, how did you do that? How did you, is that some kind of wind-up? Do what? You're, you're swearing. Yeah. And it's, and it's being bleeped out. Of course it is. It's radio. Yeah, but well, this is live. Yeah. Well, how are you doing it then? I don't know. Well, you, you must know. I don't know. Is it, is it a wind-up? Is it some... Well, I don't know. This is live, Gervais. Yeah, of course it's f***ing live. <laughs> XFM 104.9, London's only f***ing alternative. C well, can I swear? If I swear, would it, would it do the same? Well, I don't know. It's your... Take a chance. It's your neck on the line. Um, <clears throat> big, hairy dog's cock. Steve, be careful, man. What? <laughs> you can't go around saying big, hairy dog's cock. Wait, you can. If you swear again, Steve, um, I'm serious, I'll be annoyed because it'll make me look like a wah. This is Radiohead and Blackstar. How are you doing this? I don't know. Radiohead and Blackstar on XFM 104.9. It's the Ricky Gervais show. But We've does, had a competition. Does, does the bleeping happen in the pub? Of course it doesn't. What? You can say what you want live, can't you, in a I pub? Don't. I'm just a bit confused. I know, you're easily confused. There's a competition winner, you'll be pleased to know. Yeah. Uh, Dinesh De Silva from Wimbledon has won those three CDs, and can I just say they're already winging their way to him as we speak. Yeah. <laughs> probably say that. Yeah. Absolute nonsense. They're probably outside on the table. You've lost a bit of paper. Yep. And that, that yep. excuse for a producer. You'll be very surprised if those CDs ever make it to Wimbledon. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be honest. Yeah.
Uh, Gervais, it's, I've, you know, it's been great. We've enjoyed ourselves. What was the film clip then? Oh, the film, of course. We didn't even give it away. It was a Terminator 2. Of course it was. The classic scene when the, uh, T, uh, 1000 puts the big sword through the, uh, lift and Linda Hamilton goes, what was that? Arnie explains. It's a fantastic there. clip there from the film and hopefully another film quiz next week perhaps. We've got another one, yeah. Gervais. Yeah. Um, and I must say the film quiz thing I think is very popular at the moment. A lot of people are very excited by that. We've got an ad break coming up Have and we? then the classic from Placebo, yeah? Placebo? I'd rather have one from Pulp. We'll play both. Brilliant. Do you remember the first time? Gervais, if I, uh, Gervais, if I uh, phoned up Labour HQ and said I'm willing to pledge £100, do you think Mo Molan would uh, go out with me? I mean, would she be obliged to? Is that how it works? You could be her beau, Molan. Well, true enough. Those would be the headlines. Yeah. XFM's Steve is beau, Molan. Not Beauty and the Beast. Well, I know. Don't, don't start slagging or, her off. Or, or Labour MP attacked by strange freak. Don't start slagging her off. Easy Metal is the new album by Tony Butterbean. All the animals went in two by two. I'm gonna f*** you like we're in the zoo. We're gonna f*** like a rhino. We're gonna f*** like a rhino. We're gonna f*** like a big fat rhino. We're gonna f*** like a f***ing rhino. And who can forget, earplugs are gay. Earplugs are gay. Hear what I say now, those ear plugs are gay, so get them out the goddamn way now. I feel the need to make a beat, my brain needs noise and speed, <laughs> motherfucker. And featuring Tony's brand new single, Blood, Sweat and Come. Metal, the new album by Tony Butterbean, out now. This album is not available anywhere. Just gone six o'clock, uh, but uh, they're still here, aren't you, boys? Well, oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. just yeah, uh, yeah. say cheerio. It's like a bad penny. I left, really I left well. you with that, Kanicki. Yeah, it's no, generous. No, no, you left the seat down too low as well. I had to raise it up again. And you've really? one, two, three, four, five cups in here. Uh, don't, don't and complain. two empty ashtrays, and you don't don't leave your crown behind. You did that last week. You keep leaving that wretched thing here. God, he's starting already. Look at his shirt. Yeah, man in that shirt. You know, what do you way, feel like when a man in that shirt criticizes you? In a way, I wish I could bleep him out. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wouldn't that uh, be a two-hour bleep? Yeah, just a big. I just got to say, um, uh, happy birthday, Catherine. And sorry, Holly, I didn't read your fax, but our fax machine chewed up after it. Send it again. Didn't hear a word of that. No, Laurie, play a song. All right then. I'm Ricky Gervais, coming up on today's show, Radiohead, Pulp, Oasis, Blur, Nirvana, Jesus and Mary Train, Puff Daddy, The Smiths, Faith No More, The Cure, and uh, kicking off with this little ditty, Mock Turtles, Can You Dig It, on XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve. Do you remember that one? It's a classic, Gervais. Lovely, isn't it? I used to play that when I used to run a mobile disco. <laughs> <laughs> with that. Did that's you really? A, that's a great way to get into radio. Yeah. You run yourself a mobile disco or, you know, get involved with hospital radio. Yeah, and the ladies come along and see the flashing lights and the big tunes and see you and go home. Yeah. Yeah. With the bloke. With, normally with a fellow. A human. But, uh, yeah, anyway. Well, on. coming up to today's show, as I said, we've got all, all the, the greatest tits of, uh, The greatest tits? No, you see. No, you that is what you said. Now, I was going to say that there'd be no swearing on today's show. That's there was a lot. No, there's there's going to be none at all. No profanity or filth or anything like that on today's show. What? There was too much last week, and it's got to be stopped. Seriously. What the boss was it? Is he being nobbling you? No, higher authority than him. <laughs> really? Yeah. What the uh, radio authority? No. I tell you, I, the reason is because you were just pushing it to last. No, I'm not surprised. It was my mum. I got to stop swearing. <laughs> what? Well, it was her birthday, and I phoned her in the week. And she launched straight into it. I was like, well, listen, listen to this. You, you taped your mum? Yeah, listen. <laughs> yep. Happy birthday. Oh, do you know you don't half go far on your radio, don't you? What? Your language, my son. What? Well, arse and piss and c I didn't, I didn't say it. Yeah, no, it's all bleeped out. It's all electronically, uh, cleaned yeah, up. Yeah, I know. You take it steady. I didn't bring you up that way. <laughs> yeah, well, I got it from you. You used to F and C all over the place when I was no, little. No, I didn't. Well, you used to, you used to come in with yeah. a bottle of gin in one hand and a cigar in the other. You didn't get. Yeah, no. Yeah, from a bingo, right? You used to come in with a vicar. 
Yeah. Got Nicky Sherry, he's come in, effing and blinding, you know, I'm five years old, how am I meant to be? You lying toad. <laughs> you lying toad. How old are you? Seventy-three. Seventy-three. And I used to correct you in every way you spoke. Yeah. You didn't learn a lot. You got the real old Berkshire accent. <laughs> well, yeah, I wonder where that came from. And that other bloke, tell him your handle is Ricky. Why? What's the matter? And it's not Gervais, it's <laughs> Gervais. <laughs> so correct him when he's on the radio. <laughs> yeah. Your handle is Ricky. Yeah, do you want to do give him a message? Because I'm taping this. Oh, you ain't. Yeah. <laughs> he said, do you want to give him a message? Because I'm taping. Face No More, from Out of Nowhere, on XFM 104.9. Well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Pathetic. What? Gervais? Oh, you've got to be Ricky Gervais. My mummy says it's got to be Ricky Gervais. You don't want to get Steve, on the wrong side of her. don't call me Gervais anymore. It's Ricky Gervais. You, honestly, you don't want to wind her up. Also, I want all that nonsense about handle. Your handle is Ricky Gervais. What well, handle? What's she talking she about? She was into CB, wasn't she? <laughs> what? Yeah. She was not, well, not younger then. She was about 60. Right. When it was, it was at its peak. And uh, she used to go around, you know, things like that. I'm in the land of the brain bottles. I'll be at eye by ball, pregnant roller skate, of, you know, all that sort of stuff. I don't know what she was talking about. We were talking about in the pub. Right. She used to have a gang. For your mum? Yeah, yeah, used to have, uh, they're called the Backyardies. <laughs> they used to come out and, uh, you know, be in the garden. Right. You know, doing a bit of gardening and yeah. all that crazy paving. Right. <laughs> yeah, help me with that rockery, Lil Chill. That was Lil Chill? Yeah, I was next door, her name was Lil, and she, you know, she married <laughs> Mr. Chill, so she was, uh, Lil Chill. <laughs> Yeah, you honestly, you don't want to wind her up. We've got an ad break, then Radiohead, and then the second half of the call. It gets, now you know why I'm scared of her after this. Yeah, I, I was funny, right, because I was in Crowley's show earlier. Gary Crowley, have you heard of Gary Crowley? Oh, I don't know whether I have or not. Gary Crowley's a DJ. Oh. You better say yes, you have, because he's going to yeah, listen to this. Him, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what do you, what do you think of him? Not bad. <laughs> 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 oh. But listen, we've taped all your last three weeks. I'm just going to send her to Larry today. Yeah. For him to hear. Good. You go careful. You do not go near the bone. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you can't wait. You, you don't believe I'm going to play this, do you? <laughs> not if there's any swearing on there, you better not. Well, you, we, we, you wouldn't swear, would you? No. You would, I no. never taught you to swear anyway. <laughs> I used to correct you in everything you said and done. Yeah. Even to the teas in the water. You water? Remember? And the teas in you've, the butter. You've never had water. No. Unless it's mixed in with beer. No. Uh, remember when you taught me to do the dustman's blow when you hold one nostril and blow it all out the others? You filthy animal. <laughs> That's you taught me that. I did not. You used to come in and you used to, if I was naughty, you used to gob at me. Ian, I'm talking filthy. <laughs> you know I couldn't do that, because things like that makes me sick anyway. <laughs> yeah, I'm I, not I can't wait to play this on Sunday. No, and I won't wait to get up there and get you. Um, do, do as I then. Say, Ricky Gervais is my son on XFM. Ricky Gervais is my son on XFM. 104.9. 104.9? Yeah. That's I it. think that's a nice Berkshire accent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, okay then, 73. Yeah, don't tell everybody. They He's... all want to join in. Yeah. Um, all right then, well I'll, um... Right. 73. And you go careful what you're saying. All right then. Right. See you later. Cheerio. Bye. So, no swearing, Steve, yeah? You're, I can't believe you're scared of your I'm mum. I'm not scared of my mum. You're mom. scared of your mum. And you said I was drinking last night on the show. Last time. I wasn't. No, you were, well, you were, might not have been drinking, you were smoking. Oh, she knows I don't smoke. Well, no, she knows you don't smoke cigarettes. Don't. You don't know her, Steve. Hey, and what about the, uh, does she know about the steroids? <laughs> hey, I mean, how do you explain that physique when you go around to see her? She just thinks I work out a lot. Well, I j it just seems to me, Gervais, that, you know, no swearing on the Ricky Gervais show. I mean, that's what's made our name. That's yeah. our bread and butter. Yeah. I mean... Butter, it is. There's two cheese in butter. It just seems to me, Gervais, that you're, you're compromising the show. I, well, I'm compromising the I show. I wouldn't compromise the show just when my mum's listening. It's Kelly Rogers. Brand Van 3000 on XFM 104.9. Beautiful. Gervais, are yeah. there any reasons, Gervais, for people to stay tuned? Gervais, I should say. Any reasons? Leave for, it. Any reasons? You for don't know her. Well, any reasons, Gervais, 
for people to <laughs> for people to stay tuned to the show. What apart from Jesus and Mary Chain, Puff Daddy, The Smiths, The Cure, Still to Come, what Oasis, Blur, incredible. Two pairs of Jesus and Mary Chain tickets to give away. Really? And five pairs of wristbands for embrace. Embrace wristbands. Yeah. What is that? Just like little sort of memento. You're an idiot, aren't you? Have I married myself? Yeah. What are they? They get you into the gig, don't they? Get it's you like, into it's the like a ticket, but you can't forge it. You can't photocopy a ticket. Fast incredible. I mean, a wristband. Well, well it's could. beautiful. Jamais, we're gabbling. Yeah. We're gabbling. Jamais, I've also got a great gag for you. Seems like we have a gag every week now. I've got a great gag for you. Plus, Jamais, I have come up with the perfect murder. Perfect murder, Jamais. Later Excellent. on XFM. Brilliant. Uh, listening to your uh, your mum earlier on. Yeah. Uh, it's great. Old people are great. Yeah. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah. Um, but I just think because she reminds me a lot of my uh, my grandmother. And yeah. my, my grandmother and my grandfather. I went to see them fairly recently. It was beautiful. And I go in there and uh, my granddad says to my grandmother things like, you know, um, oh, uh, turn the heating down, Joan, would you? Switch off the telly, Joan. Her name's not Joan. He's just lost it, I take it. Well, it, he, she, 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 he calls her Joan. Yeah. Um, but her name's Irene. You're joking. Yeah. You're joking. Her name's Irene. Oh no, will he really? Oh, well, sorry. He's, but he's not senile. What? It's not, it's, see, that's the thing is you think he's senile or something. No. It's not, right? He calls her, he calls her Joan. Her name's Irene, right? I asked why, obviously. Uh, he said, um. He said, well, Dave, I'll tell you. <laughs> no, it's actually true. He's not senile, right? He calls her, he calls her Joan, right? Because when they first met, yeah. he asked her, what's your name? And she went, Joan. Her name's Irene. She said, Joan. I said to her, why did you give him... The plot thickens. Why did you give him... Why did you give him a false name? She said, you can never be too sure. <laughs> you can never be too careful. <laughs> That's as much as she's told me. <laughs> Ridiculous. What did she think she was going to achieve by giving him a false name? She didn't tell him, right, that her real name was Irene until eight days before they got married. Incredible. That is fantastic. I don't... I mean... They're, they're West Country, aren't they? West Country. Right. They should have known that. They're presumably cousins, weren't they? <laughs> Don't start your face. Okay, Don't after start. the break, Jesus and Mary Chain, and those tickets to give away. Oh. DJ Harvey and Victory on XFM 104.9. Before that, it was Black and Jesus and Mary Chain. Don't forget, I've got two pairs of tickets to give away for the Jesus and Mary Chain uh, gig on Saturday the 4th of July at the Royal Festival Hall. We've also got five pairs of wristbands for Embrace. Well, I'll tell you about that, Jermaine. Yeah, let me do it. Oh, let me do something. Let me do something. You do it, Steve, then. You can take the mic, Gervais, yeah. all right? At least I'm not scared of my mum. That's because she's your sister as well. <laughs> Gervais, this evening at the HMV on Oxford Street, yeah. all right? HMV Music Shop. Embrace the HMV there, Music Shop. <laughs> as opposed to the sandwich store. The sandwich yeah. counter. Yeah. Yeah. All right, yeah, all right. Okay. Go on. Anyway, it's about 11 o'clock tonight. Yeah. Embrace are going to be there. They're going to be playing tracks, all right? It's, what what it, are they? It's well, well, they, it's not, it's they not could have just been there. It's quite feasible. They were just there buying records or oh, something. So, so it's Embrace, that pop band. They're going to be doing some music. No, go they could have been there buying records or calendars. Are you doing all right? Anything. Go on. It should be fairly straightforward. This all I've got to do is read out what it says yeah. here. Yeah. How hard can it be? No, it's easy. Go on. These, this is the kind of bread and butter of of um of of being a DJ. Yeah. And we can't even pull this off. No, I'm I'm fine. You try and read it. Go on. Anyway, Embrace are going to be there. I don't know the facts. Maybe they aren't going to be playing music. Oh. They might just be, I don't know, they could be doing pottery. Really? They could, they could, they could, they could be bringing some, uh, some stuff that they've made, perhaps you pictures really, that they've drawn. You really have brought the level down. They, but they anyway, might, maybe there's some sort the of important point crochet is you've got, you've got to come here between 8 and 10 Shut tonight. up, let me finish. Go on then, have a go. Embrace, a, there's something going on at HMV <laughs> later on, all right, in Oxford Street. It features Embrace. There, there's two with their album or whatever. It starts about 11 o'clock, all right? We've got wristbands, five pairs of wristbands yeah. to give away, right? So you can get in there and see them do whatever the hell they're doing, Morris dancing or whatever the hell it is, all right? But the thing is, all right, we're going to do the competition in a minute to win these wristbands, okay? You this understand? is slick. This is good radio. Super slick, Chavez. Yeah, yeah. We've got the wristbands and everything, right? But the thing is, before you phone in for them, in a minute, when the competition's launched, in a minute, right, not now. Yeah. <laughs> it's going well. Yeah. You've got to be able to come down here to XFM, all right, this evening between 8 and 10, to have the wristbands attached to you, all right? Do you understand? And if you're going with a guest, they have to come with you. I was moving on to that. Okay. It was just that I wanted to get on before Shh. July. Oh. Really? I think that's enough for now. Yeah, I know. It's one, one thing I'm that, exhausted. I mean, we're rubbish, right? But the most important thing is 
XFM 104.9. Say that on every eye so they know what they're listening to. So if someone just tuning into the radio um, is, oh, what's this? I like this. XFM 104.9. Good. I'll listen tomorrow as well. It's, it's bread and butter. That is fundamental. Oh, yeah. You know, textbook. Laurie, that is textbook yeah. DJing. You know, XFM 104.9. Exactly. Um, which is what we do all the time. Um, Laurie um, Halibut. Is it Halibut or Haddock? I don't know what The bloke who does the review show after us. I'm not sure he comes in, he all. slags us off, he moans about the, the mess and everything. This was his first link last week. Listen to this. No reason for playing it, except someone else played it and I heard it, and I thought that was good, so I'll play it too. Very good evening to you. It's Laurie Hallett with XFM's X Rated Review Show on 104.7. Um, and I'll stop you there, Laurie. Uh, Ricky and Steve out of the building. They've yeah. gone. They've yeah. finished. Uh, uh, 104.7. 104.7. Do you think he's moonlighting? He's a little bit embarrassed, <laughs> I'd imagine. Right now. Excellent, look. 104.7. Yeah, that's what I thought you said. Excellent. And some people even like make, you know, some stations do like whole jingles, musical jingles, so it helps you remember it. Like, um, 95.3 capital FM, so you can't forget it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. We should do that. Definitely. 104.9 X, F, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just so simple. Yeah. 95.12 capital FM. <laughs> Scope, song for Bobby on XFM 104.9, just gone five o'clock. It's about time for a perfect murder. <laughs> Gervais, everybody knows somebody they want to kill. Yeah. All right? Everybody's thought about murder. I just say, we're not actually saying that's a good thing. Well, no. No, we're not advocating murder, but no. we're saying that it is something that crosses people's minds. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, if you are tempted to murder somebody, why at not? At least get it right. At least get it right, exactly. Yeah. Now, uh, Gervais, I'm sure you yourself have realised, perhaps <laughs> the reason you haven't committed murder yourself, yeah. this could be the reason you don't commit murder, is that you know, what am I going to do with the uh, the murder weapon? Yeah. That's the that's the stumbling block. You see, if there's a murder weapon, that c you can normally sort of trace, you know, trace the murder weapon back to the, the murderer. You see, yeah. the murder weapon's a problem. You've got to dispose of it, you know, whatever. See, now I have come up with the perfect murder, Gervais. All right, it's simple. It's so simple. I can't believe other people haven't thought of it. Right, what you do is uh, is say you, the person you want to murder, right, lives in the, in the street opposite. All right, lives in the house opposite. Say, right, what you do is you you rent a, a room opposite theirs. All right, you wait until one day their window is open. All right, and then what you do is you take a block of ice, Gervais, ice. All right, and you <laughs> you fashion from it an arrow, an ice arrow. All right, with a very sharp point. All yeah. right, then you you get yourself a bow. All yeah. right, and you fire that ice arrow. Okay, across the street, through the window, into the heart of the person you want to murder. Right, killing right. them instantly. All right, yeah. they stumble, they fall to the ground, yeah. and then the the ice arrow melts, yeah. Gervais, murder weapon. It's gone. Gone into the thin air, the wet patch dries, all right? The police mm. arrive, they can't find the murder weapon, safe. The, this bow, is this made of ice? The, well, the bow, the bow, see, that all that is is a bit of wooden string. Right. <laughs> That, but it, that but could be anybody's bow. Nevertheless, it is a bow, isn't it? That could be anybody's bow. Yeah, but then if you blow them just with a hammer, it could be anyone's hammer. Nevertheless, the fingerprints possibly will still be on the bow. But the ice arrow, it's just, it's melted. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. So... What they do is they they probably find you wandering around with a bow, yeah. Look at this bloke that you didn't like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, they have motive because you presumably didn't like him. Mm, I didn't. Then there's the like, little hole in his heart with some water. No, it's dried. It's dried out. The is water's it? Water's dried. Oh, right. see, that's why it makes it the perfect murder because right. the, the ice has melted and dried. Brilliant. Right. That is brilliant. Okay. And so it's incredible. There's no basically there is there's not one hole in that plan. No. So, do you have to conveniently find somewhere that, you know, has got a flat to let opposite him as well? Well, well, that is the perfect murder. Right. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, presumably, you've only got one ice arrow. It's oh, just the one. Right. You need one. So, you? but you've been practicing, presumably, with, like, other arrows, sort of, to get your shot just right. Just as he walks in front of the window, you can release this, this... Fatal arrow of ice. Are you are you mocking my plan? No, it's good. Are it's you good. mocking that? And um, this is Mud Honey. We'll talk about this after. Night of the Haunted by Mud Honey on XFM one hundred and four point. What is it? Oh, nine. Oh. Yeah, it's nine. One hundred and four point nine. Yeah. 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 Um, where do you make the um, ice ar arrow? Well, you do. You can do that in your living room or your kitchen. So you get. What do you? What do you do? Do you have a mold or do you carve it out of a big I block think you of just ice? Chip away at a big block of ice. Where do you get that from? Arrow. Well, you just, you, you can buy big blocks of ice, I expect. Yeah, okay. Oh, I'll be honest, I'm being a bit sarcastic. I think that it's the stupid idea. It would never work. You're an idiot. 
0171 580 2000. Can we have some proper perfect murders, please? 0171 580 2000, your perfect murders, or <laughs> they could fax us. The perfect fax. <laughs> yeah. 0171 580 1234. I think we should give away a pair of those embrace wristbands to the, the perfect murder. Yeah. The best perfect murder. Uh, I just went out of the fax machine, and uh, there was there was no fax at all, but just a puddle of water by it. Suspicious. Yeah, after this break, Oasis. Nirvana on a plane before that, Oasis, and some might say... Beautiful. On XFM 104.9. I was listening to uh, Capital the other day. Oh, it's a fantastic station. Great station. It play, you know, it plays the hits from the uh, 70s, 80s, and 90s. Well, it did actually play one. Um, oh, really? um, it reminds me of a story. Remember last um, week you were talking about you were bullied at school by Lionel Richie? It was a nightmare. I know, yeah, it was a big bloke, and uh, I was bizarrely bullied by Hanson. Odd. Yeah, uh, <laughs> strange, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, there's another, there was, I went to school with another um, mega pop star. You didn't? Yeah, yeah, What yeah. are the odds of that? I know, it's amazing. Um, but I, he wasn't, I didn't get into fights with him, but he bullied me, but I found in retrospect, he was nicking all my ideas. I can't believe it. Yeah. Who was it? Um, it was Paul Simon. Well, Simon, he's got a reputation. Oh, well, no, I'm yeah. not surprised. But, I mean, um, I wrote this song when we were in music class, and it was called Lots of Ways to Leave a Lover. Sounds familiar. Yeah, well, the one they played in the capital was 50 Ways to Leave a Lover. And I listened, I went, hold on. And it goes, um, you just slip out the back, Jack. Make a new plan, Stan. You don't need to be coy, right? He's rhyming a name with a way of leaving your lover, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and you'll, I'll show you mine, you'll see the similarity. You know, just hop on the bus, Gus. You don't need to discuss much. Just drop off the key, Lee, and sit yourself free, right? Yeah. Now, I, I had one like, um... Run away, Jose. Right, <laughs> clever, uh, clever. Tell her you'd like to end the relationship, Philip. <laughs> but, I mean, you can see the pattern. And there was one I had um, explained she should find a man who really loves her and live with him, Tim. <laughs> right? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So he, he hasn't improved on it. No. Has he? He's, he's probably made it a little bit snappier. A bit snappier. I mean, my, my favourite one was um, just sit her down and say, look, I don't think you're my ideal life partner. And although we've had a good time, I really don't think we should marry Barry. <laughs> you know? And he's all he's done. He's, 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 you know, put it in a pop format. Yeah, so and he's I, sold millions of copies. So uh, I think I'm going to play him at his own game. Go on. Cut off your todger, Roger. Obviously, yeah. Um, cut off your knob, Bob. <laughs> cut off your dick, Rick. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, slice off your willy, Billy. <laughs> Cut off your John Thomas. John Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that works. That works. I don't think that one's like, get off with her mate, Nate. <laughs> yeah. That'd do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. French kiss her dad, Brad. <laughs> nice, yeah. That might. Uh, uh, see someone else. <laughs> Elsie. Elsie. <laughs> Doesn't work, does Doesn't it? Doesn't really work, but. Um, tell her you're gay, you're... Ray. <laughs> tell her you're gay, Ray. Yeah, yeah that might end it. Uh, I, I wasn't prepared to give Hank any advice. <laughs> Forget about Hank. It's got four. Your kingdom to dust. Don't lie to me, Gervais. Is that who it was? Yeah, it's well, got four. Thank God for that. Yeah. Gervais, I'm a little bit concerned because we've had an awful big response to our perfect murder appeal. Yeah. Um, you know, normally we, we say things like phone in if you want money for free. Yeah. And nobody phones in. No. You mentioned murder. The, the lines start, you know, red hot. It's, I think it's the, the, the type of uh, listener that we attract. Yeah, well, it worries me slightly. Uh, it's odd, we've had two, which are exactly the same suggestion. Uh, Darren from... Uh, well, that is suspicious. Uh, well, exactly. Darren from Carshelton, if that's a real place, I have no idea, and Sarah in Bickley have both come up with the idea of uh, buying a leg of lamb, all right, uh, freezing it... I like it already. Rock, yeah, well, it's got lamb involved, it's got to yeah. be exciting. I think, well, I think Darren was pork and uh, Sarah was lamb. You know, that's fair enough. Something uh, in that, isn't it? <laughs> it's got to be something. Anyway, yeah, you freeze your leg of lamb or your leg of pork. You, uh, you club over, you know, you use it as a club, basically. Beat someone to death with it. Yeah. And then, of course, you sort of cook up your leg of lamb or pork and serve it to investigating police officers. You see, rather cheekily. Um, and of course, you know, evidence of the murder weapon has disappeared. I like, I, well, yeah, but then there'd be like, um, bones and stuff and evidence cooking. What I do is then surgically put it back on the sheep. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Slightly more ambitious, that one. I know, but in these days, well, you yeah. know. All right, we've got another one here. Um, keeping with the ice theme, uh, remember my ice idea? Yeah. The perfect it's murder. A great idea, yeah. Well, the perfect murder would, in fact, be to freeze the feet of the victim, all right, by placing him in water. The ice, uh, having a lower gravity than the water, would keep the victim's feet at the top and the head below water level. That I'm bored. 
For the being on this then, um, I presume this person wants to be murdered and therefore would allow you to put his feet in a fridge for I'm not sure how 42 that one works. minutes. I'm not sure how that one works, but, but anyway, it ends up with him appearing to have drained, which, brilliant. I mean, I, you know, I admire that. It's just a little bit too technical for me. And all he's got to show for it is cold feet. Particularly ambitious one from Greg in Harrow. Yeah. All right, he suggests, Gervais, that you invite the person that you want to murder, all right, uh, on a little sort of outing, okay? You go out on a very hot day, you take a stroll in Regent's Park, all right? You suggest to the person that perhaps you sunbathe for a while, okay? Mm. They strip off. You say, uh, shall I just cover you in uh, in sort of suntan lotion? Yeah. They say, fair enough. Yeah. You wait for them to fall asleep. Then you sprinkle crushed biscuits over their body. Yeah. And wait for squirrels to attack and sort of bite and nibble them to death. A little bit ambitious. Well, this would be the, um, the well-known biscuit and flesh-eating squirrel of old Regent's Park. <laughs> exactly. So like, I've had the biscuit, <laughs> I may as well keep going. There's a lovely little layer of um, ombre solaire there as well. <laughs> it's like a, l like a little human trifle. <laughs> It's perfect. Yeah. It's a three-course meal oh, for, any, for any um, vampire squirrel. <laughs> That's brilliant, that is, yeah. Well, actually, I still like that. I still like Greg's suggestion. So Greg's suggestion. I'm going to give Greg a pair of these these uh, embrace wristbands, if he'd like yeah. them. Now, uh, he needs They to say the proof of the uh, killing is in the eating. Um, I'd like to see this proved possible first. Then we can give him a pair of embrace. So if, if you find right, a body to, and some fat squirrels with blood <laughs> dripping and some crumbs on their <laughs> coats... Then, uh, you can have them. Go on and give them to him. Yeah, uh, so Greg, you need to come down between 8 and 10 this evening if you want these tickets. Bring along a friend if you want, uh, and he'll, and what's his name here, will attach some wristbands to you. They have to be sort of surgically attached to you, apparently. Yeah. Um, anyway, perhaps give us another ring and, and what's his name can explain it all to you. But anyway, you're well done, Greg. Um, and well, we've, got, we've got four more pairs to give away. Have we? And I've, um, it's not as complicated as that. Right. It's the first four people to phone up and say, I'll come. 0171 and they've got to say... I'll, 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 yeah, I'll, I'll come along. 0171 Good luck. Um, well, um, you've got a joke to tell yeah, us, haven't you? Gervais, uh, it seems like every week now we, we get a little gag in. Yeah. A little, it's great, isn't it? It's so sort of capital-like. So you think it's very pinkish. Yeah. <laughs> <It's phenomenal laughs> that. Is, that a, is that a verb? <laughs> to pink? Yeah. To be pink? Yeah. If only his name was Pank, oh. I'd have, a, I could finish my <laughs> song off. Right, go on. <laughs> Steve Pank. Believe <laughs> it, come on. Uh, Gervais, you might have heard it before. Go on. Heard it last night from some fella. Yeah. Why are London buses red? Go on. You'd be red if you had to come every ten minutes. <laughs> It's not bad, is it? No, it's good. It's a simple little joke. I like it. Hey? Eh? Oh. Paul and Babies on XFM 104.9. Gervais, this evening, Embrace are playing at Oxford Street, uh, HMV in Oxford Street. All right, we've already given away the five pairs of uh, bracelets, which will get you into the gig. All right, and the winner is Gervais, Greg Robinson, all right, for his man-eating squirrel murder idea. Yeah. Uh, also, Stephen Turton, uh, Dave Newman, Simon Greenwood, and uh, Tiru Thirulengam. I can't pronounce the surname. Anyway, listen to me very carefully. What you need to do is you need to come down here to XFM, which is uh, situated at 97 Charlotte Street, just off Tottenham Court Road, all right? Look in your A to Z, 97 Charlotte Street. Come down here between 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock this evening, and Nick, who's here, he'll, um, he'll attach the bracelets to you. If you're bringing somebody along, all right, you need to bring them with you as well. He'll attach the bracelets, and then you can walk to a HMV in Oxford Street from here. That'd be beautiful. Wonderful evening. You'll see Embrace, all right? The staples come out, don't they? Afterwards? Yes, that's right, yeah. We've also got two pairs of tickets to Jesus and Mary Chain. Jesus and Mary Chain tickets to give away. It's well, too exciting. Um, I've got a letter here. From uh, Tracy Mahoney. Lovely. Um, Ricky and Steve, mm. I love you. Ricky's got the best voice, sense of humour, and taste in music. And the thing I really like about Steve is, well, um, I respect him for what he is. So, two sets of Jesus and Mary Chain tickets up for grabs. 0171 580 2000. What is he? Simple as that. What, what am I? Yeah. This, this mocking has got to stop, do you think? This is actually for, um, Tracy. This is Suede, and we are the pigs. This has got to stop. So, at least I'm not scared of my mum. Leave <laughs> Cure. Close to me on XFM 104.9. Gervais, you've got two pairs of tickets to give away, all right, to see the Jesus and Mary chain. Yeah. And your question was what? What are you? What are you? Yeah. Meaning, what am I? Yeah. 
All right, we've had a response, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Um, not all positive. <laughs> no, no, it's a shame. Um, it? Adam in Ealing, Steve is a lonely man. <laughs> <laughs> Tom in Made of Vale, Steve is an alien sex fiend. Um, Steve is married to his sister. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, the blood tests have not proven anything. <laughs> Gervais. Um, Although you've got very similar gills. Uh, uh, Steve is a murdering squirrel. From uh, Dan in Camden. Yeah. Steve is king of the insects. King of the insects! That yeah. is true, we all know that. Yeah. Um, Steve is a love machine. He made that one up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, pick a couple of winners then. Uh, I think the best two. What are your favourite? The favourite one? Steve is Jesus. I'm not having that. Uh, from Fru in Holloway Road. Yeah. And uh, Steve is a Gabby Git from David's in West. Well, that wins. Obviously, that wins. So he wins one. Do you want to give the one to Steve? I've got like Jesus. Go on, oh, then. Yeah, that's that's so one or one, then, because you've got a lot of bit positive and then... Uh, a little bit negative. Yeah. Beautiful. Nice response there. Uh, um, is that almost it? It is a little bit. Pretty much it, isn't it? You know what I mean? Um, Ten two. Yeah, what else? Anything else? Any other loose ends, Gervais? Um, Gervais? Uh, oh, yeah. Wayne makes death. I don't see. What? <laughs> Sorry, what? Wayne can make you death. <laughs> oh, clever. Oh, not yeah. Clever. Clever. I've got a great show. Uh, went shopping yesterday. Oh, um, right, yeah. 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 Got Wesley Willis. Oh, it's beautiful. I found it. Back. I can't yeah, it. Wesley Willis, Rock and Roll Will Never Die. I've been playing some of my favourite. I don't know whether to play Hootie the Blowfish, Kurt Cobain, Rolling Stones, Pink Floyd. They're all the same song. <laughs> it's interesting because, Gervais, you know, in the, in the time that we've been on, we've had a lot of new listeners join us and yeah. they haven't perhaps heard Wesley Willis. No. What a treat they've got in store. Well, I'll explain that a little bit later. I've also, um. Wesley Willis is here. Oh. Once again, I was struggling, you know, as I, uh, don't plan the show, obviously. Of course. Um, but my book exchange in the in the courtyard of my oh, house, of course, yeah. it's come through again. <laughs> Brilliant. I've got a little book now, here. What, did you, what was the last book you got from the book exchange? Um, uh, how to, how to, how to beat PMT by diet. How to beat PMT by diet. Which yeah. I could give away. I've got that at home. That would be a great prize one day. A wonderful prize. A lot of women would look forward to that. It's a little paperback here. Go on. Doris Stokes. Voices in my ear. <laughs> I'm intrigued. The autobiography of a medium. A medium what? I don't, I don't know. But I've got to read you the bit off the back. You'll love this, okay? <laughs> She's helped to solve murder cases. She filled the Sydney Opera House three nights in a row. Doesn't say with what. Once, she even had to convince a man he was dead. <laughs> <laughs> now she's written her own astonishing life story. Her name is Doris Stokes. I'll be reading little excerpts from Wait, that. I just, I, mean, I don't know if you've read it, but why did she have to convince a man I don't know, dead? it's in there. How did she do it? I don't know. Well, that's just one of the uh, little questions we'll be asking oh. on XFM. Are you... 104.9. Before you do... 4.9, Ricky Gervais Show. I'm Ricky Gervais, and I've got... Wesley Willis's, well, one of his, um, greatest LPs. I think he's actually recorded about 4,000 songs. <laughs> um, now, the thing is, uh, this is quite true. He's a chronic schizophrenic and is often troubled by demons that dictate what he can do and what can't be done. Uh, the de demons sometimes prevent Wesley Willis traveling on airplanes, saying that his music is no good, and on occasion have forced him to destroy musical instruments. Now, can I just stop you there? I don't think it's demons telling him his music's no good. <laughs> I think that's members of the public, anybody who's bought one oh, of his albums. Oh, and, um, he's, he's released 14 CDs, um, by himself. He just makes them up and sells them. It's fantastic. This is, um, uh, the first track on Rock and Roll Will Never Die. It's called, um, Hootie and the Blowfish. Excellent. It's classic. It is. Kurt Cobain, Kurt Cobain, Kurt that's, that's, uh, Kurt Cobain. <laughs> that's actually by, um, Wesley Willis. Really? Is that yeah. Wesley Willis? Yeah. Fantastic. Well, I'm gonna try I think he's written a song about Nirvana as well. Let me have a look on here. I've got the album here. Uh, no, I think it's on this particular Oh, no, you're right. No, Kurt Cobain is track two. Kurt, uh, track three is, uh, Nirvana. Oh, well done, then. Quite simply Nirvana. Let's have perhaps a listen to that. I wonder if that's sort of different. I wonder what kind of, um, interpretation he gives. To that particular band, oh, and I wonder how he sort of utilizes I've been able to work this machine. You don't have to do it? Well, perhaps we should leave it, Gervais, come back to it. Don't what? feel pressurized. I know we're keen to hear Wesley. I know. But don't, well, feel, I... don't feel pressure. Look, it won't let me do it. There's no pressure on you. Gervais, I know you're getting a bit panicky now. I can see the sweat on your forehead. Well, when it you're, just, you're, why, why doesn't it do what I think? Well, why you, do I have to actually press buttons and it doesn't know what I want? No, but that's because, that's because you're not Doris Stokes, Gervais. <laughs> you cannot use telekinesis to, to run this radio show. <laughs> oh, this is, this should be. So is this, is this, 
Ah, uh, Savannah. Very similar to... Mm. Well, it would be, wouldn't it? That's yeah. Right. Played at the Aragon Ballroom. Yeah. About yeah. 5,000 people were at the show. Right. The concert was awesome. It was a uh, out. Savannah, Savannah? Yeah. Savannah! 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 He gets a bike, mind. He sees a lot of gigs, and he seems to know how many people were there. Well, um, it's uh, 20 past four, it's Ricky Gervais show, and then next is Travis! 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 Gervais, you're never going to be Wesley Willis. <laughs> But I'm Steve, my chauffeur and researcher. You're meant to have found out why Doris Stokes had to convince a man he was dead. Gervais, I've been looking through Voices in My Ear, the autobiography of Doris Stokes, the yeah. famous medium, and it, I must say it's a fascinating read. It's not a biography, and it's by someone. Yeah, I know. It's not it's, by Doris well, Stokes. Doris is too busy contacting the other side, Gervais. Yeah. Um, but to basically, let me just to answer that, yeah, on the back it does say that once Doris had to convince a man he was dead, <laughs> it's not as interesting as it sounds. Oh. He was dead. Well, obviously. And she saw him, you know, and he, and he wasn't, he, he, she, she, a big group of people, and he was like a ghostly figure, and he said, yeah. I'm not dead. She went, you are dead, get out. You've had a similar yourself. argument with someone once, weren't you, at a dinner party? Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. he proved her wrong though, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, he, she just, uh, that happens a lot though. Some people don't believe that, you know what it's like. Yeah. You go to the afterlife, no one tells you. I know. You're walking round, you're, you're dead, mate. Don't be stupid. You know. Exactly. She had to actually push the coffin lid down, apparently. It's a... Viagra, he died of. I'm reading here about her, one of her first paranormal experiences. She yeah. moved into a house with her husband. Um, there were ghostly apparitions there in the house, right? And it was haunted. She didn't mind. There was a, an old, an old ghost called Polly. Yeah, it's lovely the ghost, ghost yeah. Anyway, so, um, uh, Mrs. Uh, Johnson from nearby comes in and she's brought, uh, she's making a cake, basically. And, uh, she says, um, we chat for a moment. Uh, any more trouble lately with the ghost? So, Mrs. Johnson, no. Old Polly's been quiet for, uh, for quite a while now. But the words were hardly out of my mouth when the bowl of eggs I was baking with Not the was, bowl of eggs. was torn from my hands and hurled across the room. Oh. Instinctively, I dived after it, did a flying tackle. <laughs> on the bowl of eggs. And caught it before it hit the ground. Now, I must say that Doris, at this point, has already lost a pair of tights. Oh, right? no. Polly's already had a pair of tights. Oh, no. Now the eggs are in danger. <laughs> oh, God. You can just stop that, Polly. I yelled furiously and slammed the bowl of eggs on the table. She'd already cost me a pair of stockings. She wasn't spilling my eggs as well. Oh, that's got to be a euphemism. That's got to be a dirty book. Doris stood there, fighting the paranormal. You can't lie with the dead so you want. Can we? Yeah. You can't label the dead? No. So we can slag off Doris Stokes? You could say she drank buckets of, um, just after the break, we've got Oasis. You mean to tell me you can't libel the dead? You can't libel the dead, no. I, I don't believe that for one moment. You can't, it's true. That's ridiculous. It doesn't mean you can say, there's certain stuff you can't say anyway, whether it's true or not. It's taste and decency, and I, I couldn't, you couldn't say Doris Stoke drank copious amounts of horse spunk, because you couldn't actually say that on the radio, because that would be offensive but anyway. could I say, I mean... Uh, Catherine Cookson died recently. Yeah. Can I say that Catherine Cookson used to bend over the sink and her husband would... I mean, can I... Well, again, taste and decency. I mean, you know, she, you couldn't be sued for it. Like, let's see, um, you could say Doris Stokes was a smackhead, for example. Right. You know. It's not very interesting, though. No, because it was true. Yeah, exactly. She used to jack up all over the yeah. place. Yeah, and she used to... I mean, the trips used to take... Oh, All that God. nonsense about seeing and speaking to <laughs> on the yeah. other side, that's rubbish. She was off her tits. <laughs> LSD, I know. my love. Yeah. Hello. 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 Did you listen to it? Oh, I listened to it. Yeah. And you told me you don't swear. What did I say? You said bastard. No, that's all right. That's not swearing. And it? No, it's a, it's a legitimate child. No, oh, that's what you called that, Steve. What did I say? You bastard or something. Why, why, why did I say that? I can't remember. Nor can I, Nate. Eh? Oh, I know, because he, his uncle bought him something and he told oh, him he didn't yeah. like it. And he didn't appreciate it. No. Isn't that nasty, though? <laughs> old, old bloke, he's got wooden teeth, apparently. <laughs> he's got what? He's got wooden teeth. Oh, that's his granddad. His granddad's got wooden teeth or something and he's got three left. <laughs> <laughs> and he said they have to cook meat. For about for eight hours, so, you, so he can suck it. <laughs> <laughs> You're blinking terrible. I better start thinking of some um, things that happened to Bob, hadn't I? So I can get him involved. Well, he was a horrible little gay. Who? Bob? Bob was. Well, what did he do? 
I remember he had you up the hallway with Peter Miller teasing you and dropped you on your head. I was dropped on my head when I was a kid. <laughs> How old was I? He must have been two or three. Dropped uh, you up the hallway. And what did you do? Belted him. <laughs> <laughs> what, what did he say then? Don't know. What did I... Did I... Was he only playing? I landed on my head, right? <laughs> and what did I do? Was I unconscious or did I cry or...? No. You thought it was funny. <laughs> Good job I landed on me, is not it? Are you going to continue to exploit your mother on yeah. the radio for cheap laughs? Yes. You are? Yeah. That phone call, a lot of questions are raised. What? The first one, obviously, that springs to mind, you were dropped on your head as a child. Yeah. It answers a lot of questions. Yeah. Gervais, you know, I, because I did I don't even know who Peter Miller is. I... Where is Peter Miller now? Who is he? Let me be honest with you. I want to... Can I just be honest and confess something to you? Yeah. I... I have been making inquiries because I thought you had Creutzfeldt Jakob disease. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I thought you had CJD. I'm all absolutely <laughs> earnest and serious about this. Right? Because my dad once, we thought he was, we, we thought he might be ill and we yeah. had it checked over and it was terrible. It was a terrible moment. I felt sick. Yeah. And that's exactly what I felt like with you. Really? Um, no. But I did think you might have CJD yeah. and, um, I've been making inquiries. Yeah. The symptoms seem to be there. <laughs> Gervais, you can barely string a sentence together. <laughs> You're slovenly. You look at you. I mean, do you know what I mean? You let yourself go. You forget to wash. You forget I, to I wash stagger your teeth. home. You stagger home every night. Yeah. You don't finish sentences. Yeah. You, do you know what I mean? It's pointing in that direction. So do you think I've got C D G B B A B S E, right? From the Agricultural College. Three B S E's. O one seven one five A O. Two thousand. <laughs> Remember how it works? <laughs> Oh one seven one five eight oh two thousand. Please, can somebody who knows about these things analyze <laughs> Ricky Gervais's symptoms and find out? I mean, there's got to be something wrong with him. We think maybe now that he was dropped on his head as a child, that's perhaps a clue. If you're a medical person, if you've done some uh, research into this, please give us a call. Find out what's wrong with Gervais before it's too late. It, perhaps it's it, perhaps it is too late, Gervais. You know, you're not a young man anymore. You're thirty seven plus. Um, <laughs> you're you're a goner. Um, and uh, so yeah, give us a call. Oh one seven one five eight oh. Oh my God, it's catching. <laughs> right. Remember the tent you built at the back room? Yeah. <laughs> and I remember I didn't know, didn't get it till I was 18 that Marsha had put the caption in the um, photo album, Ricky's Camp. Oh, yeah. You know I'm taping this, don't you? Oh, not again. Yeah. Good job I ain't swearing then. You isn't did. It? You said at the beginning. See, I'm going to take that out of context. It's just going to be you going bastard. Just like I've got you saying arse. <laughs> Listen to that, Muttley. Listen to that. We're mathematic, can I? Oh, I'm mathematic, can I? <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen, oh, I'm going to shut up. Just laugh a minute. Just laugh. Oh, God. What did you call me? I said I can't. So you can't say that on the radio. What? That word you said. I can't. Just stop it. You can't swear on the radio and that's I'm the word. I'm not saying what you think I'm saying. <laughs> what are you saying? I can't stop it. <laughs> 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 You're disgusting, you are. Oh. Rickerous, very rick drastically. Remember that time when you we were coughing and you oh, coughed up that and you killed next door's cat? Oh, you know it. It was a little bit of hard lung that shot out. That they reckon oh, I've never gone that far. <laughs> You're disgusting. Right, I better go then. Right. All right, then I'll see you later. Cheerio. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Classic Smiths. It's terrifying. What? It really is. Your relations. <laughs> I mean, all right, so my, my, you know, my, my, my relations, all right, their faces aren't symmetrical, <laughs> but... But at least I don't have wheezy, weird laughs like that. Yeah, I know, and drop people on their heads. Oh, drop people on their heads. Right, I've got to tell you, I wish I was taping uh, uh, her today. She called me today. She went, and early you from while? I said, I called you last week. No, you didn't. I said, well, just before Thursday, yeah. Anyway, I went swimming Wednesday. <laughs> I went, did you? Where? She went, in the fish pond. 
<laughs> totally true. I went, what? She went, I fell in, it was up to my neck, and I could hear my nephew shouting, it's only two foot deep. <laughs> like, it's a little fish bomb with a lot, like, it is, it's like about, it, it's not even two foot deep, it's about eight inches deep. She went, well, <laughs> I'm pissing myself. She's going, well, I was cutting back the lavender, right, and three frogs jumped at me. <laughs> three frogs jumped at me. <laughs> I know she meant, uh, anyway, right? So, <laughs> it's three Frenchmen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to say. I thought, no, that's a racial slur. Um, <laughs> but anyway. No, because they know, because French people <laughs> yeah. do lo like to hide they, in lavender hide and fight in 73 year old of women. They, they do. Knows that. It's a well known Everybody fact. Knows I know they that. lurk around, yeah. ready to attack. In stripy white, white and blue t shirts and berets with onions. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, these three frogs. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I tell you, who is it? That president, that dead president of France. What's his name? Oh. With the big nose. You know what he used to do? Well, exactly. He used to drink bucketfuls of anyway. Right? You can do it because he's dead. He's dead. He's yeah, gone. he's gone. Anyway, um, so um, she went, and I went in. And I fell in, and I was sitting on the bottom, and it was coming up to my neck. And she went, and I tried to get out, but it was all algae on the side. I kept slipping back in, right? <laughs> my dad says, Lee, help your nan. <laughs> and she said, uh, and I got out, and I, I said, put Lee on. I was, I was speaking to my nephew, and he said, she went into the pond, right? And she said she floundered around, right? And she got out and she walked, she ran to the kitchen. She, she, she dropped all her clothes and ran upstairs naked because she thought she might have leeches on. <laughs> <laughs> leeches? <laughs> She's not Humphrey Bogart in The African Queen. <laughs> she said, it wouldn't have mattered if it was Ace full of company. I'd have still stripped off and run upstairs. Oh, she said, I didn't drop the scissors. And she said, I had to throw my slippers away. <laughs> <laughs> so we're laughing at the fact that your elderly mother yeah. fell, slipped in a pond, yeah. <laughs> could easily have injured herself quite seriously. Who yeah. knows? Now she could have... Sort of leeches. Yeah, she's probably got leeches. Any yeah. kinds of um, the Frenchman you know, scarpered. There's no the sign French of them. Gone. Well, they're like that, aren't they? The they're, French. All they found was they, they just left a beret. I tell you, the French. I mean, you know, any oh. sign of any sign of trouble, Gervais, they're out of there. Oh you know, God! Oh, I just like the idea of just running into the kitchen and stripping <laughs> off just a ball of slime, <laughs> and they're upstairs. <laughs> I couldn't wait to get in the bath. She said. Yeah, and two oh. ladies from next door <laughs> from the women's guild just sipping tea. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there she goes. There goes Mrs. Gervais. <laughs> Naked as the day she was born, covered in algae. <laughs> oh, God. That, that's a Gervais oh, for you. Oh, it's one of the for Blood on the Tracks. And that was for, um, Doris Stokes. Oh, the late, great medium Doris Stokes. Yeah. We'll play that for her. Yeah. yeah. Who apparently, uh, Doris apparently was a prostitute. She was a whore. She was a whore. Yeah. Um. You can't libel the dead. You can't libel the dead. That's not libelous. No. Um, no. Yeah. She apparently went at it hammer and tongs. All the time. Anybody that had a check. <laughs> Oh, right. yes. Uh, Gervais, um, may maybe I will We've had a good eight months in radio, haven't we? We've had a good, we've had yeah. a bit of fun. We've had a bit of fun. I was going to tell you about something, but I'll, I'll, what I'll do is I'll tell you in a minute. How does he not run out of ideas? It's incredible. It, it, I mean, they just flow from him. Yeah. It's incredible. Um, that, of course, comes from the classic Wesley Willis album, Rock and Roll Will Never Die. Just reading the sleeve notes, Gervais. And, um, Rock and Roll Will Never Die represents the best of Wesley's previously available material about rock musicians. Um, it's uh, his quote, pers his personal quote is, this CD whoops the llama's ass with a belt. Not sure I know what that means, but uh, anyway, apparently... Sure. I, Doris Stokes knows. <laughs> hey, you can't label the dead. No. Well, Wesley Dirty. says... <laughs> Wesley carries copies of his CDs with him when he travels, just in case he meets someone with $10 in their pocket. Oh, excellent. And that's a beautiful track. Track 8 on that classic album, and of course, Spin Doctors. Let's hear a bit more. Instrumental break. Beautiful. You see, he's a talented Very musician. Very similar to Nirvana yeah. and Kurt Cobain and Hoogie <laughs> the Bofish. Yeah. yeah. Different sentiment altogether. Oh, it's completely different. This one is uh, about the Spin Doctors. <laughs> hey! Yeah. Well, that's never, that was for Laura. Beautiful. Anyway, wrote beautiful me a lovely letter. Wesley. Remember we listened yesterday, um, last week, sorry, I was going about, and we could do the best of Ricky Gervais. Yeah. So I could just, like, get bits off the login tape and package it, and we wouldn't have to come in, we could, like, sunbathe or something. And she said, maybe you could do, um, the best of Ricky Gervais, all the things that didn't happen. Yeah. All the things we said we were going to do, and then didn't. And, uh, there are quite a few. There are quite a few, but she goes on as well, because we're talking about reincarnation. And, um, she believes in, um, uh, the, uh, Hindu view, um, of karma. 
So if in through your life you do good things, you build up your good karma, bad things, bad karma. Then when you die, they, m they mount it all up, top it all up, and you're reincarnated if you do, um, nice things. It's a, a wonderful existence. Lovely, probably good looks, oh, everything. Everyone loves you. And if you're really bad, then you come back as some hideous, like a maggot or a fish, and you have a horrible life. And, um, the idea leads to, to wonder what you did that was so bad in your last life. I'm not rising to it. No. You're not baiting me. You're not baiting me. Javis, can I just say, I, you know, we've had some fun, we've had some laughs over the, uh, the last couple of months. Yeah. But I'm a little bit, <laughs> I'm a little bit sick and annoyed about all this slagging me off. Claiming that I'm some ugly, grotesque freak of nature or whatever. Because, you know, we get loads of faxes coming in yeah. saying, Steve, you're a freak, you're a, you know, you're an inhumanoid. Yeah. Um, and all this sort of rubbish. And, you know, it's not true. And you've just, you've perpetuated this myth no, for a no. long time and it's getting a bit irritating. It's winding me up. And I, as I said to you before, um, I got into radio, I got into this broadcasting thing where the chances of becoming a celebrity are fairly strong, right? Mm. I got into this in an effort to meet women. To, to make, get a lady. To, to get a lady. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it's just, it's not helping me out no. with all this. Well, I told you, you shouldn't pick careers based on whether you can get a woman. Well. Like the gynecology thing, that's why that fell flat. Yeah, but I, no, that was going alright. I mean, I overstepped a few times. You know, by just sort of mentioning, remember I mentioned to that woman that we should just go back and yeah. sort of like a continue. The first thing you say, ways. exactly. And the other thing is, someone could just say, oh, hey! That doesn't put women at their ease. Right, yeah. You know what I mean? Would you, Mrs. Mrs. Uh, Johnson, would you mind just taking yeah. your clothes off? Yeah. Like, <laughs> hey, look at yeah. that. Say, look at oh that. dear. Look at, oh, can I film this for the lads? Yeah. You know what I mean? I did have, yeah, that ran, I ran into problems. This yeah. is Happy Mondays. Yeah. Pinky yeah. Afro. But just, would you just stop now with the. Of course I will. You're a good looking fella. Wow. It's oh, the classics, Gervais. I just got to thinking, I wonder if we, I mean, I think I mentioned this before, it'd be great to contact Wesley and get him to do a song about the Ricky Gervais Ricky thing. Gervais! Ricky Gervais! Well, you've pretty much done it for us. Yeah. Beautiful. Gervais, um, coming in on today. He had a radio show. There was about a hundred people listening. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, mm, I think he's been a bit generous. Yeah. Yeah. Gervais, um, I was on the tube coming in and I got to thinking about, you know, my lack of success with the ladies. And uh, I could trace it back to something, right, trace it back to a moment. When, when I was in the, uh, the last year of my junior school, well, I don't know, I don't know, how old Eleven. Do I mean? Eleven, something like that. We went to, uh, you're, you're only about six foot two then, weren't you? Yeah, and we, uh, we went to this sort of, um, place in Cornwall, sort of an adventure camp, you know, we oh. stayed there for like three days. That was like the Riviera too, wasn't it? Exciting stuff, and we had lots of, you know, all sort of climbing frames and like adventure courses and, you know, abseiling and all the rest of it. And in the evening, what they'd do is you'd go in and uh, they'd have, uh, it was like a little disco, every evening, a little disco, right? And, um, they, I remember they played, uh, they played that tune, that theme music from, um, from, uh, do, 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 whatever that was called. No, that was, uh, it was that Oh, it's left. Yeah, it was it was cop. Cop. Yeah. Remember that one? It was well. We're only bugging. Bug, 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 yeah. bug. It was that yeah. as well. That was a big tune. And also uh, "Living Doll" by Cliff. And yeah. if not, and the uh, young ones. And we'd all queue up before we went on the dance floor. We'd all queue up, and they'd give us little cups of soup. I don't know why, mm. little oxtail soup, I remember, yeah. it was quite nice. And then what happened was, we, I don't know, we must have been a bit older, because the guys... Doris Stokes used to spike kids' soup with, um, heroin. That's true <laughs> enough, that is absolutely true, you can't label the dead. No. And, um, um we must have been slightly older, because the, all the kids, all the guys, started to ask the girls, like, to dance with them, you know, cheek to cheek mm. style. It was the first time that this had happened, you know, and suddenly I saw, like, girls and guys dancing together. Couldn't believe it, right? Yeah. But I, cool. instead of... Going, perhaps asking a girl to dance, you know, mm. like any normal human being, every other bloke, every other, you know, guy was asking a girl to dance. I went round with a notepad, <laughs> right? <laughs> I went round with a notepad, pretending I was a brain surgeon. How? I went round and said, I'm a brain surgeon, I want to analyse if you're mad, so I can work surgery, do surgery on your brain, and I would ask them a series of questions. How old were these girls? This, not just the girls, this was blokes as well, while they were dancing. While they were dancing, you know, smooching or whatever, I'd go up to them. What did you think this would achieve? <laughs> and say, can I ask you a series of questions? I'm a brain surgeon. And I thought it was funny. I thought it oh, was charming. Oh, you being wacky? I thought it was charming and funny and wacky. I know, I meant to go, oh, it was that funny 11-year-old freak, <laughs> right? In the clogs and overalls, I wouldn't mind dancing with him. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. Yeah. That's what oh, I was that's thinking. that's even sadder. I thought that that kind of wit and zany charm would, uh, would somehow... I'll stop you there, Steve, because you're boring me. 
after the break, some Beatles. I shouldn't be so blunt, should I? Yeah. It doesn't help, does it? Mm. Uh, Doris Stokes, right? Yeah. Is, uh, dressed like a dominatrix. Yeah. Right? And she's dripping hot wax. Yeah. Onto the naked torso of Arthur Millard. Yeah, of course he is. Right? Yeah. And, um, he in turn is being pleasured, right, by Dusty Springfield. Oh. <laughs> uh, Dusty Springfield's not dead. What? You twat. Dusty Springfield's not dead. Yeah, she is. No, she isn't. She is! Of course she's not! You, you of. Uh, she's dead! Of course she's dead! Of course she's not dead! Who am I thinking of? I don't know! Dusty Springfield's alive and well! And playing with Arthur Mullard. No, she's not dead! Oh, God. Well, excellent. Oh. It was going so well, wasn't it? Oh. <laughs> I like the bit up until then, though. Yeah. I like the idea of Owen Mullard. Well, that's all true. In a farm. We can't do that anyway, still, see, you can't do that on the radio, talking about that sort of well, thing. Well, I'll tell you what, though, those if we're gonna pick on a dead person, yeah. why pick Doris Stokes? <laughs> I don't know. The one dead person you don't pick. <gasps> I know. I know. God. I'll I have mean, to convince her she's dead. But even in real life, she'd harness the powers of the dark side, so I wouldn't <laughs> really want her to get on our, you know, She liked the dark side. Getting on our That backs. was her favourite. She's getting on our <laughs> backs. Don't get me started <laughs> well, on I'd, that. Uh, oh, goodness me, it's just nothing but innuendo Dusty and libel. Dusty Spring, I don't believe it. We're, we're, we're in trouble we're now. We're in trouble. Oh, God. You should have picked someone like Scylla, who is dead. Yeah. Muff Shandy says turn it up. Earplugs are gay. Earplugs are gay. Single by Muff Shandy. Earplugs are gay. <laughs> what was, what, what, was, was, gonna about? what was I actually going to say is, um, I don't know if I can say the word twat. No, you can't. But, um, when I was a kid and I first went to, to senior school, I started to learn all these swear words that I didn't know. Of course, who. you can say the word twat. Right. You're anyway, not meant to. I, I started learning all these swear words and I went home and I started using the word twat. I just thought it was a, a slightly stronger version of twit. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's, it's, a bit, it's a bit tougher for some reason. Yeah. And so I used to go around saying that, and I'd go, uh, my sister would say, stop ruining my Lego, and I'd go, you twat. Yeah. And, um, uh, make your bed, Steve, no, you twat. I'd say to my mum, right? And I didn't realise what it meant. Right. And my dad, right, he didn't really know much about swear words, so he started using it as well. He started going, oh, you twat, Steve. <laughs> and, um, do you want to clean the bath? No, you twat. And we just started using it all the time, right? Yeah. So then, at school, Mark Johnson told me what it mean, meant, yeah. right? Obviously, I'm stunned. I'm thinking, I can't go around calling my mum a twat. Yeah. So I didn't st I just stopped using it. Yeah. Like that, just stopped using it. But I didn't, I didn't have the guts to tell my dad what it meant. Oh no. So he carries on using it, and into this day, we were driving along, he'll say, um, to my mum, Elaine, watch where you're going, you twat, you great big twat. <laughs> And I just want to say to him, Dad, don't say that to my mum, because she knows, oh, she knows what it means. Oh, no, but really? She's not, she's not going to say to him, oh, God. Ron, would you stop saying that word, because... Yeah, mm. same thing happened to me. My dad still says Felch. Does he? Yeah. Oh, uh, Felchin, talking of that, right, it's Doris Stokes. Yeah. He's got this huge... Four sailors four and sailors. a big bucket and, like, a weight and... Warm jets and hurricane. So they haven't actually told you it's your last show? No. It's not official. Well, they wouldn't, they would they? They'd be mad to. Yeah. They usually tell you, sort of, they, when you come off, they go, that was your last show. Mm. I mean. See, I'm annoyed, because if I'd, if I'd known it was the last show, I'd have, you know, led on something special. What, a buffet? Yeah, we could have a nice little buffet, you know. <laughs> invite, uh, invite around all the listeners. Yeah. You know, yeah. into the building. Yeah. Um, could have probably squeezed him in the studio, in fact. I'd have thought so. <laughs> um, yeah. Got them all in, you know, I could have put on something nice, promise, uh, like a ball gown or something we special. We could have prepared the show. We could have. No, no, that was never going to happen. Stupid. Rome, do the jerk. Good advice. Uh, See, not, not all rock and roll's just like bland nonsense. Uh, when in Rome, do the jerk. Mm. Shall I give it away? As it's the last show. Man yeah. alive. Yeah? What Shall a way. I? What a way to go out. Yeah. Giving away the autobiography of Doris Stokes. Voices in my ear. Incredible. Lovely. Um, the paperback from what, 1972? I think so. I remember Doris Stokes was the medium, an, an elderly lady about sort of 60, and she filled stadiums in the 70s and 80s, and uh, the point was she went along, bereaved people, basically paid a lot of money to speak to their dead loved ones. And don't forget there, Doris Stokes, the whore, because you can't, you can't libel the dead. You cannot libel the dead. Doris no. is gone. We're gonna say what we want. Yeah. Um, so that's gonna... That's Apparently gonna... she wasn't even very good. No. No, you'd pay your money and she just used to lie there. Nothing. Uh, you didn't even get a bit of a sort of contact with your elderly father, you know. Pig. Yeah. Um, 
She's helped to solve murder cases. She's filled the Sydney Opera House three nights in a row. Once she even had to convince a man she was dead. Brilliant. So, um, be thinking of a prize for that. I mean, you know, the phone line's 0171580-2000. Might be your last chance to, uh, give us a call. Um, but you could win Doris Stokes, Voices in My Ear, The Autobiography of a Medium. Brilliant. By, um, by Linda Deardsley. You've really thought this through, haven't you? How does that work? Show. How does that work? Beautiful. We're gonna give away that grubby old tatty copy of Doris Stokes' autobiography. Man alive, we're really going out with a bang, Gervais. Okay, let's give some more stuff away. We might as well <laughs> let's give the, some of the good stuff out of the library away, the stuff we are not nicking. Let's just give away, <laughs> let's just give away the XFM library. We'll go and get some stuff then, because yeah. I want some of it, and then we'll give the rest away. They could call in any, anyone they like. Alright. Yeah? Just for the of it. Just for the of it. Just for the under under of it. Just for the go on all the way, dirty boy. Just for the of it. Just for the of it. Just for the under under of it. Just for the oh, that's wonderful. Just for the taste of it. Diet cock. No idea there. What? You played Nirvana, so I went in the library. I've got uh, a load of Nirvana stuff. Yeah. Um, I've got uh, the Bleach, uh, the Unplugged album, Insect Insecticide. It is like someone reading French, isn't it? You don't know anything about it, do you? No. You don't know what you're doing. You no. don't know how important Nirvana were. You don't care. You don't know how to pronounce it. That's fantastic. Um, from the muddy banks of the Wishka. Whatever that means. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, what's that? Hawk oh. Hormoning? Yeah. Never heard of it. And yeah. obviously, never mind. Kurt, Cobby, uh, Bayani, Cobby, Gainey. I'll tell you something, Chavez. He's dead. I thought to myself, you've got Nirvana there. A lot of people have already got those. Yeah. What they haven't got. A lot of people have. Is so. this signed copy of Nevermind. You can't give that away. No, look. I'm no, 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 no. I'm reading on the inside sleeve. Uh, Chris Novoselic. Novoselic. Jesus. David Grohl. And Kurt Cobain signed that. Yeah. And I didn't get that from the library, that's from upstairs in the office. Yeah. Well, that is obviously someone's personal copy, probably the boss's, so you can't give that away. Well, Gervais, I don't, I think, I think the time for morals <laughs> has long since gone. <laughs> Go. No, don't. Give, give all the rest away, cos that. Oh, sort come of like... on. No, you can't give that away. That is someone's prized possession. I guarantee there's somebody out there that would, that would put aside those moral questions and accept this. What, you mean, you're gonna ask people, do you think you should have it? Yeah. Even 0171580 do you think you should have it? Even though it's someone's prized possession. Mind you, so is this radio station. There's a fact here. If there was one man I would like to be stuck in a Stenner stairlift with, it would be Steve. How about it, honey? Love Thora Heard. Oh, beautiful. No, I... No, it's good to know Thora's listening. Yeah. She's got a f Thora, see, has got a finger on the new music pulse. Yeah, she's got one finger on the new, the new music pulse. She's got the other on that emergency buzzer thing. In case <laughs> she has a fall. Your hip would break. <laughs> I think it's a fake. Do you? You see, you, you can libel the living. Oh, right. Yeah. Let's leave it a few months, and then we're st <laughs> <laughs> I've got a break here, then some, uh, go oh no. We're never working with you again, no. that's the thing. Just for the of it, just for the of it, just for the <laughs> and the and the of it, just for the, oh my word, you dirty old slapper. Just for the of it, just for the of it, just for the and the and the of it, just for the, go on, convince me I'm dead, you hoe. Just for the taste of it, Doris Stokes. An hour to go, Steve. Yep, it's going very well. I've got one of these live read things to give away. It's good, actually. Got two pairs of tickets to give away to the, uh, Llama Farmers gig, um, at the 100 Club, 2nd of July. Um, and they're supported by Seafood and Gel, and they're both good bands. I know you've no idea. The 2nd of July? Yeah. That can't be right. It's, it's the 10th today. Yeah, but when I say 2nd, I mean 16th. Right. See what I was doing there? Right. I was just taking 14 off. Right, <laughs> of course. Yeah. As any professional DJ would. <laughs> of course you do. Do you know yeah. that? Right. Do you know that you take 14 off? Is that in the DJ hand? Yeah, yeah, I take 14 off. Oh, right. So any date that you read out, or any number, yeah. presumably, you always take off 14. Yeah. For any reason? Yeah. That's why people say, oh, don't, go with Crowley, he's 32. Right. See what I mean? They've taken off 14. Yeah. I understand. Um, on. Sorry to criticize. At the 100 Club, on the... Uh, 
Well, when I say the 100 Club, <laughs> right. the 86 Club. Sure. The 86 Club on Oxford Street on July the 2nd. <laughs> Yeah. Right, yeah. Which is, uh, actually that's the, just, uh, five days away. <laughs> yeah, incredible that. <laughs> oh, 0171582000. It's beautiful, you know what I mean? I can't, I can't believe I haven't got a job at the end of this. Oh, God. <laughs> They're gonna sack you, and <laughs> it's the most justified sacking <laughs> in the history of man. I'm Can you imagine going to the European <laughs> court? Going to the European court. I was un I was unfairly sacked. What? Gervais, Gervais, I'll stop you there. <laughs> yeah, the judge would go. Yeah. He's Ricky, European. Ricky Gervais. Yeah, I accept that. Well, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, take the book and read this. Of course you can't, can you? I prom, what's that? I pr no, forget it. Yeah. yeah. I swear to tell the, 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 tr the truth. <laughs> oh dear. No, under an hour to go. This is for you, Steve. This is, um, Stevie Wonder. Oh. No, I love it as well. It's a great choice. And, um, it's just to say thanks because, you know, you've been good for me. Cheers. It's been great. I really, I couldn't have done it without you. No. And I just think, if you'd have been sort of normal looking, or you could have got a girl, you, it wouldn't have been as funny. Because that's been most of our material. Let's be honest. You know what I mean? So, just don't ever change it. Okay. Oh, okay. That song as well, Blood, Sweat and Come. Let's have a listen. Can oh. you play it for me? Yeah. Okay. Got Camfield to voice it, because he's a bit like Vance. Oh. The stunning new single from Brain Mangle, Blood, Sweat and Come. Blood, Sweat and Come by Brain Mangle. Out now. It's a change of career, isn't it? Be beautiful. Do you know be what I mean? That'd be great. Keep the profile up. You, you'd be something for you in it, I reckon. Oh, really? Well, I don't know. Uh, drama? Well, a lot of those heavy metal videos have people sort of, um, you know, kind of ugly creatures. I was going to say, like they? Metallica, they have like things that sort of like morph into you. <laughs> exactly. That'd be amazing, wouldn't oh, it? Oh, that'd be great. I should see myself. I, that's a new career opening up for me. Oh, God. I, oh, that'd be amazing. I'd be in, like horror films. It'd be like, he'd be like, the special effect that isn't a special effect. I know. But they'd save so much money, you wouldn't need like computerized morph and stuff, you wouldn't need like the makeup. Prosthetic makeup. Oh, that'd be amazing. I could become a star of zombie films. <laughs> oh, God. Wait, do you know what I mean? Seriously. But we'll do the heavy rock thing first, yeah? Alright, So, anyone out there, any rock company, I'll do, um, Earplugs Are Gay or Blood Sweat and Come. I'm um, just wipe down a verse, right? And, and Steve's in the video. Yeah. We're laughing. Hello. Thanks for the card. Oh, you got it then. How old am I then? 37. Yeah, I know. 37. Yeah, soon be 40. Yeah, all right. You're cracking up the hill then, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Always begins at 40. Yeah? Yeah. What happened when you were 40 then? I started going out with Joan Johnson after I'd been locked in for 20 odd years. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank God she was the youngest. Eh? Hey? Why? The last one. <laughs> Who knows what the next one would have been? <laughs> Well, it's been catastrophic, catastrophic. <laughs> no, go on, keep going. Catastrophic. <laughs> One more go. Catastrophic. <laughs> you haven't got your teeth in, have you? No. Oh, you filthy <laughs> animal. Oh, you haven't I'm got your teeth in. I'm eating my dinner. You're eating your dinner with no, no teeth. No, I took it. I was eating my dinner. Oh, that is disgusting. So, why did you take your teeth out for you then? You have to wash them. There's nobody here. Oh. Only your father in here and anybody. Oh. <laughs> Do you still crimp the pastry with your false teeth? Because that is disgusting. Oh, you know. Oh, no. Darth Vader. <laughs> it's like Darth Vader. <laughs> you are disgusting, Rick. Oh, God. I can't believe you haven't got your teeth in. Well, it's difficult to say, catastrophic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Well, let me hear you say it. Catastrophic. That's it. Yeah. That's what I meant. Yeah, I know. <laughs> right, all right, then. I better go now. Right. Right, see you later. Cheerio. Bye. Last ever, <laughs> Ricky Gervaisia. Almost certainly. Almost. That was for Becky, um, who's having her wisdom teeth out tomorrow. <laughs> Don't envy her. Oh, no. No, do you know what they do? What they do is, right, they, they tie you down and like, you look like how, and they, no, no, it's, it's fine. They've got, um, anaesthetic these days and everything. Apparently so. Not in Bristol though, do Not they? in the West Country, no. They, they still tie it to a door? 
Um, well, to be honest, if you've got if you've got dodgy wisdom teeth, you're a witch. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that, Gervais. You know, they will you out to the ducking stool, Bob, Bob, Bob. Yeah. And he still works there, does he? Yes, he does. Yeah. With his two brothers, <laughs> also on. called Bob. I know. Get on with it. Get on you know. With it. Um, and uh, this is a different Becky. Becky and Laura. They wondered if I showed you those nice pictures they sent. So. Oh, what were they of the apes? <laughs> the apes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You did laugh, did you? <laughs> Brilliant. Well, that's you, Steve. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> I got facts here from uh, Bernard. He says, I'm a regular listener and I want to know, why is Ricky being taken off the air? Bernard, if you don't know the answer to that, <laughs> you're not a regular listener. <laughs> um, well, which is a shame because you've had a few other faces oh, yeah. and stuff. I had, a, I had a letter. This is the first letter I've had for years. It says, we love Steve. We pledge our alliance to all forces amphibian or insectile and we worship the grand fish monster. So I'm getting kind of positive mail like that mm. and it's too late. It's too late that in the day. That is positive. That's a lovely letter. It's a lot of people, you know, day. most people would like, you know, to be a fish monster. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's Believe fantastic. Me, that, that is a sign of affection. Yeah. Michael Schumacher's won the British Grand Prix in a very confusing Matt, finish. Sorry, Matt, Matt, can I stop you there? Have yeah. you got any, like, fun stories? <laughs> yeah, Matt, have you got any sort of, like, two Ronnie style news stories? No, there's no, no fun. There's oh, well, you know, there's no fun. No, you know, new, two Ronnie style, like, you know, a man with a meat cleaver has been terrorising nudist colonies. Inspector Wilson of Scotland Yard has had a tip-off, but he expects to be on duty tomorrow. Or that's, like, or like <laughs> Scotland Yard had all its toilets stolen, police have nothing to go on. That's what we want, that's what everyone's after. Oh, right, no, nothing as interesting. As that, okay, go on. Right. Carry right. on. No, sorry. carry on as you are. Sorry. Okay, right. Shall I the news with nothing really silly. I'm Matt Johnson. That was good. That was good. It's all right. Yeah, you want stuff like you know, um, a lorry load of wigs has crashed <laughs> on the M4. Police are combing the area. That's what you're after. Um, you, you're in news. Can you libel the dead? Um, I'd rather steer clear of any controversial comments, if you don't mind. Okay. No, no, I didn't mean you. I didn't expect you to. I don't, I don't think you can, but I'm, I'm not sure. What do you think of Doris Stokes? Um, I think she was a very talented lady who brought joy to a lot of people. That's fantastic. So, so you don't think she's a prostitute? Uh, absolutely not. Well. Okay. Steve. Yeah. You know we gave away those CDs. Hey, we could, great giveaways. Just good radio, isn't it? We've got CDs to give away. Tickets and that's good radio. Mm. Do, do you remember who won them? What, last week? Yeah. Well, no. Right. I've got to get them back. What, are these the CDs that we took, we took from the library? Yeah. Anyway? I've got to get them back. 0171 580 2000. If you won those CDs, could you give us a call? <laughs> well, why should they bother? They're probably busy listening to them. You, do you know what I mean? You can't give something away and then take it back. Yeah, I need big time. I've got to get them back. We've had a uh, bill for the computer as well. That's mine. No, it's not yours. It is it's mine. It's not yours. I procured that. That is uh, uh, that is mine now. No, the that is technically that technically counts as ownership. Listen, Gervais, it's not yours. All right, I've told you this before. I've explained this to you a hundred times. What? All right. If you if you urinate on something, yeah, it is not yours. It does. In no, the it's not. That's what yours. cats do. That is what cats do. They go around the the territory that's theirs. They they urinate on it. That computer's mine. If a cat urinates on something, yeah. right? Yeah, in its cat philosophy, yeah. it owns that. I agree. It's that's a sort of uh, well, what do you call it? A sort of territory thing. What's the difference? You're not a cat. No, I know. You're not a cat. That's discrimination. No, you're not a cat. You can't you can't live life by cat rules. Well, I've got loads of stuff like that. My flat's full of stuff that I've got like that. What? Yeah, I've got, uh, two telephone boxes. Right. Um, I've got a cash point machine. Okay. Yeah, Glyn was furious. He was <laughs> getting out money. Right. Um, didn't uh, side of a church. That's yours. Yeah. Um, two BMWs. Well, I had two. I've got one now. What happened? Yeah. The, the, the second one, the owner caught me and he started doing the same. And because I started first, I finished first, so he finished last, so it was technically his again. Is that how it works? Yeah. If I piss on something, then that's mine. Yeah. But if someone else pisses on it, then that's theirs. Yeah. Is that how it works? Could you say urinate? This is XFM 104.9. Not oh. yours. They are they're not, they're my shoes. Jimmy. Yeah, and they're mine now. <laughs> no, they're not, I can't believe, I, this is why I don't want to do this anymore. Why? Just, I can't believe you. They're my shoes now, that is how, that is ownership, that counts. In the cat world, they're playing my shoes now, and some of the carpet is mine as well. In the cat world, yeah, wow. You cannot live your life by the rules of the cat. World. I can, I can. How? What does? What does your girlfriend? What, what's this? Oh, not many people can oh, do that. God. <laughs>
I mean, you see, because I just think it's a wonderful thing. You know, the, the YMCA doesn't get enough publicity, good press. Yeah. And the village people did them a favour. I mean, why on earth they wrote well, that song? Well, you know, to you serious? Besides the YMCA. I mean, who thinks, hmm, I don't know, uh, <laughs> oh, people have done the police force, you know, they've done... Hold on, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait, this is very good YMCA. to this group, but I think you mean this, that you don't know what that song was, you, you think that they were actually some sort of advertising for the YMCA, were you? Well, I don't know, it just seems really odd to me. Well, if I is remember like, at the time, the, y, the YMCA complained at the time, because the connotations. What con It's just a PR yeah. thing for the YMCA, I imagine. It's like the one that in the, in the no, Navy. No, no, no. In the Navy. Yeah. You know, you know, the sort of PR thing for the, for the Navy. It's just yeah. bizarre. When they would, when they were dressed up as sailors and stuff. Yeah, well, whatever. Where, whereas usually they sort of like construction worker with a nice moustache, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Traffic cop. Yeah. Jumpers. And, uh... What? I don't... Is this... I'm worried about the Red Indian Chief. You, am I supposed to be... I know where that has been Am a I big... supposed to be reading between the lines or something? <coughs> I, well, I, I don't understand. I mean, I don't really understand. I mean this seriously. Okay, I don't right. I understand what you're talking okay, about. Okay, this is fine. Well, that's it. Uh, obviously, there were gay connotations. It's like a, a, a gay icon record, isn't it? YMCA. In the Navy. That was the point of it. What did you need? One of them dressed as Judy Garland. What? What? I don't understand. What was your problem with that? What? What? But there's no- I don't understand why that suggests that people are gay, I don't- It doesn't necessarily, it's like, it's high camp, isn't it? It's been but adopted since as well. But the four of them, there's- there's a- there's a guy dressed as a motorcycle cop. There's yeah. no reason why that he should be gay. There's no there's why- a, there's a, why anyone should be gay. There's a builder- chosen what, There's what? a builder. Yeah. Alright, um- So no builders are gay ever. There's you can't another, be there's gay another one, I can't what the other one is. Right. And then there's a Red Indian. Why on earth the Red Indian <laughs> is well, supposed that, to be an icon? I don't know about that. I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm flummoxed on that one, I'll be honest. But it, so what I'm saying to you, Gervais, is if you're gonna use, you, if you can talk about gay people, then, then why don't they use the cliches? Why isn't there a uh, hairdresser? Right. And because it's probably the sort of cliches that even seen gays want to get away from. Also, that's the, you're confusing camp. ITV gays with, with real homosexual people who live normal lives. If I'm gonna write a song about gay people, I'm gonna have a hairdresser. <laughs> yeah, you are. In order to, all you are. Is, in order to appeal to a gay community, I'd have a hairdresser, John Inman, <laughs> um, uh, Larry Grayson, obviously, and, uh, I don't know, um... Well, you, well, well, pe well you wouldn't have Jason Donovan then, obviously. <laughs> Because he's not, so you wouldn't have him, would you? No, I wouldn't have Jason Donovan. No. Well, I wouldn't have Philip Schofield. Well, I, I, wouldn't no even have Andy, I wouldn't have Andy Peters. Right. I wouldn't have Andy Peters. Okay, I'm getting I scared. Would, if Shut I, up! I would I'm, not have Andy I'm Peters. I'm getting scared! I would not Shut have Andy up! Peters! Um, I've been watching a lot of telly over the weekend. Oh, right, go on. Yeah. Been fan to, uh, well, my favourite. I don't know if I, you were in the week, I was briefly telling Claire about it. Three, two, one. <laughs> it's R oh, and the comedian. It's fantastic. I've just got to tell this again because it, it was wonderful. Okay, um, <clears throat> so it gets through to the tiebreaker. The two couples are at the end. It's from like about nineteen seventy nine, and they're dressed like it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> These are just like people that oh, they're amazing, um, and um, they make you look. Oh, no, they're still better than you. Um, and that goes those okay. Both pairs fingers on the buzzers. It goes right. <clears throat> Ted gets the envelope and goes. Right. Okay. Fingers on the buzzers? Yeah. Ready. German composer, but British born. He looks around. No. No one knows. <laughs> so he goes. Most famous for his Messiah. No. Right. Third clue. What is his handle? <laughs> right. <laughs> one woman go. Bzzz. She goes. Oh, we did this at school. He goes. We are nearly there. She goes. Oh God! It was Handel's water music. He went. So, what's the composer's name? She went Chopin. <laughs> he went. I'm gonna have to throw it across. Buzzes in. This bloke goes. Is it Beethoven? <laughs> oh, oh, isn't that fantastic? Oh, why? Oh. I mean, you've mentioned to me three, two, one in the past. Oh, it's fantastic. They deliberately got on the worst contestants ever. Well, no, they, they, they just, they just weren't bright. Have you seen the clues, though? <laughs> <laughs> I am a car and not a bin. Or am I holiday in? And um, we'll reject that one. Well, it says, uh, we were, we are a car, but if you reverse car and change some of the letters, it's bin. I'd look. <laughs> Tough shit, you lost. Sorry. <laughs> Oh. Well, but see, I, why is it we don't go on those shows and clean up? I know. Because catchphrase is the other one. What, getting a job as a caretaker? Catchphrase, you'll see a cloud with a silver lining, <laughs> and they'll say up the garden path. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not, it's oh. a good answer. 
It's a good answer, but it's not quite right. I wish I could give you the money out of my own pocket, but I can't. <laughs> oh, they're fantastic. There was another one where, um, when he was asking them questions, uh, and, uh, um, they're paying for pounds, and they get, like, a maximum of ten questions, and that multiplies. So he, um, it was, um, okay, let's have a go, um, we're looking for, uh, words in the English language beginning with I-N. So, uh, he goes, um, so, uh, um, we'll start with that one, industrial, going back and forth. Goes, and he goes, um, Asian country. Right, this bloke went, Iran. <laughs> uh, he went, no, no, no. He said, I was confused about that one. <laughs> it is, in fact, in the Middle East. Forgetting the fact that it started with I-R. <laughs> and he came back about ten minutes later and went, oh, of course, and also, uh, it doesn't start with I, and so the floor must have been Ted, you thick look. <laughs> Oh, oh, what do you mean? What do you mean, sympathising with him? Oh. James, what's your favourite, um, it'll be alright on the night clip? <laughs> from, I'm talking about all sort of 58 shows that they must have no, done. No, that is difficult. Let see, me I'm see. wondering if it is that one, um, with Mr. Chips from Catchphrase <laughs> tossing off. Have you seen that one? <laughs> no, yeah, it's no. great, because it's, it's just an error, and it makes it look as though he's, he's tossing off. <laughs> oh, no. But he's not, and I don't know what it is. Um, oh. I bet, I don't know what, um, what the catchphrase is. Um, 0171 Mr. Chips is coming to dinner. So yeah. Another bit of him doing his, his stand-up in America. Oh, God, it's so nauseating. He's got another series, apparently. Does anyone like Lenny Henry? Oh, well, obviously. It's a massive star. Does anyone listening to this show... Really like Lenny Henry? Yeah, yeah. Or, is there anyone that annoys me more than Lenny Henry? I should answer that one, shouldn't I? <laughs> yes. Do I win a prize? I think what you want to do there is yeah. uh, you want to sort of, you want to speak correctly. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's another simple thing, Gervais, <laughs> um, which will help you out in your radio career. Oh, no. I'm a swerve driver. That's three minutes forty-one. I've got to pick one, seven minutes the news. Gervais, well, 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 before you move on, can mm, I just tell you, because you know we talked about celebrities and going to school with celebrities and things. Yeah. Um, I have a very famous second cousin. Really? Yeah, I'm going to tell you who it, is, who it is in a minute. Really? Yeah. And I've got the best joke in the world. Have you? I should have been trailing that. That'd have kept them on their tender hooks. Why right. are they sitting on tender hooks? So we've got. Why some... tender hooks? I think it's tenter hooks. I don't know what they are, but I don't think it's. Ten... What? Well, oh, okay. Oh one seven one. Uh, who annoys me more than Lenny Henry? No one. You've won that one. So but, don't bother phoning them. But, but but who annoys you, the listener, more than Lenny Henry? Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Clever. Because then it's thrown it to them. Yeah, yeah and it's, it's their simple. opinion. Oh! Simple thing. Excellent. Oh, one se- <laughs> I noticed again you, you didn't bother to, to give the whole phone number. <laughs> what did I say? You actually just said 0171. <laughs> it, it used to be, as I recall, 0171 <laughs> which is about half of it, but oh, no, just 0171. Oh, sweet. Gervais, you know last week we started a competition where uh, people had to send in photographs or pictures or anything. Oh, yeah. Um, if, uh, it, um, I would show them to you indiscriminately yeah. during the show and see if you would laugh. Yeah. Got the first one here. Yeah. From Michael in Crouch End. Yeah. All right? <laughs> <laughs> you liar, that wasn't it. <laughs> well, it could have been. It could have been. You did that. I did that myself. <laughs> But that's the idea. Yeah. That's the idea. Facts are, uh, can I just say, facts Oh, God. Facts <laughs> <laughs> I'll admit, I, I drew that one. But <laughs> right. Wait a minute, wait a minute. And I could never, I, not only could I not tell them what that was, I could never explain it well enough. No. There's so, nothing you could do to no, explain that picture. No. Suffice to say, if you've got a picture that you think can make your <laughs> face laugh, and we will hopefully give a prize to, to somebody somewhere during the show. The oh, specifics one. like that that make this show, <laughs> sort of, you know what I mean? The vague, the vague promise yeah. that there might be a prize. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, if you have a picture that you think uh, can make your face laugh, 0171 580 <laughs> Shut up, I'm trying to give the number here. 0171 580 That's enough. 1234. That's the fax number. That, yeah, exactly. They're, how are they going to phone in a drawing? It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, simple things, Jermaine, yes, that let up. you down. Next up. So I'm there, we're running the eyes, I'm tired, I'm a little bit drunk, I'm in a white tracksuit with shades on, I had turned into Jimmy Savile. <laughs> <laughs> you just become Jimmy. Yeah, and I saw these kids looking at me thinking, oh. Bless him. I'm going, you're all right, I'm going to the toilet. He's done it. <laughs> nah. no, dear Jimmy, I'm four years old and I have a terminal illness. 
Can you fix it for me to live a long and healthy life? Well, no, but we have arranged it for you to do a duet with Mr. Shaky Stevens. Hooray! Hooray! <laughs> I feel sick. This old house, do it, you little bu- I, f- I feel sick, mummy, it's the treatment. Anyway. <laughs> What's behind the green door? A cure? No. No, no, no. He's for comas. He's not for terminal illness. He gets people out of comas, doesn't he, Shaky Stevens? <laughs> does he? He does. He apparently... A lot of loads of kids in the eighties, they're all on there, all these people going, Oh yeah, and she was in a coma and we played Shaking Stevens twenty four hours a day and she I'd come out of it if someone but <laughs> Turn that <laughs> shit off <laughs> you know what I mean, who would you least like to visit you if you're in a coma? Oh crumbs. Imagine it, right? You're you're in a coma, yeah? You're in a catatonic you've got all your senses. You've got all your senses except sight. You can't do a thing, right? And you've got someone there to come and visit you. You're helpless. You can't move. Sort of you can't say anything. Helpless. But you can, you can feel the. I'll tell you, I wouldn't want to visit me. Jason Donovan. No, I wouldn't want Jason. So it's not, I don't like his voice. No. Or Philip Schofield, I don't like his singing no. voice. Andy Peters. I don't, I haven't heard him sing. No, but I wouldn't want him round. I wouldn't want him round. Really? Why? No, I don't know. It's just something about him. Something about him. Yeah. I wouldn't want him there. Um, anyway, we've got some Skunk and Nancy coming up. Now. Lar- Larry Grayson's welcome. So, and I'll tell you what else, it's Philly's people. Oh, I love them. Bring the four of them, right? Why, um, see, four of them. What, what one do you want to leave out? There was five of them. No, there wasn't. There was five of them. There was four. There were five village people. Four village. Everyone knows there's four village people. Really? All right. Wait a minute. So there's a there's a fire. No, hang on. There's uh, a there's a there's a road cop. Yeah. Um. There's a red Indian, obviously. Obviously. Yeah. Um, there's a construction worker. And there's something else. There's something. A chef? No. A, candle, a chef! A candlestick maker. Oh, that's great, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. A tailor. A tailor. At the back with those little half moon glasses. Y M C A. Do a little bit of sewing. Who that's was it? Fun. Hang on, wait a minute. There was um, a fire chief. What are you on no. about? There was no, a, is there a fire chief? No, no, what a fire chief. There was a, a police. Oh, yeah. The, play the record. The black the guy was a road cop, a uh, traffic cop. There was a policeman. There yeah. was a red Indian, obviously. Obviously. Um, uh, Native American. Yeah, there's um, a, a, a construction worker. Yeah, the moustache. Cowboy! Cowboy! Was there? Yeah, of course there was a cowboy! Was there? Yeah! Well, who was the fifth one then? I don't know if there was. I might have made that up. Maybe I just dreamt of one. I thought of maybe some, maybe a bloke dressed up as Judy Garland. Steve singing along there to Baby Shall Bird. I which is ironic because when you sing, you're putting your head back and your mouth open, you look like a baby bird. Do I? Yeah, because the long neck and that sort of goiter thing you've got look like a sort of like a fledgling pelican. And the worms, of course, hanging from my head. Yeah, legs. but it's, uh, it's ironic as well because cause you're like a Lizoidian as well. You're, you're... <laughs> is that a real word? Because <laughs> <laughs> no, you're a Lizoidian. Zoidian. <laughs> oh, right, of course. <laughs> yeah. You don't! Because I use... I sometimes forget that they're not real words. You, you sometimes forget that you, your language comes from the, <laughs> the voices inside your head. <laughs> no, listen. I, I use my own language. <laughs> they no. tell me what to say and I say it. No, listen. You're sort of like a little... <laughs> little bird-like Lizoidian thing, right? Which is like the Archaeopteryx. Like, the, the link between the <laughs> four li- sort of lizard man going, flight. <laughs> oh, goodness me. <laughs> They've kicked in again. They've kicked in early. Oh. They're not meant to start for about an hour. What, the voices? No, the tablets. Right. right. Go on. was, what should people yeah. put on their cassette tape compilation inlay card? It's they're, illegal. They're not allowed to do it. It's illegal. I agree they're not allowed to do that. Right. But... I was offered, uh, you'd asked me to tell them what they should put down, right? Yeah. I'm telling you, the track we played was recorded by R.E.M. Yes, right? it was. Not Cleek. So no, that's right. Cleek down. No, 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 right, R.E.M. down. Exactly. How are you spelling that? That's correct. How are you spelling that? That's capital R, capital E, capital N. Right. Right? And you want to put down the name of the track as recorded by R.E.M. Yeah. They've called it Superwoman, right? I don't care if it's really called Superman in the in the world of the clique. Oh, no, no, stop me there. In the world of the clique, you, you don't, don't be. You don't care if it's really, why are you having this argument? You do care, you wouldn't be arguing. No. You do care. No, 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 no. No, you are saying I'm wrong. You, you, you are. I'm not wrong. It's called Superman. Only by the clique is called Superman. No. By R.E.M. it's called Superwoman. No, they you can't. Can't, they can't t- no, they can do what they want. Sometimes, sometimes they call it Superman. Make your mind up, at least. <laughs> they call it Superwoman. Are you sure they're called REM? Or have they changed that? They call it Superwoman, you tosser! How are you spelling that? That's S-U-P-E-R-W-O-M-A-N. You idiot, you fat imbecile! It's, uh, Friday night. You'll love this. I went to a party. Got invited to a party. A genuine... Oh, no, 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 no. That was an afterthought. You said I went to a party, then you suddenly went, I got invited to a party. 
What? Did you get invited to it or did you just go to it? I got invited to a party. Go I went on. to a party. Okay. Well, which is it? I was at a party on Friday night. Okay, right. right? Okay. And uh, it was people I know. It was up in North London. I live in South. Mm. Um, not that that's particularly important. <laughs> and, uh, particularly. what I'm saying is I left my- Yeah, yeah, you weren't in your- you weren't- you, what you were saying is you weren't where you pay rent. <laughs> exactly. No. So I got there and, uh, and there were a few people there I didn't really know. And I got introduced to this girl, Christine. Right, yeah. and I'll be honest with you, I don't know if anything might have happened. Do you know what I mean? It could've, do you know what I mean? I, all I'm saying is, we were getting on well, things right. were happening, alright, we were having a chat. Okay. All like, hey, Gervais, you're yeah. interested already. Yeah. Anyway, uh, she wanted a packet of fags, right? And a few other people wanted a little bit of grub or whatever, because it was late night, it's about one in the morning. So I just did, when you say she wanted a packet of fags, did she say, oh, I'd love to talk to you all night, but I've got to go and get these cigarettes? No, no, no. no go on, go no, on, sorry. Part, right, yeah, I won't interrupt we were, again. We were, we were going on well, okay. and as she said, yeah, a uh, packet of fags. So I went over to, there was, the guy told me uh, that who runs a party or had the party, he said there's a, a sort of 24 hour, little sort of 24 hour supermarket thing. You right? went for it, did you? What? You went for it, did you? I went on her behalf, right, to the right. supermarket place. Okay. One of those little sort of 24 hour 7 Eleven places. Yeah, I'll get the picture. So I go there, and uh, I'm gonna buy the fags, and people want a few sausage rolls and all sorts of stuff. So mm. I'm there, and I'm, I've got all my stuff, right, and it's quite late, but there's two blokes, <laughs> there's two blokes, there's two blokes in the place, and, um, I don't know where they were, I think they were from Italy, but I can't be certain. But, uh, anyway, they, they, they caused a bit of a ruckus, because they were after some ciabattas. Uh, and they yeah. were saying, uh, I want two ciabattas. I want to. Don't worry if that's his uh, name. Uh, no, no, I'd, I'd say that was sort of like Kenyan. Right. <laughs> okay, but anyway. Okay. They were, they were, yeah. Anyways, they were two Jabatas, and they were causing a bit of a rumpus. They were right. saying, not those, no, how much are they? How much are those a pound? Oh, we're talking about pounds. I don't want, no, I'm not paying for those. I, I love those. So anyway, they got their Jabatas. They, they went up to the, uh, the counter, and, uh, the fellow was next to me in the queue. He'd put down a, a jar of coffee. Right, oh, yeah. So anyway, the, the fellas said, ah, oh, Jabatas, oh, you have the pound for the Jabatas. And he, and they're two of them, they're brothers. And he puts the Jabatas in the, uh, in the carrier bag, and he picks up the coffee as well, secretes that in the bag, right, walks out. What? Well, the Italian bloke, yeah. looking someone else's coffee. He stole someone's coffee, right, there in plain, in plain view. So he gets outside, and the shopkeeper says, whoa, wait, whoa, 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 wait a minute, come back in, mate. Whoa, uh, you picked up this fella's coffee. What? What are you accusing me of? What, what are you saying? What are you accusing me of? You see, I, you say I'm stealing? Well, no, you Definitely, almost. definitely Turkish. <laughs> you Probably works in a prison. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, uh, stealing? What are you stealing? You accusing me of stealing? You accusing yeah. me? And, yeah. uh, the fella says, well, and he, and he says, look in the bag, look in the bag, Jabatas, where the coffee? I'll be honest with you, he'd hidden it outside. He'd already got rid of it. It was yeah. smooth. Right, yeah. so anyway, now he's getting a bit violent. No, Chabatas. Well, you know, I put the Chabatas, they're not very nice Chabatas. I eat them, they're not nice. You accuse me of stealing coffee or the, he's having, he's pushing things off the counter, he's throwing the Chabatas everywhere. Really? Right? And it's terrible. Um, and and he's he smashing plates. He wants, he wasn't no, smashing plates. No, I'm just getting plates. a hint from the accent. Go on, sorry. Right, yeah. So anyway, uh, he's accusing me. You, you accuse me, you accuse me. And he's, he's it looks like it's going to be a fight, Gervais, yeah. I'll be honest with you. I'm nervous, right? Because I'm stood are. next to him in the queue. Yeah. I'm thinking any minute he's going to turn around, what you're looking at? fish monster. Yeah, they sent you out because they thought you wouldn't get attacked. Exactly. And, you know, how ironic. So yeah. I sort of, I edge backwards towards the frozen goods section. Yeah, you're and thin I'm, against the fridge. I'm, I'm hiding, I'll be honest, I was hiding. <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you, I was, I'm a coward. Really? So, um, anyway, the Chapata brothers, the Chapata brothers. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're causing a bit of a rumpus, and it's all going yeah. on. So, uh, they decide to call the police, the shopkeepers, Yeah. Right? Well, now the Chapata brothers are nervous, so they go, no, it's all right, you, no, don't, keep, keep the, keep the Chapatas, we're not paying for them, I don't want my money back, it's all right. And yeah. so they move towards the door, but a little Probably fella- Probably spent some time in Delhi as well. A go little on. fella, he's barricaded the door. He's used some really? of the display units, he's barricaded it, right? Fantastic. So they're trying, the Chapata brothers are trying to get out, right? They can't, because he's holding them off, right? They can't get out, they're caught, they're smashing the place up, really just throwing things on the floor, right? And he's going to me, help me, help, help me close, keep the door closed. He's from Italy as well. <laughs> I think he was. Yeah. Probably, he, probably, we're like, go on, yeah. He's saying, help me, help me keep the door closed. I'm saying, well, I, you know, I can't, the, the leg and everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't help out. No, I can't. Um, yeah. I've got, I just gotta be over here. The dialysis bit. machine, if I, if I don't get back, the battery runs out, I've got to, yeah. So anyway, eventually the Chapati brothers, they actually just knock the, um, the stuff over and they get yeah. out the door and they leg it off down the road. Yeah. And anyway, it's terrible commotion, the food and stuff everywhere, the shop guy, the shopkeeper's in tears, it's absolutely terrible. Yeah. And everybody left, right, and I said, um, can I, can I just pay for my goods and these fags and go, please? And he went, no, shop closed, shop closed, we can't serve you. And I went, listen, I've just been stood here, I almost got in a fight, I want to pay for my goods. Yeah. And 
Uh, he was in tears. I yeah. can't. I can't. He was... just he probably selfish wanted to like shut the shop just because he'd been like um yeah, robbed physically and attacked. Beat. Yeah, and then you'd been waiting there patiently, <laughs> not helping. <laughs> exactly. He was been there for about ten minutes, not helping. Yeah. He just he should have served you before then, really, it before the crazy. fight. It was crazy. So anyway, oh, I, demand, that's terrible, I isn't demanded it? he serve me. Right? Yeah. I bought everything. I was he crying the... as he served he you? He was. He was. Crying. Oh, yeah. I left the shop. Yeah. Got back to the party. Yeah. Christine had gone. <laughs> <laughs> Because I got caught up in some bloody dog day afternoon <laughs> scenario, I missed out on a con on a possible. <laughs> How's your fag? Poss well, you say, poss um, well, I, I missed out on a I missed out on a on a fag at least. Yeah, yeah, and and the um the letdown of her saying face to face no. Yeah, I mean, at least there's like a little bit of hope when you get back and go. There's your Bensons. Ooh, do you want a drink? Uh, yeah, there's a little Seven Eleven just <laughs> the other side. You go across the road. You go the other way. I'll be about ten minutes, love. Ah, <laughs> oh. it didn't happen for me. <sighs> it will. A game show, right? That I come up with. Yeah. Okay, and it features me, but I think it could be perhaps a vehicle for yourself, Gervais. Yeah. What's All it right. Called? I'm going to tell you. It's called basically. It's called Ricky Gervais Meat Rations. Right. And uh, I, I like it already. You like it already? Because there's a part in there for me. Yeah. Could I play the, the Ricky Gervais? Yes. <laughs> yes. Fantastic. It was originally called, um, it was originally called, uh, basically, let me just summarise very briefly. I'm not going to tell you all the games, but there is, it's basically recreating the uh, heady days of the war. Right. Um, right. That's fantastic. It's beautiful already, isn't it? It's I've got the got, nostalgia thing. I've got a game as well. But it's called, it was originally going to be called uh, Ricky Gervais Fag Rations. Right. But apparently cigarettes weren't rationed in the war. So right. it's called Meat Rations now. Excellent. And uh, I'll tell you some great games. My favourite is, um, oh no, what's it called? Um, to, to be perfectly Anne Frank. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great game. It really is it's a great game where uh, you've got to pretend to be Anne Frank and hide from uh, sort of snooping Nazis. <laughs> oh, that is fantastic! It's a great game. And there's also, of course, well, let me go into it. There's, there's also um, uh, uh, dig for granny. Good. Uh, well, I'll dig for victory if you like. And well, what you, you're, you're scavenging through rubble, right? Can I just say and these, these, are, these are copyright. Anyone trying to rip me off? I mean, I've got the penis puppet theatre. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I've got a snake in this, surely. Oh, certainly. Ricky you can have, you, meat rations. You can have a bit of my penis puppet theatre. That's lovely. Yeah. And I've also got a new game that I'll talk about after, after yours. It's called Tip the Balance. And it's sort of like a game for four. And it comes, it's like, I'll, I'll send it off to Waddington, see what you think. I mean, there's, there's, there's teething problems with okay. it. Okay, well listen, Gervais, look, let's play Don't forth. Fear the Reaper. Let's play that tune. By Blue Oyster and his cult. It's a classic. Yeah, and then we come back and we try and make some money. Let's make some cash. And we, there must be some sort of fun with, like, gas masks. Yeah. When you can all put them on and dress up as, like, I don't know, one of the banana splits. Yeah. That's um, what could that be, gas? Who snork. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, possibly. So, the, so the, no, every week there's the real snork. Right. So the, it's like, confessors come on, <laughs> they <laughs> think, you know, <laughs> which one snork? Which one snork? Yeah. So yeah. you've got three, maybe you've got three celebrities. Yeah, it was a uh, gas mask and the real snork. That's so right. You, so you've got someone like Ted Maltz's son, he pops one on, you've got Frank Bruno, yeah, yeah. and Ginny Cooper. That's and it. they put their mask on and like a little outfit, and then the real snork is there, and you've got to ask some questions. Like, you get, you get like uh, Bernie Winters and, uh, um, Henry Cooper going, um, um, Number three, number three, um, <laughs> how long have you been in the banana split? <laughs> and, and Ginny Cooper goes, oh, about six years ago, so oh, I don't know, I think the, I don't, the banana split's been going longer than that, no, I don't, I don't think it's number three, um, what, what, what do you think? And, uh, it, Bernie Winters goes, mm, number one, <laughs> number one, um, uh, how did you get the job being in banana splits? <laughs> and it's from Ted Maltz, I'm going, oh, I am um, answered man, but in the paper, that's not right. They were born, you know what I mean? <laughs> and there's yeah. Chaz and Dave in the corner just going, na 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 yeah! Yeah, with the real snorks, and they always, the, the lights go, right, and that one stands up and he sits back down again, <laughs> oh. and then the real snork, and the others all take their <laughs> mask off, and they go, it's lovely, what are you doing now? Uh, well, I'm, uh, I'm uh, appearing, uh, um, Puss in Boots down in, uh, Brighton, oh, that'd be fantastic. Oh, what? what? Jilly Cooper? I don't know, what does she do? Oh, she's a novelist. She's a novelist. Oh, yeah. Now appearing no. in Panto. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not letting you book the guest. <laughs> oh, God. But wait a minute, what, well, I mean, I love your idea. Yeah. Who, who snork. Yeah. It's a bit odd, isn't it, how we started off with a kind of wartime nostalgia <laughs> yeah, show, we but now we've sort of featured <laughs> sort of quite bad 70s <laughs> animal There's nothing wrong with the, uh... Banana splits. But I like that, that's a good thing. Yeah, okay, that can be like a special feature. So I'm just it? gonna make a note of it, because we've got Dig for Victory, uh, yeah. to be perfectly Anne Frank. Yeah, and, and uh, who's Snork? Who's <laughs> Snork? Yeah.
<laughs> well, I, I'm full of ideas. I could probably help you on this. Oh, this is great. Well, what other, yeah. I'm just to, well, let, maybe we'll come up with some other ideas as we yeah, go Yeah, we've on. still got to tip the balance to go. But you know, uh, can I just say, yeah. I did actually once try and pitch this. When I, you know when I appeared on Blockbusters? Yeah. Well, I obviously <laughs> met with a producer there, and I said, I've got an idea for you. Have we talked about this on air? We talked about me on Blockbusters. Have we? But not about, um, my pitching this No, thing. go on, go on. And uh, I said to her, oh, sit, sit down, I said, uh, <laughs> I've got a great idea. And I, I tried to bid it with me, it's the star. <laughs> she said, who are you? Steve, Steve's, Steve's meat rations. Uh, she said, why are you in it? I said, oh, I am, don't worry, I just, I, I'm the only one who can put it off. Yeah. And, um, she said, right, go on, what, what is it? And at that time, I had none of the games. <laughs> all I had was, all I had was the title, and she went, I like it, yeah, what are the games? I, mm, I don't know. She said, <laughs> oh, if you'd have just said, well, I'll stop me there, love, and just popped a gas mask on, and <laughs> yeah. said, who am I? She'd have, gone, she'd have gone, snork. <laughs> na, 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 <laughs> na, 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 no, no, it's not. Na, na. I used to write when I was at school. Oh, yeah. Um, now I didn't watch sort of kids' programs when I was growing up. I watched sort of crap adult ones. You know what I mean? ITV on the telly from, uh, 12 midday through to like midnight. And I'd watch all the, um, all the police series. Mm. Um, Police Story, uh, Charlie's Angels, Steve Austin. And Teen this, Knight Rider. Teen Knight Rider, yeah. And, um, I start, I, I wrote this essay at school and I just couldn't stop. And I started serializing it. And every time I just kept writing, I was sort of like, you know, people were reading it at school. And it was about a cop, a New York cop, who was as hard as, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I worked out what his name was. Now it's, I just, I, God, this is how television influences me. Because it was one word name, which was his surname. That was the title of the, uh, book, title of the series. And that's what all his friends called him. White to, right. <coughs> it was called Jezuk. <laughs> Jezuk? Yeah. Jezuk. Yeah. I thought I had a Z and a K and a J. Jezuk. Jezuk. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know it does sound so close to like Pillock or Jesse. Yeah. Or Nonce. No, no, Nonce. There's no Nonce. Well, do you know what I mean? The difference between sort of like Jezuk. Pillock and Jism. Damn you, Jezuk! Yeah, <laughs> you're off the case. Give me the badge. Keep the stinking badge. I don't need a badge to be a cop. It was all stuff like that. And yeah. he burst. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he'd look at his gun and go, "This is my law." I mean, my God, it's Jezuk! How did he find us? <laughs> Jezuk! Yeah, it was great. There'd be shootouts and everything. Oh, yeah. fantastic! Let me just ask: Was he? Um, was he? Did he have perhaps have a broken marriage? He was hard boiled. He played by his own rules. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> didn't he? yeah, I imagine. Uh, simultaneous with this, he was a bit of a drunkard as well. Had a yeah. bit of drink. No, or... he didn't. Didn't drink. Oh, no, good, it good. was good-looking fella. Um, but he was letting himself go. He was a bit hard-bitten. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing I was sort of simultaneous, which was more of a novel. I wasn't serious. I was actually writing a novel, and I got like three exercise books. Right. Um, it was about this kid. Right. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> right. He saw his um, parents just brutally murdered for no reason by a gang of outlaws. Yeah. And he buried his father, and he knelt down on the grave, and he said, looked up, and he goes, as God is my witness, I will avenge thee. <laughs> <laughs> and then he sort of went to the, the store, and he got loads of bullets, and he practiced, and he was the fastest guy, he was only about 16. Yeah. Right? His name was Jody Barnes. <laughs> <laughs> Jody Barnes is alright, yeah. Yeah. Good Imagine, that's nice. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> fantastic. Have you still got any of those exercise books? <laughs> I hope oh, not. That would be incredible. Because the teachers used to sort of like, I must have gone, yeah, it's good. I must have passed around the, uh, he's done another one. Jemais has written another episode of Jezuk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I say, seriously, if you brought one of those in and yeah. read it out, that'd be weird. I'd be entranced. <laughs> Imagine it. Seriously, that'd be great. Can you, do you the think your mum might- of a twisted 14 year old brain that only ever watched ITV cop shows. Do you think your mum might still have some copies of, no, of Jezuk? Got, no. <laughs> was it like, was it like sort of, the initial one was like Jezuk, then it was like Jezuk abroad, Jezuk in Paris, <laughs> um, yeah. Jezuk on safari. Yeah. Here well, comes Jezuk. My moment of Return of Jezuk. I liked that Jezuk. He's a proper man. Yeah. He's not like you. But Mum, I invented Jezuk. You were, you were a Nazi. <laughs> you, you couldn't be like Jezuk. He's, he's in my mind. Return of Jezuk. Here yeah. comes Jezuk. Son of Jezuk. Oh, it's fantastic. What if Jezuk met Jodie Barnes? They'd get on. They'd have no quarrels. They could team up. Oh, it'd be fantastic. After break, a little bit of, uh, Lars. Teen Jezuk. <laughs> Jezuk came in here. Oh my god, he'd, he would not he'd, stand for he'd it. He'd arrest the engineer. He wouldn't, he wouldn't stand for it. He'd soon figure out whose fault it was. Yeah, yeah, and he'd, and he'd- Get they'd, me Jezuk. They'd, they'd be down the precinct, wouldn't they? Oh, asking, yeah. asking a few questions. Jezuk, you're off the case. I don't need a stinking badge. 
I yeah. bet, I bet Jezik plays by his own rules, doesn't he? Of course he does, but yeah. they take his gun, his official gun, not, not the one on his ankle, though. Oh, he's got a little ankle gun. Of course he has. I didn't expect yeah. that from Jezik. <laughs> yeah, he has to. So. Has Je is Jezik one of those, uh, <laughs> is Jezik one of those, uh, NYPD cops who doesn't have a first name? Yeah, I don't, I see, I'm thinking him now. I think he might be, um, a little bit Latino, maybe. Oh, uh, really? Hispanic. I don't know. Hispanic. Yeah, uh, Jezuk. 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 Um, yeah, Hispanic Czechos Czech Czechoslovakian Hispanic. Yeah. Yeah, Jezuk. Get me Jezuk. Yeah, it's Emilio like... Jezuk. Emilio Jezuk. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fantastic. So, what's the name of the show itself? Is it named after? It's him? called Jezek. It's called quite some Jezek. Of course, it is. It's called Jezek. Yeah. And he's an uh, NYPD cop. When is he going to marry that girl? <laughs> oh, oh, come why on! Does make, does make her an honest make woman. Make woman for goodness. She's sake. cooked to you again. Oh, oh Jezek. Oh, Christ's sake, Jezek. God. <laughs> but you see, he's hard boiled, Jervais. He's it already is. had two failed marriages. I know. And I'll tell you what it is. It was it was because of the fact that he was a cop. Because you bring that stuff home with you. Yeah. Right? You can't just leave that at the office, Jervais. I'm worried about his kid. 16. Really? Yeah. Is he going a, off the rails a bit? He's on the smack. Is it? I don't believe it. I don't believe it. He could have been a great cop. He could I, have been a football player as well. Well, of course he was, because he was great in college. He was great in college, is he? And <laughs> now he's ha he's hanging out with the wrong people because yeah. Jezek can't give him enough attention. I know. And of course, Jezek's ex-wife, of course, is dead. So he's got to raise shit on his own. <laughs> is she? Oh, yeah. Is she? Well, she oh. got, she got, she, Oh, no. What's she dying? His first wife, uh, the marriage bloke broke up because he was heavy drinking. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. Yeah. And because of the fact that he's Yeah, but that's because of the things he has to go through every day of his life. I know. Listen, you, you're facing, look, like, smackheads coming at you, coked uh, on crack, right? Oozes. You, oozes, right? You've got to let your hair down in the bar. He killed a young kid. I know he did. That kid. Yeah. His first wife, yeah. um, she, th I think, I think what happened there, Gervais, is that, as far as I'm aware, is that, uh, they got divorced. Yeah. But really, they still love each other, don't they? Let's be yeah. honest. Yeah. She's the only one, really, that stands by him. Well, Jezek says, well, you know, I can love two people. Yeah. And he has done. Yeah. Well, I had to cut those scenes out. And his second, <laughs> his second wife, yeah. his second wife, she's dead, isn't she? <laughs> she, she got killed, didn't she? Well, yeah. You know why? Why? He hesitated after he'd killed the young smackhead boy that was coming at him. Had a grenade. <laughs> I don't believe yeah, it. Yeah, a little grenade. Yeah. And his second wife got caught in the cross. Yeah. Crossfire. And and he thought, oh, I has she sh he shot him. He, he never, and that's why he never hesitates again. He, he just goes in blasting. Sometimes he shuts his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> he just goes in blasting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, what would be the opening credit sequence for Jessic? Um, think, what would happen? Would it be Rockford Files style, where he's in the supermarket, uh, you know, buying food and all the sort of it? Um, I think he'd be, um, no, I think it would be like, split screen, and one bit he'd be turning around in like a mall, like, <laughs> firing. On the other one, um, he'd be dropping the toast and his wife would be ruffling his hair <laughs> in the morning. And he'd be going, oh, and he'd sort of like be getting crumbs off it. And well, it wouldn't be his wife, it would be, it would be a lovely, a lovely lady he'd probably picked up the night before. No, he's, no, no. Remember that? Great... No, he doesn't do that. No, he does, cause he's... He does not! <laughs> he's just... He, he doesn't! He's just strange from his wife and his second wife's dead, you idiot. Yeah, but we established he's got a new one. That he hasn't got a new wife? Why he's got... No, well, not he's a new wife. Have... He's got a new bird, hasn't he? Well, yeah, you said wife. Well, he's faithful to her, though. He doesn't go and pick up floozes. What? No, I always no, remember... Well, he, doesn't, he doesn't go around with dirty girls. <laughs> <laughs> I always remember, um, from the beginning of Quincy, you know, where he's there and he's doing exactly that, sort of running and jumping over things. <laughs> and then you see him and you think he's examining a body, because he is, that is what he does. And he's really. kissing someone. He, no, it pulls out and he's given a, a woman in a, in a sunbathing outfit, uh, just giving her a mas massage. <laughs> sunbathing outfit. <laughs> I not Where's the little Estine lived in that? But he a, mm, I did see in yonder a, a sunbathing outfit. For sure. There was flesh bits in the middle and the rest were polka dot. <laughs> Why a sunbathing outfit? Right? <laughs> sunbathing outfit. That's great. Well, oh, birthday suit. There was a girl in the all together. <laughs> the all together. Oh, God. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. What's wrong with that? I will pop this rubber thing on, and for, for sure, I am in a sexual intercourse outfit. <laughs> Sunbathing outfit. I can't believe I've made, I've embarrassed myself with my use of language when it's invariably yourself, Jimmy. You I know, yeah. Oh, oh dear. You know, we usually have a few beers and we get throughout the show and I get steadily drunk, which is unprofessional. This t saves a bit of time turned up pissed. You turned up drunk today? Yeah. So that's <laughs> really, really, really. I'll tell you what. Well, um, I'll be honest with you, Gervais. Um, you know, normally, uh, if someone gets drunk, their, um, their speech begins to slur. Yeah. They talk rubbish. Yeah. Uh, no difference. No. You. That's the beauty of it. Yeah. That's the beauty of being me. Yeah, exactly. You know, nice, how, how, how drunk are you? Um, I had a little bit of wine. Did you? Got yeah. glasses? It's a lovely- I might get a little bit of melancholy. <laughs> what about the little baby kangaroos have to crawl all at their mums?
But your mistake. The tease penguin's probably my greatest invention. The tease penguin? Can you tell us again? I forget. Well, it's just a penguin, right? You train, you put it in a lovely little French maid outfit, and it comes in, with, <sighs> sort of breathes fishy breath on you, and slaps around the face with its flipper. Yeah. Oh. Um, Jezuk, obviously. But it doesn't let you go any further. No. That's why it's the tease penguin. Yeah, oh, I see. Yeah. Um, extra family fortunes. Oh, I can see that on telly myself. Yeah, it's incredible. I don't know where you got the idea from. I, do they just come into my head sometimes? Do they? Yeah. The girl was actually in this week with Claire. Was he's he? Lovely, lovely man. Oh, Baby Bird was, uh, was yeah. he extra family? He's very nice. Is he? He's got a beak and funny little claws. Oh, Rick. I oh, know. Oh, it made me don't. laugh. It was a, it was oh, my God, we're desperate. To be we're egg. desperate men, Rick, if you've got to resort to that kind <laughs> of I called of him Baby Bird. He went, I've never been called that before. Which is bizarre. But there's a band that called Baby Bird. He's yeah. called Stephen. Can you go to turn that down next door? Or we're trying to do a show. Music, aren't yeah, they? it's Emma, it's just, it's not on. That's that's insane. That I can a, hear yeah. I can hear a throb from the other room. Yeah. Someone's got this is insane, Jermaine. It's like having trying to host a radio show. Yeah. Mid and now he's now he's laughing. Yeah. Oh, oh well, it's, it's, well, anyway, it's, it's all gonna be um, we're gonna play a um a track that you've brought in. That's right. Go on, what is it? It's a fantastic tune by the Grave Diggaz. Yeah. Uh, part of the Wu Tang ca clan rap collective. Yeah. Right, it's from their album. Not um, to be confused with the Wu Tang clan. That's a right. little shellfish. Yeah. That's into rap. Yeah, that yeah. swears a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, terrible, yeah. Um the track is got a uh, muscle posse. The track is beautiful. You've probably heard it on the dance floor, maybe yeah. in some indie club. Yeah. One eight hundred suicides. Yeah. Now I would stress, Rick, it has got a bit of bad language. I know. I I, I mean I've I've listened to this twice and I reckon I reckon I've got it off pat. I reckon I'm going to pull the fader down at just the right places and go, eh. Okay? <laughs> that's right, you're going to sort of bleep yeah. it out. And if it goes wrong, so what? You know, that's real. People have a problem with swearing. I don't. Do you? No. Not I mean, I'm, I'm doing it because it's rules and, you know, no, we were... you know, the great thing about We want to stay on air because, you know, we take our job seriously. We do. And, uh, you know, I think we're... We're, we're, sorry, excuse my French, bloody good DJs. Well, I we? think you're absolutely right, Rick. Really. Yeah. Let me shake your hand. Yeah, all right, there, there we are. Yeah, a good yeah. shaking of hand there. Um, I, I love a bit of rap. That wasn't me. actually French. <laughs> no, that's it. That's weird, that um, isn't it? Um, oh, pardon <laughs> the French. People always <laughs> yeah. say when they, they yeah. maybe say bollocks. Uh, uh, excuse my French, but le plume de matante. <laughs> hey, come on, language, language. Um, we'll, we'll be doing, learning a little bit of, uh, uh, foreign language later. I've brought in, um, Instant Yiddish by Fred, uh, Kogos. I've always wanted to learn Yiddish. Really? Yeah. Um, oh, Narishnik, uh, Thorisis. Um, some glick. Some slimming, yeah, for better for worse. So I'll be, I'll teach you a little use of phrase like that <laughs> right, uh, out of the old uh, instant Yiddish book. But first, what was this grave diggers? It's grave diggers. Um, they're keeping it real. They're keeping it raw. So there is a bit of bad language. Yeah, well, mine's raw. Um, you keeping it raw? Yeah, of course I have. Um, right, I'm gonna have a go at this then. All right, right. Don't get no, on No, don't shut up. Right, I've got to play this. Shut up, then. Don't put me off. I've got to concentrate. Bleep, so it, bleep it out live. And I will. Yeah, shut up. Cause I am. I tell you, one day, right? That yeah. It's just one of me at the moment. But one yeah. day there'll be a whole squadron. It'll be like Planet of the Apes. Oh my God! And you don't actually need anyone else to sort of like uh, breed, do you? Exactly. We can just reproduce as we are. <laughs> It'll be like Planet of the Apes, right? You, th there'll be sort of a Charlton Heston figure. Planet of the squids. It'll crash land. Get your damn dirty tentacle off me. It'll crash land. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And there'll just be loads mm. of me crawling around. Yeah, all identical. Looks like I'm on horseback. And they see like Bristol Temple meet, and they go, "Oh my God, they blew it up!" Yeah, it's back in Bristol with all your. Oh no! Incredible. There must be an organisation of volunteers or something who, if it's like touch and go, if it's really serious, if you're like clinically depressed about it, and you really can't get a woman, they don't want just people turning up who can get girls and saying, "Oh, I fancy," you know. But in your case, you know, they they speak to you, they see you, and I think. You know, there must be some sort of national health thing or private where you can actually sleep with, um, I don't know, a voluntary worker. <laughs> you know what I mean, so? though? Well, yeah, there's Have people you that, yeah, yeah, I know, but there's people that, um, I don't know, volunteer for geriatric duty, you know, and that they're exploding all over the place. They're covered in the stuff, right? Um, there's people that work on leper colonies, right, for, you know, for nothing. There must be someone who will sleep with you out of sympathy. You don't want that. Of course you don't. You don't want that, do you? Well, let's not be hasty, Rick. <laughs> I mean, these people, I mean, especially if they need some sort of free publicity, you know, get a bit of, um, you know, sort of press and media attention. Yeah. I also sort of help to publicize their campaign, really. There's probably an organization that go, you know, and we go, they go off to like, um, just strange climbs and go on to like leper islands and that, and they work with them. Um, or they can sleep with you. Now, that's got to do the lepers some good, doesn't it? Yeah. You know what I mean? 
Wouldn't that be terrible if that was the option, right? And suddenly, volunteers to leper colonies doubled. It was like going to Torremolinos. Yeah. Let them on the I, bus. I, Sorry, there's no room on the bus, but it, you're at the back there. Yeah. Going, well, um, well, then here we go. Here I am, then. Yeah. No, no, but I, no, I, sorry, I, I, I signed up for the, for the lepers. Yeah. Um, licking their wounds. <laughs> well, sorry, but. <laughs> Geriatric duty. Yeah. We're not big pants. it out. Oh, dear. Oh, you know, I heard a song in the week, right? I've heard it before. It's by Ween. And it goes, push your little daisies and make them come up. And I don't know what it's called. 0171 580 2000. I don't know where to look. Push the little daisies and make them come up. It's like that. It is. It's rubbish. I've been around, going around singing There's that. There's no song with that lyric. It's in. like that. It goes, push the little daisies and make them shut come up. up. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, shut up. That's what my God friends have been saying for the last <laughs> four days. Oh, you're really irritating me today. Like, people will go and go, and, uh, if you'll be mine, oh, a bit not too annoying. But, um, after about ten times, you go, oh, can you sing something else? But when you've heard, push your little daisies and make them go. Shut up, up. No. You can get really annoyed. Yes, it really can. can, can't it? Shut um, up. Okay, one of those, you and me song. Push your little Shut daisies. Shut up. Yeah, we've done funny phone calls, haven't we? We've done some funny phone calls. Did that one, like, like, Penky, when we phoned up, phoned up Safeway, said, have you got some cheese? <laughs> and they said yes. And we showed them, didn't we? That showed them. Yeah. Oh, uh, we've done some crank, crazy crank calls. Yeah. Uh, who, who, do you want some beer? Do you want some beer? Brilliant, brilliant game. Five o'clock foreigner. Five o'clock foreigner. Yeah. Um, oh, what else have we done? There's been just too much, haven't there? The alarm frog. The alarm frog. That never got off the ground, did it? got going. Um, um, some great ideas. Uh, tip the balance, that's the last one I've got. Tip the balance? You haven't explained it. It's my last, my, I think it's a little bit in bad taste. Really? Yeah. Oh, well, I don't want that on this show. <laughs> no, 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 I mean, I think it's a little bit much. Really? Is it too much? Is it the yeah. most outrageous thing you've ever... Well, okay, well, no, look, this is an idea, right? It's, it's a board um, game. It's a board game. I, I'll send it off to Waddington's when, uh, I, I'll get, you know. It's four simple weights, sort of, just like, um, fulcrum weights, you know, like scales. Like a little seesaw? Yeah, a little seesaw. And there's one end is like a bowl, right? The other end is like a kilogram weight. Right. And there's four of those, so you, four of you sit round, and you've got to quite simply tip the balance, right? So you've got to fill the, the bowl. Fill the bowl, yeah. What, with rice or...? No, no, no. Um, uh, object. No. Uh, bodily secretions. Right. So it's the first, you know... <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't tell us about this. Well, no, because there's, there's simple rules. Anything that comes out of your body is all right, okay, um, in every form. Right. We well, you know yeah, anything see. that comes out of your body. Yeah, you put that into the bowl and sort of yeah, tip the balance. So uh, I was just thinking, if I said it quieter, it wasn't so bad. I was going to go, "Why is piss?" <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, doesn't work, right? Snot, um, sick. Yeah, uh, spunk. Well, I was going to say come because then I could be spelling it C O M E. Therefore, getting by some of the radio thought was rather sneakily, and spunk, as you said, is like um, courage, isn't it? Exactly. Like in the Waltons, they go, oh, look, I love, I love your new girlfriend, um, John Boy, she's full of spunk. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry about that. Well, I've, I've been carried away, Dad. Good night, um, good night, John Boy. Yeah. John Boy. <laughs> good night. <laughs> that, that, right, is the cure. We'll come back to this. Cure. Charlotte sometimes. 20 to 6. Ricky Gervais. Ricky Gervais show. And, uh, Steve. what have we offered today? Well, we've offered <laughs> Tip the Balance, the new board game from Waddington's, <laughs> which involves secreting various bodily fluids yeah. into a bowl yeah. in order to tip the balance. Yeah, and the way you do it, you go, Tip the Balance! I just imagine the front cover was sort of granny, she's stooped. Yeah, she's just that. She, no, she's got <laughs> trousers down. <laughs> yeah. She's just, and, and all, She's missed it. Yeah, she's, she's missed, missed it she's completely. Missed it. They're all laughing. And the, she's fam the family are there yeah. behind yeah. them, they're clapping and yeah. cheering. The mother just laughing, doing a dustman's blow. Yeah. Right. Just, and the 14 year old boy, he's, well, he's got, uh, right, okay. <laughs> well, he, he's enjoying it the most, let's be honest. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but what about if, you know that, um, right. uh, bingo is yeah. the, is the, the most popular evening pastime in the country and there are yeah. these huge bingo palaces. Yeah, that's because like they haven't tipped the balance. Yeah. Seats. Yeah. Imagine if they were all playing tip the balance. <laughs> we the smell. Oh, it'd be incredible. <laughs> tip the oh, oh, God. That'd be fantastic. That'd be great. You could have winner stays on. Yeah. Because you'd have a disadvantage then, wouldn't you? Well, I'm just, uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I imagine in, uh, in Japan they've already got a TV show like that, I'd imagine. A kilogram's a lot, though, to get rid of. Yeah, you've got a it? lot of sputum. I know, everything, yeah. But I think it's a great idea. Can you, could you give birth into the bowl? Uh, yeah, well, no. 
<laughs> well, you could, but anything you put in there, you lose. Oh, so right. you're willing to, yeah. Can't like, you, you, you can't, you could like, you could bleed into it and amputate into it, but you can't have it back. Like, right. you couldn't put a false limb in. Right. Because you'd be there, because that, you know, so that, that's sort of cheating. Yeah. Um, but there is a thing called the fish card, where if you're all out of it, right, you're all, you're all strained out, you've vomited, you've snotted, and that's it, right, and everyone's got like, you know, point eight kilograms in theirs, you can go, fish card, right, and you can take someone else's bowl, and pour it into yours, but you've got to pour it via your mouth. Right. So you take a big glug of that, and, <laughs> that, and you do it, and you win. you thought so, this through, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. You've well, played this, haven't you? No, I haven't played it. I haven't played it. I haven't, I haven't got the, uh, the equipment. Right. Yeah. Jeff Buckley, everybody here wants you. Wow. Nearly end of the, uh, the nearly of the show with it, yeah. isn't it? I can't even be bothered to criticise you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not worth it, is it? It's this language day. anymore. I know, yeah. So late in the day, if you, you, I yeah. mean, you're not going to master it at the age of, what, <laughs> 45, however old you are. <laughs> uh, you know, I mentioned, um, I guess we could call it Freak Show or something like that. Yeah. Uh, where celebrities with deformities come on. That was Nigel's from Tottenham. Like, Nigel in Tottenham came yeah, the idea. the most deformed. What would you put forward as your most deformed bit? Well, luckily, um, uh, sucking my most deformed bit would be curiously enjoyable for me. <laughs> no, um, anyway, I asked for a few more celebrities who've got deformities, and uh, various people have called in. Uh, <laughs> Jez in East Barnet mentioned John Thor, who of course, uh... So with he, him? Well, John's left leg, I think, is shorter than his right. He always sort of hobbles a bit as he walks. You know, suck the whole of the left leg. Yeah. Right. So that's... Say that again, Lewis. We were just seeing size that, like the fat bird in the opera. Yes! I know it is now. What? Because I said, no, nothing to do with it. I just saw him do it. I just forgot and I was pissed. Yeah, go on. Um, Paul Daniels, w apparently one arm is shorter than the other. Um, uh, can I just say, the head. <laughs> True enough. Yeah, Debbie, Debbie McGee could come on and just bring Paul. <laughs> yeah, as yeah. her deformed. Yeah, yeah. under her arm. Object. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, that's from Tony Namisham. Um, <laughs> we've also had Ian Jury. Yeah. Uh, someone's mentioned that. Uh, it says that, uh, Ian Jury. His uh, left side. Yeah. Really? Did he have a stroke or something? Polio. Polio, wasn't it? Yeah, right. yeah. So Luke is left side. And, uh, Anthea Turner, apparently she lost, um, the middle three of her toes or something in a sort of horrible accident. I don't know if that's true. Anyway, yeah, Anthea Turner would be great. Just get her on anyway. She lost... Oh, uh, what? Well, I don't, know, I don't think it can be true, to be honest. It says that she's only got two toes on one of her feet because yeah. she lost the other three in, um, uh, a flymo accident. Oh my says, god. But I don't know if that's true. That's so it's when true. you used to go to school and say some, oh, had a fight with the lawnmower. Yeah, she yeah. did. Yeah, yeah. No, I meant your hair, love. No, look at me toes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, so What would you suck? Would, would you suck the gap or would you suck the toes that flew off in the garden? I, I really haven't thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> you what? Why not? I haven't really given it much thought to it, to be honest. <laughs> Um, Satellite, that's what we were, Steve, just satellites. Just satellites orbiting around the mighty space station of XFL. I don't know what I'm talking no, about. No, I didn't think that you could carry that much further. <laughs> no, no. Still, well, that's the end, you know, no more cheap knob gags on a Sunday afternoon. No. No more sort of swearing. Smart on the radio, breaking every radio authority that there ever was. Yeah. Good times, eh? We've had a few laughs, few tears. It's just gone five past four. It's Ricky Gervais show, that's Steve, just doing the microphone, putting his headphones on. Making Sorry, Rick, I'm not... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, yeah. I, you just didn't give me much time to prepare myself, so... No. I'll, hang on. A week. Yeah. It was actually a week. Um, I think that's working. My headphones are not quite working, hang no. on. No. It's going alright, though. Well, not only we haven't not yeah. heard for the show... <laughs> yeah, okay. <coughs> I thought maybe people could phone in and give us some subjects to, uh, uh talk about. 0171. 580-2000, yeah. or they can fax in 0171-580-1234, and they could get, like, a discussion going, like, what do you think of that Tour de France nonsense? And we could sort of, uh, no, not that. Um, what do you think about, uh, well, you know, it's their idea, isn't it? 0171-580-2000. Quickly, I mean, really, seriously, just get on the phone now. <laughs> this is my record of the week. <sighs> Yeah, go on. Yeah. yeah. What is it, exciting? Yeah, Foo Fighters. Right, yeah. Walking after you. I'm looking forward to it. It's quite interesting. I think it's quite interesting, Rick, because, um, you know, it's a very sensitive song, very beautiful song, and I think it betrays something about you, about the inner Ricky. Yeah. Which I don't think, uh, we've ever sort of really tapped into before. No, but I mean, I've got something exciting for you as well. Really? Because maybe you, you know, you can find love too, because Petru sent in, uh, a piece of paper here from, uh, see there, from Mix Mag. Yeah. But it's the, uh, personal ads. Oh, no, it's not. It's an ad. It's select. That's an ad. Advert Whatever, Mixman. Rick. It doesn't really matter, does it? Realism, it, it, it makes all the difference. No. So on. I don't think I'm just making it up. Come on. Right. 
lonely, depressed bi girl needs someone of any age to understand. Right? Any age. Right. Well, yeah. that fits, you know, you're any age. Certainly. Yeah. Ugly freaks preferred. Yeah. Right? Anyone accepted. Well, I'm in there. <coughs> well, <coughs> no, mm, don't, 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 me. don't count Excuse your chickens. Me. Don't count your chickens. Confidentiality and honesty assured. Yeah, that's fine. Reply guaranteed. Give it to me now. Now, I know what you're thinking. No, she no, said, give it to me now. I know what she said. I know, I know why you're thinking. You, it's just any age which you fall into nicely. Yep. Um, ugly freaks preferred, so you're at the top of the list, and anyone accepted. See, I, but I don't think she realises quite what you look like, because you're not in her framework. Do you know what I mean? So, I, I still think you might be disappointed. No, I, no. Gervais, this will work. This will work. Let me see this. <laughs> Only depressed bi girl on it. What? What does that mean, though? Bi girl? What is that? Bisexual. Bisexual? Yeah. Again, I think she means... Bisexual? Se sexuality of any human. Do you know what I mean? Well, I, I, all I'm saying, bisexual, Gervais. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? What do, what, a, no, what do you mean? <laughs> hey, three. Yeah, hey, three people. What? Three in a bed. You, a bisexual, and an amphibian. Three in a bed, Rick. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey. But you won't be one of them. It's not gonna happen, is it? No. <laughs> Nearly 25 past four. The Gervais Show. I'm Ricky Gervais. Gervais, um, I know we haven't got much in the show today. We've not yeah. really thought of anything to talk about. Why do you just give a time check then? <laughs> <laughs> just to fill it up. I know, exactly. Yeah. But like, why? Do you know what I mean? Because the it's music, out the well, music was playing, right? And yeah. you mentioned it's 25 past four. Um, we'd never do time checks. <laughs> How is that useful? <laughs> uh, what yeah. are you expecting? Someone's <laughs> looking at it, they're going to think, 25 past four? Christ, Whoa. I should be at my mum's house. They and haven't so played any good records. I can't, they're interesting, but thank God he told me what else. I've got to take that bun out of the oven. Well, exactly. You, know, you never know. But you don't want to tell- Or they probably just realised some good starting on telly. <laughs> well, exactly. I was going to say, don't say it's 25 past four because, you know, I don't know, maybe the Antiques Roadshow- No, B BBC always start things at 25 past, don't they? Yeah. And five two. Well, you're a fool. That's what I'm saying. There's no reason for- Why do they checks. do that? Why- Why do they do that? And not on the hour like ITV. You know where you are with ITV. BBC, ten past, quarter past. Oh, one seven one five eight zero. Oh. 2000. Yeah. Why to BBC? I'm struggling. You are indeed. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to, uh, quickly go to an ad break, which is good. Yeah. That, that keeps people pretty fixed. Oh, yeah, yeah. They'll be desperate. Yeah. They'll be listening to the- But I'll do a little trial. Watch this. Uh, but after that, if you can, uh, hold out for 40 seconds, we've got the new one from the Manic Street Preachers. You've got to be happy with that. I'm loving it. Jervais, before we do it- Go on. Um, I watched Team Knight Rider yesterday. You did. You've seen it. It's a no. new, it's a new sort of thing. It must be made ten years later. And it's, uh, instead of just the one Knight Rider car, it's a team of them. A fleet of them, Gervais. Team, uh, so I think it's a teen. No, team, teen Knight Rider. <laughs> yeah, when what, he was like, little, he had spots and he was a little bit embarrassed. <laughs> on like a little, uh, little yeah, yeah, scooter. Yeah, and you go to the girls and go, hello. <laughs> uh, do you want to, uh, do you want to, uh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> teen yeah. Knight Rider. That's, teen Knight Rider would be beautiful. That's a great, isn't it? Yeah. That'd be great. And Kit goes, what are you doing? Nothing. Yeah. I was just, no, no, I was, I got, we're caught in the flies. <laughs> <laughs> Get these like uh, kits there, sort of explaining how to <laughs> shave. Yeah, yeah. That'd be beautiful. You dirty little. Now that has really gummed up my CD player. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'll risk stop it there, oh, surely. Team Night Rider. Team Night Rider. I tell you, if we get on to talking about telly programs, Gervais, we'll be here all night. Yeah. Won't we? Yeah, we're well, about twenty-five past four now. That's brilliant. <laughs> They're <Yeah>. disappointed. <laughs> Um, mm. But listen, Gervais, you know I've always said that, um, you know when a party's going bad. Yeah. When you end up in the kitchen, uh, talking about old kids' TV shows. And singing the theme tunes. Exactly. And you remember Swizzlers. And oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. And Flying Saucers, yes, we remember and Flying Saucers. Batwing Jumpers. <laughs> and everyone starts laughing, obviously. Batwing so Jumpers. Do you not remember Batwing Jumpers? She's retired now. <laughs> Thanks. Um, oh, Grot Bags. Hey. <gasps> grot Bags? That grot was, bags. what was that? Uh, that was on the Emu. Pink windmill. Oh, yeah, yeah. Talk about gay subtext. Pink windmill. <laughs> <laughs> so I take it for the fact that we're talking about it. We are in the kitchen exactly. at a bad party. We're in the kitchen we've at a bad party. We've got nothing, have we? We've got nothing to talk about. You know, usually we say, oh, we've got nothing, we've got a couple of things and we get out. We've really got nothing, Absolutely have we? nothing. What about that Team Nightwire? We were going somewhere. Oh, there, there must be something. Yeah. Hilarious. Imagine it. What was it? Michael, it's time for school. Oh, come on, I've got bellyache. Well, you're well enough to do that. <laughs> I have to do that. I have to get rid of my poison. Um, 
<laughs> well, uh, yeah, no, but teen. I wasn't talking about teen. Nightmare. No, sorry, teen nightmare. You're actually, you're actually going to tell an anecdote there. Well, no, not really. All I was going to say was that there, it was great yesterday because there was Team Night Rider, which is the uh, sort of t ten years later. There's a team of uh, people with super electronic cars driving around solving crimes. Yeah. And uh, then it flipped over, and there was Butt Rogers in the 25th century, uh, <laughs> featuring uh, Gil Gerard. Do you remember him? Good looking fella. Yeah. And Twinkie or a slip, biddy biddy biddy. And um, <laughs> sorry, are you, uh, are you on crack? <laughs> no. No. So have you have you taken sort of like some real sort of heavy mixture of cocaine? Why? What what what's that? And uh, obviously a good looking fella, biddy biddy. And a <laughs> <laughs> mini mini mini. No, that's Twinkie. And then I turned. That's, what? Why? That's are you an impression about? of Twinkie, the I little robot. The, the little robot. <laughs> Oh, the little robot! <laughs> ah, wait, between the little yes. silver robot that yeah. went biddy biddy biddy. It's as simple as that. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to corrupt you. I'm trying to get you know confused. I'll go on. Yeah, okay, it's fair enough. I'll take. All I'm saying it. is, great TV shows there that we forget. You know, we're in the kitchen. Do you yeah, we are, we're yeah. in the kitchen. But everyone else has left. It's just us two. <laughs> it's just we could I. go home. <laughs> we could go. Home, but yeah. so we're still enjoying it. Yeah, in the kitchen there. Yeah. Um, and uh, but what I was talking about is, you know, there's a lot of TV shows. <laughs> There's a lot of TV shows, Gervais, that we, we, we lo know and love and we remember. Yeah. But a lot of films, right, that became TV shows. MASH, obviously, the big success. Do yeah. you know, Gervais, I read about this yesterday, fantastic. Do you know that, um, they made a TV show, right, in the 1982 of Casablanca, <laughs> right, <laughs> featuring <laughs> David Soul. <laughs> <laughs> As what, Rick? As Rick. <laughs> what a fantastic <laughs> TV show. <laughs> that is fantastic. It'd be, it'd be Casablanca and you'd have a picture of him, wouldn't you? And every week they'd find a different reason for him to say, play it again, Sam. And lovely, and, uh, yeah, and lovely Patty Coombs. As, uh, <laughs> as he's, uh, as laser, oh, whatever oh, oh, that would be fantastic. <laughs> Mr. Rick, I'm not playing Black Backgammon for money. <laughs> play it again, Sam. <laughs> it'd be great. Every week, whatever it be, I don't know what they're different controls. It's like a catchphrase. Oh, that would be fantastic, Great, wouldn't it? Bobby Crush as the bloke <laughs> on the piano. <laughs> ding, ding, you ding, must ding, remember ding, ding. this. <laughs> oh, fantastic! Every week he gets an excuse to play it. Oh, that is Yang, like... ding, da, ding, da, ding. Well, once ding, I was ding. looking through, right, and there was that TV show called "You Must Be the Husband," oh. right. Yeah, it was it was called You Must Be the Husband, and I'd never seen it before. And me and Jane watching it, it was just flicked over. We saw the last that we were going to watch something else, and it just ended with the waiter coming up to one of them, going, uh, "You must be the husband." And we thought, "Do they have to end with that every <laughs> single week?" <laughs> Deary me, that's that's like a hard work. I tell you, <laughs> yeah, putting catchphrases. <laughs> yeah, in in the TV shows, hard work. <laughs> David Soul. David Soul. <laughs> oh, that is fantastic. Dave Hutch. Oh, who played Lit Victor Laszlo? I don't know anything Someone else about it. If anyone's ever seen it, please give me a call. What a fantastic show that would be. Oh, I know who played, uh, Victor Laszlo. Um, what's his name? Rodney. What's his name? Nicholas Lindhurst. Nicholas Lindhurst. He'd be great, wouldn't he? Nick Berry. Nick Berry. That'd be beautiful. Oh. And uh, I'll tell you what it would be. It would be, uh, they'd be on a golf course <laughs> and, um, and, uh, <laughs> Sam would like miss a stroke, wouldn't he? <laughs> and they just go, "Oh, play it again, Sam," <laughs> and everyone else would laugh. It'd be beautiful, oh, baby bird. If you'll be mine, we can keep this cup forever now. Yeah, we're in the kitchen. Yep, we make a cup of tea. Yeah. Um, apparently, Steve, um, who says this? Uh, he doesn't say play it again, Sam. No, I know he, he doesn't. He says, you... go on, play it, Sam. I know that, you stupid toss. Oh, for goodness sake. I studied film for three years, for Christ's sake, Gervais. Of course I know that, but it's the TV show. They're bound to have made the same mistake, aren't they? You, of course that. You can do an academic subject, of then. Of course. Oh, I can't, well, I'm sickened. I'm, I'm sickened. Because everybody knows that, Gervais, and yet he's come out and he's uh, spouting rubbish. Oh, I'm just, oh. Um, he thinks it's a good show. Oh. God, I'm disappointed. Oh, I'm so he, likes, angry. he likes the show. I'm so angry because everybody thinks I'm an imbecile. <laughs> yeah. Well, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, because I was going to mention a couple because I came up with a couple of my own TV shows. Go on, yes, I've got a few. Have you come up with your own? Yeah. Have you talked about this in the past? Well, yeah, I? yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, like the um, when they have a cliche in the title, and that's the oh, that's the best one we come up with. Like a fantastic. touch of frost, and it's his name. I know. I it's love that. it. Yeah. But my favourite. This is one I came up with, right? It was called Lady of the Night. <laughs> right? But that's knight spelt K-N-I-G-H-T, right? Yeah. And what is clever about it is, or that, what it is, is there's a knight, right, a knight of the realm, okay, but it's set about sort of, uh, 1870 or something, sort of Sherlock Holmes era, that sort of thing, and, uh, he's a knight of the realm, you know, Lord, uh, was it Sir, Sir Johnson or whatever, and, uh, he's a, he's a knight, whatever, but he doubles up as a private investigator, right, yeah. and he's got, working for him, a prostitute, yeah. right, who's also a private investigator, yeah. 
Uh, and it's called Lady of the Night, you see, and it's a double, it's double meaning because it's clever, it's a pun. she's a lady of, of the, the night, night and she's, she's a lady of the night. night. <laughs> it's a night. It's fantastic. Brilliant. And they go around, but seriously, they go around investigating, like, crimes, sort of Whitechapel and stuff, and, um, and it's brilliant because, uh, you know, obviously she's a prostitute or whatever, and he's a knight, and there's a bit of sexual tension, Gervais, obviously, yeah. and obviously you've got all the Victorian elements and everything, and obviously they can't associate with one another openly in the streets, because that would be, you know, he's obviously got to maintain a certain reputation. Yeah. So it's Lady of the Night, and there's the intrigue and tension. What do you think about you that? thought this through. I thought that through. That is fantastic, using all your, your technical knowledge yeah. and your film study and your... Yeah. I came up with one. Go on. Starring naughty Samantha Janus as a nun with Diana Rigg as a most superior and it's called None the Wiser. That's beautiful. And they're naughty. And, <laughs> and the, <laughs> and the sequel, the she gets pregnant and she's, she has to go and work in the kitchen, right? And that's called, uh, None in the Oven. <laughs> I was gonna say. Yeah. Of course it is. Yeah. Of course it is. Oh, that's beautiful, Gervais. Remember, um, Ray Cooney, that, that thing in the 80s when all those, uh, had those farces on, and, uh, well, basically what he did was, um, substitute the word life for wife. He had, <laughs> run for your wife, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, uh, wife begins at forty. Beautiful. Doesn't make any sense, does it, no. grammatically? No. I, I just thought of one, like, um, I said to, to, uh, Claire a few weeks ago that it would be like a stage play and there'd be loads of people jumping in and out like of hospital beds, but one in one of the beds, the one of the wives, she just wanted to die. Because <laughs> had no quality, and it's whose wife is it anyway? <laughs> <laughs> that'd be good, wouldn't it? That's nice. Yeah, yeah. Brian Rick. Oh, that'd be beautiful. That'd I be love lovely. that. Touch of frost. It's so clever. And the and the other one is um uh loads of uh, lawyers with their wives jumping in and out of bed with just underpants on taking drugs, and it's this wife. That's beautiful. Yeah, that's great. That's nice touch. So um, let's have uh, some competitions then. But you know, we I've got I've, I've got a whole game show as well, which I could mention. Go on. Do you want me to mention it? Well, or uh, we should we uh, play uh, Blue Oyster Cult? Their yeah. classic song. Can I Don't fear the reaper. I I've got a game show right that I came up with. Yeah. Okay, and it features me, but I think it could be perhaps a vehicle for yourself, Gervais. Yeah. What's All it right. Called? I'm going to tell you. Like, it's called basically. It's called Ricky Gervais Meat Rations. Right. And uh, I, I like it already. You like it already because there's a part in there for me. Yeah. Could I play? The Ricky Gervais? Yes. <laughs> yes. Fantastic. It was originally called, um, it was originally called, uh, basically, let me just summarise very briefly, I'm not gonna tell you all the games, but there is, it's basically recreating the, uh, heady days of the war. Right. Um, right. That's fantastic. It's beautiful already, isn't it? It's I've got the got, nostalgia thing. I've got a game as well. But it's called, it was originally gonna be called, uh, Ricky Gervais Fag Rations. Right. But apparently, cigarettes weren't rationed in the war. So right. it's called Meat Rations now. Excellent. And, uh, I'll tell you some great games. My favourite is, um, oh no, what's it called? Um, to, to be perfectly Anne Frank. <laughs> It's a great game. It really is a great game where uh, you've got to pretend to be Anne Frank and hide from, uh, sort of snooping <laughs> Nazis. Oh, that is fantastic. It's a great game. And there's also, of course, well, let me go into it. There's, there's also, um, uh, uh, Dig for Granny. Good. Uh, well, I'll dig for victory, if you like. And well, what happens? You're, you're scavenging through rubble, right? Can I just say and these, if you are, find these are copyright. Anyone trying to rip me off? I mean, I've got the penis puppet theatre. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I've got a snake in this, surely. Oh, certainly. Ricky you can, have, you, rations. you can have a bit of my penis puppet theatre. That's lovely. Yeah. And I've also got a new game that I'll talk about after. After yours, it's called Tip the Balance, and it's sort of like a game for four. And it comes, it's like, I'll, I'll send it off to Waddington, see what you think. I mean, there's, there's, there's teething problems with okay. it. Okay, well listen, Gervais, look, let's play Don't forth. Fear the Reaper. Let's play that tune. By Blue Oyster and his cult. It's a classic. Yeah, and then we come back and we try and make some money. Let's make some cash. Well, you've got to be happy with that. Blue Oyster cult, Don't Fear the Reaper. Yeah. Yeah? So, go on then. So, what other games are in this, uh... Uh, Ricky Gervais's meat rations. Well, it starts off, uh, there's the sound of an air raid siren. <laughs> yeah, I like it already. And, uh, we came up with, uh, start queuing up, mum, for Ricky Gervais meat rations. Excellent. Do I look like sort of walker out of Dad's army? Yes. Ah, uh, oh, that is fantastic. Now you come I, in. Yeah. And, um, what it is, the set, right, is, um, is kind of like, half of it is an old sort of East End pub, and yeah. the rest is kind of rubble <laughs> and debris. Oh, and a, sk a skyline of ruined... In, you know, um, and what it is is uh, you, you come in. You're fairly sort of sharp and dapper, and uh, of course Chaz and Dave provide the music throughout the show. And you know the Dolly Bird that usually comes on. She's a woman with like uh, um, curlers with a little um, scarf on it. That's right. She comes out with like, those little floral That's aprons. It. You've got it. You've got oh, it. Fantastic. And so there's a game show. There's a bit. There's a bit in the show called Roll Out the Barrel. Yeah. I uh, don't know what happens in that. Yeah. Roll out the barrel. Um, oh, we could think of something. There's a barrel of fun, sort of thing. Yeah. And there's, yeah, so there's, and there's a dig for victory, where you've got like a big pile of rubble, right? And you're digging through it, scavenging for food, canned food, but if you find like relatives or friends, yeah. you score extra points. Oh, that is fantastic. And we, there must be some sort of fun with like gas masks. Yeah. When you can all put them on and dress up as like, I don't know, one of the banana splits. Yeah. That's um, the what could that be? Gas. Who snork? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Well, possibly. So, so no, every week there's the real snork. Right. So like, it's like confessions <laughs> come on. Like, think, you know, <laughs> which one snork? Which one snork? Yeah. So yeah. you've got three. Maybe you've got three celebrities. Yeah. Who's the gas mask and the real snork? That's so, right. So you've got someone like Ted Moltson. He pops one on. You got Frank Bruno. Yeah. yeah. And Ginny Cooper. That's and it. they put their mask on and like a little outfit. And then the real snork is there. And you've got to ask them questions. Like you get you get like Bernie Winters and uh, um, Henry Cooper going. Um, um, number three, <laughs> number three, um, <laughs> how long have you been in the banana split? <laughs> and, and Ginny Cooper goes, oh, about six years ago, oh, I don't know, I think the, I don't think the banana split's been going longer than that, no, I don't, I don't think it's number three, um, what, what, what do you think? And, uh, it, Bernie Winters goes, mm, number one, <laughs> number one, um, uh, how did you get the job being in banana splits? <laughs> and it's probably Ted Maltz I'm going, oh, I am um, answering that but in the paper, that's not right, they were born, you know what I mean? <laughs> and there's Chaz and Dave in the corner just going, na 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 yeah! Yeah, with the real snorks, and they always, the, the lights go, right, and the, one stands up and he sits back down again, <laughs> and then the real snorks, and the others all take their <laughs> mask off, and they go, it's lovely, what are you doing now? Well, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, appearing, uh, um, Puss in Boots down in, uh, Brighton Hall, that'd be fantastic. <laughs> Oh, what? what? Jilly Cooper? I don't know, what does she do? Oh, she's a novelist. She's a novelist. Oh, yeah. Now appearing in Panto. <laughs> I'm not letting you book the guest. <laughs> oh, God. But wait a minute. What? Well, I mean, I love your idea. Yeah. Who, who snork. Yeah. It's a bit odd, isn't it? How we started off with a kind of wartime nostalgia <laughs> yeah, show. We but now we've sort of featured <laughs> sort of quite bad 70s <laughs> animal Nothing things. wrong with the, uh, Banana splits. But I like that, that's a good thing. Yeah, okay, that can be like a special feature. So I'm just it? gonna make a note of it, cause we've got Dig for Victory, uh, yeah. to be perfectly Anne Frank. Yeah, and, and uh, who's Snork. Who's <laughs> Snork. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I'm full of ideas. I could probably help you on this. Oh, this is great. Well, what other? Yeah. Well, let, maybe we'll come up with some other ideas as we go. Yeah, we've still got to tip the balance to go. But you know, can uh, I just say, yeah. I did actually once try and pitch this. When I, you know, when I appeared on Blockbusters. Yeah. Well, I obviously <laughs> met with a producer there, and I said I got an idea for you. Have we talked about this on air? We talked about me on Blockbusters, Have we? but not about um, my pitching this. No, thing. go on, go on. And uh, I said to her, I said, "Sit down." I said, uh, <laughs> "I've got a great idea," and I, I tried to bid it with me. It's the star. <laughs> she said, "Who are you?" Steve, Steve's, Steve's meat rations. Uh, she said, why are you in it? I said, oh, I am, don't worry, I just, I, I'm the only one who can put it off. Yeah. And, um, she said, right, go on, what, what is it? And at that time, I had none of the games. <laughs> all I had was, all I had was the title, and she went, I like it, yeah, what are the games? I, mm, I don't know. She said, <laughs> oh, if you'd have just said, well, I'll stop me there, love, and just popped a gas mask on, and yeah. said, who am I? She'd have gone, she'd have gone, snork. <laughs> na, 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 <laughs> na, 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 no, no, it's not. Na, na, oh, we got an ad break, then we got a classic from Blur. It's, uh, it's five o'clock. So, if you were gonna watch that thing that started at five, two, you'd miss the first five minutes of yeah. it. Yeah. So we're doing well with this, um, new game show, aren't we? Yeah, we've got a few ideas Ricky there. Ricky Gervais's meat rations. Ricky Gervais's meat rations. I love that. It's a great idea, isn't it? We got, and we, well, we came up with a quick, another quick game, because uh, obviously so far we've got Dig for Victory. Yeah. Uh, to be perfectly Anne Frank, and, uh, Who's Snoring? <laughs> <laughs> Which is possibly, I think, the most popular game so far. Yeah. And also we've come up with a new one, haven't we? Um, Puss in Jack Boots. Yeah. You get a beauty of the age. To Say, come um, out. Saucy with... Samantha Janus? Yeah, maybe she comes out and she's got a little moustache on. Right, and a peak cap pulled low and, uh, Nazi regalia. And you go, and you got Bernie Winters and, uh, Ted Maltzan and, uh, Ginny Cooper going, um, so, um, you're obviously, by the warm, warm applause, you're, you're much loved. Yes, I am. Oh, oh God, um, uh, show business and the audience clap. <laughs> obviously, like yeah. Well, that's yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I don't know, you, 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 you're doing the, uh, you're doing the, uh, Nazi accent very well. Um, you an actress? Yes, that is correct! Yeah, it'd be great, wouldn't it? Could you salute in, please? Yeah. <laughs> that'd be nice. Just I'll do a little Nazi salute. Yeah. Little little click. That'd be lovely. I thought of a little quick And game. what's that one? That's called, um... That's called, um... Puss in Jack Boots. Puss in Jack Boots. Yeah, lovely. I thought of a quick one. It's called, um, Get the Hell Out of Hiroshima. Right? It's against the clock. Uh, anyway, there's a, uh, that's there as well. And, uh, we got any, <laughs> any other ideas, Gervais? Uh, the Cure, love song. Gervais, it's time for the game show everyone's talking about, Make Gervais Laugh. Yeah. We've had a, an entry here this week, all right, and what it is, let me explain the rules. Somebody sent in a picture, Gervais, right, I'm gonna show it to you now, and if you laugh, 
then hopefully this young fellow wins a prize. Uh, it's from Neil in, uh, let me see, Highgate. Oh, no, I'm laughing already, though. Are you? Yeah, because well, I'm well, the anticipation. Alright, okay. Straighten yourself out. Now, you've not seen this picture. Oh, it's be just so disappointing if it's not funny. There's nothing worse than that, you know what I mean? I know. Okay. Well, I think, I think you're right. You run the risk. You run the risk. Well, that's, but that's the nature of the game show. Okay. Alright. And what, what's in it for everyone else who can't see the picture or cares? Nothing. Right? Nothing. Yeah, that's good. But then, you know, what- We're not here for their- Exactly. Exactly. No, are we? All right. You know, we're busy men. We've got things to do. We yeah. like to entertain ourselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But <laughs> what I would say is, what is there in this show anyway for anybody else? <laughs> Good point. At least we get a laugh. Yeah, okay. Um, now really? what would you say, well, the other thing though, is there a prize for Neil? Yeah, if, if, if I laugh, um. What can you give him? Will you give him sort of like a, a chuckleometer? You go on the other, Ricky Gervais' chuckleometer. The chuckleometer? Yeah, this is up to ten CDs. Right. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh. Okay. All right then. Well, okay. Because that first one we did ages yeah. ago, that was that was up oh, number yeah. ten, wasn't it? Yeah, eight, eight nine, ten. Yeah. Right. Here comes the picture. I think it looks to me like it's an internet picture. Okay. With you. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Here comes the picture now of Gervais. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Oh God. Oh, has he done that? No. Now listen. What I do? Is, let's play a record, Gervais, and I will. <laughs> Don't explain it. We can explain no, it. No, we no, can explain no, it. No, don't, please. Right, no. Um, <laughs> when I was, uh, about 16, um, my nephew got, um, mumps. And all the men in my family were really worried, right? And, uh, I soon found out why. You know, obviously, if you get mumps when you're an adult and you haven't had it before, you go sterile, or it can cause sterility. Really? Yeah. I mean. Yeah. And, um, I was about 16, and, uh, this worried me, and I went to her and I said, have I had mumps? She went, you've had one mump. <laughs> now, I don't know what mumps are or is, but I'm pretty sure you can't have a mump. Or, I think she meant that one side of my face swelled up, like a gobstopper, it was. But what is a mump, or what are the mumps? I mean, it's a viral infection, isn't it? I don't want to embarrass myself. I don't want her to be right. Like I a doctor, know, can you yeah, have, like, no. a number of mumps or one <laughs> big, <laughs> one big <laughs> mump? <laughs> Why have you had one big like mump? A, like a hunchback for a while. <laughs> you're just like you're, you're mump backed for a while. <laughs> yeah, and just walk yeah. around. <laughs> you mump back. Yeah, and you don't remember because it's always when you're very oh, young. Hey, you're mump back. But yeah, yeah, exactly. But I had apparently I had one mump, so I could probably probably one of them, just one of them went a bit sterile. Can you? So you. You can become sterile yeah. if you have the mumps when you're an adult. Apparently, yeah. Can you, d I mean, does that, for instance, does that, it doesn't cause, um, say, I mean, say for instance, an adult had the mumps, right, yeah. and then he sort of had sex and he, and, he had, and he gave birth to a child, his wife gave birth to a child. Yeah. That, that can't cause any other problems. It can't cause deformity or anything. <laughs> it's just, no, because it's just my dad had the mumps. <laughs> When, I don't know, I don't know. We, we should get our facts right, really. If there's a doctor out there, I mean, ca can mumps cause to really? How does it do it? I have stories about, um, like my teacher, his mate, um, had to have them, they swelled up and he had to put them in cotton wool for about a month. God almighty. Because that can, you know, mumps aren't fun. No, I, well, I'm not saying it. I mean, well, let me, well, I can say maybe, maybe you've had mumps and now you're sterile. That could be a, was that, mumps aren't fun. Yeah. That's like go to work on an egg. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Who said that? I was an, I have an argument with someone about who said, um, go to work on it. Someone said it was that William G. Stewart bloke who... No, it was... It was uh, Faye Weldon. No, it wasn't. It was Salman Rushdie. <laughs> it was. It was. No, it wasn't. No, hang on. No, maybe it wasn't. It was Faye Weldon. It wasn't Faye Weldon. Right. It was either... Right, let me tell you what it was. Okay. It was either that bloke that wrote, um, A Year in Provence or whatever it was called. Right. It was, was either... Who came up with the slogan, go to work on an egg? It was either the Year in Provence fella... Who's that? I mean, what his name was, I don't know. 0171 580 It was the year in Provence. You know that fellow who wrote that book, Year in Provence? Everyone yeah. read it, everyone thought it was great. No, it's Peter or something like that. Right, right. Okay. And he, I think he definitely wrote that. Sam Musty came up with something. I think it was the year, see, I, again, I'm thinking that maybe it was the egg thing. But I would say as well that that fellow that wrote Year in Provence, he also came up with the, uh, you know, the Fat Willy cartoon series. What a hilarious series of books they are. Not Fat Willy, is it? It's called Fat Willy, wasn't it? What's the one, Where's Willy? <laughs> where's Wally? Where's Wally? Where's Willy? That'd be pretty straightforward every time, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, um, there's a fellow there. <laughs> no, there is. no way you come from it wouldn't. Oh. Well, there you go. Well, um, Peter Mayle is the name of the bloke who wrote, um, Year in Provence. Um, 
thanks to, uh, Neil. Uh, and also, Neil says that Salman Rushdie did naughty but nice for the cake commercial. Now, I, d I still don't know who did, uh, go to work on an egg. I think it was Faye Weldon. No, it was Peter Mayo. Do you reckon it yes, was? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm and gutted. Yeah. And you very rarely, Jerry from Ballum, you very rarely go, uh, sterile for months. Uh, but it is a viral, uh, Infection, yeah. It's such an important This, this program, it, exactly, Steve. Yeah. It's like a public service. It really is, isn't it? Mm. And we, we treat things sort of sensibly and maturely and we, we give out, um, you know, the correct information. I'll be honest with you. It's safe for kids to listen to, isn't it? Well, imagine if you were in the, I mean, this happens to us all the time, you know, you're in the pub and someone will say, well, you know, is mumps a problem? Is it going to cause infertility? And you're there just saying, um. Well, I was listening to Ricky Gervais. And. It's very rare. It is a viral infection. Is and do you, uh, do you know who did, uh, go to work on an egg? They went, no. Peter Mayle or, um, Faye Weldon, we're not sure. Possibly Salman Rushdie. It, no, definitely wasn't Salman Rushdie. That's quite incredible, though, to go from writing naughty but nice about cakes to, um, to, to live to in a hole in for the rest of your life. Yeah. Um, I used to write when I was at school. Oh, yeah. Um, now, I didn't watch sort of kids' programs when I was growing up. I watched sort of crap adult ones. You know, I mean, ITV on the telly from, uh, 12 midday through to like midnight and I'd watch all the um all the police series mm. um police story uh Charlie's Angels Steve Austin and Teen the, Night Rider Teen Night Rider yeah and um I start I, I wrote this essay at school and I just couldn't stop and I started serializing it and every time I just kept writing I was sort of like you know people were reading it at school and it was about a cop a New York cop who was as hard as you know what I mean yeah and I worked out what his name was. Now, it's, I just, uh, God, this is how television influences me. Because it was one word name, which is his surname. That was the title of the, uh, book, title of the series. And that's what all his friends called him. White to, right. <coughs> it was called Jezuk. <laughs> Jezuk? Yeah. Jezuk. Yeah. I thought I had a Z and a K and a J. Jezuk. Jezuk. Yeah. <laughs> you know it does I... sound so close to, like, Pillock or Jesse. Yeah. Or Nonce. No, no nonce. There's no nonce. Well, do you know what I mean? Cross between sort of Jezuk. like Pillock and Jism. Damn you, Jezuk! Yeah, <laughs> you're off the case. Give me the badge. Keep the stinking badge. I don't need a badge to be a cop. It was all stuff like that. And he yeah. burst. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he'd look at his gun and go, "This is my law." Oh my God, it's Jezuk! How did he find us? <laughs> Jezuk! <laughs> yeah, it was great. There'd be shootouts and everything. Oh, yeah. fantastic! Let me just ask: Was he? Um, was he? Did he have perhaps have a broken marriage? He was hard boiled. He played by his own rules. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I imagine. Uh, simultaneous with this, he was a bit of a drunkard as well. I had yeah. a bit of drink. No, he didn't. Didn't drink. Oh, no, good, he was good. a good-looking fella. Um, but he was letting himself go. He was a bit hard bitten. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing I was sort of simultaneous, which was more of a novel. I wasn't serious. I said, well, I was actually writing a novel and I've got like three exercise books, right? Um, it was about this kid, right? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> right? He saw his, um, parents just brutally murdered for no reason by a gang of outlaws, yeah? And he buried his father and he knelt down on the grave and he said, looked up and he goes, as God is my witness, I will avenge thee. <laughs> <laughs> and then he sort of went to the the store and he got loads of bullets and he practiced and he was the fastest guy. He was only about sixteen. Yeah. Right? His <laughs> name was Jody Barnes. <laughs> <laughs> Jody Barnes is alright, yeah. Yeah. Good Imagine, that's nice. Yeah. Oh <laughs> fantastic. Have you still got any of those exercise books? <laughs> I oh, not. That would be the incredible. teachers used to sort of like I must have gone, yeah, it's good. I must have passed around the uh he's still another one. Jamais has written another episode of Jezuk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I say, seriously, if you brought one of those in and yeah. read it out, that'd be weird. I'd be entranced. <laughs> Imagine it. Seriously, that'd be great. Can you, do you <laughs> think your mum might- of a twisted 14 year old brain that only ever watched ITV cop shows. Do you think your mum might still have some copies? Of, no. Of she Jezuk. Got... No. <laughs> was it least, like, was it like sort of, the initial one was like Jezuk, then it was like Jezuk abroad, <laughs> Jezuk in Paris, <laughs> um, yeah. Jezuk on safari. Yeah. Here well, comes Jezuk. My moment. Return of Jezuk. I liked that Jezuk. He's a proper man. Yeah. He's not like you. But mum, I invented Jezuk. You were, you were a Nazi. <laughs> you, you couldn't be like Jezuk. He's, he's in my mind. Return of Jezuk. Here yeah. comes Jezuk. Son of Jezuk. Oh, it's fantastic. What if Jezuk met Jodie Barnes? They'd get on. They'd have no quarrels. They could team up. Oh, it'd be fantastic. After break, a little bit of, uh, Lars. Teen Jezuk. Still here then. <laughs> <laughs> Gervais, um, you've embarrassed yourself. Mm. Oh, just shut your ugly gob, you bug-eyed, anemic, fish-faced, 
tosser. Nice to have you back. Five past four on a Sunday, Ricky Gervais, XFM 104.9, London's, uh, only alternative. <laughs> Steve. Yeah. You know we gave away those CDs. Hey, we could, great giveaways. Just good radio, isn't it? We've got CDs to give away. Tickets and that's good radio. Mm. Do, do you remember who won them? What, last week? Yeah. Well, no. Right. I've got to get them back. What, are these the CDs that we took, we took from the library? Yeah. Anyway? I've got to get them back. 0171-580-2000. If you won those CDs, could you give us a call? <laughs> well, why should they bother? They're probably busy listening to them. You, do you know what I mean? You can't give something away and then take it back. Yeah, I need big time. I've got to get them back. We've had a, uh, bill for the computer as well. That's mine. No, it's not yours. It is it's mine. It's not yours. I procured that. That is, uh, uh, that is mine now. No, the that is technically, that technically counts as ownership. Listen, Gervais, it's not yours, all right? I've told you this before. I've explained this to you a hundred times. What? All right? If you, if you urinate on something... Yeah. It is not yours. It does. In no, the it's not That's what yours. cats do. That is what cats do. They go around, they, the territory, that's theirs, they, they urinate on it. That computer's mine. If a cat urinates on something, yeah. right? Yeah. In its cat philosophy, yeah. it owns that. I agree. It's, that's a sort of, uh, well, what do you call it? A sort of territory thing. What's the difference? You're not a cat. No, I know. You're not a cat. That's discrimination. No, you're not a cat. You can't, you can't live life by cat rules. Well, I've got loads of stuff like that. My flat's full <laughs> of stuff that I've got like that. What? Yeah, I've got, uh, two telephone boxes. Right. Um, I've got a cash point machine. Yeah. yeah. Glyn was furious. He was <laughs> getting out money. Right. Um, didn't depend. Uh, side of a church. That's yours. Yeah. Um, two BMWs. Well, I had two. I've got one now. What happened? Yeah. The, the, the second one, the owner caught me and he started doing the same. And because I started first, I finished first, so he finished last, so it was technically his again. Is that how it works? Yeah. If I piss on something, then that's mine. Yeah. But if someone else pisses on it, then they're theirs. Yeah. Is that how it works? Could you say urinate? This is XFM 104.9. They are mine they're now. They're not yours. They are mine. They're, they're not. They're my shoes, Jimmy. Yeah, and they're mine now. <laughs> no, they're not. I can't believe. I, this is why I don't want to do this anymore. Why? Just. I can't believe you! They're my shoes now. That is how- that is ownership. That counts. In the cat world- it, They're my <laughs> shoes now. And some of the carpet is mine as well. In the cat world! Yeah. Wow. You cannot live your life by the rules of the cat world. I can. I can. How- what does- what does your girlfriend- what, What's do? this? Oh. Not many people can oh. do that! XFM, I thought not caught past. How do you- I mean, how do these sort of little theories of yours develop? What? They come in my head. Then they're all right. Then I like them, and they happen. <laughs> right. Then they're mine. <laughs> so, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> okay. Yeah. What do other people make of the? They go that? along with it. What your girlfriend? Yeah, and all and all my special friends and the friends that I make. Does she mind that that your flat looks like an East End lockup and stinks of urine? No, she don't have a problem with that. No, the sinuses are gone now. Completely gone. The sinuses yeah. are gone. Yeah. The Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I thought as much. <laughs> well, I know what you rock and rollers get up to, Gervais, in your, in your spare time. <laughs> oh, dear. It's beautiful to see you again, though, because yeah. we thought, we thought you would, uh... I'm looking good. We thought you'd be gone forever. Why? But you're back. Yeah. It's no. beautiful to see you. No. Oh, I'll be around for Any, anything planned? I, did, I didn't expect, it's not my life, I didn't expect to be here this long, so anything is a bonus, <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, any, uh, any plans for today's show? Uh, got some more records than that, and some um, absolute dribble. Right. Yeah, so, packed so, into so, two hours. So, no difference. <laughs> no. No, 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 <laughs> hey. no, no. Great, well, it's going well. It's yeah. going well. I've got a little competition. Yeah. Uh, which I'll maybe introduce after the Is record. this, is there anyone mad enough to sleep with me competition? Because <laughs> it did, nah, is there, is it? I'm not doing that one again. All right, I've got a different yeah. one. Yeah. Um. I've got a different competition. Keep calling the Samaritans, please, we don't do that sort of thing, sir. Please. Or else. Can't threaten the Samaritans. Why do you like that song so much? Because, well, because they're singing about you being an ugly tosser, all right? Just gone twenty past four. Gervais, I hate to kick people when they're down. <laughs> no, you don't. You like it. And you, you like people twitching when they've been badly hurt. 
<laughs> but I, for some, I don't know how this came about, but I started to uh, consider the songs of Carter, the oh, Unstoppable Sex Machine. I don't know why, someone was playing one Carter. in my house, and we were flipping through the, um, the records, the, the lyric sheets. Fruit Bat. Now, I don't know, when I was at, uh, when I was, when I was in the sixth form, everybody, every, when I was in the sixth form, Gervais, everybody had a, a Carter USM t-shirt. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and uh, I imagine you probably by the end of the eighties, early nineties, so all um, events officers, A and R men. Yeah. What, what were you doing about that time? You were, you'd have been what? That was when you were claiming benefit yeah. while still working. Yeah, yeah. You had the wheelchair and everything. Yeah, the tartan blanket. Nice, fantastic. Um, and uh, I, because I you see everybody had a Carter USM T shirt. I didn't have one because I didn't. No. Do you know what I mean? That wasn't me. I, they all it was all a bit cliquey, and they didn't like me for it. Yeah, it wasn't because of that, though, was it? It was because they sort of had like symmetrical heads. <laughs> they sort of, they were, they were running in their human packs, weren't they? Don't and just ostracised you, going, <laughs> oh dear. Don't start. Yeah. Right. I'm just looking through the lyric sheet. This is from the album, uh, 1992, the Love Album, right, by Carter. Yeah. Uh, Come just, on. just give you a taste of some of the lyrics. Yeah, go on. Which we thought were so profound in 1990 or whatever. I was. never did. Um, this is from the track, Look Mum, No Hands. <laughs> <laughs> I should point out that many of the, the titles of their songs are appalling. Um, there's obviously, my, my favourite, possibly the worst, is The Road to Domestos. <laughs> that is the worst name for song I've ever heard. I mean, oh, what's that supposed to mean? Anyway, check, check this lyric out. This is one of the, the worst lyrics. Go on, I'm ready. <laughs> Go on. He flies through the air with the greatest of ease, that daring young man in the blue dungarees. <laughs> What the hell does that mean? Oh, Is that supposed God. to be the thing? Oh, she flies like a bird in the sky eye, that uh, ugly old tart with a sty in her eye. This Lovely. is, uh, this is, uh, this is quite a nice one. Um, this is, this is clever. This is bloody clever. Go on, what they do? What's Fruit Bat done here? Go if on. we club together. Yeah. With all the diamonds hey, we Hold say, on, I'll stop you there. Club? <laughs> go on. Diamond, that, that's hey. so far. I'm, oh, no, wait, 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 wait. wait. Stop there. Oh, come on, how's it, go on. <laughs> if we club together with all the diamonds we've saved, yeah. we could look to our hearts and say, Hold on, hearts is, is, a, is a suit in the... Oh, go on, clubs, diamonds, hearts. We could look to all our hearts and say, we've got it in spades. What does that mean? Spades. Hold on, what does that, what does that, what does that sentence mean? If we club together with all the diamonds we've saved, yeah. we could look to our hearts and say, we've got it in spades. I don't know what that means. I have no idea, but that's the kind of brilliant. So they, see what they did there, they got all those... It's Things incredible. In. Um, let me just, there's a good one here. Could they do it with signs of the Zodiac? Uh, Parts of the body. Here we are, here we are. Um, I've been GBH'd <laughs> and, and ABH'd <laughs> for a packet of B and H. <laughs> I've been taken and I've been driven away. Oh, um, oh. my telephone is always ringing and my number is triple X directory. Oh. Uh, call 0898 talk dirty to me. That is some of the worst lyrics, Gervais, surely, that you've ever heard. Unless oh, you knew different. 0171 580 2000. I've been thinking some of my own as well. The worst lyrics you've ever come across. Oh, there's going to be arguments. 0171 580 2000. Or you can fax us 0171 580 1234. And, and, and think realistically, because I, I hate it when you see in like the Melody Maker Enemy and they ask one of these pop stars, what's the worst song of all time? And they go, the birdie song. Or, no, it's not. It's something by Carter or Swade or David Bowie, because they, they're, they're in that framework. They're the potentially, you know, do you know what I mean? Exactly. Don't go for, um, chirpy, chirpy, cheap, cheap. Go for something like that, because that is disgusting. Let me just tell you, this is my go final on. one, um, before we go away, uh, which is, um, uh, yes, sorry, boy, there's nothing worth living for, but it really ain't worth dying for, so just say three hail Jesus and Mary chains. <laughs> <laughs> Early in the morning, I put breakfast at your table. Make sure that your coffee has a sugar and cream. <laughs> your eggs are over easy. It's sort of like a breakfast song. I can't remember this. <laughs> because I'm not your superwoman. Doom, 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 doom. Yeah. It's just, I've and never then, heard this. There's one great bit as well. Um, he goes, uh, um, uh, now you say your juice is sour. It used to be so sweet. <laughs> and I can't help but a wondering if you're talking about me. Isn't that great? Oh, uh, sorry, look, this, this, um, juice is, it's a bit sour. It used to be so sweet. <laughs> oh, fine, I'll change it. No, 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 let me explain. This juice, yeah, it's sour. It used to be sweet. Well, it's thought we've always had. No, 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 you're not listening. 
you're not listening. I think you're an ugly pig. I want to leave you. <laughs> so I mean, that, you know, he, he didn't state it. <laughs> Your eggs are over easy. Oh, who's that by? No, I didn't. Never heard it. You've made it up. I'm not your superwoman. Do do. Oh one seven one five eight oh two. Th I just thought of another one as well. So do you know, John White? I ain't missing you at all. Missing you since you've been gone away. And he's worried about people that think that he's really not missing her. So, uh, <laughs> towards the end, he goes, I can lie to myself. Oh, he was lying all along then, wasn't oh. he? Oh, got any more carter lyrics? Well, I'm still wading through them, Gervais, and it's just making me quite low. So, uh, I'll try and dig out a few more for the the next time we have a chat. Um, but uh, I would say that Emma, of course, who uh, helps us out here, she's uh, mentioned, um, track. What, what was it, Emma? What was yours? It was uh, YMCA. YMCA. Um, I've got, I've I've got a worse one. Have you? Um, oh, hold on. Oh, what's that one? Another one? That's worse. Oh. oh, God, yeah. Well, Emma, we we'll yeah, save that one. Um, Emma's was, um, you can get yourself clean, you can have a good meal. You can get yourself clean, you have a good meal. Well, I don't have a problem with it, you see, because I just think it's a wonderful thing. You know, the, the YMCA doesn't get enough publicity, good press. Yeah. And the village people did them a favour. I mean, why on earth they wrote that song? Well, you know, what, to publicise the YMCA. I mean, who thinks, hmm, I don't know, uh, <laughs> Oh, people have done the police force, you know, they've done... Hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, this is very good to this yeah. but I think you mean this, so you don't know what that song is, you, you think that they're actually some sort of advertising for the YMCA, were you? Well, I don't know, it just seems really odd to me. Well, if I is remember it, like, at the time, the, y the YMCA complained at the time because of the connotations. What kind of, it's just a PR thing for the ones, yeah, I imagine. It's like the one that in the, in the no, Navy. No, no, no. In the Navy. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Another sort of PR thing for the, for the Navy. It's yeah. just bizarre. When they were, when they were dressed up as sailors and stuff. Yeah, well, whatever. Where, whereas usually they sort of like construction worker with a nice moustache, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Traffic cop. Yeah. Trumpers. And, uh... What? I don't... Is this... I'm worried about the red... Didn't you see Am I supposed to be... I know where that has been Am a I big... supposed to be reading between the lines or something? <coughs> I, well, I, I don't understand. I mean, I don't really understand. I mean this seriously. Okay, I don't right. Understand what you're talking okay, about. Okay, this, this is fine. Well, uh, obviously, there are gay connotations. It's a, like a, a, a gay icon record, isn't it? YMCA in the Navy. That was the point of it. What did you need? One of them dressed as Judy Garland. What? What? I don't understand. What was your problem with that? What? What? Th there's no. I don't understand why that suggests that. People are gay. I don't. It doesn't necessarily. It's like it's high camp, isn't it? It's been but adopted since as well. But the four of them. There's there's a there's a guy dressed as a motorcycle cop. There's yeah. no reason why that he should be gay. There's no there's why, a, there's a, why anyone should be gay. There's it's a they've chosen. What, there's what? a builder. Yeah. Right. Um. So no builders are gay ever. There's you can't another, be there's gay another one. I can't. What the other one is? Right. And then there's a Red Indian. Why on earth the Red Indian <laughs> is <laughs> supposed to be an icon? I don't know about that. I'm, no I, I, I'm, I'm flummoxed on that one, I'll be honest. But it, so what I'm saying to you, Gervais, is if you're gonna use you, if you can talk about gay people, then, then why don't they use the cliches? Why isn't there a uh, hairdresser? Right. And because it's probably the sort of cliches that even seen gays want to get away from. Also, that's the, you're confusing camp. ITV gays with, with real homosexual people who live normal lives. If I'm gonna write a song about gay people, I'm gonna have a hairdresser. <laughs> yeah, you are. In, in order to, all you are. Is, in order to appeal to a gay community, I'd have a hairdresser, John Inman, <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, Larry Grayson, <laughs> obviously, and uh, I don't know. Um, well, you, well, well, pe well, you wouldn't have Jason Donovan then, obviously, because <laughs> he's not. So you wouldn't have him, would you? No, I wouldn't have Jason Donovan. No. Well, I wouldn't have Philip Schofield. Well, I, no, I wouldn't no even reason. have. Andy, I wouldn't have Andy Peters. Right. I wouldn't have Andy Peters. Okay, I'm getting scared. I would, if Shut I, up! I would I'm, not have Andy I'm Peters. I'm getting scared. I would not Shut have Andy up! Peters. A few more um, Carter lyrics for you. Go on. You'll enjoy this one. Um, it's just one big knees up. A night on the town, a storm in a teacup, more like a teacup in a storm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, man. yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, man? Yeah. It's more like a teacup in a storm. Yeah, they've twisted it, All haven't right. they? All right. Yeah. Um, but Ian Canfield, you know, he's 12 now. He right. does the rock show. Oh, yeah. Um, he called and, uh, that, I'm not your superwoman, it was, um, Karen White. And Never he also says it. a worse lyric in, uh, YMCA is, young man, there's no need to feel down. Fair enough. Uh, another Carter lyric for you. The tequila sun is rising and the oh. Listen to me. The tequila sun is rising and the Harvey's Bristol moon is shining. <laughs> because they've got Harvey's, you know, shine on Harvey's moon. Yeah. And somehow Harvey's Bristol moon is shining. I have no idea. It's gotta be something about pulling your trousers down in a coach. It's just rubbish. 
And um, also, um, it, it one, you know, um, Quick Space, I played that and I, you said, oh, why is that your favourite? Mm. And I got annoyed because you've got no taste and shouldn't even question me. And I said it was about you being an ugly tosser. Well, Nina, from the band, oh, right. who's round at Jan's, said, no, it's not about him being ugly. Um, and the worst lyric is from the Beatles, you should see her in drag in a polythene bag. What's that from then? Is it a polythene perm or whatever it's called? Could be. Yeah. Could well be. All right, then the worst Beatles lyrics, we'll have those as well. There's um, a lot of them to choose there, from. There are a lot. Good, no, I'm not dissing the Beatles. No. I'm just saying they wrote, so, you know, they, they can't keep up that level, can they? Gervais, I've heard the songs you've written. <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand me? Yeah. You're not dis you're not in a position to disrespect anybody. Oh, no, I right? don't. I'm talking about people on the tube, <laughs> all right, that can barely speak, <laughs> all right. That just uh, with like a kazoo. There's a guy yeah. near my yeah. tube. Just so he just got a kazoo, or anything, and he just taps his foot, or yeah. anything, and then tries to sell lighters to you by being yeah. a kazoo. Right? You can't even disrespect him yeah. for his musical ability. Of course, you you're laughing about him now. If that was female, it'd be a whole different story, wouldn't it? Well, you know, you got to take it where you can get it. You'd have a lot of lighters every day, <laughs> wouldn't hey! you? You'd be struggling. Struggling down that road I'd with say, loads of little, I call say, clippers. I'd say, you know, I think there's a, there's a sad lack of kazoos on the wireless, and I'd have her in here for a quick session. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, well, we better do a competition now. Okay, yeah. Well, we've got these two. Is it two pairs of pulp tickets? So or you, just, no just idea, have you? I've no idea. You just want to. We've got there. Nye, nye. Oh, can I do this bit? No, no, you don't know what you're doing, do you? It's never stopped me. I know. Well, exactly. I, I wasn't going to mention it. No. All right, you do it. Go on then. I'll sit over here. I'm out the way. Okay. How many tickets have we got, Emma? <laughs> uh, one pair. One pair. That's two to you, Steve. To give to away. To see who? Pulp. When? Next Saturday. Where? Finsbury Park. At what time? About nine. And what have people got to do to win tickets? Uh. Yeah. Now you're stumped. <laughs> what? You suggest I should plan this show? Yes. Is that what you're suggesting? Yes. Why? All right, now listen, I think we should just give people an added reason to phone in with their worst lyrics ever. They yeah. can win, um, this pair of pulp tickets. Yeah. And then if we get bored with that in, say, about ten minutes' time, we'll come up with, uh, with another As reason. if it'd take ten minutes for us to get bored. <laughs> I'll, I'll be surprised if we actually bother. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Got an ad break and then uh, I've got a, at least I've got a pulp song lined up. Before you do that. Oh, we should tell them what the competition is, shouldn't we? I just did. What was it? I wasn't listening. <laughs> I, w I really, I wasn't listening. I really do turn off when you talk. Emma, what was, what was the competition? I'm, I'm not sure if I wasn't listening. 01715802000. Any what idea of what the competition was? Yeah. What was the competition? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Gervais, what's your favourite? Um, it'll be alright on the night clip. <laughs> from, I'm talking about all sort of 58 shows that they must have no, done. that is difficult. See, I'm see. wondering if it is that one um, with Mr. Chips from Catchphrase <laughs> tossing off. Have you seen that one? <laughs> no, yeah, it's that. great because it's, it's just an error and it makes it look as though he's he's tossing off. <laughs> oh, no, he's not. And I don't know what it is. Um, oh. I bet, I don't know what, um, what the catchphrase is. Um, Oh one seven one five eight. Mr. Chips is coming to dinner. Something yeah. like that. <laughs> Possibly. The best but I could do. No, come on. I, I want by the time we come back after this next tune, your favourite. It'll be right on the night clip. Okay. What's Mr. Chips doing there? <laughs> Say what you see. What's he doing? What's Mr. Chips doing there? Uh, is he spanking a monkey? Oh, it's a good answer, but it's not right. No, he was having a quick hand shandy. <laughs> They'd have been spanking the monkey. They'd have been a monkey being spanked, exactly. and you wouldn't have got it. Now, it's interesting that, um, I wondered what the catchphrase was. What? When they made that hideous thing. explain out. this, we didn't explain it. There was actually a thing on a right of the night, I didn't see no, it. No, let me explain, yeah. Go on. on. It'll be right on the night. Steve's gonna explain it. Because you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm nominating myself, Gervais, because you've got no idea. <laughs> That's fair enough. Um, only it'll be right on the right night. night. No, go on, do it, seriously, because it'll uh, get annoying. I can't be one to go on, really. No, no, come on! All, no. I'm, all I'm saying is- Did we do a pulp competition or not? Shut up a minute. Go on. Dennis Norden's there, he's saying, uh, if you're one of those people. Yeah. And he says something like, you know, anyway, here's a clap, here's an episode of blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so you see, uh, you see the, uh, the Mr. Chips, you know, he's up to no good or whatever on the big monitor screen, and Roy Walker's there saying, say, Mr. What, Chips. say what you see. And for some reason, because of the computer graphics, it looks as though Mr. Chips is having a quick- It know, looks like he's masturbating. It does, I'll okay, be honest with right. you. I haven't seen it, but I'll take your word for it. Anyway, I just said to Emma, I wonder what the actual catchphrase was they were looking for, yeah. and she went and made a phone call, and she's found out. What was it? Hand shat no. No, oh, oh, what a giveaway. That's a Freudian slip. It was, yeah. um... She's forgotten. 
Snake Charmer. Snake, Snake Charmer. Charmer. This is basically the same thing. Hold on, that's a good euphemism. I know it is. They've come up with a great... Yeah. But what I I've like... got to go and charm a snake. Yeah. What yeah. I like is the fact that she could go out and make a phone call and yeah. get that answer. Okay, let's... I, we could give her challenges. Yeah, it's just little little tasks. Um, if we if we get people to phone in and say, um, I remember an old episode of uh, Coronation Street, nineteen seventy two. Yeah, uh, I think somebody, you know, do you know what I mean? And we just and she'll go off and make a call, and we'll sort it out. Or is it sort of challenge Emma? Challenge Emma. That's good, isn't it? What? Who's she phoning? Who is she phoning? Oh one seven one five eight oh two five. I'll tell you something that always confused me. I know the answer now, though, but I could not for the life of me work out why this was a, a, a good saying. You you can't have your cake and eat it. Why not? What is the point? Uh, what does that- I'd still- I don't know what it means. Well, it means you can't have eaten your cake and then still have it whole in front of you. Right. Wise words. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chips there, what he's doing, he's picking up male chickens and sucking them. <laughs> Say what you see. Um, well, we've got an ad break now. Did we do a pulp competition? I can't remember. I- for the life of me. Should we- should we do another one? Well, no, but then what if someone who's entered and- well, they haven't won, obviously. Well, no. Uh, do another one. <laughs> Do something else. Oh one seven one five eight oh two thousand. What? <laughs> <laughs> then you could be going to pulp. What? Brilliant. Yeah. You thought? You, you, well, you've got us out of Yay! that particular uh, situation. Um, look, I've got after the break. Right? It's a Virgin promo thing. Don't make any adverts. I'm going to play um, a classic by the Smiths. I'll tell you what it is. It's um, some girls are bigger than others, right? But what worries me is it sort of starts and it fades away. And then comes back in again. And that worries me when I play this, because they, they probably think that I can't use the desk. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? No, it'd be terrible. It'd be terrible that if people got the wrong idea, Gervais. <laughs> thought you were incompetent. Yeah. Tosser. There was an article in The Guardian, Gervais, on that Friday, and it was about two pages long, and it, uh, it said basically that Morrissey's a little bit odd. <laughs> well done. Two pages. The guy wrote that probably got a grand or something. We got our, um, <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, That's we, money for old rope. Eh? Get him out, he's putting me off with his hair. Yeah. Get okay, would you? There's a bloke in here with strange orange hair just fiddling around. Emma, is my producer, who's this bloke? Yeah, uh, get him out. No, it'll probably be embarrassing. No, don't, don't hide. Emma, go in there, get him out. Who? Say, say his name, he's hiding now. Ian. Jermaine, yeah, it's not Ian. good radio. Eh? Hey? It's not great radio, this. <laughs> <laughs> to um, to, to exercise your personal psychological demons on air. <laughs> it's not fun. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That's what, all this stuff about you phoning up your mum. <laughs> all right, that might be useful and interesting to you. Yeah. All right? And a, so, to psychiatrists, gave me some money off a bill, though. Yeah, we don't care. Um, the winner is Roy Roberts. That's a good name. He won the pulp tickets for, um, his idea that the worst lyric was, uh, Look at this banging around. What is this? Amateur night. <laughs> Ket kettle just <laughs> in <laughs> Pot. Black. Everyone out of the studio that shouldn't be here? Good. This is a professional organisation. People wandering in, banging. With There's bits of paper here that's in, like, green biro. I want things typed. Do you know what I mean? I don't want anyone in here who isn't giving it 100%. Gervais? I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. Got to stop that there. That's Sorry. Crazy. No, no, wait, wait, wait. That's super glass and then he. This is how up on music Steve is. He went, it's sticking. Gervais, it's sticking. I've got to start it again now. Oh. Isn't it? How am I supposed to know? I've never heard the track before. Right. Okay, let's I stop can't that. believe you disrespected me on something like that. That's yeah. so unfair. I've embarrassed you, haven't I? I, I don't know the ins and outs of YMCA, so I'm not, <laughs> a, I'm not a music aficionado. Yeah. Okay. Right, you ask me any question on somebody credible, yeah. right? Like. Um, credit to the nation. Disco tax. <laughs> credit to the nation. <laughs> Who the hell needs credit to the nation? <laughs> Cheers, lads. Uh, Thanks very much. Well done. Yeah. Oh, Take, oh, what do you all do? Take a little bit in Nirvana, right? Still, well, they all run onto the dance floor at the Camden <laughs> Palace and they have to have to come off again. <laughs> it's Nirvana! It's, it's, no, no, it's not no, Nirvana. It's, it's not a rap thing. I'm embarrassed now. It's a sort of rap track. Quick, do some ironic dancing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, oh, I was thinking about that the other day. Tracks which use the riffs from really great songs. Oh. Which are just terrible. And what are they thinking? There's a show in that. There's that one that had. Uh, Am I going to play Supergrass or not? What was it? What oh, by were... the way, the pulp winner, um, Roy Roberts, right, and his horse Trigger. He won um, because he said, uh, Duran Duran, you're about as easy as a nuclear war. Do you remember that one? <laughs> please, please tell me now. And uh, Will sent in one of my favourites of all time. Uh, it's uh, Spandau Ballet. She used to be a diplomat, but now she's down the laundromat. Brilliant. That is lovely, isn't That's it? the problem with so many of these lyrics is simply because people want to rhyme stuff. Yeah. They want to rhyme two things. Yeah. So they end up with...
cod lyrics like that. <laughs> you see, you don't get that way. No, I, I, I let rappers off, but it's people like Duran Duran just, mm, they just make me. That's funny because I sort of let off New Romantics because it wasn't about anything, was it really? It was about, it was about the clothes, Steve. It was all, I wasn't there. It was about Jimmy. showing out. You know what I mean? I wasn't there, mate. Okay, this is Supergrass and Lenny. I've cleaned the CD off. It should be all right now. Tonk. Well, absolutely. What can I say? Yeah, great. Um, you didn't go to Pulp in the Park yesterday, did you? I did not. This is, uh, my mate Jarvis. This is Pulp. <laughs> what? Well, you didn't meet him. No, I know. What about pen pals? You say pen pals, don't you? Don't meet them with their friends. Oh, yeah, but you've never, you've never had any contact with Jarvis whatsoever. To me, so I don't know anything about this. What was it? What was going on? Pulp. What? What? Pulp, Catatonia, Bernard Butler. Right. Owen to X. This was a big event. Was it a big, some big oh, gig? you asked. Uh, what, what, what were you doing? Yesterday? Yeah. Ooh. Making some more clogs for the disco. Ooh. Yeah? Um, Thinking about ladies. <laughs> hey! Maybe I was with a lady. Were you? No. No. But, um... Anyway, I've, I've met Jarvis before. Met him at you do at the Long Peaks gigs. He's mates with him. Right. Yeah. What's he like? All right? He's sort of thin. Got glasses. Yeah? Yeah. Well, he has success with ladies. <laughs> Why don't I? Yeah. You don't go into that? Do okay. I? No, I don't think we should. Tell me about it. So what was it? I don't understand. You were involved somehow, weren't you? Well, I was just comparing. You just were comparing? Yeah. <laughs> well, just go out and say, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for, yeah. Were you? Ultrasound. What did you do? I mean, what, what, what was your shtick? Well, I wanted to go out and interrupt Jarvis with the Michael Jackson mask on. Yeah. Naturally. But I wasn't allowed. Right, they wouldn't let you. So I did it to Catatonia instead. Yeah, that really worked, does it? Didn't have the same impact at all. Did that, that make any no. sense? No. Yeah, no, not really. Who else was on? Bernard Butler, was he? Yeah, oh, Bernard Butler, I had a lovely little trick ready. I'd borrowed a little peaked cap off of, uh, the St. John's Ambulance, and I was getting ready to go out and go, Oh, I hate you, Butler, get that bus out now! But they played an intro tape, and I told him, he said, Oh, it's a shame, that would have been funny. Yeah. So that one. So lo lo lots, well. lots of opportunities there, wasted. Yeah. It would seem. But I did go out when all Very much the story of your life, Jim. Yeah, you? when the road is going a bit more DB on that, I need it. I did go and get my arse out. You went, and got, you went and got your arse out? Yeah. Right, because sort of the classy stuff weren't working. No. I had to sort of like dumb it down a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the nature of those audiences. But it was funny, right, because, uh, hold on. I'm getting bored now. It's Catatonia. They were on. Oh, they, were they? They were good. Were they? Yeah. Yeah. Can you roll your R's? No idea. One thing I would say though, if anyone saw Ricky yesterday at, uh, at where was it, Finsbury Park? Yeah. 01715802000. Was he faintly amusing? What did he get up to? Gervais, you know last week we started a competition where uh, people had to send in photographs or pictures or anything. Oh yeah. Um, if, uh, it, um, I would show them to you indiscriminately yeah. during the show and see if you would laugh. Yeah. Got the first one here. Yeah. From Michael in Crouch End. Yeah. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> You liar, that wasn't it. Well, it could have been. It been. You did that. I did that myself. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the idea. Yeah. That's the idea. Facts oh. Can I just say facts Oh, the... God. Facts <laughs> <laughs> I'll admit, I, I drew that one. But... <laughs> right. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. And I could never, I, not only could I not tell them what that was, I could never explain it well enough. No. There's so, nothing you could do to no. explain that picture. No. Suffice to say, if you've got a picture that you think can make the <laughs> laugh, and we will hopefully give a prize to, to somebody somewhere during the show. <laughs> oh, specifics like that that make this show, <laughs> sort of like, you know what I mean? The vague, the, the vague promise yeah. that there might be a prize. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, if you have a picture that you think uh, can make your face laugh, 0171 580... <laughs> Shut up, I'm trying to give the number here. 0171 580... That's enough. One, two, three, four. That's the fax number. That, yeah, exactly. Not, how are they going to phone in a drawing? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's the, simple things, Gervais, that let up. you down. Next up, Blair. Gervais, we've had a few faxes, um, and, uh, phone calls because people did see you, apparently, yesterday at, uh, Finsbury Park. Yeah. Introducing the bands. We've had a, a number of callers. Uh, let me just sort of tell you what they've said. They've passed this information on to It's going to be hurtful, isn't it? Well, you know, all I would say, Gervais, is you mock me, all right, about my appearance, okay, because yeah. you, you know you're safe. People don't know what you look like because you're on the wireless. But you've, made, wireless, a, you've yeah. made a public appearance, I've made a, I've made a big error. You've made a big, big error. Go on. All right, Les called. He yeah. said, Ricky let himself down by mooning. <laughs> Gervais, all I'd say to you is... I didn't moon. 
Clearly you did. No, I did thought a road is cleavage. The point is, Gervais, you see, even, I, I mean, those are classics in your repertoire. Yeah. Aren't they? Getting your arse out. That's like your sort of, um, you know, the very best of Woody Allen. You I know, did like one of his hour-long monologues. That's yours, I didn't it? do the fish, though, did I? That's my well, best to resistance. Anyway, Claire is also Pis phoned in. Pisky's to resistance. Um, Claire's phoned in. She said, you're a bit large, mm. all right, you had a haircut, mm. I don't know what that means, and you're quieter than on the radio. Any reason what, what, what was going on? Why weren't you shouting and bawling? Eh? That's your manner. Probably. Well, all I'd say, all I'd point you in the, the direction- mic wasn't on. I'd point you in the direction of a bit large. Because <laughs> that leads nicely onto the, uh, the final call here from Katie. Yeah. Fatter than I- fatter than I thought, Gervais, but still gorgeous. Ah, I see. You. But you, so, so it's interesting though that they've spotted that you're quite a fat and, uh, talentless man. I'm not that fat, am I? Well, no, but <laughs> two, Any, anyone... two people of those three calls have pointed out yeah, the fact that you're but, fat. Yeah. And the other one, all he could see was your arse. So, Gervais, I'm just a little bit disappointed, I imagine. You're probably feeling a little bit low, a bit shocked. You thought that the TV contracts would be flooding in, but it's no. It's not my media, really. It's just sort of... Gervais, rock no festival. Nothing is your medium. Well, I, I was- I, I went there, right, and first of all, it's a lot of noise. Right. Right, and walking around. It was hot, which I liked. I sort of laid down. But I- I didn't take any sun cream. So, after about four hours, I was- I was getting a bit warm. Yeah. And I was knackered, because I was having to work. I had to keep going on- keep going on stage, which I wanted to sort of sit in one place, near the chemical toilet. <laughs> between the chemical toilet and the bar. Or incorporate those. <laughs> yeah. In one sort of strange invention, <laughs> which I am gonna do one day. <laughs> chemical bar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we've- we've all been there. In one end, out the other. <laughs> yeah. Away. Yeah. Away. And, um, so I was sitting there, and then this- someone came- a friend of ours had some, um, uh, factor so-and-so 50 or something, I'll, I'll put it on. And Becky, Ben's Becky, was there with some lip balm. I put that on so, it, you know, it wouldn't crack. Um, and it was all okay. But then, as I started getting a little bit more out of it, we were sort of like drinking and enjoying ourselves, and I was hot, and I got a runny eye. My eyes started stinging. And I got an hole in my eye, and I was tired. And I was losing heat through my sunburn, it was getting cold, and I put my tracksuit top on, white tracksuit top. So there I was sitting. And also, then the, about a couple of hours later, the lip balm came out again, and I had a flashback. I remember the first time it went round, it was like in a film, I had the flashback. And as I, I realised the f I'd put it up my lips, then put a little bit of my eyelids. <laughs> Why? I don't know. In case of, um, in case of chapped eyelids. No, I thought it might call them down. Right. And that, then, then I realised, oh, that's why my eyes are stinging. Yeah. So I'm there, with runny eyes, I'm tired, I'm a little bit drunk, I'm in a white tracksuit with shades on, I had turned into Jimmy Savile. <laughs> You'd just become Jimmy. Yeah. And I saw these kids looking at me thinking, oh. Bless him. I go, and you're all right, Harry, where's the toilet? You've done it. Mm -hmm. nah. <laughs> no, dear Jimmy, I am four years old, and I have a terminal illness. Can you fix it for me to live a long and healthy life? Well, no, but we have arranged it for you to do a duet with Mr. Shaking Stevens. Hooray! Hooray! <laughs> I feel sick. This old house, do it, you little bu- I, f I feel sick, mummy, it's the treatment. Anyway. <laughs> What's behind the green door? A cure? No. No, no, no. He's for comas. He's not for terminal illness. He gets people out of comas, doesn't he, Shaken Stevens? <laughs> does he? He does. He, apparently, a lot of loads of kids in the 80s, they're all on there, all these people going, oh yeah, and she was in a coma, and we played Shaken Stevens 24 hours a day, and she, I'd come out of it if someone, but, <laughs> turn that <laughs> shit off! <laughs> I mean, who would you least like to visit you if you're in a coma? Oh, crumbs. Imagine it, right? You're, you're in a coma, yeah? You're in a catatonic- you've got all your senses. <laughs> you've got all your senses except sight. You can't do a thing, right? And you've got someone there to come and visit you. You're helpless. You can't I'm move. Just sort of lying you can't on say anything. Helpless. But you can- you can feel the- I'll tell you, I wouldn't want to visit me. Jason Donovan. No, I wouldn't want Jason Donovan. It's not- I don't like his voice. No. Or Philip Schofield, don't like his singing no, voice. Andy Peters. I, don't, I haven't heard him sing. No, but I wouldn't want him round. I wouldn't want him round. Really? Why? No, I don't know, it's just something about him. Something about him. Yeah. I wouldn't want him there. Um, anyway, we've got some Skunk and Nancy coming up. Uh, Lar Larry Grayson's welcome. So, and I'll tell you what else, it's Billy's people. Oh, I well, love them. Bring the four of them round. Why am um, see four of them? What, what one do you want to leave out? There was five of them. No, there wasn't. There was five of them. There was four. 
four. There were five village people. Four village. Everyone knows it's four village people. Really? All right. Wait a minute. So there's a there's a fire. No, hang on. There's a uh, there's a there's a road cop. Yeah. Um. There's a red Indian, obviously. Obviously. Yeah. Um, there's a construction worker. And there's something else. There's something. A chef? No. A, candle, a chef. A candlestick maker. Oh, that's great, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> a tailor. A tailor. At the back with those little half moon glasses. Y M C A. Did a little bit of sewing. <laughs> Who that's was it? Fun. Hang on. Wait a minute. There was um, a fire chief. What are you oh. on about? There was no. Is there a fire chief? No, no, not a fire chief. There was a, a police. Oh yeah. Play the record. The black guy was a road cop. A uh, traffic cop. There was a policeman. There yeah. was a red Indian. Obviously. Obviously. Um. Uh. Native American. Yeah, there's um, a, a, a construction worker. Yeah, the moustache. Cowboy! Cowboy! Was there? Yeah, of course there was a cowboy. Was there? Yeah! Well, who was the fifth one then? I don't know if there was. I might have made that up. Maybe I just dreamt of one. I thought of maybe some, maybe a bloke dressed up as Judy Garland. It's about, um, R4, Sunday. Ricky Gervais, you're on Ricky Gervais. Steve's got some, uh, facts. Well, here it's for interesting. You. We had a call from a fella called Paul Murray. Yeah. And Paul tells me that there are, s or rather there were, perhaps there still are, six village people. Mm. Six That's more than people. I remember. Go on then. Um, but what's interesting is Paul here, uh, has managed to name every single member of that squad, plus the different roles that they played. Excellent. And what I'm intrigued to know is, like, so most people can't even name all four Smiths, all right? Or no. decent bands, even, you know, maybe all four, uh, Rolling Stones. Uh, sorry, all six, five Rolling Stones. <laughs> However many there Twelve. Are. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but this man can name all six village people and the roles they played. Go on, then. One wonders about his musical taste. Go on. Anyway, um... The Cowboy, Gervais, you might, might want to make a note, the Cowboy was played by Victor Willis, there was a Red Indian, he was David Hodo, uh, Philip Rose played the policeman, Randy Jones was a GI, <laughs> a soldier, uh, Glenn Hughes played the biker, and uh, Alex Briley was the construction worker. Six village people, Gervais. Wow. All right? That's fantastic. So in, in, you know, in Trivial Pursuit or any That would be crowded though, wouldn't it, in the ward? Yeah. I bet that matron would be coming around saying, what is this? Get out! Yeah. Get out, he can't hear you. I think he can. He's fl he flickers a little bit every yeah. now and again. So, yeah, we're taking your calls on, um, on who you'd least like to have visiting you um, when you're in a coma. Uh, m maybe you can have a special donor card. Like, um, in a case of me falling into a catatonic state where I can still hear a bit, don't let Shake and Stevens in. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Or, see, my girlfriend knows exactly what I'd want. I I'd want 24, um, hours a day, Derek and Clive with bits of, like, Radiohead and the Smiths sort of, like, you know, mixed into it. Do you know what I mean? Right, yeah. That'd be easy. She'd know. But you can't always rely on that. No. I mean, who would you turn to? There's no one would want to come near you when you're sort of like walking around. Maybe you wouldn't be so scary when you're sort of like unconscious. I don't know, actually, you'd probably be worse, wouldn't you? Because you'd have your glasses off because you wouldn't need them. And they sort of help you. They, they humanise you. Can you I'll imagine, be honest. imagine all the nurses in their staff room? No, I'm not going in. Yeah, yeah. Draw, drawing straws. No, I'm not going anywhere near. <laughs> no, and you'd probably have some sort of drip thing, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's just visiting. And that just that just sort of keeps you alive. That's all the protein and everything you need. Imagine Dawn French visiting you. Deary me. She'll be there for a while. And those comes in. Why isn't this drip connected? She goes, I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Uh, we mm. had a call from, uh, Heather and Jim. They, uh, they apparently met you once before and they said you're not quite as fat as they remember. Oh, I'm sorry, no. you're quite as fat as everyone was suggesting. Yeah, you see? Um, they see, I'm not fat. What I've done is I've let myself go a little bit round the midriff, you see? So, in this, like, indie world of being seven stone, of course, I'm suddenly eight man, aren't I? Yeah. 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 These youngsters, oh, what's that? It's this beer gut. You'll get it. You'll get it, alright? My, my jawline's not as chiselled as it used to be. No. Oh. Well, it's not so much a jawline. No, not really. As, it's a as, pelican. As, as your, as your waist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it goes straight uh, into it. Heather and Jim, they said that they wouldn't really fancy Nick Cave popping around when they've got a nicoma. I don't know, I wouldn't have a problem with that. No. Br you could bring some of his, uh, bring some of his hate along. <laughs> XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais Show. Don't forget, keep, um, faxing in the people you'd least like or most like to visit you in a coma and what you'd like play to you. So, you know, I think this is 24 hours a day. Maybe learn to speak French. <laughs> We'd make a you know what I mean? You come out and you're fine. Yeah. You know what I mean? That'd be great, because there's nothing else to do. So all those things you thought of, you know, doing, like, and maybe a martial art, that'd be difficult. Yeah. How to chat out women. Ah. I'd have to be in a coma for a lot longer. <laughs> Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, two things, Gervais. One, you know last week I mentioned that I've got a celebrity relation. Yeah. I'm gonna be mentioning, uh, that 
in a second, right? So bear with me because it's an exciting thing. Obviously, I've got I've got a celebrity relationship. I know. It's not very exciting. It's not very intriguing. But I think you'll be they're cringing. I think you're yeah, they're going. Oh God, please don't. The phones are going to go. So but you're going to call this one. Oh one seven one five eight two thousand. Have you got an interesting celebrity relation? Also, uh, Gervais, are you going to mention the compilation tape? Oh yeah, I was thinking like doing a little compilation tape. Like we could play like some of our most loved and beautiful tunes. You could pick three, and we could play them back to back with no little segue in, no little eye dents, and no speaking over the intro or outro. So they could tape them. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I'll stop you there, Jerry, because I think the idea's great. Yeah. But obviously it is against the law for anybody to tape. Right. Okay. Tracks. So get the, get it ready, and we'll tell you when, and then we'll leave a little gap, so press that record, and then you can have three in a row. Like, I'd choose something like, I think I'd choose, um, Let Down off, uh, OK Computer, and that would go nicely into, um, Suffer the Little Children by the Smiths, and then finish with, um, After Gold Rush, Neil Young, three there. And then, uh, no, next week I'll play another three. Like, what would you play? Your well, three? I'd probably play something by, uh, um, I don't know, who knows? R.E.M. maybe? Yeah. R.E.M. Classic, some, a New Order or yeah. something like that. So yours would be more like a sort of classic indie dance. Exactly. Tape, That'd be Mondays. That'd yeah. be Mondays. Sort of party. Things. Party. Yeah. Um, but of course, I would stress again, Gervais, that it is against the law. Okay. For people to hit, play and record and okay. tape those tracks. So we're doing that a bit later. So get your, um, get a blank cassette now. Um, and we'll be doing that what? So we do that about five? Well, obviously, we won't be doing it because it is against the law. Okay, we'll do that at five then. I'm um, after the break, television. XFM London's only alternative. Yeah. We've had nice. a few suggestions. What's that? Janet. What's that say? Janet Crawley, dressed as a woman. No. What? Cranky. Oh, yeah. It's your writing, isn't it? Janet Cranky, dressed as a woman rather than a small child. Oh, that, God. That would be frightening, <laughs> oh, wouldn't that's it? That's grotesque. Oh. They sleep together. I, I keep- They sleep together. I know. Don't you think that's my worst nightmare? Imagine that. Oh, God. Oh. Kenny Dalgleish. Oh. Oh, God. Dr. Fox. Oh, that's- Hmm. I'm really wrong with Dr. Fox. <laughs> um, Whitney Houston. That's harsh, but fair. Oh. Oh. Janet Cranky. Dressed as a, a, maybe trying to look a bit beautiful. I know, that's what I can't understand. But what was he thinking? Did he see her and uh, chat her up in a club or something and then later discover that she looks great dressed as a boy? Or did they, they, were, they start they, off- They were they, at that sort of club. <laughs> well, did they start off doing that shtick? We're leaving there. We're, we're leaving there! He wouldn't have said that. <laughs> he knew it was a woman. He only likes the company and sex with women. No, it's just her. It's his wife. So <laughs> yeah, how, no, how could no. you? How could you only? How could you fall in love with that woman? Um, Come on. Why? Look at the woman. She's short. She's squat. She's weird looking. Yeah. Yeah. W right. What, minute, your, 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 point, your point being, Steve, if there's a chance for her, <laughs> well, maybe, we, I, maybe I just need to start dressing up as school children. Oh, but, oh, think of that. We're going to start off now, so get ready to press um, play and record on your tape. This is um, Steve's little compilation. We're going to kick off with uh, um, a secret track by REM, aren't we? That's right. But can I just stress again that you yeah. shouldn't hit play and record because, of course, it is illegal to do so. Okay, I'm going to um, fade myself down now, so there'll be no talking on this bit. Okay. Well, that was three in a row there. That's Steve's choice for your compilation tape. Um, R.E.M., Electronic and Gomez. But Steve, read out, um, uh, spell it for them and read out the title so they can, uh, get a pen and write it down for the, uh, the label of the cassette. <laughs> no, no, I told you before, Gervais, it's illegal for them to have taped those songs. What, so what is it? It was R.E.M. No, we, all right, you can take these down, but do not write them in the inlay card of the Ricky <laughs> Gervais compilation because you're not allowed. Okay, yeah. All right, it's as simple as that. Okay. But the three tracks, just for your own knowledge, yeah. okay, and if you've got a pa pen handy and you need to take them down, then yeah. you have a pen now, but the three tracks were Superwoman yeah. by R.E.M. R.E.M., how are you spelling that, Steve? That's uh, R. Yeah. Capital R, I should say. Capital yeah. E. Capital yeah. M. Okay. Right. R.E.M. and the track Superwoman. Yeah, okay. And that's a secret track on the album Life's Rich Pageant. Okay. All right, the second Put that in brackets. <laughs> the second track was uh, a classic single from Electronic. Yeah. Uh, spelling that in the usual manner. Yeah. And uh, the track was Getting Away With It. Yeah. That's Getting Away With It. Yeah. It's or, not getting apostrophe. No, it's not. No, no, it's not. So it's Getting away. away With It. Yeah. Okay. And finally there, of course, Gomez from their uh, current album and the track Get Myself Arrested. That's G-O-M-E-Z. That's right. On XFM 104.9, just gone five o'clock, little boy Fraser was on the phone to do with, uh, Steve's compilation. He says, well, one, that R.E.M. track is called, uh, 
Superman, not Superwoman, okay? And two, it's clearly listed on the, uh, CD itself. It's not a secret track at all. I'll stop you there, Gervais. I'll stop you there straight away, all right? Now, little boy Fraser, for those who don't know, he's sort of one of the big sort of music bods here, right? Yeah. He, he sort of is involved with the library of records, he's to do with the playlist, all the rest of it. He's 16 years old and his mum, he wants to come in every day, but his mum says, no, you've got other day off. If you don't get paid, they're, they're taking you for a ride. Exactly. And even though he's very young, he claims to know a lot about music. Yeah. But I'll tell you, here he's embarrassed himself. Right, I've got the CD- He's incontinent in as well. I've got the CD in front of me. Now, I don't know which issue or which, you know, I'm sure he's got the original vinyl release. Yeah. That's signed by the band or whatever. I'm looking at the copy here, right? And this one tallies with the copy I've got at home, Gervais. Yeah, it tallies. I'm opening up the, uh, the CD here. I'm looking at the sleeve, which I assume is, and I am, I, I'll be honest, I am assuming, is a reproduction of the original sleeve, you know, the original artwork. Right. And you'll notice that nowhere does it mention the track Super Woman, as yeah. I like to call it. You'll notice that it's got all, uh, ten, I'm ten just, tracks I'm just there. taking that. And the, that, the last track you'll oh, notice- Oh, Steve seems to be right, it's just got a little plus. A little plus, all right. Yeah. Suggesting there might be another hidden track. Yeah. All right. The clue, yeah, is in the plus. Oh, well, little boy Fraser seems to be wrong now. So on the sleeve, you'll notice there's no- He's mystery. taking off his dad's shell suit and throwing it down in disgust. He just left there in his pants at the moment. There's no mention of the track on the no, sleeve. The only mention of the track itself is on the CD. Hold on. They've listed all, um, all uh, 12 tracks. I'm just gonna confirm this. And it says Superwoman. It says Superwoman as track 12. Well, little boy Fraser seems to reverse himself. Now, I don't know, you see, maybe he's right. Maybe in the great scheme of things, Stipe has suggested that it's actually called Superman and that it's not to be known as a hidden track, right? right. But I'm just going by the facts, the evidence, Gervais. 0171580 Who side Who's are you right? On? Little boy Incontinent Fraser or ugly boy Lizard Man Steve? The choice <laughs> is yours. Yeah, well, let's not, you know, let's what? not sort of try and bias the vote. If we can, all right. <laughs> okay, yeah, because they'd fall for that. But what do they write on the inlay of their cassette, the people who have been taping it? Well, that's very much, that's very much the difficult question at the moment, and, uh, that's hopefully what, um, perhaps Michael Stipe or, um, or one of the other- Well, I've thought you out, because they shouldn't be writing anything, because they shouldn't be taping off the radio, oh, you're Steve. Right. If you'd be mine, by Baby Bird. Steve singing along there to Shana. Baby Bird, which is ironic, because when you sing, you're putting your head back and your mouth open, you look like a baby bird. Do I? Yeah, because the long neck and that sort of goiter thing you've got, look like a sort of like a fledgling pelican. And the worms, of course, hanging from my Yeah, legs. but it's, uh, it's ironic as well, because, because you're like a Lizoidian as well. <laughs> you're, you're... Is that a real word? Because <laughs> <laughs> you're a Lizoidian? <laughs> oh, right, of course. <laughs> yeah. You don't! Because I use, <laughs> I sometimes forget that they're not real words. You, you sometimes forget that you, your language comes from the, <laughs> the voices inside your head. <laughs> no, listen, I, I use my own language. No, they no. tell me what to say and I say it. No, listen, you're sort of like a little, <laughs> little bird-like Lizoidian thing, right? Which is like the Archaeopteryx. Like the, the, the link between the four li li sort of lizard man going flight. <laughs> Oh, goodness me. <laughs> They've kicked in again. They've kicked in early. Oh. They're not meant to start for about an hour. What, the voices? No, the tablets. Right. right. Go on. Anyway, you know that I put out that little appeal there. I wanted to find yeah. out if my, um, my view of the REM track, Superwoman, was correct or whether yeah. little boy Frazier was yeah. right. Uh, is Emma still there? Is Emma disappeared? Yeah, she's gone. She's got the, she's, no, got, she she's got the results. Yeah, she's got the stats there and we've had calls coming in saying, uh, who's right. Um, oh, hang on. So, Emma, you can cooperate. Who, who was right there? Who was right? Was it me or was it little boy Frazier? Sorry, Fraser, it was Steve. <laughs> and I believe I'm right in saying that no calls came in supporting Fraser. No, you're right. You are right, yeah. Brilliant. But why do you gloat over a little kid I'll who's, tell you. who's like helping us out, doesn't get paid for it, has got a problem with his intestines? I'll tell you, right, you don't argue with me. He goes through shower suits like Liverpudlians. And, you know, you're glo he's sitting there now, he's probably taking off his pants angry, he's just got his mum's shoes on now, and he's furious. Fraser, <laughs> Fraser, a little word of advice, right? Don't start on me until you've got pubic hair. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now listen, um, <laughs> that is so, at least he's got a girlfriend. All I would say, At though, least he's got a girlfriend. That old lady with a flat head and no teeth at outside Good Street better, Station. Better than nothing. <laughs> <laughs> better than nothing. Anyway, listen, before it's we carry on. perfect for him. Before we carry on. What? Um, also, I want, my celebrity, my celebrity relation, I want to mention that in a second. Yeah. 
Um, and something else, you've got something else, haven't you? Oh, I've got my, th um, three compilations that you can tape off the radio. Your three tracks. But don't, cos it's illegal. Don't co don't tape them, cos they're illegal. No, this is my, f one of my favourite tracks that we've ever put on the, uh, the playlist. This is, uh, Robert Pollard and Make Use. Let's hear it, let's hear it. XFM 104.9, just come up to quarter past five. Well, this isn't looking so good. Uh, for you, Steve. Oh, right, um, cool. because, uh, one guy's faxed in on my copies of Life Rich, uh, Life Rich Pageant, um, the track you played earlier is this is Superman, not Superwoman on the CD. Um, REM manufacturing different editions of the album or yet more gender problems on your show. And there's another guy phone and said, definitely, definitely Fraser is right. He's got it on vinyl. And I think vinyl wins over CD. So Fraser has won. <laughs> no, wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> What? No, that's no. I'm not going to settle for that. For goodness' sake, it's just it's just once again an example of the fact you can't you can't let me get you know anything. You can't let me win anything. No, because you don't deserve it. Because you're a horrible little amphiboloid sort of little amphiboloid. Yeah, little creature, little lizoidian scale crack. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Little horrible little. Sleet bludgeon. <laughs> a sleet bludgeon. You are right. <laughs> You're right. a scaly little sleet bludgeon. Yeah. You're a mowed and fibrit. That doesn't. That doesn't. Gervais, wipe out the fact that what? I'm correct as far as REM's concerned. We've had a lot of calls supporting me. Yeah. Right? Until we get word. Of, until we get that word. That CD. That's obviously. Whoa! Well, I'll stop you there. Like yourself, a little bit malfunctioning. I'm scragglant. <laughs> right. Until we get word from REM themselves, right, cl clearing this up, I'm not taking no for an answer. Right. I wish I knew what that sentence meant. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even listening. <laughs> no, I know you weren't. <laughs> um, I right. I said anything there. Um, uh, no, listen, what are we talking about? Celebrity, my celebrity. Oh, go on. I may as well tell you now, because Come it's on. Not, I've been trading it and it's not that exciting. Really? It's really not that exciting. But anyway, my celebrity, my celebrity relation is, drum roll please. No, who is it? Right. Orville? <laughs> um, um, Godzilla. No, what, the famous amphiboloid? <laughs> yeah. Godzilla. Yeah. No, uh, it's not Godzilla, right? Who is it? My famous celebrity. Who is it? What's the relation first? Uh, second cousin. Second cousin. Now, what is that? I don't know. Maybe it's third cousin. Well, it's, well, it's second cousin. I in in Bristol, that can be sister, can't it? Second yeah, cousin, on, right. right, is, you won't believe this. Go on. Sarah from Banana Rama. Is it really? Yes. Is it really? Yes. So she's your second or third cousin? Well, she's a relation. Does she know this? Yes. No. She does do. now. She, I mean, she she doesn't know who I am, but I know who she is. Anyone from the uh, the Nanas <laughs> listening, um, give us a call. Deny it. Embarrass him again. No, this is true. This she yeah. was a bridesmaid at my mother's wedding. Really? Yeah. Oh, was she? Um, oh, I don't know. Which one is it? Sarah? Well, she's the blonde-haired one. Yeah, no, they, they are, they are blonde at one time, except the Karen who was replaced by another dark How many are in Banana Rama now? They're back together again, aren't they? Are they? I don't know. Who cares? Swerve Driver. No! I know. I would play an ad break. <laughs> And then Swerve Driver, I had a whole new idea. Really? Yeah. Really? After this ad oh. break, I'm gonna press this button. Great, you crazy amphiboloid. <laughs> well, I've got you, Steve. You've been proved wrong. No, um, I, no, no. You, ha you have, beyond doubt. Um, uh, Little Boy Fraser's called up, and uh, Dan Sayer called independently to um, back this up. Um, it's not even an REM song. They've covered it, but um, it's a, a band called The uh, the Clique, a uh, psychedelic band from the uh, late 60s, early 70s, um, and it was called Superman. So I don't care what R.E.M. say, it's called Superman. I'll stop you there, Gervais, right? Why? The Why? fact that R.E.M. are now calling it Superwoman, yeah. right, that's between R.E.M. and Cleek. All right, if they right. want to get together and have a scrap, that's so, fair enough. So if I completely cover a song exactly the same, just cover it like, um, Love, Love Me, Don't by the Beatles, that's fine, is it? I love, Love Me, Don't. Yeah. I never As once- start, Yeah, okay, Gervais, yeah. Whoa, um, listen, just shut up for uh, a second. Sheila in the Sky with Diamonds. Shut up, shut By Ricky Gervais. Shut up for just on. one second, right? Go on, yeah. The argument was, what should people yeah. put? on their cassette tape compilation inlay card. It's they're, illegal! They're not allowed to do it. It's illegal! I agree they're not allowed to do that. Right. But, I was offered, uh, you'd asked me to tell them what they should put down, right? Yeah. I'm telling you, the track we played was recorded by R.E.M. Yes, right? it was. Not Cleek. So no, that's right. Like Cleek down. No, 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 right, R.E.M. down. Exactly. How are you spelling that? That's correct. How are you spelling that? That's capital R, capital E, capital M. Right. Right? And, you want to put down, 
the name of the track as recorded by R.E.M. Yeah. They've called it Superwoman, right? I don't care if it's really called Superman in the in the world of the clique. Oh, no, no, stop me there. In the world of the clique. You, you don't be. You don't care if it's really- Why are we this argument? You do care or you wouldn't be arguing. No. You do care. No, 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 no. No, you're, you're saying I'm wrong. You, you, you are. I'm not wrong. It's called Superman. Only by the clique is called Superman. No. By R.E.M. it's called Superwoman. No, they you can't. Can't, they can't do, no, they can do what they want. Sometimes, sometimes they call it Superman. Make your mind up, at least. <laughs> they call it Superwoman. Are you sure they're called R.E.M.? Or have they changed that? They call it Superwoman, you tosser! How are you spelling that? That's S-U-P-E-R-W-O-M-A-N. You idiot, you fat imbecile! Um, I'm gonna do my compilation now. So, <sighs> get ready to press, um, play and record. Um, you, by the way, you can't do that, it is against the law. Yeah, I know, yeah. Um, right, I'm gonna start off, uh, with this, I'll just fade myself down and start the track, okay? You keep quiet, <laughs> keep quiet. Into my house. They, 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 seriously, they come round to your house. Was it a woman? Yeah. Are you, are you, are you sure you weren't lying, just phoning them up saying, um, I'm Connor you again, I'm signing on. You better no. send someone round. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw a lovely woman, she was sat behind the desk three. <laughs> uh, I think you better send her round, uh, otherwise yeah. I'll get violent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true, she came round, she came round, she said, Mr. Urchin, are you, um, are you, you know, claiming money while working? I said, come in, my dear, let's discuss it. <laughs> let's, di let's discuss it over a drink. <laughs> Ooh, the, the wind shut the door, don't worry about that. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Shut Unwrapped my robe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To reveal really? a scaly body with <laughs> hairs. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. I spent about three months inside, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm still paying off the fine. The Smiths, I had to get one in, didn't I? Of course you minutes to go. Two lovers entwined pass me by, and heaven knows I'm miserable now. Can't uh, relate to it. No? Can't relate you to don't, it. You don't feel miserable when you see sort of two people together? <laughs> don't mean anything to me. Two humans. No idea what that means. Okay, no alright. No idea what that feels like. Do you mean, I'm getting quite tearful. Really? Mm. I suppose so, yeah. It's 20 minutes. I mean, we, we, we've given ourselves, we've given a lot to XFM. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were just sort of getting started as well. I know what the buttons do now. We were sort of getting a formula. It's a shame, you know, your lessons were going well. You know, you'd begun to grasp the basics of grammar. Yeah. Um, I think you'd moved on to Jack and Jill. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You were, the sentences were beginning to come out in roughly the right order. I oh, know. It's a shame. It is a shame. Still, there'd be other radio stations. Name one. Um, well, I'm gonna send the demo to Capital. 18 minutes, Steve. 18 minutes. I was playing that when we first came on air back in September. Beautiful. Come a long way since then. Oh, the times we've had, eh? We've had a few laughs, a few tears. Yeah. What, what, what have we done? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. There must be some, there must be some highlights. Fifteen minutes to go. Gervais, we're, we're heroes to some people. <laughs> no, we are. Yeah, the sort of people who wander around my yard with shit in their underpants going, Toy Big not in my pants. <laughs> it's always been a shame, I always think it's a, it's a shame that the people that would enjoy this show, yeah. um, are less likely to spend their money on radios, more yeah. likely to spend their cash on, on meths. Or, or even understand a voice coming from a small box. Yeah, is not, is not the voice of the which, is a, on. which is a good trick if you can do it. Shut up. Um, so, uh, that's it. Fifteen minutes to go. Yep. yep. Some good times. We have my penis puppet theatre. Brilliant. That, that didn't take off, did it? No. That, no. Would, that would have been a winner. That would have been fantastic. Kids all around the country. Sticking their little John Thomas through a little hole. Dick Turpin. <laughs> oh, what else do we have? Of Mice and Members. Howard's End. Robocock. Well, you need a little bit of tinfoil. Brilliant. That didn't take off. That never really worked. Well, we've, we've tried to launch Wesley Willis's career though, haven't we? Wesley, have you got uh, any Wesley? Yeah, I've done this See, what you've done there, you've made the mistake of ridiculing a 250 pound schizophrenic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've mocked many people in our time, Jermaine. Yeah. We've mocked foreigners. Yeah. Um, moms. Schizophrenic. Well, we saved Mongs for the last show, to True. be fair. Yeah, well, we went out with Blaze of Glory. And we didn't mock them, that one of them was actually just in an anecdote, which yeah. is not my fault. But they're all pretty laughable. I don't make the rules, I don't rewrite history, this was my life, you know what I mean? I have very little control. I have very little control <laughs> on my bodily functions. True enough. So, fate is out of the window. You're talking gobbledygook. <sighs> but I'm not going down alone, mate, I'm taking stage down. This is really bollocks up our ads, listen to this. Oh, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> when Grandad gets out of the bath, his skin's so clean and smooth. But after a hard day squelching around, soreness can cause discomfort. <laughs> New Pandora's with her love for her, her creamy, carry stuff acts as a clunge protector. <laughs> 
the new dry weave chicken wings soak up all the piss and shit so granddad stays dry. New panderas with clung protection. Because I love my granddad. You dirty old <laughs> Michael Schumacher's won the British Grand Prix in a very confusing Matt, sorry, finish. Matt, you... Matt, can I stop you there? Have yeah. you got any, like, fun stories? <laughs> yeah, Matt, have you got any sort of, like, two Ronnie style new stories? No, there's no, no fun. It's oh, well, news, you know, there's no fun. No, you know, new, two Ronnie style, like, you know, a man with a meat cleaver has been terrorising nudist colonies. Inspector Wilson of Scotland Yard has had a tip-off, but he expects to be on duty tomorrow. Or, like, or <laughs> like, Scotland Yard had all its toilets stolen, police have nothing to go on. That's what we want, that's what everyone's after. Oh, right, no, nothing as interesting as that. Okay, okay, go on. Well, carry on. No, carry on as you are, sorry. Okay, right. <laughs> XFM News with nothing really silly. I'm Matt Johnson. That was good. That was good. It's all right. Yeah, you want stuff like, you know, um, a lorry load of wigs has crashed <laughs> on the M4 police are combing the area. That's what you're after. Um, you, you're in news. Can you libel the dead? Um, I'd rather steer clear of any controversial comments, if you don't mind. Okay. No, no, I didn't mean you. I didn't expect you to. I don't, I don't think you can, but I'm, I'm not sure. What do you think of Doris Stokes? Um, I think she was a very talented lady who brought joy to a lot of people. That's so, fantastic. So you don't think she's a prostitute? Uh, absolutely not. Well. Okay, this is Lou Reed and Satellite of Love. Lou Reed, Satellite, that's what we were, Steve, just satellites. Just satellites orbiting around the mighty space station of XFL. I don't know what I'm talking not, about. No, I didn't think that you could carry that much further. <laughs> no. No. Still, well, that's the end, you know, no more cheap knob gags on a Sunday afternoon. No. No more sort of swearing. It's not on the radio, breaking every radio flow either that there ever was. Yeah. Good times, eh? We've had a few laughs, few tears. Should we go to the pub and get back to where we were before this strange dream ever started? Yes. At the bridge in Waterloo. Yep. John Kennedy's up next. He should be fun. What's he doing in here? Who knows? He's not usually up at this time. It's yeah. been a pleasure, Javon. With his vinyl and his trendy bags and things. It's been a pleasure. See you later, man. Yeah. I would like to apologise for my son's behaviour. He is a filthy little f who's been a w for most of his life and treats me like a c So, uh, Doris Stokes, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, dressed like a dominatrix. Yeah. Right? And she's dripping hot wax yeah. onto the naked torso of Arthur Millard. Yeah, of course he is. Right? Yeah. And, um, he in turn is being pleasured, right, by Dusty Springfield. Oh. <laughs> ex Dusty Springfield's not dead. What? You twat. Dusty Springfield's not dead. Yeah, she is. No, she isn't. She is. Of course she's not. You, you have... Uh, she's dead. Of course she's Of course dead. she's not dead. Who am I thinking of? I don't know. Dusty Springfield's alive and well. And playing with Arthur Mullard. No, she's not dead. Oh, God. Well, excellent. Oh. It was going so well, wasn't it? Oh. Oh. <laughs> I like the bit up until then, though. Yeah. I like the idea of Owen Mullard. Well, that's all true. In a farm. We can't do that anyway, still, see, you can't do that on the radio, talking about that sort of well, thing. Well, I think... I'll tell you what, though, snake. if we're gonna pick on a dead person... Yeah. Why pick Doris Stokes? <laughs> I don't know! The one dead person you don't pick! <laughs> I know! I know! God! I'll have I mean, to convince her she's dead. But even in real life, she'd harness the powers of the dark side, so we really want I her know. to get on our, you know, She liked the dark side. Getting on our That backs. was her favourite. She's getting on our backs. Don't get me started <laughs> well, on I'd that. So, oh, goodness me, it's just nothing but innuendo and libel. Spring, I don't believe it's it. We're, record, we're, in we're in trouble now. Oh, God. You should have picked someone like Scylla, who is dead. Muff Shandy says turn it up. Earplugs are gay. Earplugs are gay! single by Muff Shandy. Earplugs are gay. And the bloke with the, um, the gimp mask and the umbrella said, Doris, I'm, even I'm not doing that. Jimmy, and he we're left. leaving it. We're leaving it. Go on, sorry. Um, I was talking to my parents on the phone the other day and, uh, I started swearing and I've never done this before and it's a terrible thing because it's, I've crossed this barrier now, I've crossed this line, mm. which I, previously, for 23 odd years, I'd managed to sort of stay the right side of. Yeah. I'm talking to my mum and she mentions to me that I'm going to lose a lot of money. I don't want to go into it, but I'm going to lose a lot of money. And, um, and she told me how much, it was, uh, 5,000 pounds, I think. She went, uh, I went, F and now. Obviously, I said the, the real thing, yeah. F and now. She just stopped, she just went, pardon me? <laughs> And I thought, what have I done? I thought, I can't explain myself, because she didn't, she didn't know that I knew those words. So I just said, uh, well, uh, <sighs> that's a lot of money. That got you out of it. That got me out of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you know what I mean? That crossing that step. Yeah. It's quite a terrible thing. It's like, I, I mean, I, I look forward to the day when I can bring a girl home and say, look, I do know <laughs> about sex. And, <laughs> 
twat. No, you can't. But, um, when I was a kid and I first went to, to senior school, I started to learn all these swear words that I didn't know. Of course previously. you can say the word twat. Right. You're anyway, not meant to. I, I started learning all these swear words and I went home and I started using the word twat. I just thought it was a, uh, a slightly stronger version of twit. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Just, it's, a bit, it's a bit tougher for some reason. Yeah. And so I used to go around saying that and I'd go, uh, my sister would say, stop ruining my Lego and I'd go, you twat. Yeah. And, um, uh, make your bed, Steve, no, you twat. I'd say to my mum, right? And I didn't realise what it meant. Right. And my dad, Right, he didn't really know much about swear words, so he started using it as well. He started going, oh, you twat, Steve. <laughs> yeah. um, do you want to clean the bath? No, you twat. And we just started using it all the time, right? Yeah. So then, at school, Mark Johnson told me what it mean, meant, yeah. right? Obviously, I'm stunned. I'm thinking, I can't go around and call my mum a twat. Yeah. So I didn't, I just stopped using it. Yeah. Like that, just stopped using it. But I didn't, I didn't have the guts to tell my dad what it meant. Oh, no. So he carries on using it, and into this day, we were driving along, he'll say, um, to my mum, Elaine! Watch where you're going, you twat, you great big twat. <laughs> and I just want to say to him, Dad, don't say that to my mum, because she knows, oh, she knows what it means. Oh, no, but really? She's not, she's not going to say to him, oh, God. Ron, would you stop saying that word, because... Yeah, same thing happened to me, my dad still says Fouch. Does he? Does he? Yeah. Oh, uh, Felchin, talking of that, right, it's Doris Stokes. Yeah. She's got this huge... Four sailors four and sailors. a big bucket and, like, a weight. Well, that's it, Steve. Is it? The news now. Then yeah. we're out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've had a few laughs, few tears. Yeah, I don't go on about it. XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais. Gervais, I've just thought, <laughs> I've just thought of a great game. All right. Good. Um, Emma, who helps us out here, she's just brought in a couple of beers for us. Yeah. All right. And I know you have to drink them after the show because, um, I do not drive the desk and drink. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Anyway, okay, don't pick it up, don't pick it up. Okay, right. Because the thing is, there's a picture, all right, right. on, on, the bottle, which I, d I don't think you've seen it yet. No. You? Right, and I guarantee if I turn this <laughs> bottle round, you're going to start- Again, yeah, this is good radio, isn't it? You're going to start laughing when you see this picture. Right. Now, before I turn it round, yeah. right, you, hopefully you will laugh spontaneously. Yeah. Um, it's a new competition, all right? right. You can fact us in pictures. You can send pictures in the post, all right? Yeah. Any picture which I can then, during the show, hold up <coughs> and show to Gervais. If he laughs spontaneously, <laughs> you'll win a gift. You'll win a prize. That's a great competition, it is, Gervais. Isn't it? And great radio. And great radio. They'll, they'll be laughing at the picture at home, won't they? Exactly. They'll be going, no wonder he laughed. Look at that. Well, all right, there's simple things like that which, which don't work, but the point is... <laughs> I, yeah. The point is, right, anyway, you'll still try it, okay. Just, let's, let's test it. He's going to turn this little chubby of pint of beer around, whatever it is. Just calm yourself. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Don't want you to oh, yeah, I want to drink it. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, play, play oh, a record, you base. Oh, God. <laughs> Blur and Tracy Jacks. From 1965 there. Hey. Cheeky little monkeys. Well, um, I think we've established ourselves there now, Gervais. As, as radio gods. As radio gods. Yeah. We've come up with possibly the most enjoyable radio game yeah. in the history of all things. Basically, what we want you to do is send in pictures, drawings. Is it as good as this? Gervais, put it away. Mm. We want drawings, pictures, photographs, um, okay, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show them to Gervais. Yeah. Midway through the show. You'll never know when, they might just suddenly pop up, and we'll see if Gervais laughs hysterically. And if he does, you win a prize, I guarantee it. Yeah. It could be that you'll win a couple of pulp tickets if we've got them to give away. Yeah. It might be that you'll win a crate of beer, anything. Yeah. Whatever we've got the hands, you'll win it if you can make Gervais laugh simply by me showing him a picture. Uh, the address is XFM, 97 Charlotte Street, <laughs> London, W1P, 1LB, all right? And, uh, you can fax us, of course, 0171 580 1234. I must warn them that I really have been desensitized now because I sit opposite you. Well, exactly. Do you so know what I mean? Do you know I, how hideous and, like, ridiculous they've got to be to make me laugh? The pictures have got to be pretty odd. Yeah. The address, XFM, 97 Charlotte Street, London, W1P, 1LB. Apart from bad lyrics as well, I, I like it when, um, pop stars and, uh, marketing managers of, uh, record companies try and get clever with their, um, you know, uh, titles for albums and stuff. Remember, um, Wet Wet Wet, popped in, sold out. Nice. Oh, lovely. Beautiful. And, Beautiful. you know, Tony Banks out of Genesis, he did his, um, solo project. And what he had, right, was the album there, and he had Banks across the top, right? And using the S to start the next word coming down was Statement. Clever. Banks. Banks statement. statement. Oh, I was watching, uh, Tony. Tony. Tony Banks, is he not the sports minister? Oh, I don't know. He was in Genesis when he was younger, though, wasn't he? I don't know. I think so. I don't know how it works. <laughs> yeah. Well, because Phil, Phil Collins is Minister of, um, shite. <laughs> right, um, when I'm out, when I'm alone, 
right? And James out, I sort of channel surf. I never watch a program. Right. I sit down to it and I think, two minutes. Mm. You shot me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just sort of going through and I was going back and forth between the Waltons and like the box. Right. Music television, you control. Yeah, yeah. MTV. Mm -hmm. VH1. Ooh. Um, and, uh, I got a glimpse of Toya Wilcox, which I stopped, obviously. Yeah. And, um, she's on one of these religious programs. I think it was on BBC Two. I don't know what it was, but it was with that bloke. Oh, God. I can't tell this anecdote. I, I can't stand it if I don't know the name. He's sort of like a Jeremy Paxman type thing. You know, he went to university. He was going to be a serious journalist. He wanted to be, K be KAD, but he settled for Les Dennis. Oh, he, he, one of those sort of people that was on, um, That's Life. No, I'm not telling it until someone phones in. Toy Walker from a religious program. What's that bloke's name? Then I'll tell it. 0171 580 2000. Gervais, have you ever watched an entire documentary all the way through? <laughs> <laughs> you don't know one, don't you? Beautiful. You don't know. Okay. Now, New Order's your favourite band of all time, yes, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Uh, Paul Wright called. It was John Stapleton. Oh, was it? It was one of those, you know what I mean? It was sort of like the, the Paul Heine, Kieran, what is it, Prenderville. And Chris Sale, uh, all that sort of type of thing, you know what I mean? Right, so, and this was on BBC Two. And it's always one of those, well, they're, they're those people, uh, uh, you're sitting with people and they go, oh, I went to university with him. <laughs> I know. And they suddenly realise it's not a proud th you know. I know. Oh. And, and they just go never, quiet. It's never impressive, is it? It's never, you know, it's never Prince. <laughs> no, exactly. Or, yeah. um, I don't know, uh, yeah. somebody really great and groovy. Yeah, yeah. It's never, uh, I don't know, uh, say Rick Astley. And then you start realising that you're around someone's house and they go, and he comes on and just don't say anything. Yeah. And then someone goes, didn't you go, didn't you? No. <laughs> no, I thought I did. It, it was the other one. It was Chris Sale. Did you, any, did you go to anybody, uh, any, uh, school with anybody? Michael friends? Jackson. <laughs> did you? Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Odd that. You went to school, presumably, in the States. He, well, he, no. He was in Reading for a lot of his life. <laughs> right. Yeah. Was he some kind of exchange program? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We sent them, um, Charlie Chaplin, funnily enough. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. Did you? It took a long time for them to get round it. You know what the Americans are like. You're making this up. Yeah. Um, anyway, Toy is talking to John Stapleton, and um, I suddenly, suddenly realised it's a religious programme straight away, because it was a back over mm. the church. Right? <laughs> and, um, oh, you, you, <laughs> nothing gets past you, <laughs> No way. No way. Could be archaeology is us. Um, and, so wait um, a minute, whoa, whoa, whoa. So people, yeah, Toy is on some religious program, <laughs> BBC not worth it. John Stapleton. Yeah. Okay, okay. And I'm just flicked through and I went, hold on, it's Toy and I just, uh, and he goes, so what, it was a, uh, very spiritual. She was, yes. And I realised she was talking about a wedding. She was going, it was very, very spiritual indeed. And he said, but no hymns. She went, no, uh, we had silence instead. <laughs> silence instead. So now we will do silence number three. It's four and a half minutes long, so keep your gob shut. Right? And, um, I think, oh, what is she talking about? He went, mm. She went, people are scared of, sorry, people are, that was Chris Eubank. <laughs> right? Um, she said, people are scared of silence. <laughs> yeah. And then she said, the thing is, during silence, there's a lot of unconscious thought. <laughs> What? You thought that you don't know you're thinking? He said, it was three and a half minutes. I didn't think a thing <laughs> during that. I better plug into my unconscious <laughs> to find out what exactly I was standing up for for three minutes, going, who's the women in the hats? What are we doing here? What a load of pretentious twaddle well, that I've is. Well, I've never liked Toya. I've never liked her. Oh, she's, oh, she's alright. That's all the more reason to hate her. No, I don't hate her. All those, all those people that I just mentioned, they don't come close to Lenny Henry. I saw another bit of him doing his stand-up in America. Oh, God, it's so nauseating. He's got another series, apparently. Does anyone like Lenny Henry? Oh, well, obviously. It's a massive star. Does anyone listening to this show... Really like Lenny Henry? Yeah, yeah. Or, is there anyone that annoys me more than Lenny Henry? I, I should answer that one, shouldn't I? <laughs> yes. Do I win a prize? I think what you want to do there is yeah. that you want to sort of, you <laughs> want to speak correctly. <laughs> it's, a, it's another simple thing. <laughs> Gervais, um, which will help you out in your radio career. Oh, no. I'm oh, a swerve driver. That's three minutes forty-one. I've got to pick one. Seven minutes to noon. Gervais, well, 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 before you move on, can mm, I just tell you, because you know we talked about celebrities and going to school with celebrities and things. Yeah. Um, I have a very famous second cousin. Really? Yeah, I'm going to tell you who it, is, who it is in a minute. Really? Yeah. And I've got the best joke in the world. Have you? I should have been trailing that. That'd have kept them on their tender hooks. Why right. are they sitting on tender hooks? So we've got... What are tender hooks? I think it's tenter hooks. 
I don't know what they are, but I don't think it's- too What are- oh, okay. 0171. Uh, who annoys me more than Lenny Henry? No one. You've won that one. So but, don't bother phoning but, him. But, but- but who annoys you, the listener, more than Lenny Henry? Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Clever. Because then it's thrown it to them. Yeah, yeah it's, it's their simple. opinion. Oh! Simple thing. Excellent. Thinks. Oh, one. Se <laughs> I noticed again. You you didn't bother to to give the whole phone number. <laughs> what did I say? You actually just said oh one seven one. It it used to be, as I recall, oh one seven one five eight zero, which is about half of it. But oh, no, you just oh one seven one. Oh, swerved over. XFM one four point nine. Ricky Gervais show. Well, it's nearly over, but I have got a, a great joke, and we've got a simple rule here: that you only have to tell a joke on air if it's about going into a pub. That's right. Okay, you ready? Go on. <coughs> Penguin <laughs> goes into a pub, goes up to the bar and says to the barman, have you seen my dad in here? And he goes, I don't know, what's he look like? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's not bad. It's alright, it's yeah. alright. Um, I had a similar one about something going into a pub. I think it was a, a, a turd and a wig, but I can't remember what the punchline is. If anyone knows, 0171 something about a turd and a wig. Uh, Gervais, I've also, uh, obviously got my celebrity relation, which I'll tell you about in a minute. That's about it then. Yeah, we've enjoyed ourselves. Oh, dear. <laughs> Bald character, once drummer for Genesis, is more annoying. Who's lost this for? Smoked fish. Oh, uh, what, what? What's this, Emma? That is what, what tenterhooks are. Oh, what are they? Oh, tenterhooks are what? It's what smoked fish are hung from. Excellent. And bull car, if that is, he's more annoying than, um, Lenny Henry. Henry. Okay. What's mm -hmm. drama for Well, that's, that's Phil Collins. Yeah, we can't say that. Of course you can. I can say Phil Collins is more, it's a matter of opinion, isn't it? Yeah, but he said that on the phone. He mm. said, please don't say that, it's a bit mean. Phil Collins is a deeply boring man. Anyone well, can say that. I won't say who it is who said it then. Okay. We've got our bit, haven't we? Joe Pasquale is less funny. Ooh. Yeah, okay. Um, who's that? I mean, the point is that you can say that Phil Collins is a bold, boring man in the same way you can say Andy Peters is a raging. Gervais, um. Jilly I'm... thinks I'm adorable, apparently. Gervais, um, I don't think we've got time to really talk about this. Okay, um, what have we, what have we got to do next week? Oh, um, uh, we can't say who your celebrity was, but I just thought we could phone in who you think it is. I mean, I've got a few ideas who your celebrity second cousin is. <laughs> your mum. Um, <laughs> no, um, uh, Mr. Ed? No. <laughs> Godzilla? No. The point is that this is a real celebrity, so, I mean, okay. celebrity. So, uh, you know, I'm not making it up. It's not going to be as exciting as, you know, whoa, it's Elvis or whatever. It's not that groovy, but, but it's still- they do know. share some of your genetic material. No, you wouldn't know it. Really? No, you Normal? Would, you will, yeah. You Symmetrical? Would. Good looking, really? A good looking person. Blood reaching the surface? A good looking person. Really? Yeah. Fantastic. Um, did they probably denied your existence or did they, I mean, they're obviously going to deny that you, they're related to you then, aren't they? Well, I'd say I tried to get some of their money. No. Um, no. what else do we do? Uh, I'll send me some hideous pictures. Yeah, I'll just give you address again. XFM 97 Charlotte Street, London, W1P. I've got, one I'll, I'll, no, I've got to go to the pub. Four o'clock again. Yeah. <coughs> <laughs> one computer's not working. Is it not? No. This all sounds funny. I've got... What's that one? Is that the one I listen to? Just press a few buttons. No, I'll put it on there. What oh, you got? Desktop. I don't know. <laughs> what do these do? Is your mic working? <laughs> Sorry, I got a bit of a cold. Um... <clears throat> oh, God, I had a big list of things to talk about as well. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Rocking from the Crypt. Oh, it's uh, a good start. On a rope. Yeah. Which is appropriate, because we've got a little Gravediggers track to play later, haven't we? Oh, about yeah. About called Suicide. It's one of my favourite tracks, Gervais, by the Gravediggers, but it has got a bit of bad language. Well, that's okay, because you've played it to me a couple of times, and I reckon I've got it off pat. <laughs> I'm really? going to be beeping it out live. You're going to do a live bleep Yeah, mate. I should say, you know we usually have a few beers and we get throughout the show and I get steadily drunk, which is unprofessional. <laughs> this saves a bit of time, turned up pissed. You turned up drunk today? Yeah, so that's, that's <laughs> weird, weird. I'll tell you what, um, But I'll be honest with you, Gervais, um, what? you know, normally, uh, if someone gets drunk, their, um, their speech begins to slur. Yeah. They talk rubbish. Yeah. Um, no difference. No, you? that's the beauty of it. Yeah? That's the beauty of being me. Yeah, exactly. You know, I, 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 what? How drunk are you? Um, I had a little bit of wine. Did you? Got yeah, glass. It's a lovely. I might get a little bit melancholy. <laughs> what about the little baby kangaroos have to crawl all at their mums? I help them. Got a fax here for you, Steve. Actually, oh, lovely. Good news. it's from uh, um, Becky. Um, she's listening to us um, in bed. She's been a bit lazy. Um, she's been on holiday, and um, she wants me to dedicate a song to uh, dedicate it to Stinky Skanky Steve because he is an alien 
Um, and she's doing a little picture of him, Slimy Steve. Isn't that lovely? And she wants uh, me to play a subterranean home sick alien by Radiohead. Isn't that sweet? So people, people do think of you. Lovely. And I got one from, uh, Laura, as I used to, says to Steve, you still sound as stupid as ever, you asymmetrical, asexual, rabid, anemic, flea ridden deformity. Oh, see, you have got people thinking of you. See? Yeah. I'd rather they didn't. Baby Bird, and if you'll be mine, then I'll be yours. And, uh, Baby Bird was actually in this week with Claire. Was lovely, he? Lovely, lovely man. Oh, Baby Bird was, uh, was yeah. he at XFM? he's very nice. Is he? He's got a beak and funny little claws. Oh, Rick. I oh, know, it oh, made me don't. laugh. It was a, it was oh, a, my God, we're desperate. To be an we're egg. desperate men, <laughs> Rick, if you've got to resort to that kind I of I called gag. him Baby Bird, he went, I've never been called that before. Which is bizarre. But there's a band called Baby Bird. Who's yeah. Called Steven. Can you go to turn that down next door? On the time Someone's playing show. music, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, Emma, it's just, it's not on. That's, that's insane. I that's can it. hear, I yeah. can hear a throb from the other room. Yeah. Someone's got, this is insane, Jimmy. It's like having, trying to host a radio show. Yeah. I mean, and now, he's, now he's laughing. Yeah. Oh, oh well, it's, it's well all, anyway, it's, it's all gonna be. Um, we're gonna play a, um, a track that you've brought in. That's right. Go on, what is it? It's a fantastic tune by the Grave Diggaz. Yeah. Uh, part of the Wu-Tang ca Clan rap collective. Yeah. Right, it's from their album. Not um, to be confused with the Wu-Tang Clan. That's a little <laughs> shellfish. Yeah. That's into rap. Yeah, it yeah. swears a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, terrible, yeah. Um, the track is, Got a uh, muscle posse. The track is beautiful. You've probably heard it on the dance floor, maybe yeah. in some indie club. Yeah. 1-800-Suicides. Yeah. Now, I would stress, Rick, it has got a bit of bad language. I know. I, I, I mean, I've, I've listened to this twice, and I reckon I've got it off pat. I reckon I'm gonna pull the fader down at just the right places and go, eh. Okay? <laughs> right, you're gonna sort of bleep yeah. it out. And if it goes wrong, so what? You know, that's real. People have a problem with swearing. I don't. Do you? No. Not I mean, I'm, I'm doing it because it's rules, and, you know, no, we were- you know, the great thing about- We wanna stay on air because, you know, we take our job seriously. We do. And, um, you know, I think we're, 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 sorry, excuse my friends, bloody good DJs, Well, I we? think you're absolutely right, Rick. Yeah. Let me shake your hand. Yeah, all right, there uh, we are. Yeah, a good yeah. shake of hand there. Um, I, I love a bit of rap. That wasn't me. actually French. <laughs> no. Was it? It's weird, that, isn't it? Um, oh, pardon the <laughs> French. People always <laughs> yeah. say when they, yeah. maybe you say bollocks. Uh, uh, excuse my French, but le plume de ma tante. <laughs> hey, come on, language, language. Um, we'll, we'll be doing, learning a little bit of, uh, uh, a foreign language later. I've brought in, um, Instant Yiddish by Fred, uh, Kogos. I've always wanted to learn Yiddish. Really? Yeah. Um, oh. Narishnik, uh, foolishness. Um, some glick, some schlimmen. Yeah, for better, for worse. So I'll be, I'll teach you a little useless phrase like that. <laughs> out of the old, uh, Instant Yiddish book. But first, what was this? Grave diggers. It's grave diggers. Um, they're keeping it real, they're keeping it raw. So there is a bit of bad language. Yeah, well, mine's raw. Um, you keeping it raw? Yeah, of course I have. Um, right, I'm gonna have a go at this then. All right. Right. Don't get no, nervous. No, don't. Shut up. Right, I've got to play this. Shut up then. Don't put me off. I've got to concentrate. Bleep, bleep, it out, bleep it out live. And I will, yeah, shut up. <laughs> can I get the actual mix with me going, <laughs> on Yes, it? you can. Yes. And that's for Steve Vox, who's listening in Reading. It's from Lee to him. Um, and Steve is the president of the Geeks, Nerds and Losers Society, the GNL. Uh, Lee's the vice president. I got thrown out of that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> what embarrassing walking down the street with you. Exactly. Oh, it's a terrible state. Yeah. Uh, Gervais, it was Saturday night last night. Yeah. And I didn't get to, to, to I didn't get to sleep until six in the morning. Ooh. <laughs> well, flatmate's having a party. Yeah. Not invited? No. Next time though. Well, maybe, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know why you hang around with them. Well, I, you know. At least I look after you. I sort of, people say to me, is Steve really as ugly as you say? I go, he's worse. Do you know what I mean? But that's <laughs> No, do you know what I mean, though? You're doing me a favour. Well, of course I am. You're protecting me. Of course I am. I'd say one day, right, yeah. it's just one of me at the moment, but one yeah. day there'll be a whole squadron. It'll be like Planet of the Apes. Oh my god, and you don't actually need anyone else to sort of like, a uh, breed, do you? Exactly. We can just reproduce as we are. <laughs> It'll be like Planet of the Apes, right? You, th there'll be sort of a Charlton Heston figure. Planet of the Squids. It'll crash land. Get your damn dirty Tentacle off me. It'll crash land. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And there'll just be loads of me crawling around. Yeah. All identical. And they go, him on horseback. And they see like Bristol Temple meet and they go, oh my god, they blew it up! Yeah. It's back in Bristol with all your, oh no. Yeah, incredible. To charlatans and then. There must be an organisation of volunteers or something who, if it's like touch and go, if it's really serious, if you're like clinically depressed about it and you really can't get a woman, they don't want just people turning up who can get girls and saying, oh, I fancy, you know. But in your case, you know, they they speak to you, they see you, and I think, you know, there must be some sort of national health thing or private where you can actually sleep with, um, I don't know, 
A voluntary worker. <laughs> you know what I mean? So? Well, yeah, there's oh, people that, Yeah, yeah, I know, but there's people that, um, I don't know, volunteer for geriatric duty, you know, and that they're exploding all over the place. They're covered in the stuff, right? Um, there's people that work on leper colonies, right, for, you know, for nothing. There must be someone who will sleep with you out of sympathy. You don't want that. Of course you don't. You don't want that, do you? Well, let's not be hasty, Rick. <laughs> I mean, these people, I mean, especially if they need some sort of free publicity, <laughs> you know, get a bit of, um, you know, sort of press and media attention. Yeah. I ought to sort of help to publicise their campaign, really. There's probably an organisation that go, you know, and we go, they go off to like, um, just strange climes and go on to like leper islands and that, and they work with them. Um, or they can sleep with you. Now, that's got to do the lepers some good, doesn't it? Yeah. You know what I mean? Wouldn't that be terrible if that was the option, right? And suddenly, volunteers to leper colonies doubled. It was like going to Torre Molinos. Yeah. Let no, me on I, the I, bus. I, Sorry, there's no room on the bus, but it, you're at the back there. Yeah. Going, well, um... <laughs> Well then, here we go. Here I am then. Yeah. No, no, but I, no, I, sorry, I, <laughs> I, I signed up for the, for the lepers. Yeah. Um, licking their wounds. <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry, but. <laughs> Geriatric duty. Yeah. We're not paying pants. Scraping it out. Oh, dear. Oh, you know, I heard a song in the week, right? I've heard it before. It's by Ween. And it goes, Put your little daisies and make them come up. And I don't know what it's called. 0171-580-2000. I don't know where to look. Put your little daisies and make them come up. It's like that. It is. It's rubbish. I've been around to go around singing There's that. There's no song with that lyric. It's in. like that. It goes, push the little dick shut up. Me shut up. up. Shut up. <laughs> yeah. Shut up. That's what my God friends have been saying for the last <laughs> four days. God, you're really irritating me. Today. Like people will go and go, and, if you'll be mine, oh, but not too annoying. But um, after about ten times, you go, oh, can you sing something else? But when you've heard, push your little dick and make them go. Shut up. up. It no. can get really annoying. Yes, it, it really can. can't go on it. Shut um, up. Okay, one of those. You and me song. Shut <laughs> up! <laughs> it's great, let's just gonna gag. I love that one. It's great, actually. Maybe we should play it again. Well, maybe later on. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not that mad about it. <laughs> oh, I like that. She's not quite as irritating, uh, as, as me. No, generally, no, generally. <laughs> who is? Um, uh, we were talking earlier about um, how hideous you, um, how you look and you can't get a woman because you're quite nasty as well. And, um, Emma, uh, our producer here, who thought, um, that this is not fair, you know, because you are, Steve is quite affectionate. When you get to sort of know, you know, like E.T., when you first watch E.T., you go, ugh, and then by the end you think, oh, do you know what I mean? It sort of like gets that deeper. And she said, she went, do I remind you, Steve, what I said when I first met you? And this is like her best, you know, stab at a compliment to make you feel better. She said, you know, I thought, you're really not that ugly. So the assumption is I am ugly, yeah. it's just not as bad as yeah. she's made out. Yeah, and that's like, you know what I mean, yeah. And she's like, no, don't be silly, you're really good, <laughs> you're really not that ugly. Yeah. It was a good effort though, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, that was, that was nice, Emma, that was really nice. It was she a good effort, nice. but, um, it was, it was, it was shallow. And, uh, and futile, it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> look at his little face. <laughs> oh, look! Look at that fax over there. <laughs> look at that fax over right? <laughs> Too Ricky, Steve's skin problem closed up, which actually, um, what they've silicon got. Silicon carbide they've particles. Got. Someone sent in a fax, right, and they've got these sort of hideous kind of <laughs> mutated, um, cells, whatever, and they've, and they've put on the fax, Too Rick, Steve's skin problem closed yeah. up. You've never said I've got a skin problem. No, I haven't. You haven't got They're a skin problem. They're just assuming, no. It's, it's almost translucent, his skin. It's very powerful. It's like, you know, like those new Born fish when you can see all the hearts, can't you? All the hearts were <laughs> in many fish. They've got one each. You're lots what? of fish, lots of hearts. Gervais, shut up. You're irritating me now and you're oh. abusive and oh. you're just winding me up. Oh. No, I'm a little bit offended by I it. I know. You say you should be. But what about this, this charity thing? There must be one. 0171 502 Oh, that would be fantastic. That'd be great. And it, you know, it'd be like, uh, one pound fix. You'd write yeah. on the little form. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah. they could get friends and relatives to sponsor you. Would that be, would that be per stroke or per shag? I think I, it's I for the whole thing, yeah. the whole event. Yeah. It'll be a big event. You know those guys, um, that, I think it was a, a <laughs> hoax, but they were gonna televise <laughs> the first moment they lost their virginity. I uh, so they were gonna, it, they were gonna broadcast it down the internet, right? Yeah. And they were gonna have sex on the internet live, and everyone was gonna applaud and watch and pay for it. Maybe I could organise that as well, make a bit of money out yeah, of it. Yeah, but think of the technology by then, though. Be incredible. They would just be able to think it, wouldn't they, and like, see you losing your virginity. You, you, and they all have big swollen heads. <gasps> you might be good looking in like the year 2090. You never know because it's all well isn't it? You know in Bristol, you're a good looking fellow, aren't you in Bristol? I'm a good looking guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> oh, this is Bell and Sebastian. Uh, uh, the boy with the abstract. Oh, this, this is for Jim Hobbs. 
Who you? said, uh, no. Um, who said, can we hear more about Jezuk? And I better tell people now, we've had a lot of factors about Jezuk. Jezuk is spelt J-E-Z-O-C. I made it up. That's how it's spelt. Okay. All right, Gervais. You'll tell us a bit more about Jezuk, will you? Oh yeah, yeah. I've got a new, I've got a whole new storyline. Before you carry on, um, o one seven one five eight o two thousand. I've got some um, sponsorship forms like <laughs> already printed up. <laughs> yeah, so excellent. just send, you know, give me a call. I can post one yeah. to you. I will sleep with Steve, or I will go and work with a leper Connolly. Connolly. Yeah. Billy. Yeah. Oh, just shut a, up. Play a record. Scottish bloke with a beard you, with his leg, legs record, falling you off. Drunken sock. <laughs> It's quiet and quiet, isn't it? Mm. Mm. A couple of phone calls. Rob phoned and said, slap Steve for saying 0181 instead of 0171. See, it's the singly most important thing. The number is 0171 580 2000. That's why you don't hear me mucking that up. Yes. Do you know what I mean? I apologize. Um, pump Ricky with more wine and challenge him to quack over the out nowhere league. So what? I don't know. I've, I've. What's <laughs> <laughs> that? sentence again. What? That was a sentence? <laughs> No, shut up. Um, I had something to say then. You are drunk. Oh, yeah. I can no, smell no, it on up. your breath. Shut up! I can smell it on your oh, breath, for you. God's sake. Don't, don't wind me up, man. Um, yeah, I've got this new storyline for Jezuk. Um, uh, I want, I want to help with it. What, sure. what it is, right? I think it starts off with this, uh, villain, right? Um, Jezuk brings him in, right? And, uh, he's murdered maybe, maybe a little kid. Or, you know, someone's husband. The, the woman's there and she's terrible. Well, you would be. Yeah. Right? So. Jezek's in there and she goes, uh, he goes, don't, don't worry. Um, he's gonna, by the time he gets out, um, Steve will have a girlfriend, right? She goes, oh, right. So, right. Won't be my boy back, will it? No, but you can have one of mine. Um, I've got loads or something, right? Anyway, um, he goes to, goes to the court, right? And he's only tampered with the jury and he's a nasty piece of work. Oh, not the murderer. Yeah. yeah. He walks free and he sort of like, winks at Jezuk on the way out. Do you think Jezuk's gonna let it lie? Jezuk's not gonna let that villain, uh, what, has he got a piece of evidence? Well, no, he goes after him, shoots him anyway. Cause do you know it's just been done? It turns out he, the bloke didn't actually do it. But, you know, as Jezuk says, better, you know, kill innocent people than let one, you know, guilty person go free. <laughs> um, so <laughs> that's Jezuk's that. philosophy. Yeah. Yeah. And shoot first, ask questions later. You know, you don't want to be stitched up. He's got a reputation. Um, and then, uh, he gets off with a woman, and they have, they have another kid, and, uh, it's all right. Yeah. I'll stop you there. Why? Um, Jezuk just killed an innocent man. He's your superhero. He's your, you know, your heroic, horrible cop. He just killed an innocent man. I'm a little bit disappointed. Oh, so he's got to be perfect, has he? Well, I'm just a little bit disappointed. I, well, no. He can't be perfect. He's got things to do. We know, we know he's got problems. He drinks too much. He kills innocent people. You go out there every day. See how, see how you survive. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got Mama Said Knock You Out lined up. It's our, one of our joint little favourites. We like this one and we like some other songs, don't we? Yeah. Cause we're like mates. I got a little plot. Yeah. Right? Um. <laughs> <laughs> it's Jezuk, right? <laughs> and he retires. He just gets out the whole thing. <laughs> All right, right, that's the final one. We've cut, we've, we've pulled, you know, we've uh, pulled a discreet veil over the whole Jezuk debacle. Right. All right, is that okay? Yeah. Rick, forget Jezuk. Right. Because I've got my own show. I'll be telling you about it. Have you really? Yeah, it's fantastic. Could, am I in it? No, not really. So much to do with, right, okay. It's, right. it's a genuine one I've come up with. You know this song, right? Mama said, knock you out. I like to like, you know, shadow box that. I've been working out today on the big bag, doing a bit of boxing, because I'm in training. I challenged Campo to a fight when I was pissed. <laughs> Thursday night, he was swaying. I, I challenged him to fight. I offered him a thousand pounds prize money. That was the purse. Whether he won or lost, he still said no. Well, he's the worst. He's about 14 or something. Yeah, Can but he's about six foot. Yeah. Maybe he was scared of killing me. Yeah. Jezzet is not scared of that. Jezzet's gone. He's oh, out of it. Okay. There might be a comeback special one day, but thank God he's Let's gone. work on it. Well, oh. Come That's on, my man. challenge to Canfield. You know what I mean? Knock you yeah, out. yeah, I'm putting it out. I'm putting it out over the airs. Yeah, you're you know keeping I mean? it real. You know, like, you know, Death Row, Puffy and all that, and Tupac, and that. that's like me and Canfield. Oh, that's I'm a saying, fantastic idea. I'm saying, come and get it, Canfield. I'm saying, I'm here, you know what I mean? That East it, Coast, West Coast rivalry we can yeah. recreate amongst DJs. Yeah, yeah. Steve Lamac, outside now, have you seen him? He's a weedy little dweeb. Yeah? Oh, fantastic. You can't actually say that, because, I mean, he's a nice, nice guy, and, uh, Well, maybe so. Yeah, so you're gonna fight Lamac, I'm gonna fight Canfield. Oh, be brilliant. Let's keep it with the next FM. Yeah, Crowley. 
Yeah. Remember, he had, he had a fight once at school, and his defense, lucky, he had a hymn book on him. <laughs> and he hit the bloke in the nose with a hymn book. So you don't mess with Crowley, because he's probably carrying, uh, you know, Bibles, hymn yeah. books. You know. He's loaded. He's got some kind of religious paraphernalia with Old him. parchment papers. Yeah, crucifixes. Cu paper cuts are the worst. Oh, nasty. Oh, imagine that, a little bit of papyrus across the eyelid. Oh, you don't want to mess with Crowley. No, I'm saying Canfield, come and get it. You know what I mean? He hangs out with his death tones and all that lot. Mm. Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Should we just ask out? Who should we threaten out? Who else can we threaten out? Um, well, let's, let's not go too mad. Well, uh, what about, uh, Henry Rollins? Well, I've made no. a mistake. I don't, I don't. <laughs> yeah. made an error there. <laughs> there are a lot of people I could have chosen. Jarvis, for instance. <laughs> A lot of people come before Henry yeah. Rollins, don't I do. they? I was a fool. Um, some British heavyweight boxers, for example. Yeah. You know, I'd rather fight than Henry Rollins. Um, before we carry on, before we, uh, cause I'm oh. gonna tell you about my, uh, my TV idea in a minute, Rick. Cause this is an idea I've yeah. been working on, and it's serious, it's like, you know, Jez has got a certain strength, a certain quality. Yeah, um, yeah. and I think you'll like this as well. But before we do that, I've been sent a, f a picture. A picture's been faxed through. Oh, excellent. And it's a little challenge, as ever. Right. It's, uh, make Ricky laugh. If yeah. you laugh at the picture I've got here, Rick, yeah. then, uh, Martin in Crouch End. Yeah. He wins, uh, well, I, I thought we could give him- I like it already, Martin in Crouch End. I thought maybe we could give him the Baby Bird album. Why? Why do we- we- th it's mine, you haven't got one, so you- go on, and yeah. Well, I'll give that to him. But anyway, here's the picture. Uh, yeah. see what you think. <laughs> I like it, cause there's a little explanation as I well. Know. And it's subtle, cause I had to get right to the end for the big line. Uh, you're not allowed to see this. No, uh, that is fantastic. So well done so to Martin. Martin, I think Martin he wins an award. Yeah, he does. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So if you want to win um, something <laughs> tasty, give us a, a, give us a call or fax oh. us through a picture. Oh one seven one five eight oh one two three four. Your pictures, please. Make Ricky laugh. Um, you know your idea of this new show, which mm. I haven't heard yet, right? But we should start getting together all the other stuff, or we're going to get ripped off. That was I sounded just like Albert Tatlock then in the early eighties. Oh, we dear. should go out your room. I love that fact that you, you sort of, maybe you've got a sentence, it's got 15 <laughs> words in. You reckon, well, if I get, if I get out an average of five coherent words to every 15 that I need to <laughs> say in a sentence, oh, that'll be enough. God, right, Jam or Isis? Either one. Both rubbish. Oh, no, come on. They're both good big bands, aren't they? Alright, Gervais, next, let's talk about my, my game, my TV idea. Okay, let's do all around the world. Because it's probably gonna be big all around the world, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> Before that, the jam, all around the world. Um, got a fax here from my mate Nick. He's listening. Say hello to him. Say hello to me. Uh, hello. Yeah. And, uh, apparently there's, he's found a great website about Joey Deacon. So we'll check that one out a little bit. About later. Joey Deacon? Yeah. Oh, Joey. Yeah. Um. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> we've had loads of ideas, haven't we, in the past? Yeah. And actually, I was wondering whether we should put out the phone number 0171 2000. Um, the reason being that A, you might perhaps want to, want us to perhaps, um, relate an old anecdote that you once heard on the show that you'd yeah. have to hear again. We could recreate we the could, golden we years. We could recreate some of the classic moments from the yeah. Ridge of Ace show. Yeah. Um, and also, of course, we've had tens of thousands of ideas hmm. for products, for services, for yeah. TV shows especially, and uh, board games, all kinds of stuff. I mean, the, the, we come up with one recently, haven't we, that, 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 that have catch on, Sleep With Me or Play With Lepers. That's right. I mean, that, that's a good service, isn't it's it? It's an interesting show, that. Yeah. I, I mentioned that's sort of Channel 4. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, later. Later, really. Yeah, and um, we've also, of course, most famously, perhaps, had uh, the Penis Puppet Theatre. Penis Puppet Theatre. So easy to manufacture. I don't know why publishers aren't, you know, knocking on my door. Yeah. A lot of other people are knocking on my door. Um, Ricky Gervais Meat Rations. Oh. It's been fun recreating Get in the queue, Mum. It's Ricky Gervais's Meat Rations. <laughs> yeah. Oh. All kinds of great games. To be perfectly Re unfranked. To be who snork. Who stork? <laughs> yeah. Great games. And if you, I mean, if you've not ever heard us describing these, the way you've missed out. Yeah. You, you've learned your mistake. The tease penguin's probably my greatest invention. The tease penguin? Can you tell us again? I forget. Well, it's just a penguin. Alright, you train, you put it in a lovely little French maid outfit, and it comes in, with, <sighs> sort of breathes fishy breath on you, and slaps you around the face with its flipper. Yeah. Oh. Um, Jezuk, obviously. But it doesn't let you go any further. No. That's why it's the cheese penguin. Yeah, oh, I see. Yeah. Um, extra family fortunes. Oh, I can see that on telly myself. Yeah, it's incredible. I don't know where you got the idea from. I, they just come into my head sometimes. Do they? Yeah. But anyway, here's my new idea, Jermaine. Oh, it's come great, on. It's a great yeah. show. It's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an exciting show, right? Right, go on. It's the future. Oh, yeah. All right. Crime has got so bad in the future. <laughs> no, that it, it's terrible. That, um, that there's not enough 
hours in a day, right, for all the cases to be tried in court. Right. Or because there's just not enough time. It's a bit like, you know, Judge Dredd sort of thing. Yeah. So what happens is, right, there's a night court. Okay? And it, oh, it, yeah. it comes into session at 12 o'clock. Yeah. All right? And uh, there's lots of lawyers and stuff, and they really deal with the dredge. I'm talking about the dredge, the crimes which you think are open and shut, Rick. Yeah. All right? The sort of stuff that Jesuit would just sort out, right, you know, with, with, with a bullet. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It, we're talking rapists and murderers and stuff. Yeah. But, uh, All people who just piss him off. Exactly. But Ronnie Midnight. Oh, right. Ronnie Midnight. He's the hard-boiled, uh, lawyer, right, that, r that's sort of the, the main figure at Night Court. Mm. And he gets dealt all these rough cases, right, and he thinks it's open and shut. Everyone mm. thinks, oh, that person, he should be electrocuted or whatever. Yeah. But no. Ronnie sees something in them, he investigates the crime during the day, so he's yeah. only got like 12 hours to yeah. sort it out, and then he presents the case at Night Court, right, at night, and uh, maybe often, it's like Perry Mason meets, um, meets, So he wastes uh, the taxpayers' money investigating people that might be innocent? Yeah, Jesuit yeah. just kills them. Well, maybe so. Yeah. That's, that's why Ronnie Midnight's much more loved. But mm. that's great, it would be great. I mean, it, would yeah. just, it would start off with like, dum, 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 all rise, juju, ju, ju, for night court. Yeah. It'd be fantastic. I and, like uh, that. It would sort of set in the future. Am I in that? Well, mm, not really. But, and, and, you know, who knows, Jezek maybe could get, you know, he could, he could make a guest appearance. What do you think? I like it. Night court. I like it. It's I don't, good, isn't it? Yeah. What, what's the problem? This rubbish about all this taxpayers' money investigating whether they're actually, you know, they're mm. innocent. You're more of a Jesuit kind of guy. Yeah. Just shoot, shoot first. Don't even ask questions. <laughs> don't. don't it's, if it's if it's times like you know of the essence, why ask questions? You've done. You know, what's the point? Yeah. He just like opening up old wounds, which is another favourite pastime of Jesuit. Sometimes. Oh, and also a great he idea. He loves opening up old wounds. A great idea for maybe a board game or a TV show. Old wounds. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, I'm going to work on this. Oh, and I've got Tip the Balance. I haven't even described that. Tip the Balance? After Embrace. Can you tell us? Emma goes out with a bloke in this. Oh. Yeah. What's Tip the Balance? Long-haired type. What's the Tip the Balance? Well, Jezzet wouldn't tolerate that. What's Tip the Balance? It's a board game for four rugby players or more. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Or the infirm. Or people who've just got no dignity left and we can get them on screen doing that. This is, uh, my weakness is none of dot dot dot. I obviously ran out of. I was, uh, reading News World. On my way, yeah. And, um, I didn't know this. You know, um, uh, Tony Blair. Yeah. He's the Prime Minister. Oh, yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. yeah. Tony Blair. Um, his father-in-law, which is Sherry's dad, is, uh, that bloke, um, out after death is due part. Well, I've got it. No, no, the, his son. Oh, blimey. Something about his, I don't know, I should get this right, really, because it could be libelous, but it's something to do with some sort of doll cheat or something like that. What? Yeah, apparently. Cherry Blair's dad's a doll cheat. Yeah. Something like that. Really? Always claiming some sort of benefit for all, I don't know. But he was always the same when he was living with his dad, Alf. <laughs> he, 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 he was married to him and stuff, wasn't he? That I means Sherry, uh, Sherry Blair's mum, is she no, I'll stop you there, Rick. I'll stop you there. It's so uh, incestuous, isn't it? It's fiction. I've it's tried to explain this to you before, haven't I? The stuff on the TV, yeah. a lot of it is real. Mm. Some of it's fake. They're mm. not really those people. And it's like EastEnders, for instance, that's not real, that's not real people. Uh, yeah, well, obviously, because obviously that is real, because I've seen them in real life. They were at Phoenix, got them playing football, so that is real. No, that was the act. that was the actors. Mm. Phil Mitchell was there, and Ricky Butcher. And that was the actors. I've, yeah. We have been through this before. Because uh, I went through this the same day that I explained to you that it, only in the cat world, can you piss on an object? I've got a new so stereo that way. Mm. They just get out of the shop, but it was too late. I've got a new stereo. And it doesn't, it, it sort of, it shorts out, because I, I actually weed in one of the back of the speakers. Did you, did you? Yeah. yeah. But it's mine, I've got to get that fixed. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know. Yeah. I thought some up. Go on. When the electrician comes round, right, to fix my stereo, okay, I go, what happened to it? I said, oh, I, 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 I pissed on it in the shop, and that's why it's mine. He went, oh, fair do, yeah, well, well done. Right, um, and he goes right. That's um, forty quid. As I hand over the money, just a little dribble. <laughs> it's mine again. That, ca that cash is yours. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Oh, it's so easy. You'll never have to pay another penny. <laughs> I know. It's, it's a just... shame we don't live in Ricky World. <laughs> <laughs> the Manic Street Preachers on XFM one hundred four point nine, and that's if you tolerate this, then your kids are going to get it too. Um, the spider and the horse. Oh, Remember that? It's great. Yeah, I don't but, really want to go into it. No, no, we had this idea last week, like, for Czechoslovakian <laughs> sort of short.
Right. Jacob's Slovakian animation. Yeah, yeah, with uh, 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 uh. that would be the music, obviously. Uh, yeah, it's called the Spider Noise, and it's obviously a satire against the government and the bloke. Quite right, he's been put in jail for the rest of his life. Yes. Yeah, and Jezek coming around opening old wounds. Yeah. They were just healing, right? Um, and the horse, <laughs> we used to have, this is a wicker horse. A little wicker horse with a little sombrero. <laughs> yeah. Probably the sort of thing you buy if you're uh, in the Toro Molinos. And the spider is just a blacked up crab. That's it, it's a crab playing a spider. Yeah. It's a wonderful cartoon. Uh, yeah. It's called something like The Inhumanity of the Eyes of March. Yeah. The unbearable deafness of seeing. Yeah, something like that. Um, yeah. And, um, it's, it's made by Ivanovich Gorovich. No, we're gonna make it. Oh, are we? Yeah, we might as well do it now. Actually, talking of ideas, Trace, we've had quite a few people just phoning in ideas for game shows and TV things, and, and we, I, we, not, we never asked for any ideas. No. People have just we like it. Them. We'll have them. They're ours now. Yeah. 1234 you can fax us. Just, um, just to get this straight, any money made out of this is just mine. That's right. Yeah. Hold on. Um, this is uh, from Nigel in Tottenham. He's come up with a great idea. Yeah. You get loads of blindfold, a panel of blindfolded contestants. I'm yeah. thinking, who would you have there, Gervais? Well, contestants? Yeah, blindfolded, you know, your sort of celebrity panel. Are they, they got to be celebrities, have they? I think so. Um, Ted Moulton. Ted Moulton, obviously. Um, uh, Julie Cooper. Julie Coo Cooper, yeah. Um, uh, maybe Joe Bugner. <laughs> oh, I thought it was gonna be Henry Cooper, but... Well, it could be, but, I mean, that's not fair, isn't it? Because, I mean, he did beat him. He beat him by, like, you know, three quarters of a point, yeah, so he was having a Wouldn't it be great if it was, if it was like, um, if it was the, yeah, the bloke that used to play René in Hello, Hello. <laughs> yeah. Right, is uh, Sue Pollard, and then it's Muhammad Ali. <laughs> that would be incredible. <laughs> like, Muhammad obviously now can't talk that well because of the Parkinson's <laughs> or whatever, so he'd just yeah. be there, uh, yeah. Brilliant, that'd be great. Well, Sue Pollard's a really interesting person. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so anyway, you've got your panel of contestants, and, um, you bring on, okay, a celebrity. Yeah. Whose idea is this? Nigel in- This is Nigel in Tottenham. Yeah. So you've got your blindfolded panel there. Yeah. A celebrity comes on, maybe, uh, Nigel suggests Jeremy Beadle, yeah. right? And they have to have their most deformed body part <laughs> sucked by the panel of celebrities. <laughs> now, obviously, I assume in the case of Beadle, that's his weird, deformed, like, childlike hand. Yeah. And yeah. so they would suck that until, um... Or his goatee. What or his goatee. And, um, and then they, they have to sort of suck... Or suck his breasts. Jeremy. They have to suck Jeremy until they identified him. Oh. You know, and then they Oh, that'd be great. Oh, cause it'd be like a little doll's hand down the back of your throat. Yeah. And I imagine he doesn't, although, though, no, he's probably perfectly manicured that side. The other one's a mess though. Yeah. He can't do that one. So, um, that's, that's, uh, any other deformed celebrities? I'm trying to think if there are any others. I, I got a feeling it might be Beadle every week. Is it, um, <laughs> no. Muhammad Ali? Who is it? Oh, oh, oh. Don't diss Muhammad Ali, man. Well, no, I won't have that. I won't have, no, I won't have that. Anyway. Ali's, Ali's my man. Anyway, um, um other deformed, I don't know. Stephen Hawking? <laughs> He's not deformed. Um, not compared to you, no. Michael Jackson? No, that's, this is libelous. Is it? It's got to be. Who's deformed? Who's deformed? <laughs> um, Which celebrity is a deformed? Def a list of deformed celebrities. 0171 580 2000. Um, what else have we done? We've done funny phone calls, haven't we? We've done some funny phone calls. Did that one like, like Penky, when we phoned up, phoned up Safeway and said, have you got some cheese? <laughs> and they said yes. And we showed them, didn't we? That uh, showed them. Yeah. Oh, uh, we've done some crank, crazy crank calls. Yeah. Uh, who, who, do you want some beer? Do you want some beer? Brilliant, brilliant game. Five o'clock foreigner. Five o'clock foreigner. Yeah. Um, oh, what else have we done? There's been just too much, haven't there? The alarm frog. The alarm frog. That never got off the ground, did it? got going. Um, um some great ideas. Uh, tip the balance, that's the last one I've got. Tip the balance? You haven't explained it. It's my last, my, I think it's a little bit in bad taste. Really? Yeah. Oh, well, I don't want that on this show. <laughs> no, 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 I mean, I think it's a little bit much. Really? Is it too much? Is it yeah. the most outrageous thing you've ever... Well, okay, well, no, look, this is an idea, right? It's, it's a some, board game. It's a board game. I'll, I'll send it off to Waddington's when, uh, get, you know. It's four simple weights, sort of, just like, um, fulcrum weights, you know, like scales. Like a little seesaw? Yeah, a little seesaw. And there's one end is like a bowl, right? The other end is like a kilogram weight. Right. And there's four of those. So you four of you sit round, and you've got us quite simply tip the balance, right? So you've got to fill the, the bowl. Fill the bowl, yeah. What with rice or no, 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 um, uh, sort of object. No, uh, bodily secretions. Right. So it's the first, you know. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't tell us about this. Well, know. no, because there's there's simple rules. Anything that comes out your body is all right, okay, um, in every form. Right. Well, you know, anything that comes out of your body, yeah. you put that into the bowl and yeah. 
to the balance. So, uh, I was just thinking, if I said it quieter, it wasn't so bad, I was going to go, why is piss? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because it worked right. Snot, um, sick. Yeah. Uh, well, I was going to say come, because then I could be spreading it C-O-M-E. Therefore, getting by some of the radio thought it was rather sneakily. And spunk, as you said, is like, um, courage, isn't it? Exactly. Like in the Waltons, they go, oh, look, I love, I love your new girlfriend, um, John Boy, she's full of spunk. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry about that. Well, I've, got, I've been carried away, Dad. Good night, um, good night, John Boy. Yeah. John Boy. <laughs> good night. Don't start. Right, here's the cure. We'll come back to this. 20 to 6, Ricky Gervais, Ricky Gervais show. And, uh, Steve. what have we offered today? Well, we've offered <laughs> Tip the Balance, <laughs> the new board game from Waddington's, <laughs> which involves secreting various bodily fluids yeah. into a bowl yeah. in order to tip the balance. Yeah, and then what you do, you go, tip the balance! I was just imagine the front cover was sort of granny, she's stooped. Yeah, she's just like... <laughs> she, no, she's got trousers <laughs> down. Yeah. She's just... And everyone, and she's missed it. She's, she's missed, missed it she's completely. Missed it. They're all laughing. And she's the, fam the family are there yeah. behind, aren't yeah. they, clapping and yeah. cheering. The mother just laughing, doing a dustman's blow. <laughs> yeah. Right. Just, and the 14 year old boy, he's got... Well, he's got... Uh, right, okay. <laughs> well, he, he's enjoying it the most. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> but what about if... You know that, um... Right. Uh, bingo is yeah. the... Is the, <laughs> the most popular evening pastime in the country, and there are yeah. these huge bingo palaces. Yeah, that's because like, they have thousands the of yeah. seats. Yeah. Imagine if they were all playing tip the balance. <laughs> we cracked the smell. <laughs> it would be incredible. Oh, oh, oh God. That would be fantastic. That would be great. You could have winner stays on. Yeah. Because you'd have a disadvantage then, wouldn't you? Well, I'm just, uh, <laughs> I mean, I imagine in uh, in Japan they've already got a TV show like that. I'd imagine a kilogram's a lot though to get rid of. Yeah, you've got a it? lot of sputum. I know everything. Yeah, but I think it's a great idea. Can you could you give birth into the bowl? Uh, yeah, well, no. Well, you could, but anything you put in there, you lose. So oh, you right. Know, really, yeah. Can't like you, you can't. Thing. You could like you could bleed into it and amputate into it, but you can't have it back. Like right. you couldn't put a false limb in. Right. Because you'd bleed it there. Because that you know, so that, that's sort of cheating. Yeah. Um, but there is a thing called the fish card. Where if you're all out of it, right, you're all, you're all strained out, and you've vomited and snotted, and everyone's got like, you know, point eight kilograms in theirs, you can go, fish card, right, and you can take someone else's bowl and pour it into yours, but you've got to pour it via your mouth. Right. So you take a big glug of that, and then you do it, and you win. you thought so, this through, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. You've played you this, haven't you? No, I haven't played it, I haven't played it, I haven't, I haven't got the, uh, the equipment. Wow. Near the end of the, uh... The nearly of the show with it, yeah. isn't it? I can't even be bothered to criticise you. <laughs> it's not worth it, is it? Is this language day. anymore? I know, yeah. So late in the day, if you, you, yeah. I mean, you're not going to master it at the age of what, <laughs> 45, however old you are. <laughs> uh, you know, I mentioned, um, I guess we could call it Freak Show or something like that. Yeah. Uh, where celebrities with deformities come on. That was Nigel from that's Tottenham. Like Nigel in Tottenham Cove. Yeah, the, the most deformed. What would you put forward as your most deformed bit? Well, luckily, um, uh, sucking my most deformed bit will be curiously enjoyable for me. <laughs> uh, um, anyway, I asked for a few more celebrities who've got deformities, and uh, various people have called in. <laughs> uh, Jez in East Barn, it mentioned John Thor, who of course, uh... So what he, him? Well, John's left leg, I think, is shorter than his right. He always sort of hobbles a bit as he walks. You have to suck the whole of the left leg. Yeah. Right. So that's... Say that again, Lewis. Well, I was just saying, size that, like the fat bird in the opera. Yes. I know it is now. What? Because I said no, no, I didn't do with it. I just saw him do it. I just got on his face. Yeah, go on. Um, Paul Daniels. W apparently, one arm is shorter than the other. Um, uh, can I just say the head? <laughs> True enough. Yeah, Debbie, Debbie McGee could come on and just bring Paul. <laughs> yeah, as yeah. no deformed. Yeah, yeah. under her arm. Object. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's from Tony Namisham. Um, <laughs> we've also had Ian Jury. Yeah. Uh, someone's mentioned that. That uh, says that, uh, Ian Jury. His uh, left side. Yeah. Really? Did he have a stroke or something? Polio. Polio, wasn't it? Yeah, oh. yeah. So Luke is left side. And, uh, Anthea Turner, apparently she lost, um, the middle three of her toes or something in a sort of horrible accident. I don't know if that's true. Anyway, yeah, Anthea Turner would be great. Just get her on anyway. She lost... No, no, what? Well, I don't, I don't think it can be true, to be honest. It says that she's only got two toes on one of her feet because yeah. she lost the other three in, um, uh, a flymail accident. Oh my god. But I don't know if that's true. That's so it's when true. you used to go to school and say some, oh, had a fight with the lawnmower. Yeah, she yeah. did. Yeah, yeah. No, I meant your hair, love. No, not on your toes. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, so What would you suck? Would you suck the gap or would you suck the toes that flew off in the garden? I, I really haven't thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> you what? Why not? I haven't really given it much thought to it, to be honest. <laughs> um, oh, I just got time for one more song, then the news. 
Oh, I'm not going to do this for any one computer. Uh, if we've got any news. Remember last week? Is it up, oh, there's no news. Yeah. Oh, sorry, there's no news. Yeah. No news. Perfect. Must be news, some news, wasn't there? Yeah. Give us last week's. Anything, anything I'll do. You usually do. Um, right, it's Lloyd Cole, and are you ready to be heartbroken? I've got Sandy Shaw's version of this. Cheers. It's not interesting, is no, it? No, not in the slightest. <laughs> That's it, then. Sorry, I was, uh, Put your headphones on. Sorry, It's got a toilet roll holding down the microphone because it's broken and fling I've got- I've been working on one computer, I just- uh, The whole show's been a debacle. Yeah. You know why? Because- you know why? Because we're no good and we don't plan anything and that's gotta be stopped. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? Someone should stamp that out. I'm getting sick of it. Yeah. Do you think I like just turning up off and inebriated with nothing to say, abusing people, breaking- Do you think I like that? No. No. I know. Well, I'll, um, well, I'm gonna play Bob Dylan. It's but at the same time, what? Rick, in our defence, yeah, um, we don't care. Not only that, you know, we're not. We're getting paid for it. We're not. We're not monkeys, all right. We're no. not performing monkeys. No. If people need us to entertain them, then they ought to take a closer look at themselves. I think. Yeah. All right. We're, you know, and we've got should... better things to do with ourselves than having that on the radio you've trying to entertain of, people. You've got lots of things, better things to do with yourself, and you often do what I'm trying to present, sure which is that. what puts me off more than anything. And I never tip the balance. You know not what I mean? You need some. You need a lot more. What? No, I was, I was just thinking I thought I had something to say, but I haven't. Who's, um, Snowden's guests? Matt from Jean. Oh, Matt from Jean, excellent. I like Jean. And who else? And of, is, uh, what's Pete his name? From Three Colours Red. Pete from Three Colours Red. Brilliant. Excellent. Okay, yeah. we better get out of here. Yeah, I'm good. Um, Bob off, Dylan, right. it's all over now. Baby Thank Blue. God. All right, um, All right, see you soon. Cheers. It's all the track is Celebrity Skin. Ricky Gervais. Oh, yeah. It's a joy. It's fantastic to be back. See if we can boost those ratings for another hour. Yeah. Now, listen, you brought a ginger wig with you this evening. As I say, I'm not entirely certain what part of anatomy it's for. Uh, well, it's not from a cock. <laughs> um, no, we're going to be playing a sort of like, uh, a, a, Oh, charming! A, well, John Peel can say the F word. That's entirely subjective. That's the name of a band, Ricky. Oh, right. So if I go out tonight and see a band called Suck a dog's cock. I can rave about that. Just because he's a grown up, he can say the other one's still. He can't say it. Well, because he can say it. You're here anyway, to play radio game shows. Okay, it's great. And that's here. what we're going to do. We're the game show. We played, um, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire last time? We did. We? It was great. No one so won the million. They won a BBC pen, though. We we gave yeah, three. I actually meant on the pens, game right. show on television. Oh, keep, right. keep up, Aunt Hobbs. Um, but uh, um, we're going to play uh, sort of a version of Blind Date. I've got my mate in. As you can see, he's not the best looking bloke in the world. Come on, Shut up a minute. Don't embarrass me. Alright. Okay. Um, I'll just describe him to you if you wanna. He, he can't get a girlfriend for obvious reasons. He's, uh, six foot seven. He's sort of got a puce sort of translucent skin about him. He's got bulgy eyes on the side. He's hideous. He's a freak. He's an ugly man. Don't right? push me outside the market. No, but we're gonna see if we can get our national platform to get him a, a woman stupid, yeah. uh, lucky enough to, uh, maybe. I've got my idea. Does, does, for, he, does he have a name? Steve. Steve, okay. Yeah. Steve, is it alright to ask you a couple of questions? Just to get the girls kind of, you know. Who's she? Juicer. Uh, Ann Hobbs. Ellen Hobbs. Yeah. Ann Hobbs. Okay. S Steve, um, how she's big in all the, She's in all the magazines, all the blogs. Steve. magazines. I've got stacks of magazines. <laughs> I've never seen that. Steve! You wouldn't in yours, no. <laughs> Have you, I, I don't know though, actually, in this line. Have you ever been on the back of any sort of Portuguese playing cards? <laughs> that's there. On the back of a bus, yeah, yeah. I've been many yeah. times, but yeah, not Portuguese that. playing yeah, cards. Yeah. Steve, I need to ask you a few questions, as I say, because we, we need to sort of ginger the girls up, the listeners, you know. What's that mean? Ginger them up. It means, you know. So you've got John you Peel saying the F word and getting away with it, because he's been in radio a few years. you got a playing things going, you bastard. Yeah. <laughs> then she's saying ginger in Europe. That's got to be illegal well, for a start. She's smoking something. <laughs> what is Steve, it? Steve! It's not The girls need to know. She doesn't smoke crap. A couple of things. What's your star sign? Hey, what's your star sign? What does that mean? Come on, when, it's when important. Were Quick, when were you born? Um, what month? In November. Yeah. What is he? Sagittarius? No, I don't know. know. How big's your appendage? My what? She's she's getting so dirty. She's just disgusting. I, know. I didn't come in here to be insulted with this kind of thing. Come you can go on. that in here, can't you? Things to be doing, Gervais. Do you know what I mean? She's the best they've got now. Now they've lost Edmonds and Saville. What's happened to Jimmy Savile? Oh, no, Saville. he was good. He's beautiful. <laughs> he loved the kids. <laughs> he loves them. I think he still does love children. I've seen pictures. He I know. Kids. Yeah. Yeah. Thank what's you, happened to Jimmy Savile? We're not doing a really a particularly good job at tantalising the female. Okay, assistant. right. He's ugly. He's pig ugly. He's gimp. Okay. He's uh, embarrassing to be with. He's um. So what's the number? Oh five hundred one ten one hundred. That's the number you need if you want a blind date with Ricky Gervais's um, desperate mate yeah. tonight. Yeah. Yeah. 
a merciful act, I think, for Can I just have my idea for a, my own um, particular lovely game show? It'll go on telly. It's got a big star in it. All right. Uh, uh, it's called uh, Celebrity Foxy Boxing. <laughs> <laughs> it's not scantily clad women, it's um, celebrities beating up Dr. Fox for charity. Aye! Just even do a link, you get the crankies coming and kick shit out of them. <laughs> oh, 0500 110 100, that's the number you need if you'd like to, um, well, if you'd like a blind date mm. with Richie Gervais' best mate. And uh, it's Hobbs and Gervais this evening, oh, we're playing yes. blind date with Steve, aren't we? Gervais and Hobbs, Gervais and Hobbs, really. Um, well, I, well, I suppose we better ask Steve what sort of uh, woman he's looking for. Yeah. I, mean, I really must, I can't stress enough that he really is. I've seen women th laugh when I've introduced them to them, and some sort of like get a bit scared. He is hideous looking. I want to let people know that, so there's no con involved. He's a mm, salamander. What sort of woman are you looking for, Steve? Hey, what sort of woman? I are don't you need all this. Like, do you know all this stick? No. Coming here, Hobbs is starting it as well. Yeah. In between records, gabbling away. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I don't mind. Well, but it's come just, on, get on with it. What sort um, of woman are you looking for? Kind of woman, celebrity yeah. women, famous women. Like who? Oh, I don't know. Louise Woodward. <laughs> Louise Woodward. She's a good looking girl. Yeah. She's a good looking lady. Yeah. I see you thinking there. You're thinking that with all that trouble with the, uh, you know, child killing. Yeah. That, uh, there won't be a lot of, uh, people in the queue. On I the contrary, I, can, I, can I just, uh, I think you're aiming a bit high there, to be honest. Really? What are you yeah. talking about? You're like aiming a little bit high. We're not thinking celebrity here, are we? We're thinking about the, the average Radio 1 listener that might appeal to you. I don't know. It's got to be a celeb, really. Mo Molum. Mo Mola. Oh, good looking girl. She's you like her headband here. Well, that's it's when you say that. I saw her on um, the telly and she had like a little bit of lip gloss and big earrings and that big headband and she looked like Simon Le Bon. Oh, he's a good looking <laughs> fella. Duran Duran, a classic <laughs> band. Actually, well, Louise Wilbur looks a bit like um, uh, Simon Le Bon. You like women who look like the lead singer of Duran Duran? I'd ra well, I'd rather that than women that look like the lead singer at ZZ Top. Mm. So Anne Hobbs is out of it. <laughs> she's, out of it. she's out of it altogether. <laughs> look at Anne Hobbs Must there. Be the what, is that? what is she yeah. wearing? <laughs> what is that? A smock? <laughs> When was that fashion? She takes, you can look at Anne Hobbs, she takes fashion tips from the last of the summer wine. I know, and all the haze but of what's smoke. What's wrong with that? I mean, that's a wonderful program. Yeah. You can't. Well, yeah, but not Bill Owen. Yeah, she says she, she's, uh, no Louise Woodward, is she? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Louise. Oh, she's, I mean, she, Louise Woodward's pudgy, but she's not, it's just baby fat. She's got not, a beautiful, baby beautiful fat. hairstyle, though, isn't she? It's not baby fat. That's a Freudian slip. It's puppy fat. What did I say? You said baby fat. Puppy fat? That's no, she's phrase. gorgeous! She didn't, she didn't, she what didn't. are you talking about? She was completely remodelled. She didn't kill any puppies. She <laughs> didn't! <laughs> if Louise Woodward's been touching puppies, I'm not interested. I'll be honest, forget <laughs> it. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not going out with a puppy killer, that's just sick. You're not going out with uh, anybody oh other than God. a standard Radio 1 listener oh this God. evening. Because that's all we have to offer you. What can I say? All we right. cannot lay okay. our celebrities on a silver plus for you. That's well, completely insane. He's looking for anyone who's stupid enough to one call up and B fall for it and C yeah. go out with him and D. D's out of the question. He's yeah, never got the key yet. Yeah. But listen, um, we've got a prize here. Skegness, riverboat trip, chicken in a basket. No, I can't it's afford box. that. It'll be... What, no, no, it's no. free to the what? winner and you. That's your oh, date. Hey, it's not bad. I thought it was yeah. going to be wine and dine and 25 quid. <laughs> you can't pay 25 quid to someone to go out with you. What, 50? 50 would be better, 50 yeah. 50 will be alright, yeah. Yeah. Well, okay, one more record and then we'll stick a caller on. 0500 wondered if you feel that you can contend with these sick men and they are sick and if uh, they've said anything to offend you, I retract it immediately. <laughs> Ricky Gervais is with us. His yeah. mate Steve is absolutely desperate. Look at him, panting. Desperate for a date. Oh. And happily, we've got Laura on the phone from Worcester. Hello. Laura, you've not been put off by all this kind of chat about, you know, the aesthetics here. No, no, not at all, mate. You know, you can just go up for a laugh, don't you? Yeah, well, the good thing is we know you can't have any standards or you'll be listening to Anne Hobbs, really. So <laughs> that's that's a plus, isn't it? Oh, no, where are you from? Worcester? <laughs> yeah, of Worcester. That's the, I only know one thing about Worcester, it's that sauce, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. And it tastes nothing like Worcester, does it? Well, I, I wouldn't know, I haven't tasted it myself yet. Whereas Daddy's sauce? Oh, yeah, I have plenty of daddy's sauce, but not Worcester sauce. Hey, steady there. We we'll better stop it there. Right, I've got a couple of questions for you to see if you're eligible for Steve. All right, then. Okay, start off. Um, you've Hang got on a, a second. Ricky, did you, 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 you pen these questions? I thought this was Steve's gig. Well, I'm looking out for him because he can get hurt out there. It's a, look at him. <laughs> look at him. As if he can look after him. What do you think of him? That's a serious Ann Hobbs. Right, you can see him. They can't. Do you think he's a good looking fella? <laughs> Come on then, Ann Hobbs. You, oh yeah, yeah, it's all lots of this. Um, it's all lots of 
gibbly gabbly gobbly, isn't it? She's yeah. talking all the time. You, you like but it, suddenly, gibbly gobbly. It's, it's, she used well, to be so lucky to get well, any gabbly I'm, gobbly, mate. Uh, let's not start on that, Rick. So what do you think of him? Laurie looks good from the back, love. Oh, oh here she is. <laughs> you still do that one, do you? Here's the old Anna Nobbs here. Yeah, we're going to talk to Steve like that. What's going on here? I don't know. I didn't come on here to be insulted. What kind of woman's this? You can go anywhere, can't you? Right. Tricky questions, come I take that off that Chris Moyles. He's hilarious. He's a zany bloke. He's mad. He's, he's mad, isn't he? Yeah, he is. But yeah. not this Anna, Alan Hobbs. No, mm -hmm. Alan, Alan Hobbs. <laughs> right, um, Laura. Yeah. <clears throat> from Worcester. Have you got a bit of a West Country accent as well, haven't you? No. I don't know, oh, sorry. Just get on with it, Rick. God's okay, what, what's your favourite band? My favourite band? Yeah. Uh, I like a bit of Radiohead and like. My Iron Lung! <laughs> <laughs> My Iron Lung! You, no, you hate Radiohead, Steve. What are you talking about? I know it all. You hate, you told me you hated Radiohead. I know, I know all the songs, I know all the lyrics. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what, what is that I hate Radiohead t shirt you No, it's right, shut up, Anne Hobbs. If she comes in, look at it. She's know. got it in for me, Alan Hobbs, yeah. <laughs> I know, yeah. She's Which so is so. Let's try another question. Come on, If you're not careful, Anne Hobbs, they'll push you to after midnight. Sorry, can I, let me ask a question here, all right? No. Seriously, uh, what's her name? Laura. Um, Alan Hobbs. Shut up. This, Laura. Oh, Laura. Yeah. Um, do you like, um, Aswad? Aswad? <laughs> Aswad. Uh, I don't think I was, uh, I don't think I was around when they were around. Of course she doesn't like Aswad. Well, good. No, no you, excellent. You love Aswad. Shut up. You <laughs> hate Radiohead. I've never heard right. any of their songs. I don't know any of their songs. Okay, you've got one more question. Go on, then. All right, I'll ask a question then. Um, what's her name? Uh, Laura. Yeah. <laughs> it's simple things like that I need to master, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Write well, it down. Um, um, do you, do you ever, do you like, do you like those people, Laura, who like torture Laura, monkeys? Laura, Laura, not Laura. Whatever. <laughs> um, I'm back to, yeah, last time I went again. Oh, Nora Patty. <laughs> oh, anyway, yeah. now listen, oh, right, listen, listen shut up, I've got to ask this girl a question, yeah, she might be my prospective wife, who knows? Yeah. Right, now, Laura, listen, Laura, well, do you like those people who like torture monkeys, you know, and do experiments on rabbits and like, you know, kill pandas for fun? No, she's an anti-movie no, sectionist, I can hear it in her voice. I think that is. You don't like any of that? No. See? No, all right, nor do I. So, no, sorry, I don't think you're Max, Laura. Oh, I'm sorry about that. We'll send you a... Day. No, we're still, seriously, Rick, like, she'll, be, she'll be all right. Can we send her a Blue Peter pen? We can, we can send can her I? a BBC pen. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Laura, stay there. on the line and we'll, get, we'll get you a dress. Are you, are you really going to blow this girl out? She sounds like a dream I'm sorry, to me, no, Ricky. I don't even know. Of course I'm not going to blow her out. Oh. Rick, I'll do it. Oh, this one I do. No, you can't. No, she'll do it. She can't. She's fine. Yes. And uh, astonishing as it may seem, we actually have another contestant on the phone. Can you believe this? This is Charlie in Oxford. Hello. Don't do it. Don't do it. Be afraid. Be very <laughs> afraid. Honestly, I, I, I wish I could send you a photograph or fax you. I, I'm not exaggerating. This isn't a joke. He is hideous. It can't be that bad, can it, really? Well, they always say that. They always say that, and then they scream and they start crying, and I'm after there saying, I'm really sorry, I did warn you. Okay. So I'm just, okay. Charlie, um, where are you calling from? You sound like you're in a pothole. No, we're in Oxford Brooks Uni, end block. Oh. End block. <laughs> Oh, N-Block. Yeah. yeah. The oh, legendary N-Block, eh? Well, not Oxford yeah, students. Cool. Is that people who are bad at the real Oxford? You get yeah. put in N-Block. <laughs> We're the bad ones, yep. <laughs> what do you say? We're stupid, mate. <laughs> Hilarious. Brilliant. Yeah, well done. Student humour. I'm not going to have a student, Rick. Oh, come on. Go I'm not touching stu a student with a barge pole. You never have, no. But Think students. Think of the cheap cider. What am I going to say to a student? About? I don't know anything about anything. Oh dear. Right, I'll ask you some questions. Come on, Ricky. Well, hang on, let me ask. Are you still there? We are still here, yeah. What, what do you mean, we? we? Listen, it's not an orgy, love. I don't know what you think you're after here. No, it's just me, darling, sorry. <laughs> All right, it's a meal and 25 quid and then you're off home. All right, then, sorry. All right, unless you get lucky. Okay. <laughs> now then, let me ask you a question. No, no they're Ricky. on the line, they're cheeky. Okay, right, uh, look, look, just do a favourite band first, surely. All right, yeah, favourite band. What's your favourite band? My favourite band is Ash. Ash. Yeah. Ash? What? You don't know anything about that, have you? Do you like Aswad? <laughs> they're all right. Yeah, they're not bad. Oh, okay, right. Okay. Um, right, ask your question then, quick. Um, uh, all right, what's your name? What's your name? Charlie. Charlie. Charlie, yeah. Ridiculous name. Um, Thanks. When, uh, when you go to a club, um, do you like, do you like dress up? Yes. Well, let me, no, let me be a bit specific. When you go out, do you like dressing up as Steve's mother? No. <laughs> right, you see, you're not right for him. You're not, you're, you're, you're not, you're not really matched then, are you? Um, okay, this is it. Let's just cut through the bullshit, right? Do you think looks are, say, as important as personality? 
Well, no, 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 we don't think so, no. Right, well, it doesn't matter Definitely because not. his personality is rubbish as well. You've spoken to him, he's got no personality, he's basically a crap case. person. All rasty, idiot, and he's ugly. So, oh, I'm sorry, right. I'm going to save you from a fate worse than death, Charlie. I'm going to have to say no. It's like the blocks in my bloke, really, I mean... Uh, really? The blocks yeah. in your bloke? Hey, I don't know, there be none of that. You're trying to get clever now. He's, he's, just, he's, just he's, he's tried that once, block, <laughs> blocks in his bloke, and it... But can we send her a blankety-blank checkbook and pen? Oh, we can. I think you deserve a BBC pen, Charlie. Would you like one? We'd love one. Okay. Listen, well, to be honest with you, Alan Hobbs, she'll do. Seriously, I, you know, because it's getting late. Yeah. And you may as well. Hey, she may as well. I mean, what do you think, Rick? No. What? No, she seems really nice, and it's no. We've got to find someone with absolutely no sta- Hold on, though. I just thought of something. You'll have anything, won't you? Well. And Hobbs. No, I got standards. <laughs> Fair play. 0500 110 100. That's the number you need tonight if you want a blind date with Ricky Gervais's best mate, Steve. <laughs> You What's like that name? one, don't What's you? What's my name? <laughs> uh, well, What's my name? I'll be honest, you probably saw him uh, Well, I'll tell you there. what, yeah. I mean, that's a very, very strong point in his favour, I uh, think. He can you know, groove. He can dance. Yeah. You should see that wrist action. I, yeah, I know. I've, well, I've had a lot of practice. <laughs> 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 um, uh, but listen, it's not just the grooving, Rick. Come on, oh, Rick. it's so easy. Isn't it? It's, it's, no, it's it's a, it was a beautiful it's interpretation the... of the Snoop ears. Yeah. Rick, what about? You what know, about I mean, the there must be some other selling points, Rick. Come on, because you you are selling yeah. me down the river a bit. Yeah? Right. Okay. Some good points. You're young. Yeah. You're not in prison. Go on. Well, I've only known you a year. Come on, there must be something. You're not in prison. Well, I'm quite a catch with Steve tonight, but, um... 25, 40 quid. Put it up to 40 quid. Yeah, I'm, 40, not, I'm not made of money, quid, Rick. Then, go on. 30 quid. Nine <laughs> minutes we have to do this before the news, so... Nine uh, minutes is more than enough for Steve, yeah. isn't it? I'll tell you what. <sighs> so, Steve, yeah. it's looking grave, isn't it, really? It's looking what? It's looking grave. Yeah, we've got, we've got one last chance. We have one this last chance. Yeah, and it's Wayne. He's on the phone from Manchester. <laughs> Wayne, are you with us? Wayne. All right, mate. All right. How's it going? Wait a minute, right. I'll stop you there, Gervais. What? No, are you, are you, are you up for this, are you, Wayne? Up for uh, a blind date with Steve? Yeah, much for anything. Excellent. Brilliant. Brilliant. I'll stop you there. <laughs> what? He's a fella. Yeah. You all right, Wayne? He might just fancy a pint. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Where's I'll tell you, once he sees me, he won't want, he won't want to drink anything, eat anything. <laughs> I'll tell you, all, he'll only have one thing on his mind. Yeah. Get out. <laughs> yeah, no, no, he's, he's, he's up for it. So, uh... He you know. sounds keen to me. Yeah. <laughs> He's right, a, okay. A, I, you know, I'm heterosexual, Rick. He's Steve, Steve, you've got no chance with either sex, so it won't make a difference. <laughs> Why restrict yourself? In fact, I'm I'm thinking you probably shouldn't restrict yourself to the human race. <laughs> and if Wayne's up for it, he's warm-blooded, he's human, he's from Manchester, I know. He's obviously got a sense of humour, He's obviously very yeah, important. He's, yeah, wait till he sees him, he'll lose that straight away. <laughs> well, I've got to ask you a few, uh, few questions, Wayne. Go on, then. So, do you like walking on the beach? Maybe in the sunshine, maybe in the rain. Do you like, do you like poetry, for example? Yeah. Yeah, do you like, do you, I mean, what's your favourite band? Do you my like favourite poet? No, what's your favourite band? My favourite band? Yeah. It's got to be the one and only Oasis. Oh, Steve loves Oasis, don't yeah, he? Yeah, it's got I've, to be. <clears throat> never, I've never heard him. No, I, mm, I, <laughs> oh, he loves Oasis. <laughs> I don't, you know. Oh, what's your favourite food? Do you, do you like Aswad? Aswad? Yeah. Shine. Shine like a star. Oh, he does. Oh, oh he knows. No, no, you know he could that even one. sing the chorus for us, oh, can you wait? Come on, shine can you sing like the chorus? Star. Come on and shine. Oh. Shine like a star. Yeah. Shine oh, like oh, a star. oh, oh this is a match made in no, I've are. never liked Aswad. I've oh, always thought they were a bit weak, sort of kind of cold reggae. I've never liked it. <laughs> oh, oh, fantastic. <laughs> oh. So, um, you're quite open minded, are you, Wayne? Uh, at the moment I am, yeah. Yeah, you, you mean you'll try anything, won't you? Yeah. Yeah, Once. excellent. <laughs> did, you, did you like to experiment? You know, sort of like push the boundaries back? Yeah. Fantastic. Right. Looks okay. like we've got a winner. No, I, right. I, I, no, okay, fantastic. well, it's Forget the BBC pen, we've run out anyway. You'll, you'll have to come down to London, though. It's, no, it's oh. I thought, I thought to be safe, maybe you could meet somewhere, um, uh, you know, uh... Well, like... Ricky, we've got this Skegness Riverboat trip all set up, chicken oh, in a basket I laid on. Work, hey? will, will you come back, um, uh, next week and tell us how it went? Yeah. Oh, fantastic, Wayne. Brilliant! brilliant. Well, I don't think it'll work See, out. I told you. No, I don't think it'll work out. Total result, Ricky! I don't think it'll work Oh, yes. I don't think it'll work out. So, Ricky, we made it. Can you I believe it? I knew we would. No, I never let him down. That is excellent. Looking forward to the date? 
Well, I, 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 when, when is it? Because I, I can't make it. Well, you don't know when it is yet. No, I can. I'm You'll be alright. You'll be alright. I was thinking it's, not, it's not what I was looking for. You know, I was looking for sort of, you know, a kind of Monica Lewinsky type, you know? Yeah. Sort of person that you know what you're going to get before you even start. Yeah, <laughs> there'll be no embarrassing yeah. things like, oh, Monica, I've got this idea. Would you mind? Yeah, well, exactly. She's already yeah. at it. I've got, I've got some cigars. Well, actually, no, I've got a packet of camels. Will that do? <laughs> <laughs> We could actually probably stump up for a couple of Radio 1 knee pads, though, couldn't we? Yeah, I, take I, away I with him tonight. Yeah, what kind of a mind she got? I know. Stephen Wayne. I'll tell you what, Alan Hobbs is famous for it. Is she? Is it. Have you still got those playing cards? <laughs> those playing cards? Yeah. yeah. Is Wiley on them as well? <laughs> Wiley? Yeah. Oh, oh dear me. The poor, the, the, I tell you, Wiley, the poor, the poor man's Anne Hobbs. Really? Don't you think? Well, that's very nice. That's oh, very nice. Isn't that? That's a touching compliment. We can't it? come back, can we? You can't you, you, ever you're again. It's going after 12. I know, yeah. So, oh. so this is it, a fond and final farewell. Well, it was short lived. Yeah. Story of my life. Yeah. Well, um, I'll see you all. Thanks for listening. See you later then. Cheers. Bye. Yeah. Well, in that case. Slade, it is then. No, Black Sabbath. Slade, Slade. I'll get lost. Slade. Slade. And if we're counting Led Zeppelin, if we're counting, if we're counting Led Zeppelin, obviously Led Zeppelin. No. Black Sabbath. Sabbath are better than Zeppelin. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, come on. No, no, you're wrong. You're you're having a mental aberration if you think. Go on, give me an example. Well, there's a fantastic story. Uh, Just the ludicrous, ludicrousness. Is that right? Where's that word? That's a word now. Ludicrosity. That'll do. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, uh, Tony Iommi was asked when they hit big in America what it was like for Black Sabbath, and he said, "Oh, it was mad. We went back to the hotel, and there was like ten Satanists sitting outside the hotel room, all dressed in black with black candles. So we blew the candles out and sung Happy Birthday to them." (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So that is But Led Zeppelin said. And I think that sums it up. Are you squeezing your lemon? Yeah. I'm <laughs> squeezing my little lemon. I'm putting my little uh, cocktail <laughs> chipolata on the table yeah. between two pickled onions and seeing if that... And the juice is running down it. your leg. I, yeah, and the juice <laughs> is running down my leg, indeed. Well, we've embarrassed ourselves. Yes. I think, in a way, we might have embarrassed XFM. And, and I, I know... Certainly, mainly, we've embarrassed... Yes. London. London, yeah. So, who, who have you just, you've just had someone on the phone or on the fax saying, oh, what about the sneaker... I for the sneaker pimps, if they're from Birmingham. I didn't know if they were are they from, I don't know if sneaker pimps are from Birmingham. Yeah, but but I, I think they are. Them small potatoes compared to... to the Sabbath. Yeah, the yeah, Sabbath. Exactly. What is this, what is this obsession with Sabbath? I always thought Sabbath were a bit of like a joke rock band. Like, oh, oh, I, I can't believe you said that. Led Zeppelin, is that like the mould of the first rock gods, the greatest... Um, British band of uh, what? Yeah, what? who have Led Zeppelin got an influence? You know what they've influenced that whole brand of poodle rockers with big hair, like extreme. That's what they've influenced. That's not their Whereas fault. Whereas the Sabs, their influence has been really heavy, great rock bands like Nirvana and things like that. Uh, you know, Sabbath are the best thing to come out of Birmingham, Ricky. Without it's any as simple as that. that. Right, okay, no, right, okay. Uh, let's do it up to Thursday. I want proper votes, right, uh, on faxes, right? Who is the best? The most influential? The best? The best band out of Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath. Simmons You're playing with fire. Then it's then like comparing out. Bobby Davro to Tommy Cooper. Oh, it's, it's, oh. It's honestly. I don't think so. I, I think, believe it is. I think it's like comparing, uh, let's see. Um, Go on. Um, Europe. Right. <laughs> uh, with Bernard Butler. Bernard Butler being Led Zeppelin. What? Like what? Hey. Oh, that's a bit abstract. But they're yeah. both completely crap. Yeah. <laughs> oh, whereas Bobby Davro's brilliant. Take <laughs> <laughs> you since tomorrow we're going to have a debate. It's like comparing something I don't like very much with something I like a lot more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you well, like the Smiths, so you're airing on the side of soft, aren't you? That's whereas nice. Sabbath are hard. Yeah, well, I like hard stuff as well. So you like Europe and Heat Beyond Rapport? No! <laughs> Is that what you said? Other way you hate, <laughs> you hate Tommy <laughs> Cooper, but you what? love Bobby Davro. How's that work? No! Well, that's what they're you're twist- saying! They're twisting it, Claire! Ca- Please vote for me! <laughs> I'm by myself in the no. studio. 0171 580 Never vote for it! Led Zeppelin's better than Black Sabbath! <laughs> 0171 We've got ten more minutes to Hold leave on. Canfield. Let's ask Canfield. 
Campfield. 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 Matt is there. Oh, no, Go and get him. He's We're in... just going to get him. Yeah. Anyway, Matt, that's a bit small talk here. Yeah. So you've enjoyed yourself today, have you? Yeah, I have. Yeah. But yeah. He's wrong. He's he so is wrong, wrong, isn't he? Yeah, he's yeah. having an average. Oh, is he? He hasn't been listening. Right. Have you, right. have you heard what we've just been doing? I've uh, got no Okay, right. Ian Campfield. Right. Look, don't completely don't look, impartial. Look, seriously, you two look away, right? Right. Okay. okay. I'm going to ask you, don't know what, what we think or who thinks, just ask the question, right? Right. In your opinion, yeah. who is the most most influential band right, on the on the world rock scene. Right. Don't don't give me any clues. No, no, no we're seriously. not saying anything. Who, in your opinion, is the most influential band? It's uh, the better band for you and who influenced more people out of Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath. And what on what scene? The rock scene. They're yeah, all rock the scene. The most influential. In, you know, in um, you know, rock Just and pop. The best band. Yeah. The best band. It's got to be Led Zeppelin. Yes. Yes. yes! 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 You're, I'm taking no! that. Yes, no! that's it. That's it. That's You're it. scum. That is it. Because, You're because, scum. Because, because Led Zeppelin were Led Zeppelin when they weren't. They folded up Black Sabbath. Great albums of Ozzy Osbourne. Twenty years after that, I'm afraid they went crap. You didn't stipulate the black, the Ozzy Osbourne people. You said, if we asked Camfield, that would be definitive. You said it, you laid it on the line, we didn't give him any clues. Camfield said, Led Zeppelin, that's it, I'm happy with that. Play a record. It's right, stupid. this is incredible. Don't even Why? talk to them. Why? David, David, what's David, happened? David Keenan here. took all these, right? Um, uh, Led Zeppelin got every vote except one. Every single person was for Led Zeppelin, except one, and that wasn't a Black Sabbath, that was for <laughs> Dave Keenan. Out of those two, said, I'll vote Dave Keenan, give him his own show. <laughs> right. So Zeppelin got all the votes, Sabbath got none, Dave Keenan got more than Black Sabbath. <laughs> Thank you. It's official. For the discerning punter, of course, Black Sabbath will always be there. But for people that just say, you know... For people who haven't got Bonnie Tyler. People who can't <laughs> use the phone. I like the phone, but I, like the phone, but I can't use the phone. <laughs> No, of course, people <laughs> can use modern technology. It's Led Zeppelin. Excuse Thank me you. a minute. Who did you say, Sturgis? Uh, well, I was going for Sabbath. Right, Sabbath. And did you do the Friday Rock Show on Radio One? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I rest right. my case. No, well, I rest well, my case. Yeah, my yeah, case. Well, yeah, so no, do and I. so do I. And so do I. <laughs> I can shout <laughs> like I think I do. Well, I think I laid my case before <laughs> you, and I rested it there, and it was lounging. Right? The fingerprints of a koala bear are so similar to that of a human being, that if they were found at the scene of a crime, the police would not be able to tell the difference. <laughs> is that, well that is the fact that I that remember. That is the fact. And is it, is it true? Well, well it depends what, what it, sort of crime I mean, it where, was really. You, but you got this from a reliable source. Of course, the internet. So let me get this right. The fingerprints of a koala bear are so similar to those of a human being. Yeah. That if they were found at the scene of a crime, the police would think that a human had committed that crime. Yeah. Or oh, vice versa, maybe. What kind of a crime is that? The great koala bear, um, eucalyptus robbery. Right. Yeah. Hmm. So yeah. they've they've come in, right? The, all the this, all the police have come in, the detectives, right? Quinces come strolling about half hour later, and they go, "It's all right, Quince. We've solved this one. This is obviously a human being." He goes, "Oh, is it? Oh, is it?" They go, "Well, pff, yeah, of course it is. It's, there's a bloke here. He's been bludgeoned to death with a lead pipe." in the conservatory. He's a big lad, it's probably a six foot bloke, and he's hit him with the right hand by the window. Quincy goes, oh, it's a six foot bloke, was it? Oh, yeah. And then, yeah, right, he goes, oh, right, no, it's just that, you know, you've ruled out the possibility of five koala bears standing on each other's shoulders, have you? <laughs> in a long coat. <laughs> yeah, with the trilby on, obviously. The yeah. bottom one's the fat one going, oh, where are you going? And the top one's going right, left, and they've snuck, they've they got, snuck past the security guy. Got, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they've got... He's just, he's just <laughs> said, Go on through, sir. Yeah, yes. go on through, yeah. It's a press. Yeah. They've gone press, right? And they've gone in there, right? And they've got this bloke, they've got his confidence. They've got a false moustache, obviously. Of course they have. Like, like you're growing, yeah. right? And they're going, all right, mate. And they go, oh, what's that over there? <laughs> the top one's got, and the bottom one's holding it all up. Then they just scatter. They just scatter, dump leave, the coat. They just leave a coat, like an empty coat with a hat on it. Right? And Quin and the and thing is, I think Quincy knows because he's already rounded them up and he's got a confession out of them. Right. And so he's just being really smug. And they're going, oh yeah, yeah, it's a bloke, yeah, it's a human being, yeah. Well look Quincy, the fingerprints, yeah, let's have a look at these and they go, doll. They're yeah. just, they're just like those, they go, yeah. Right, and he, but the thing is, I think that there's a Mr. Big. Do you? Yeah, mm. but he's up the tree getting stoned on Euclid's going, uh, he's getting all the, he's counting his cash. He's just up there hanging loose, catching it, counting his cash. He's fingerprinted, he's got an alibi, 
and these pawns. They're not going to pin anything on Mr. Big. They couldn't. Because you know, he's I... used those koala pawns. And he's got, <laughs> yeah. He's a devilish fiend. Yeah. And they've done all the work. The little fat one, he's got, he's got bad shoulders now. Yeah. He's got four on him. And the tall one's got the little head with the trilby. He was at the top because he can wield a, like a lead pipe. Yeah. Probably, or the hat fitted him. The hat. Have you got that letter? Ah, yes. No, I have. No, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait till later about okay, this. I'll There's a great letter. I'll wait till later. Well, I'll play a song then. Oh, please do. But, well, be careful. I mean, if you're a police officer, if you're listening, if you're currently investigating a crime, think. you've got fingerprints, you think you've sewn it up, think again. Just think. Just, just, uh, have never. Have you looked at the koala angle? Expect the unexpected. Sorry, I just can't understand it. I, I well, don't think it's my kind of humour. The, the competition is this, Steve. I think, you know, I think you're ooh, a bit wacky. <laughs> don't really understand. You're frightened, aren't you? I just, mm. You're frightened. You're and, and these people, not your phone up, but come into the studio. I know, I know. You were scared last week, weren't mm. you? Mm. He came in the week as well. I, you know, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm kind of like Barrymore, that sort of thing. I think he's really funny. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Barrymore. No. Uh, sort of still a black. St you know, Steve, you're funny. But nowhere near as funny as me. So I, just with the calls and the competitions. Just, mm. well, the competition, I think look, it just sort of goes over my head. Look, look, the competition is this. Oh, sorry to Mark Adams as well. Nick cut you off and he's a regular listener. The competition is this. Someone phones up for no reason at all. Yeah. Don't give the reason away. Send me a CD is the winner. <laughs> it's, it's the way you don't even use grammar. <laughs> you There's no need. Just use <laughs> words. <laughs> yeah. You, you take the words that you say out of these bags. <laughs> yeah. And is that how you form your sentences and your competition <laughs> process? I don't think of it as forming sentences. I think of it as when my head gets hot, I have to cool it down. And speech is the best thing. It's sort of like, do you know what I mean? I walk on the street and I, go, I, go, I, go, I, go, and I have to talk and it sort of cools it down. I've got some people who've called. Uh, John <laughs> has called from North Harrow, Louise from Clapton, Claire from Hendon, Paul <laughs> from Maida Vale. Yeah. I don't know why they called. No reason. I don't know who they are. No reason. Going back to the competition that you set, yeah. um, I like that one. We, we've had a fella, Carl, from Catford. Yeah. Now, he phoned up to try and offer us a suggestion as to how we can receive money for free by begging for it without breaking the law. Oh, he's the winner then. And, is he? Yeah. Well, right. Hmm. So, uh, the so fella, the fella on the phones, the fella's man in the phones even managed to get a CD out of him, persuaded him to send yeah. us a CD. Yeah, he would be the winner anyway. Even if you hadn't sent the CD. Yeah. I'm just, I, I I'm, just trying to, I'm just trying to pick a song here. I haven't worked out my next song. I, 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 Gervais, I'll do that for a while. Gervais. What? I, I don't want to work here anymore. <laughs> it's, it, yeah, be, is that all right? Do you mind if I... No, no, no. There'd be plenty of people wanting to fill your shoes. And think of all the old newspapers I'll get out of it. Um, was on the tube earlier, mm. Gervais. Now, I know that you walk into work. Yeah. Well, I do have to take the tube. Uh, there's a guy on there, there's a kid on there, sat opposite me, 10, 11 maybe, all right? Um, and he looks quite normal. 12 at the most. No looking kid, you know, just got the sort of, you know, street clothes on or whatever. But, um, looks perfectly normal. He's not the kind of kid that's gonna get bullied at school, you know, just normal looking kid. Except, Gervais, he was wearing a deer stalker hat. <laughs> <laughs> now, What's happening there? <laughs> oh, I love that. Do you that. know what I mean? When he goes to school on Monday morning, if he's wearing the hat, they're just going to kick the hell out of him. All right, we'll, we'll pass that on to Howard. We'll keep that. And, uh, as I said, anyone wants to you know, get hold of Howard, do it via us. He doesn't want to give out his address, obviously. Um, might attract mad people. Mm -hmm. Um, now, I read in the paper years ago, um, there was this guy, right, and he was from Sheffield. And, um, uh, he was at the birth of Christ. He'd lived before as a cow. Okay. <laughs> but, yeah. But, that's not all. Another bloke who also lived in Sheffield saw this up and said, I don't believe it, so was I. <laughs> right? So there was a chance of that. I go, yeah, I was a cow as well. And they started, they started this cult called Cattle for Christ. It's just two of them. <laughs> but I just imagine people going to say, oh, I was a donkey. Good, did you see it? No, I was, oh, there was like a beam in the way. I couldn't see. And nor could I. No, I was, well, I was being milked. Couldn't see a thing. <laughs> Where were you? I was a chicken. So you saw everything. No, I was, oh, that was not. I was so close. Hold three for the prodigal son. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, would be beautiful. Yeah, no, well, I, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sure there are all kinds of societies like this, and uh, perhaps if you're a member of one, then we'd like to, uh, to, to, you know, to find out all about you. Two idiots talking nonsense on the radio. It's a cult. Yeah, of course it is. Well, I am. Challenge oh. has been set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, Matt didn't know this, but I'm a bit of a Sabutio buff myself. He comes <laughs> in here all out with his sheepskin on, right, <laughs> with his little team under his hand and his roller, and I go, I play Sabutio. He goes, I said, I do, yeah. So, uh, well, the gauntlet was laid down. It was, yeah. We've got, uh, Chile against England, but I, I, unfortunately, I haven't got, I haven't got Chile, so I brought in Morocco instead. Not Morocco, <laughs> what, <laughs> Colombia. Colombia. <laughs> Colombia, yeah. So if any of the defenders mess up, I can always shoot one of them. Yeah, yeah, of course. And that's going to be live, it's 10 minutes each way, at 20 to 3 in the we XFM round. We are actually yeah. doing a proper football match, yeah. Yeah. a video football match yeah. on XFM this afternoon. Kick off at 20 to 3, so it's 10 minutes each way. Yeah, yeah. And, and we'll, we'll be dipping in yeah. occasionally to see The little boy go. Fraser's is going to be the referee. Marvellous. He's the only one that can fit on the pitch and run round. <laughs> of course. Without, without disturbing any of the players. Of course. It's a work Genius. And uh, I've, I've picked my team. Have you? Yeah. Already? Yeah, England I'm having. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I've got this, uh, there go. look at him, look at it, look at his face, Gascoigne here, he's so pleased, look at him there, he's only an inch high, but look at it, I've got Gascoigne there, Incy, Batty, um, this semen there, I don't know I've got there, it's all over Nigel Martin, who's in gold. <laughs> um, and, uh, uh, I'm going to put a little there, um, but I've not mine, Matt brought it in, you filthy... Um, <laughs> so, anyway, we're going to... Apparently, for goalkeepers' choice, though, most women prefer flowers to semen. So, really? Yeah. Oh, Matt! What? Uh, uh, oh, there's some of the crowd... And it's, it's off. Uh, we're away. Okay, it's, it's a beautiful thing. He's moving down the pitch. pitch. He's gone oh, to the... Oh, no. no it's it's, it's Chilly now. Oh, oh, oh. Chilly on the break. Oh, oh, oh foul. it's a foul. It's a filthy, dirty foul. 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 Headbutt. England, oh, the, the crowd went like that much. And uh, he's just went up there. There he is. He There's flicked a plastic man. Barry Spinnaker there and little Tommy Tomkinson. Yes. The, uh, Jimmy little... Twizzler. Oh, there he is. Oh, but they've oh, given it away it straight away. away. It's, a, it's, a number, it's the number 11 there. And he's, he's running all the... Oh, oh, it's a goal kick. Oh, the... okay. It's a goal kick. There's a little boy Fraser there on his horn. Right? <laughs> on his high horse. Half time. <laughs> Half time. Half time. That's it. No, we'll be back in a minute. That's ridiculous. Riley. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is stupid. We can have a penalty shootout, though. I nearly sprained myself, and I had to stop in mid-swing. <laughs> That's happened before, though. <laughs> we will be back at the exit. Mum, I don't want any tea. I'm busy. You're very good with your fingers on. Right after this. <laughs> well, uh, Claire, uh, it's, I'm England are down to ten men. I had to pull one of my players off at half time. That's very kind of you. My, my boys only get oranges. <laughs> I used to do that to mine, but they wouldn't put the tights on and have the bag over their heads. But here we go. Here we go. And it's our, oh, look at that lovely ball there. A huddle type ball into nowhere in particular. Um, oh, it's Chile again. They're, they're two out there in my, oh, they found his own player. They missed it completely. England move up there. And it's a dirty foul. It's a dirty foul. I'll take it. Quite, quite a dangerous area. He's moving to, he's not. Oh, here we go. I've oh, never been in such close proximity to you, Ricky. England in possession again. Oh, look at this move here. It's like you have to oh, oh, they're, they're keeping hat. it. They're playing with the ball oh. now. Uh, oh, oh, it's a foul. It's a foul. They're gonna, he's going to take it quickly. It's there. Ricky, you've got something to tell us. What? <laughs> in your role as head of speech, yeah. you said you were going to speak. Oh, no, no. I've got a, a fact <laughs> through about a new club. It's, it's a club I'd... Um, I've already heard about it. It's called the Chill Club and it's um, upstairs um, at the King's Head and it's sort of really laid back and you go in and sit on scatter cushions and be hippie and, and chill out and drink till one and stuff and uh, they have like little acoustic sessions and um, that's uh, this Saturday, Saturday the 31st. Wait, I think it's happened? every other... I think it's every other Saturday at the King's Head in Fulham. Oh, right, yeah. And uh, um, I've heard good things about it. And it was sold out last week, so I said get there early. Doors are at um, 8.30 and a bar till uh, 1, no entrance after 11 p.m. And uh, it, it's a fiver. And oh, it's meant cool. to be really cool. I sit down, sort of in a trip, hoppy, folky, portis, heady, jangly sort of stuff. Right up your street, Sergis. Not Ben's though, he likes clubbing, doesn't he? Late clubs with like loud music. And, he does, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. He get, goes Bolte to Bolte didn't come out of Birmingham. Yeah, and talking about that, I mean, I st no one has phoned to confirm or deny. The I Bolte heard the dish, thing, so. whether, not the actual dish, not the pot, not the lump of clay, but the stuff in it, the particular blend of herbs and spices that we now know as Bolte. Originated yeah, in, in Birmingham. Birmingham. I'm ruling it as valid. Maybe yeah. he's right. Hold on, no, because it's not the blender spot. It is the fact that it's called Bolty because you eat it out of the pot. And that, I think he's right. You're embarrassing yourself now, Gervais. Oh, God, I'm backtracking. But thinking about it, yeah, it's not the ingredients. It's the important thing is that it's cooked in that. And, of course, they didn't invent that there. They 
I See, he's right, Sturgis. Well, in that case... Slade it is, then. No, Black Sabbath. Slade, Slade. I'll get lost. I Slade. And if we're counting Black Led Sabbath. Zeppelin, if we're counting, Le if we're counting Led Zeppelin, obviously Led Zeppelin. No. Black Sabbath. Sabbath are better than Zeppelin. Oh, oh no, 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 no. Oh, come on. No, no. You're wrong. You're, you're having a mental aberration if you think. Go on, give me an example. Well, there's a fantastic story. Uh, just the ludicrousness. Uh, ludicrousness. Is that right? Where's that word? Yeah, that's the word now. Ludicrosity. That'll do, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, the, Tony Iommi was asked when they hit big in America what it was like for Black Sabbath, and he said, oh, I was mad. We went back to the hotel, and there was like 10 satanists sitting outside the hotel room, all dressed in black, with black candles. So he blew the candles out and sung happy birthday to them. Oh! <laughs> yeah. He, so but, that is But Led Zeppelin said, And I think that sums it up. Are you squeezing your lemon? Yeah. <laughs> I'm squeezing my little lemon. I'm putting my little uh, cocktail, chipolata, on the table, yeah. two pickled onions, and seeing if that. And fat the juice is running down your leg. I, yeah, and the juice yeah. is running down my leg, indeed. Well, we've embarrassed ourselves. Yes. I think, in a way, we might have embarrassed XFM. And, and I, I know. Certainly. Mainly, we've embarrassed yes. London. London. Yeah. XFM 104.9. It's just gone quarter past three on a Wednesday afternoon. It's the request hour. It's your choice of music. I think we'll have some more music now. This is for Gary O'Donnell, who says chocolate is the best thing to come out of Birmingham. I can't say the brand name because then apparently I'm advertising. But it's uh, that chocolate. That yeah, bullmill. Yeah. That's not yeah. like you to advertise, is it, Sturge? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. No, no. 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 I wouldn't, I wouldn't, no. no, Sturge, I wouldn't say you advertise. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. No. no. I wouldn't no. say that. No. I, I mean, you don't want to be pampered. No. 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 The it's sky's like, the limit. The yeah. sky is the limit. You know, uh, no. <laughs> exactly. It's like you've won the lottery. It's the dry wife weep that I like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Public enemy. Anthrax. Bring the noise. That's for uh, Gary O'Donnell this afternoon on the request hour. It's XFM 104.9. It's just gone 20 past three. Are we going to give away your uh, prize that you bought in Yeah, specially? we have a winner. Mark Adams from Harrow. Oh. With his undercracker explanation. Yeah. He's the same one that dropped off Duffo. Is it? He just called. Well, he's a star. He's won it. He'll be able to... Uh, <laughs> Gary's voice check challenge. How good are you at imitating comedian Michael Barrymore? Try this famous catchphrase. All right. You'll be able to do that. <laughs> yeah, You'll yeah, be able to impress that. your friends and yeah, family. That's yeah. just it's like, I can do it. All right. See? Yeah. Where is he? Where, where's it? Barrymore? Yeah. Where, where is he? Well, he's at the back. Are, you, are, are you all right at the back? Then? And obviously Norman yeah. Collier. Wow. Norman Collier. That's Norman Collier there. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Hey, my name is Michael Caine. So, yeah. Hey, yeah. It's like he's in the studio. Actually, it is nice to see you, Claire, to see you, um, nice. Oh, oh these are great that's tips. Brilliant. Uh, <laughs> he didn't just, he didn't, well, I have to keep Why taking off playing? the pop shield. <laughs> I know, because I can hit it and be Norman Collier. All right. Um, that really hurts uh, my uh, ears. I believe if they, if they were going to rename this book, they'd call it the Bible too. The good book. <laughs> the yeah. Good book. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. a beautiful thing. And Mark Adams didn't just like, wasn't grateful for it. He claimed it. He said, <laughs> yes, I, I, I <laughs> claimed that book. Really? Yeah. He phoned up with us. Quite address. rightly. He actually, is the winner. Actually, because we'd, we'd forgotten about it, actually. So, so thanks yeah. for reminding us. No, that's great. Yeah. That's yours. Have we got his address, have we? Yeah. Yeah, yeah fine. Marvellous. I've completely lost my train of thought now. What's oh, going to do next? What's the chances of that? Usually you're so slick, you know where you are, together. Good links, you can string a sentence together. No, um, it's, it's obviously <laughs> no, awful. somebody else. Let's, let's Jackie Bramble. Let's leave the studio and see how good Claire is. We'll leave the studio. Go on. Right. Yeah, if you would. Uh, We're off. This. Yeah. This is going to be pretty good, I imagine. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'll see you in a minute then. Yeah, okay. All right then. See ya. <sighs> No, it's still not working. Wednesday afternoons in the capital with Fluke Atombomb on the request out this afternoon as requested by Phil. I've got my train of thought back. Yeah. It works. Great. Yes. Marvellous. Um, well it's worth waiting for as well. well. It's yeah. going incredibly well. Now, you may remember all this week I've been trailing a very special guest that was going to be joining us this afternoon. Martin Clunes is going to be here. The boy Clunes. Sadly, 
as you've probably noticed, he's not. No. Um, he's a very busy man. Yeah, he's, he's got lot, lots of he's, stuff he's, to do. Yeah, it's all the press to, for the launch in that Terence Higgins um, yeah. trust campaign. Exactly. So, I mean, that's cool with us. And he's going to give us a call on Friday. He is indeed. Which will be brilliant. This week. But, I mean, I've got Matt in instead. Yeah. Uh, he's got big ears. They're beautiful and big. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you smell of booze well, as well. Well, yeah, there yeah. is that, but you know. Hold on, no, I'm not, no, well, yeah, you smell of booze, but uh, we, we meet, we're not saying Martin Clune smells of booze. We, no, we, no, we, we, We're taking reference to his character in yeah. Memo and Badly. Yeah. We're not saying he likes a drink. We're not saying he's like a nonce, but you know, he, 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 he like, might like a drink. We're yeah, not saying not he's, a, I'm not saying he's, he's like, a lush. No, you know, no, a t you know yeah. or a teetotal. But you're saying I reek of ale. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. only because I spill most of it. Yeah, was the it's not my fault. After the you know, after, 18th the, after one, the accident, it was yeah, balancing oh, it on yeah. their backs that didn't I go felt, down too well. I felt well. terrible the other day. Though. Yeah, regular as clockwork on the hour. His right hand starts going, yeah. then his left hand starts going. Yeah, and the, if he's got a beer in it, it goes all over the place. It's a bit messy, doesn't it? Man? Pavlovian yeah. conditioning, though, isn't it? Yeah. Since, since the age of fourteen, <laughs> you can't keep his wrist still. <laughs> <laughs> The best thing to come out of Birmingham, so says um, Steve in Surrey. Ricky, the best thing to come out of Birmingham is yourself when you leave. What? If you were to go to Birmingham tomorrow yeah. oh, and then for the leave day it. and then leave Birmingham the, the next the day, you'd be the best thing to come out of Birmingham. That's a compliment. Excellent. That's not. What, even better than Pig from Pipkins? Presumably. Well, presumably. The best. It says the best. That's it. I don't think you're ever going to leave Birmingham if you go there again after saying that about the people in the <laughs> <No. spot. laughs> no, they They're like... getting a linger squad together at the moment. Luckily, they can't hear us. Because <laughs> they've got no ears. Because the little radio waves that we do just die. Die after That's the true. 25 they go, oh, and that was Mulder and Scott. <laughs> and then it's just quiet. Yeah. Tumbleweeds. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we are the tumbleweeds. <laughs> Carl Graham. <laughs> Gas mask Grimshaw. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, Matt, my head's getting hot again. Oh, yeah. You're impressed. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. fantastic. You Top see, well. Wednesday afternoons at XFM means it's Matt's day. Matt, have you enjoyed yourself today? Yeah, wild horse wouldn't drag me away. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I think you meant to say wild horses, actually. I know what I mean. Sturgis. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> is for the person who phoned or faxed in last week asking for a frente, and we didn't have it. And you said to me, Ricky, you can't say you don't have it, but I honestly didn't have it, but now I have it, so whoever wanted it, it's for you. Excellent. Does that make sense, yeah. what I just said then? Probably, um, you know, so we're tired now. Yeah. You know, to, to the country. <laughs> I can't wait for frente anymore, let's shoot off. So, who, who have you just, you've just had someone on the phone or on the fax saying, oh, about the sneaker... sneaker pimps, if they're from Birmingham. I didn't know if they were are they from, I don't know if sneaker pimps are from Birmingham. Yeah, but I'm, I think they are. Them small potatoes compared to... to the Sabbath. Yeah, the yeah, Sabbaths. Exactly. What is this, what is this obsession with Sabbaths? I always thought Sabbaths were a bit of like a joke rock band. Like, oh, oh, I, I can't oh. believe you oh. said that. Led Zeppelin, is that like the mould of the first rock God, the greatest um, British band of uh, what? Yeah, what? who have Led Zeppelin got an influence? You know what they've influenced that whole brand of poodle rockers with big hair, like extreme. That's who they've influenced. That's not their Whereas fault. Whereas the Sabs, their influence has been really heavy, great rock bands like Nirvana and things like that. Uh, you know, Sabbath are the best thing to come out of Birmingham, Ricky. Without it's any as simple as that. Right, okay, right, okay. Uh, let's do it up to Thursday. I want proper votes, right? I I'm faxes, right? Who is the best? The most influential? The best? The best band out of Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath. Simple You're playing with fire. Then it's then like comparing out. Bobby Davro to Tommy Cooper. Oh, it's, it, it, oh. it's honestly. I don't think so. I, I think, believe it is. I think it's like comparing. Uh, let's see. Um, Go on. Um, Europe, right? <laughs> uh, with Bernard Butler. Bernard Butler being Led Zeppelin. What? Like wow, oh, that's a bit abstract. They're yeah. both completely crap. Yeah. <laughs> oh, whereas Bobby Davro's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> so tomorrow, Ricky, you say tomorrow we're going to have a debate. It's like comparing something I don't like very much with something I like a lot more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but well, you like the Smith, so you're airing on the side of soft, aren't you? That's whereas right. Sabbath are hard. Yeah, well, I like hard stuff as well. So you like Europe and heat going on a bar? No! Is that what you said? Other way you hate, oh, you hate you Tommy Cooper, Cooper, but you what? love Bobby Davro. How's that work? No! Well, that's what they're you're twist, saying! They're twisting it, Claire! They can't, please vote for me! <laughs> I'm by myself in the no. studio, 0171 Never vote for it! Led Zeppelin's better than Black Sabbath! Not better today, by the way, because I've been ill all week with this cold. Yeah, the mucus fairy came in the night, did he? 
<laughs> it's great. Well, it's anyway, yeah. There's this fantastic thing from Bristol University. It was in the Times. Forget hot toddies. The best remedy for a cold is a cup of coffee, according to psychologists at Bristol University. Yeah. The drink yeah. largely eliminated the effects of having a cold. They reported after experiments with 100 volunteers. Trials with vodka had failed to show any be beneficial effects on mood or performance. Were these trials by vodka, by chance, done around the Christmas <laughs> party period? <laughs> Yeah, they've got to make it look good. Oh, and, and the control can be, um, coffee. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, right, exactly. Uh, vodka versus, um, anything. Coffee, yeah. We do our own. Yeah. Definitely. Vodka versus whiskey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's where that gold blend couple was. Always, they never come to the door and go, it's not dribbling <laughs> down. I've just come for some, oh, Jesus. No, wipe your nose, you filthy. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. Because it obviously, uh, you know, um, you, you've been drinking vodka, haven't you? Not the coffee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Pissed in you. It's <laughs> not running down your mouth. Oh, and I, I, I fancied a good cut the. Um, <laughs> Sabbath is like Marilyn Manson. Oh, that's it. Oh, it's no more Radiohead. No way. Yeah. Oh, no. Sabbath no. is like Reef. You're trying Led Zepp is no. like the Foo Fighters. No. No. 0171 580 2000. Who's the more influential British band? Sabbath or Zepp? Come on. It's obvious. The oh. answer's Led Zeppelin. I'll fax you something tomorrow. Okay. That will, uh, tomorrow will all will be revealed. Yeah, okay. It's Black um, Sabbath, Ricky. I seem to have run out of coffee. <laughs> Come in, I've <laughs> Come in, I've got some, oh, sorry. I've, I've been drinking vodka all day. <laughs> <laughs> 071, 580. It's not getting any better. <laughs> 2000. <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of a Led Zeppelin versus Sabbath type quiz. <laughs> yeah, it it's, is, it's, it's it? not a quiz, is it? Yeah, no. Well, it is really, because there is a right answer. There is obviously oh, a right answer. No, no, oh. no. I'm just speaking there. There must be a right the answer. Of, of, of which has been, you know, who has been more influential. We could, we could trace it back. Of course, we're not the people who do From it. From the Midlands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, I'm, I'm, Forgetting the Midlands. Oh, really? Now. We're forgetting just, the Midlands. Just, yeah. uh, you know, out of those two, it doesn't matter where they came from. Oh, it's so a was, bonfire. Who, who is a more influential band on the world rock scene? Sabbath or Zeppelin? Sabbath. Zeppelin. Sabbath. <laughs> Ah, uh, Keenan's two to one. This is two to one. Right, I'll get rid of him now and we'll, we'll be <laughs> evens and let it be on a vote. Oh, one seven one five eight oh two thousand. We've got ten more minutes to leave oh, Campfield. Let's ask Campfield. 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 That is the honour. Go and get him. He's We're in... just going to get him. Anyway, Matt, that's a bit small talk here. Yes. So you've enjoyed yourself today, have you? Yeah, I have. Yeah, but yeah. He's wrong. He's he so is wrong, wrong, isn't he? Right. He's yeah. having an average. Oh, is he? He hasn't been listening. Right. Have you, right. Have, you, have you heard what we've just been doing? I've uh, got no Okay, right. Ian no, Campfield. Right. Look, completely look impartial. Seriously, you two look away, right? Right. Okay. okay. I'm going to ask you, don't know what, what we think or who thinks, just ask the question, right? Right. In your opinion, yeah. who is the most influential band right, on, the, on the world rock scene, right? Don't, don't give me any clues. No, no we're not saying anything. Who, in your opinion, is the most influential band, into, or the better band for you, and who influenced more people, so, out of Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath? And what, and what scene? The rock scene. They're yeah, all rock scene. the most scene. influential. In, you know, in them, you know, rock and the best band. Yeah. The best band. It's got to be Led Zeppelin. Yes! 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 No! yes! yes! You're, I'm taking it. Yes. No. That's it. That's it. That's You're it. scum. That is it. Because You're scum. scum. Because, yeah. because Led Zeppelin were Led Zeppelin when they weren't. They folded up Black Sabbath great albums with Ozzy Osbourne. 20 years after that, I'm afraid they went crap. You didn't stipulate the black, the Ozzy Osbourne people. You said, if we asked Camfield, that would be the bit of you said it. You laid it on the line. We didn't give any clues. Camfield said, Led Zeppelin, that's it. I'm happy with that. Play a record. Don't even talk to the listeners. Right, Sturgis. this is incredible. Don't even Why? talk to them. Why? Dave, Dave, Cloth Dave Cloth 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 took all these, right? Um, uh, Led Zeppelin got every vote except one. Every single person was for Led Zeppelin except one. And that wasn't a Black Sabbath, that was for Dave Keenan. Out of those two said, I'll vote Dave Keenan, give him his own show. Right. So Zeppelin got all the votes, Sabbath got none, Dave Keenan got more than Black Sabbath. Thank you, it's official. For the discerning punter, of course, Black Sabbath will always be there. But for people that just say, you know. For people who haven't got phones, Tyler. People who can't use the phone. I wrote the phone, I wrote the phone, but I can't use the phone. No, of course, people can use modern technology. It's Led Zeppelin. Hey, excuse Thank me you. a minute. Who did you say, Sturgis? Oh, well, I was going for Sabbath. Right, Sabbath. And did you do the Friday Rock Show on Radio One? 
That is uh, practically it from us today. Ricky's stormed out of the studio. Keenan stormed with him to answer the phone. You can come back in again, Ricky. I'll yeah. just, this is my goodbye link. Okay, go on. Um, goodbye. Oh, for today. that's fantastic. Wow. Genius. Well done. All those years. And well done to Led Zeppelin for being voted oh. the greatest band, uh, most influential band out of them. And Black we, Sabbath. tomorrow, Ricky, it's a shame Matt can't be with us, but tomorrow we are going to have like a Gary Crowley Battle of the Bands yeah. type thing, I yeah. think. Like a Why? bit of a demo clash. Why? Why do Because I want to take this a bit further. No. What, Keenan's You have to. I just want to play... It's in fighting mood. Was it? Was it? Was it? See? I, I know, I know, I know, I know. Tomorrow... You think they know. Thank Tomorrow. you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being discerning, intelligent people. Keep the awesome. faxes coming. Um, to Ricky Gervais and Claire and Matt and Dave. <laughs> they like Black Sabbath. <laughs> it's been a pleasure, Matt, having you on the show yes, this afternoon. Can I say something before I go? Well, I'm just going to say, I'm going to play Mazzy Star into right. uh, Ian Campfield, Fade Into You, and this is for Melinda, right. who wants to hear it. So that's what I'm going to be playing. But I just want to say, Matt, thank you. Will that's you all right. Can I say something? Next mm, Yeah. Can I just say to Vanessa, food's not love. It was beautiful. It was a great it's worth, show. worth waiting a week for, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah, it's good. The fingerprints of a koala bear are so similar to that of a human being that if they were found at the scene of a crime, the police would not be able to tell the difference. <laughs> is that, well, that is the fact that I remember. That is the fact. And is it, is it true? Well, well, it depends what, what it, sort of crime I mean, where, it was, really. You, but you got this from a reliable source. Of course, the internet. So let me get this right. The fingerprints of a koala bear are so similar to those of a human being. Yeah. That if they were found at the scene of a crime, the police would think that a human had committed that crime. Yeah. Or oh, vice versa, maybe. What kind of a crime is that? The great koala bear, um, eucalyptus robbery. Right. Yeah. Hmm. So, yeah. they've, they've come in, right? The, all the, this, all the police have come in, the detectives, right? Quince's come strolling in about half hour later and they go, it's all right, Quince, we've solved this one. This is obviously a human being. He goes, oh, is it? Oh, is it? They go, well, pfft. Yeah, of course it is. It's, there's a bloke here. He's been bludgeoned to death with a lead pipe in the conservatory. He's a big lad. It's probably a six foot bloke. And he's hit him with the right hand by the window. Quincy goes, Oh, it's a six foot bloke, was it? Oh, yeah. And then, yeah. Well, he goes, Oh, right. No, it's just that, you know, you've ruled out the possibility of five koala bears standing on each other's shoulders, have you? <laughs> in a long coat. Yeah, with the trilby on. <laughs> Obviously. The yeah. bottom one's the fat one going, Oh, where are you going? And the top one's going, Right. Left and they've snuck, they've they got, snuck past the security guard. Got, yeah, 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 and they've got. He's just he's just said, "Go on through, sir." Yeah, yes. go on through. Yeah, it's a press. Yeah, they've gone press, right? And they've gone in there, right? And they've got this bloke. They've got his confidence. They've got a false moustache, obviously. Of they have. Look, with, like you're growing, yeah. right? And they're going, "All right, mate." And they go, "Oh, what's going over there?" <laughs> the top one's gone, <laughs> and the bottom one's holding it all up. Then they just scatter. They just scatter. Dump the coat. They just leave a coat, like an empty coat, with a hat on it. Right? And Quint, and the thing is, I think Quincy knows because he's already rounded them up and he's got a confession out of them. Right. And so he's just being really smug. And they're going, oh yeah, yeah, it's a bloke, yeah, it's a human being, yeah. Well look Quincy, the fingerprints, yeah, let's have a look at these and they go, oh, they're just, they're just like, oh, they're, yeah. Right? And he, but the thing is, I think that there's a Mr. Big. Do you? Yeah, mm. he's up the tree getting stoned on you because it's going, mm. he's getting all the, he's counting his cash. He's just up there hanging loose, catching it, counting his cash. He's fingerprinted, he's got an alibi, <laughs> and these pawns. They're not going to pin anything on Mr. Big. They couldn't. Because he's I... used those koala pawns in his <laughs> Yeah. He's a devilish thing. Yeah, and they've done all the work. The little fat one, he's got, he's got bad shoulders now. Yeah. He's got four on him. And the tall one's got the little head with the trilby. He was at the top because he can wield. And like a lead pipe, yeah. really. or the hat fitted him. The hat. Have you got that letter? Ah, yes. No, I have. No, I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna wait till later. Okay, I'll, there's I'll, a great letter. I'll wait till later. Well, I'll play a song then. Oh, please do. But well, be careful. I mean, if you're a police officer, if you're listening, if you're currently investigating a crime, think. you've got fingerprints. You think you've sewn it up? Think again. Just think. Just, just. Uh, have never... you looked at the koala angle? Expect the unexpected. 
One from this bag, do you yeah. So that's right. the first bag. So okay. you, you seem to care about what bag it is. is that because the like... bags are quite important. Right, okay. I take one from this bag, yeah. and then I come up with a band name such as, let me see, The Riff Masters. No. Do, just do that one. Take it from any bag, yeah. To do it out of mine. Take it from any one of my bags. See the bag? Yeah. All right. Um, Axial is the first word. Yeah. This is going to be a cool band. Yeah. Axial face. <laughs> Axial yeah. face. <laughs> Good, isn't it? You, you just, you, I come with great ideas, I just, you know, I come in here, I present these ideas and you just ruin them, you just take them in. Read that letter. Mm. Oh, can I just, by the way, before I do that, can I just, uh, mention that there is an email address. Yeah. Um, what show is this? How many shows have we done now? Four, five, five or maybe? six. Anyway, yeah. there is an email address and I'm thinking that lots of our listeners, I'm almost certain, will have access to internet email nonsense. I personally don't understand it, but if you do, then you can write to Ricky, ricky-gervais at xfm.co.uk. Ah, there's a, there's a bit of a drawback with email. Go on. I don't read it. Do you not know how to do no, it? No, I just don't, don't bother. Get one of the lackeys. I, I empty my pigeon all that once every two weeks. Ricky dash gervais at xfm.co.uk. Letter's got more chance. Well, possibly. I like getting letters. Here's a letter. Dear Ricky, blah, 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 responding, things I could do for you. Here's the important, important bit. bit. And uh, this is, by the way, from uh, Siobhan. Yeah. In uh, Siobhan in uh, Wilsdon. Things I could do for you. Uh, <laughs> most, this is a great idea. Yeah. Make you a hat. That's the one I want. Gervais, she can make you a hat. She is a professional hat maker. Yeah. Uh, is it a milliner? Is that the name? Yeah. Uh, but she's a professional hat maker. She can make you a hat. I love it. Gervais. What kind of a hat? Uh, what would you fancy? I see you in a fez. Hmm. No. A little red uh, fez. Oh, I know what I want. Go I want, well, you know, those, those top hats. Those yes. sort of velvety ones. Yes. But squashed down one side. Like a constantly <laughs> of made the top up. <laughs> like you know what I mean? A, like a dino note. Yeah. 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 That'd be beautiful. Beret? Uh, mm, never, no. Beret? What, what kind of a, what is that? What kind of a hat is that? It's a frisbee. It's a beret. It it's, even got a, it's, it's the, it's the, when you, the, some bloke, he does philosophy for a week, or he's sort of doing French, could be, and he's, he comes in to the student union with a beret on and a goatee, and the first thing you do is take it off and throw it out the window. Of course you do. Because you're, you're with the cool people, and he's going, <laughs> oh, that's really funny, isn't it? Yeah. So mature. Yeah. And you go, no, it's not mature, but it's funny. We're just having a laugh. Anyone you see wearing a beret in the student union or in a pub, just pop it off, frisbee it across the... I'll tell you, you will be the most popular bloke in that Use pub. Use like, he's, he's sort of piggy in the middle, you're just throwing it, you know, <laughs> yeah. different people, it kind of bonds the pub. People, yeah. they, they leave the quiz machine, yeah. they come over and they're joining in and you're just throwing, he's screaming, please give me my berry back. In fact, I reckon if you threw it and it hit the hardest bloke in the pub's pint over, he'd look over and they go, who did that? And I go, I did, but he was wearing it. And I go, fair enough, mate. And he... Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. He goes yeah. straight to the guy that was wearing the beret. <laughs> what, what, kind of what kind of a hat is that? It's French. I mean, there's the point. That's the answer. Oh, I, I, I don't want to get you on French, people. No, I know, but all um, I would say to you is he's got no brim. <laughs> you see, that can't be healthy. <laughs> What's, can we get Siobhan in to measure me up for a hat? So, Siobhan, uh, maybe if, if Siobhan's listening, she could give us a call. A mate makes clothes. So well, I, could have the whole, I could have the whole suit done. No, I was just going to mention that. She's got a friend, Catherine. She wants us to mention Catherine. Um, uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, she, Catherine's just setting up a new business, all right? Yeah. So best of luck with that, Catherine. And um, anyway, she can make stuff for you as well. Top hat and tails. Top hat and tails. Gervais, you would look fantastic. I would, not I? We would send you to the Ritz. The little Lord Fauntleroy. Oh, it would be beautiful. And a cummerbund. Oh, what? <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I, but, oh, that would be great. You in a top hat and tails. Lovely. Lovely. Why, why does it matter which bag it is then? It's too complicated. Let's explain in a minute. Okay. You've got tickets to give away to base. We've almost forgotten about it. Yeah. Well, I've got, um, I've got to think of some questions as well. All right. Well, let's just find out what the prize is first. Uh, right. Right. We've got, um, a pair of Gus Gus. Tickets at Yulu for Friday the 30th of February. Right, let me Friday. Can I use hands on that? Yeah. I'll just confirm that they're real. Yeah, of course they're real. I like that fellow on the, um, on the lot lottery. You know, they always go to somebody, a member of the street, or somebody in a panto somewhere. Yeah. To choose the numbers, you know. And I'm just gonna be like that, just checking. I'll go, just, just, just check that that's a real fork. Yeah, don't check too, don't, you've bent it. Right, so. You've bent it, mate. You've bent the fork, <laughs> mate. Now I can't do the trick. Go on. So, two tickets to see Gus Gus at uh, the University of London Union, Mallet Street, London, on Friday the 13th. All right, two tickets there. Yes, bona fide, Gervais. Yeah. What else have you got? Corner shop. All right, we'll just check. Yes. Already both nights sold out. 
That's two, sought after. Two corner shop tickets here, plus Le Rhythm Digital. This is like a real prize it on is our wonderful, show, isn't it? It's wonderful. That's on Wednesday the 4th of March. Again, it's at the University of London Union. All right, two tickets there for them. Two tickets to Catherine Wheel, mate. To see Catherine Wheel. Again, it's at Yulu. And uh, Catherine Wheel plus special guests on Thursday the 26th of February. So, yeah. we've got the tickets there. All right, so we've got, we got uh, six tickets. Right, I've got a question. I've got a question for the first one. Okay, was that Gus Gus? Yeah. All right, so the first one is Gus Gus. The question? A good, cool name there, Gus Gus. Does it matter which bag they would have been in? Right, okay. Yeah, and I'll take any answer. What, yes or no? Yeah, I'll take yes or no. I'd better remind them of the phone number. Please Hold do. on, one minute. Oh, one, seven, one, five, eight, oh, two thousand. Call me! <laughs> <laughs> I forgot I'd done that one. So, uh, yes, two tickets for Gus Gus. The question again, please, Gervais. Does it matter which bag they're in? And again, it, um, it doesn't really matter, yes or no. I just take anything. All right, Catherine um, Will, have you got a question for Catherine Will? Catherine Will. Uh, yeah, when I used to do it, when I, when I was little, and we used to have a Catherine Will, my dad would nail it to the shed, set it in the light. Well, the nail was way too big and tight. You know what I mean? It moved a little bit, and then just... We, what we watched was this thing just burn out. <laughs> yeah. It was more of a sort of like a yeah. Catherine blob. <laughs> Catherine blob. Yeah, and the question is, that's all right, isn't it? It's not so much a question. <laughs> the question is, that's all right, isn't it? And again, I'll accept anything. Right, I'd better remind him of that number again, hold on. Give him the, give him the number. Hold on. We've got Catherine Will tickets to give away yeah. at the University of London. Yeah, Indian. and the question is, not so much a question is, what was it? C uh, Catherine, Catherine, Blom. Catherine Will, blah, blah, um, it's all right. Is that all right? Yeah. yeah, or something like that. Oh, one, seven, one, five, eight, oh, two thousand. <laughs> Call me on it. Right. right. So <laughs> it's going, it's going well, Javier. Yeah, just because, does it matter what's bag in? The answer doesn't matter. Okay. Um, <laughs> Catherine Will, that's all right, isn't it? Right? <laughs> and call the shot. Call All right, now you've got that. Now this is really, this is a gem of a prize. Now already you've sold got out. Two tickets to see Corner Shop. The gig is sold out. We've got Lay with them Digital, a very cool band name. There, they're going to be supporting Corner Shop. It's on Wednesday, the fourth of March. Two tickets to give away. And the question, Gervais, is the Corner Shop in Coronation Street was uh, owned by Councillor Roberts. What was his first name? All right, the number, please, Gervais. Hold on, I've got hold on one minute. I've Wait. Got, Quick, I'll just remind you of the other questions. Yeah. Uh, uh, mm, I can't, mm, I don't really know. Just Gus, right? Would it matter which bag they're in? Right. I'll accept yes or no. Yes. Uh, um, Catherine Wheel, that's all right, isn't it? Again, anything. And Corner Shop. Councillor <laughs> 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 Robert. What was the first name? Oh, number to call. Oh, one, seven, one, five, eight, oh, two thousand. It's the number to call. Catherine Wheel. Corner shop tickets for you. I told well, you. I, must I, say, I told you. I understand. I must say, Gervais, that that was one of the most electrifying radio quizzes I've ever heard. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I think if we we could option that for the telly, yeah. we could get the whole spin-off thing going. A board game as well. Yeah, it would just be beautiful. Oh, I'm, th I'm, th I'm thinking ahead. I'm thinking yeah, ahead. That is just great, Gervais. Oh man, we're just giving away six tickets. Right now, your your idea was a good one. Um, you know, all all um, six. Yeah, so my idea. My idea was to give away all six tickets to the first person to phone up and give us a damn good reason why they should have them. Yeah, that's a bit traditional, though. Yeah, isn't it? it's yeah. sort of like you answer a question right and you win a prize. Yeah, I think this is better. Yeah. But we can do yours if you want. Okay. Okay. So I've got um, ten CDs. Right. To the person who thinks why they should have all six tickets. You confuse me. <laughs> well, I'm going to give ten CDs to the tickets are gone. Right. To the person with the best reason why they should have the t six tickets. Right. But they can't have the six tickets because they've gone. So they're going to get ten CDs. Instead. What's so the number to call? Oh, oh, you caught me out. Hold on, one minute. One minute. Let me just rephrase that. Basically, we've got ten CDs to give away. Yeah. If you can give us a good reason why you should have the tickets. Yeah. Which, which you, you can't have. Old, terps. Old, old newspapers. A lot of my audience carry around bags full of, like, old newspapers going back for a long time. I've no idea why. But everyone that ever speaks to me goes, you Ricky Gervais? Oh yeah, they go, I've got these. And they're all old, I mean, tabloids, uh, and I go, what are the papers for? And they look at me as though I'm mad, so I leave it. Mm. But, I mean, there must be a See, market it's not, there. it's not really the sort of ABC1 category that I think a lot of advertisers are after, is it? Is there an Epsilon Minor category for me? <laughs> the thing, I like them, I like my, um, oh, what's this, for example, right, Steve? Right, this is the sort of quality, right? Um, okay, uh, whoever phones up for no reason at all, okay, um, sends me a CD, <laughs> right? 
right? So call for absolutely no reason at all, right? And don't give your reason to him out there and send me a CD. What? I'll do, I want the winner, right? I'll take caller number. <laughs> Oh, one seven one five eight oh two thousand is the number to call. Tin foil hats. <laughs> Are they trying to steal your mind? <laughs> By tin foil hats. That's the kind of ad you're going to have on this show, gentlemen. Batteries. I've got loads of batteries. Don't use them. That one's that. Uh, that on that. Uh, what's that? What have you got there? Loads of newspapers. Gervais, the phone lines are buzzing. I know, yeah. The, <laughs> the phone lines are buzzing. Yeah. I can't understand it. It's the same when another station gives away a holiday to New York. Yeah. It's the same reaction. Yeah. To, to whatever the hell it was you said. What was your competition? It was a good competition. What was it? The competition was, um, someone's got a phone up for no reason at all. Not give Nick the reason and send me a CD, and they're the winner. <laughs> the phone lines are buzzing. Yeah. Well, it's a good competition. How do you do this? It's a good competition. I cannot compute. Oh, uh, well, if you can't see that is a good prize to win, then there's something wrong with you. Sorry, I just can't understand it. I, I well, don't think it's my kind of humour. The, the competition is this, Steve. I think, you know, I think you're ooh, a bit wacky. <laughs> I don't really understand. You're frightened, aren't you? I just, mm. You're frightened. And, and these people, they're not your phone up, but come into the studio. I know, I know. You were scared last week, mm. weren't you? Mm. He came in the week as well. I, you know, I'm kind of, I'm, I kind of like Barrymore, that sort of thing. I think he's really funny. Yeah. You mean Barrymore? No. Uh, sort of Silla Black. You know, Steve, you're funny. But nowhere near as funny as me. So I, just with the calls and the competitions. This well, the competition I think it just sort of goes over my head. Look, look, the competition is this. Oh, sorry to Mark Adams as well. Nick cut you off and he's a regular listener. The competition is this. Someone phones up for no reason at all. Yeah. Don't give the reason away. Send me a CD is the winner. <laughs> it's, it's the way you don't even use grammar. <laughs> you just no need. Just use words. <laughs> yeah. You, do you take the words that you say out of these bags? <laughs> yeah. And is that how you form your sentences and your competition? <laughs> I don't think of it as forming sentences. I think of it as when my head gets hot, I have to calm it down. And speech is the best thing. It's sort of like, do you know what I mean? I walk on the street and I go, and I have to talk, and it sort of cools it down. I've got some people who've called. Uh, John <laughs> has called from North Harrow. Louise from Clapton. Claire from Hendon. Paul mm. from Maida Vale. Yeah. I don't know why they called. No reason. I don't know who they are. <laughs> Going back to the competition that you set, yeah. um, I like that one. We met a fella, Carl, from Catford. Yeah. Now he phoned up to try and offer us a suggestion as to how we can receive money for free by begging for it without breaking the law. Oh, he's the winner then. Um, is he? Yeah. What? Right. Mm. So, uh, the so fella, the fella on the phones, the fella who's manning the phones even managed to get a CD out of him, persuaded him to send yeah. us a CD. He's to be the winner anyway. Even if he hadn't sent the CD. Yeah. Just, <clears throat> I'm, I, just, I I'm, just trying to, I'm just trying to pick a song here. I haven't worked out my next song. I, 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 I'll do that for a while. Gervais, what? I, I don't want to work here anymore. <laughs> it, it, yeah, be, is that all right? Do you mind if I... No, no, no. There'd be plenty of people wanting to fill your shoes. And think of all the old newspapers I'll get out of it. Um was on the tube earlier, mm. Gervais. Now, I know that you walk into work. Yeah. But I do have to take the tube. Uh, there's a guy on there, there's a kid on there, sat opposite me, 10, 11 maybe, all right? Um, and he looks quite normal. 12 at the most. Yeah, he's an ordinary looking kid, you know, just got the sort of, you know, street clothes on or whatever. But, um, looks perfectly normal. He's not the kind of kid that's going to get bullied at school, he's just a normal looking kid. Except, Gervais, he was wearing a deer stalker hat. <laughs> <laughs> now, What's happening there? Oh, I love that. Do you that. know what I mean? When he goes to school on Monday morning, if he's wearing the hat, they're just going to kick the hell out of him. All right, we'll, we'll pass that on to Howard. We'll keep that. And, uh, as I said, anyone wants to you know, get hold of Howard, do it via us. He doesn't really give out his address, obviously. Um, might attract mad people. Mm. Um, now, I read in the paper years ago, um, there was this guy, right, and he was from Sheffield. And, um, uh, he was at the birth of Christ. He'd lived before as a cow. Okay. <laughs> but, yeah. But, that's not all. Another bloke who also lived in Sheffield saw this I and said, I don't believe it, so was I. <laughs> right? So what's the chance of that? They go, yeah, I was a cow as well. And they started, they started this cult 
called Cattle for Christ. It's just two of them. But I just imagine people going to say, I was a donkey. Because did you see it? No, I was, oh, there was like a beam in the way. I couldn't see. And nor could I. No, I was, well, I was being milked. Couldn't see a thing. <laughs> Where were you? I was a chicken. So you saw everything. No, I was, oh, how it was not I? I was so close. Whole yeah. tree for the prodigal son. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it would be beautiful. Yeah, no, but I, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sure there are all kinds of societies like this, and uh, perhaps if you're a member of one, then we'd like to, uh, to, to you know, to find out all about you. Two idiots talking nonsense on the radio. It's a cult. Yeah, of course it is. Well, I am. Oh, we're going to recreate it. The whole, the tension, the smells, the sights, the sounds, the, the excitement. Hot dogs. The hot dogs, most definitely the, the hot dogs. A challenge has been set. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Matt didn't know this, but I'm a bit of a Sabutio buff myself. He comes <laughs> in here all old with his sheepskin on, right, <laughs> with his little team under his hand, his rolled up, and I go, I'll play Sabutio. I said, I do, yeah. So, uh, well, the gauntlet was laid down. It was, yeah. We've got, uh, Chile against England, but I, I, unfortunately, I haven't got, I haven't got Chile, so I brought in Morocco instead. Uh, not Morocco, <laughs> what they call Colombia. Colombia. <laughs> Colombia, yeah. So if any of the defenders mess up, I can always shoot one of them. Yeah, yeah, of course. And that's going to be live, it's 10 minutes each way, at 20 to 3 in the we XFM Lounge. We are actually yeah. doing a proper football match, yeah. a yeah. YouTube football match yeah. on XFM this afternoon. Kick off at 20 to 3, so it's 10 minutes each way. Yeah, yeah. And, and we'll, we'll be dipping in yeah. occasionally to see. The little boy phrase is going to be the referee. Marvellous. Because the only one that can fit on the pitch and run round. <laughs> of course. <laughs> without without disturbing any of the players. Of course. It's a work of genius. And uh, I've, I've picked my team. Have you? Yeah. Already? Yeah, England, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, no, I've got this, uh, there you go, look at him, look at it, look at his face, Gus Coyne here, he's so pleased, look at him there, he's only an inch high, but look at it, I've got Gus Coyne, Incy, Batty, um, semen there, I don't know that, but that's all over Nigel Martin is in gold. <laughs> uh, 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 I'm gonna put a list there. Um, but I've not mine, Matt bought it in, you filthy. Um, <laughs> so, anyway, we're gonna. Apparently, for goalkeepers, choice though, most women prefer flowers to semen. So. Really? Yeah. Oh, Matt! Well, <laughs> well, so, uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna go and, um, they'll check out the pitch, warm up, and, uh, Matt's And where are we doing it? In the Matt's extra another, lounge? Matt's another point. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and we're a live link, we reference everything, it's going to be amazing, Claire. It's, uh, this is radio, this is what radio's meant to be yeah. like. Yeah, two Football, grown men yeah. playing Sabutio and doing semen puns. That is exactly <laughs> that what radio is, is meant what, to yeah. be. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's cross over live now to the living room just down the corner. Let's, uh, round the corner, down the corridor. You know what I'm trying to say. The crowds are there. Ricky and Matt are there. Are we ready? We're for ready. Kickoff? Let's do it. I I've won the kickoff, Claire, and uh, I'm, I'm starting off, uh, uh, oh, there's some of the crowd, and it's, it's off. Uh, we're away. There it goes. It's a beautiful thing. He's moving down the pitch. It's gone to the floor. Oh, no, it's, it's, it's oh, it's got it oh, oh, oh. on the break. Oh, it's a foul, it's a filthy, dirty foul. England, oh, the, the crowd went like that much. And uh, he's just went up there. There he is. He There's flicked a plastic man. Barry Spinnaker there and little Tommy Tomkinson yes. from the airline. Jimmy room. Twizzler. Oh, there he is. Oh, but they've oh, given it away it's straight, straight away. away. It's, a, it's, a number, it's the number 11 there. And he's, he's running all oh, the... Oh, oh, it's a goal kick. Oh, oh. It's a goal kick. There's a little boy phrase there on his horn. Right? <laughs> on his high horse. Half oh, time. Half time. Half time. That's it. No, we'll be back in a minute. That's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, right, that, is, that is stupid. We can have a penalty shootout, though. I nearly sprained myself, then. I had to stop in mid-swing. <laughs> That's happened before, though. <laughs> we will be back at the exit. Mum, I don't want any tea. I'm busy. Part You're very two. good with your fingers. Right after this. <laughs> The bar, the score, England versus Chile is nil-nil. It's time to go back to the XFM living room. For the second half of the match this afternoon, let's see how it's looking. Well, uh, Claire, uh, it's, uh, England are down to ten men. I had to pull one of my players off at half time. That's very kind of you. My, my boys only get oranges. <laughs> I used to do that for mine, but they wouldn't put the tights on and have the bag over their head. But here we go. Here we go. And it's our, oh, look at that lovely ball there. A huddle type ball into nowhere in particular. 
Um, oh, that is Chile again. They've done turn around there. In my, oh, they, no, no, it's, oh, they found his own player. They missed it completely. England move up there. And it's a dirty foul. It's a dirty I'll foul. I'll take it. Quite, quite a dangerous area. He's moving to. He's not. Oh, 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 one, two. Oh, here we go. I've oh, never it, been in such close proximity to you, Ricky. England in possession again. Oh, look at this move here. It's like you have to show oh, oh, the ball. They're keeping hands. it. They're playing with the ball oh. now. Oh. oh. It's a foul. They're going to, he's going to take it quickly. It's there. Oh, it's a dangerous. England in the 15 yard. Oh, so close. Still England. Still England's there. It's in a dangerous position. Oh, oh it's nil nil. Nil nil. That is the end of the match then. So uh, I guess what extra time? Penalty shootout. Penalty shootout. Yeah, out. okay. Beckons. Right after this. So, as we recreate the England Chile match tonight, this afternoon, in fact, here live on XFM, down there in the living room, we have Ricky and Matt. Ricky representing England on the Subutio table. Matt is doing the business for Chile, although he hasn't got any Chile team members. He's using the Colombia ones. But don't you worry about that. We cross over live now back to the XFM living room. Hello. Oh, here we are. Can you hear me, Claire? Your tannoy's on. Tannoy's on. Well, uh, uh, England are going to take the first penalty. It's just uh, the best of three. And his goalkeeper keeps jumping up and kicking it with his back. His scorpion kick. Yeah. (laughs) It's ridiculous. Like, can I just like say as well, I feel slightly stupid because we could be in the studio <laughs> pretending to play this, but we are two grown men. No, you really are. Sprawled out, my knees are right. killing me. We've got the whole thing out. We, it took us about an hour to tape it down. <laughs> I'm in trouble with me mum because I'm missing me tea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, here we go. Okay, so let's just very quickly, so the score is nil-nil. This is uh, a penalty right. shootout. Off you go. Yeah. 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 One nil. England, one nil. Oh, Gervais. Oh, Gervais. Amazing scenes here. Oh, I can't believe it. Okay. Was that a save? Yes, of course it was. It was a beautiful save. England in the lead. Oh, yes! It's 2 0. It's 2 0. Chile have to score this to stay in. Oh, Oh, save it! Amazing scenes. Coming off! Coming off! That's it! They can't stay going! Yeah! Obviously, I'm very disappointed. Oh, 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 boys, well done. Just like to say thanks to everyone. I'm faith in me. Uh, I, I, I know, I knew I could do it. There was a lot of criticism, but thanks, thanks, we've done it. We've done it. And as we say goodbye to the XFM living room, there's Chumba Wumba with tub thumping playing over the tannoy. Ah, oh, the boys will be back in the studio for a bit of a post-match analysis. Joined by Ricky Gervais and Matt Ambound, team captains, Ricky Gervais, England, Matt yeah. Ambound, Chile, although it was Colombia, but yeah. it was only because it's, it's South American, isn't it? Yeah. The really embarrassing thing is, not only that we actually went through with it, yeah. Yeah. but that we didn't care whether it was on the radio or not. We were having a brilliant time. <laughs> yeah. With my heart, I just wanted to win so badly, Claire. I just wanted to win so badly. Oh, God, I'm going to put that goal past him. He did not, oh, God, it was just amazing. Yeah, you looked like a happy man. And the boy yeah. Fraser did well. He was, he was the loving it. He was jumping up and down. He ruled it with a rod of iron. He I did, know, yeah. He? I know, yeah. We, well, we'll leave it there. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what we haven't had time to do this afternoon, Matt? What's that? All those autographs you got. Oh, uh, Shiver, Modine. All of them. Cranky. You got, uh, we got all those autographs and we we're going to give them away today. Now, yeah, what do you we reckon? Were... Should we do it next week? Sweet. No, I'm going to keep them. Okay, Small fine, yeah. To, yeah. to hell with the listeners. Yeah. No, all right, we'll come up with the competition next week. We'll do it next week. Yes. We, I mean, seriously, Ricky, we have got all I these know, autographs. That's, that is like a lovely prize, quite seriously. You, you didn't really get cranky, did you? <laughs> no, I didn't get cranky, no, no. A, a she was off right? with Pollard. Really? Gin, yeah. Oh, no, it's got it was, to be libelous. It was, it was a lovely <laughs> at, least, at least he said Allegedly. Off, off with drinking gin. Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But once again, thank you for the effort you put in this afternoon for that match. Uh, it's my pleasure. Um, and the fact that, you know, it's not sad, the fact that you did actually play. Oh, it was amazing. I let you win. Did you see the second goal? I though? did see the second goal. I let you win. And I also, Ricky, <laughs> oh, I, no, I'm no, I did. Hey. I dived in oh, I did. I've accepted that the bribes. No, it's true. It's rubbish. No, it's I wanted England to win, so that's it. That's it. No, guys.